start, second turn. Driving into that first turn, nice. He's gonna go to the air on this one. Welcome to day two of action for the 2024 ISA World Surfing Games. The swell has stuck around overnight and everyone is frothing because yesterday, it's pretty all time. The surf was incredible for an opening day of an event of this magnitude with Olympic qualification on the line. And now again, just as the sun is beginning to rise, we can see that that swell has stuck around. It's looking clean. It's looking so fun out there and we cannot wait to see that action get underway. Shannon Hughes here in the booth alongside of Martin Lynch. Martin, great to have you back in here today. Great to be here with you. And day two, as you said, looks uh, similar in, in terms of conditions, same sort of size, nice offshore wind this morning. So 60th anniversary for the ISA of these world surfing games. So all very excited and yesterday, how were the crowds here yesterday? Saturday, massive. by the afternoon, there were thousands, tens of thousands of people here for the concert, and today is expected to be a massive day. Look at this lineup. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if those crowds have already, you know, maybe even just slept here overnight because John John <laughs> Florence is in the first heat of the morning, one of the biggest names of professional surfing in the water for Team USA, up against three other surfers, Italy, Norway, and Guam as we take a look at our opening wave for the morning. Surfer in white, Jared Gogu from Guam. It's hardly even light enough to see out there in these winter conditions here in Puerto Rico in the Northern Hemisphere. We have got heats underway as we take a look now at the first wave of Noah Storhog out of Norway. Great style on his forehand to start things off on the left. These three surfers up against Matteo Alatri Sokup from Italy. And I cannot wait to see how today unfolds after the excitement that we saw in yesterday's performances. Yeah, it was a really exciting opening day. Some, you know, some barrels, some airs, great performance surfing on the rail. And, uh, you know, it was, it was a, maybe perhaps the biggest crowd ever for an ISA surfing game. There were, you know, tens of thousands of people here and the beach was fizzing and the surfers were stoked to, to you know when you perform it with an audience that appreciates you and appreciates what what that you do uh, every time a puerto rican rode a wave oh. yesterday the crowd went nuts so you know all those elements good waves the world's best surfers great audience and spectators great infrastructure and uh day two is going to be another successful day for our 60th anniversary especially with the venue that there is here with the way the boardwalk strips I mean, you can just see it there in the left hand side of this great drone footage uh, where the contest site is set up the beach is not a huge sandy beach or anything but no. the boardwalk is perfect yes. there's a little road here there's plenty of space for all the spectators to be down there's lots of great restaurants there's you know little stalls set up with local vendors there was yes. a concert last night this place is absolutely feeling it and and it's been a great start to the world surfing games this week as we take Ooh, a look, look at, at some live action in the green jersey. John John oh, Florence, he oh. tucked in off takeoff. I'm going to say he's disappeared and we're not going to see him again. Oh, that was, uh, you know, he was <laughs> super late. But it was 100% it was a makeable wave. Um, and, and with John John, you know, quite possibly the greatest tube rider in the world, one of the greatest of all time. You still, you just sat there going, well, he may, he may come out of this. So, you know. That shows the quality of this wave at Margarita is this particular break. The ladies are down at El Pico and then moving to this break this afternoon. So we will be seeing the ladies in today's webcast as well. That's right. So as we've got a little lull in the action, we have some small scores that have come through from, uh, you know, those opening exchanges. We'll take a look at the replay here of John first. He was in the tube before he got to his feet, Nelly, and he was close to making that. Um, would not have been surprised at all if he did because you know, we've seen him pull off Houdini acts time and time again. That was a missed opportunity for John and down into fourth priority now. And you can see him kind of lurking around, wondering which side of the pack he should sit because all three of those other surfers have priority over him. So he's going to look left and that makes sense. Held on. Will he go left? Yes, he does. He had the choice there. Been riding on his backhand. 
Nice snap to start, straight up into the pocket. Big open face wrap as his second maneuver, and he'll kick out. So now he's going to put that completed score on the board. We're still waiting for uh, that opening uh, wave to drop in, so he'll have that small score as well. Noah started out with a 3.17 and a 2.83 for Mateo. For those two in the front of the pack, but still very early days. Let's take a look at this one. Drops down the face, drives that bottom turn up vertically, snaps in the pocket. Face goes a little flat, does a wrap back to the white water and cuts out. Now up and riding, Jared for Team Guam. Powerful attack off the start. Opens up a little bit more on that second turn. So just the opportunity for those two turn combos to start off with. Fierce paddle from Jared as well, just to get himself back into the lineup. Noting that today seems pretty consistent. We're going to get a feeling for, you know, what's happening in the water over the next few heats how different it really feels and looks to what we were seeing yesterday, but so far this morning it looks absolutely incredible. And like you said, Barton, we are starting out with our men's here again, so we're just finishing out the opening round that we yes. began yesterday. We got through 30 of the 36 heats. Right now we're going to finish those final six heats in the men's round at the same venue, the same break that they began that ran out, ran round at yesterday. We'll have the women finishing out their opening round, which is just a couple of heats at El Pico this morning. And then... From about 9 a.m., the women will be starting off here as soon as this men's round finishes, and we'll be in women's competition for the entire day at Margara on the broadcast. We'll have the men moving down to El Pico, where you can follow along with those scores and that um, just that kind of standing podium camera that we've got there to be able to watch and follow along. So it will be a full day of women's action once we get through these first six heats of the men. Drives off the bottom. Beautiful big snap there. Guam, you could imagine that the South Pacific's going to have some reef breaks, so they're very comfortable out here. There's some great goofies in their team. But that first backhand turn was nice. Scores John got in. a 3 4 3, sorry, Shannon, for that okay. last ride. For the left hander. So, really, you know, all one turn waves to start for everybody. And John, John Florence getting the. Uh, the upper hand for 317 for Norway. 283 for Italy. So all really tight. And um, shows that everyone's, the quality of everybody's one turn was quite comparable. You know, point 0.5, I suppose, between all of them from John through. Fairly similar waves as well. Just that first more critical turn, the second turn without a very critical section to it. And then the wave fizzling out. Yeah, exactly. And it'd be interesting when you see this situation where they're all sitting there together. John in third priority, having a look because he's down the priority roster. Second priority decides he wants it. Noah for Team Norway, up and riding. First big backhand attack. Sets it up now for the second. Wraps it around in a slightly flatter section and the wave begins to steepen up for him on the inside. Great wave selection. Excellent decision to go on that one. Add to his scoreline. He's sitting with that 3.17 so far. Exactly what I was thinking. As you said it in my head, that was great wave selection. No wonder John had a look at it. He's thinking, if I can get this, this is a... And it had a great run to it. We'll see it on the replay. Drone angle drives off the bottom, snaps out of the top. Another section delivers, cuts it back to the white water. Really not hitting the lip, but there he gets to kind of connect with the lip a little more through to this inside and uh, the most complete ride of the heat so far. Scores to come through now for Noah. You can really tell, I mean, that was a great wave and an example of how that first section can be quite steep with an actual lift, that, that sharper line of water actually coming over. Mm -hmm. And then how it goes real flat, surfers have to go into that cutback. But that if they're on the right wave, it's going to stand up again on that shallow section on the reef and give them more of that lift line. Absolutely. There it is, a 2.73. So for Noah, adds into his score line, puts him into that leading position. Yeah, I, 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 I am a little bit confused that that has come under some of those one-turn waves. Uh, but, you know, I suppose there wasn't anything of that super critical nature. It was a nice long wall. Uh, but there was no moment where you were like, oh, and it, it really got you excited. So a couple of scores there, you know, around that average of three. 
about halfway through this heat now, we will be running 20 minute heats throughout the day for each side of the draw. And once we finish out this men's event main round one, which we'll have 36 heats in total, we're currently in heat number 31, finishing off from yesterday, then we will be into our women's main event round two. So it'll be the surfers that came away with first or second place, advance through and essentially cut the field in half from competition yesterday on the main side of the draw. And then we'll be finishing out the day with about five heats of the women's repercharge round one, which is the surfers that fell out in the bottom half of their heats in that third or fourth place position. But we'll start to see repercharge rounds running on both the men's and the women's side by the end of today, the day today, which means it is actually our first elimination day of competition. As we take a look now at Noah, so into a critical section to start, bounces off the lip, do a second quick maneuver. And from fourth priority, you may as well catch some waves and see if you can't improve. He, got, he did connect with the lip there, so it was a little more of a critical turn. It'd be really interesting to see where that score comes here, you know, one turn compared to the four on the other wave and, and, and get an idea of how the judges are seeing things this morning. Had a good day yesterday, really got to sort the scale out. We understand from what we saw yesterday that tube rides will score highly without really anything else. We saw that a couple of times, you know, where, yeah. where there was just a tube, quick in and out. Not, not a quick in and out, but, you know, a tube ride with nothing else. And they came in around fives, high fives. So we know that without a turn, the tube's going to score value, valuably. Which, in, in the context of this heat, being that we've got threes as the highest scores, if someone's able to actually find a tube right and right out of it, they're going to be sitting on that single highest score almost unquestionably. Yeah, and you think about John John's first ride, yeah. first opportunity, that would have been the best wave of the heat so far with the completion, it's particularly with how critical and late the takeoff was. Here he goes again. So first wave in that set, too big, kind of cleaned everyone up. They're back in position now, and John, under second priority, takes off on this one opening turn and just that one opportunity but he'll replace the one on the scoreboard likely grab that 1.3 as we take a look now at jared so his requirements about to grow just pretty similar surfing that we're seeing across the field right now with what these waves are are kind of showcasing yeah that that wave for jared you know for guam was a bigger wave nice big meaty first section It'll be interesting to see how that scores compared to John's wave. Smaller, a little flatter on the face. I feel like you know, Jared should get the better of that particular exchange. And we'll see the replay. Look, double overhead. Wow, the bottom turn from way deep. Snaps it nice and tight in the pocket. And then gets a nice little wrap back to the white water to finish up. Nice style, good technique on the backhand. So scores to come through now for last of green and last of white. Jared, 26 years old from Dededo in Guam. Been competing for a long time as we take a look now at Noah. Drawing a nice line to start things off with, throwing a lot of spray into that early morning light. Carving back, setting himself up for a bully section here giving him a little bit more of a critical oh. line and unfortunately just kind of goes head over toes. And you can see him shake his head there for a moment. 3.03 for John on the last. What's he get here? Tucks oh. into the barrel, perfect positioning, and he'll come out just in front of the spit, lays down a big bar back into the foam for that combination surfing. That's going to be great for us to see. He got a 3.303 on the last still waiting on that score of whites and john john definitely getting the best wave of the heat so far you would think with that tube ride into the cut back and then noah storhog from norway waiting on his score left hand at three nice turns unfortunately fell on the inside there that will definitely impact in some way So the highest wave so far was the 3.13 from John on the left, a couple of turns. 
Now waiting to see where the judges will go this morning with a barrel to par of combination. And that will really set us up in the context of this heat. We're only have about six minutes remaining, just under six minutes on the clock now, so. And up until this point for the competitors, look at this one, left. Great opportunity for Jared on his forehand. He's just snuck himself into lead as well. Gets a quick cover up and then wraps it back, goes in for a second turn. Waves a little bit bumpy on the face, but he gives the stare back to the judges. You can see he's so hungry right now. Yeah. He's surfing against one of the all-time greats of our sport. He's currently sitting in the lead, and now he's going to have a score to help better his situation to drop in. 357, the judges are really trapped in that high two to mid three range. Every score has been wow. in that in that range. And then, for, you know, if you're up against one of the greatest surfers of all time in John John Florence, and the heat's been going for 15 minutes and he has had the same type of scores as you. Got to be a massive confidence booster for the other surfers in this heat because, you know, John John could have ran away with this, especially if he made that early tube and, and it, it, it sort of puts a big dark cloud over your hopes for your, yourself and your success. But here's John behind the peak, puts the arm into the wave face, stalls beautifully. Feels like he's a backdoor pipeline at home in Hawaii. It's a lovely carve back, and that is a 6.33 from the judges. That made sense, a lot of sense. And here is this blue always wave. Came in as a 2.67, so really paying for this fall. You know, you've got the outside turn, inside turn. This was a bonus section. You're like, well, this is maybe the best wave of the heat. Oh, no. You know, that's how my mind went through yeah. it. Takes off late, pulls in, gets a little cover up. Board bouncing around a little bit on the wave face, and that sort of illustrates a bit of a lack of control into a layback snap there. Now into live action with Mateo. He's been pretty quiet within this heat, finding himself a tube ride as well, and he nearly ah. pumps out of it, but he just gets taken out. That was unfortunate because he was right in position. John as well ducks into the barrel, and he'll disappear. Yeah, that was a long wait with the priority for oh. Italy. Sat there. The great opportunity as well. Look at John. What's John seeing on this one? Oh. Wake up. Maybe even looking. Well, he kind of had to. He had to be thinking air, didn't he, with that exactly. oncoming section? Yeah. yeah. He had to be thinking that because otherwise it was a bizarre decision from such an experienced competitor. But maybe he thought, okay, I'll give, give it this air a section. A little speed a section, kind of. You could see that closeout was coming towards it as well. So current situation, we're down to three minutes on the clock. First heat of the morning, judges kind of getting some things ironed out, surfers getting a feel for what today is bringing from waves in comparison to yesterday. And we'll take another look at this one for Mateo. It was a great opportunity. Balls in the perfect place. I feel like he might have got a little high, a little tall there. He looks like a tall kid. Yeah, he looks really tall. <laughs> and uh, got connected with the lip. Unfortunately, incomplete, and it was a long wait with the priority, a long, long wait, 10 or so minutes more with the priority to get an incomplete ride. So disappointing, finds himself in fourth place, but again, pretty tight. 6.2, the the, knee, the request for second place to go into first, and then look, 3.63 and a 4.47. Although they're their best scores of the heat so far, or would need to be, uh, they're not. They're, they're well in the in the ballpark of possibility. Still small requirements for third and fourth to take away that second place position. Top two will be advancing through into the main round and they'll be surfing a different venue today at El Pico. They'll be starting off there around 7.45 this morning. As soon as the women's round has finished off and there's been enough time to well, actually, the the men's round will start on that side for round two while we're finishing out round one here because yeah. it'll be those early heats from yesterday. These guys will surf later in the day today, but they, they'll officially be surfing for a second time. Priority sitting with the surfer in that third place position. And priority. One minute on the clock. Jared there tapping his, his wrist means that he's calling for that time from the judges. He wants to know exactly how much time is left and likely the requirements, knowing that he's in second place position, he'd like to know what the other surfers are chasing possibly. 
always good to have that information, know what you need, know what you're looking for, and identify that scoring potential in the wave before you even catch it. Make sure that what you're catching has the ability to give you what you need. Next heat. Morgan Sivilik for Australia, Brian Toth, Puerto Rico, Oscar Gumas, Guzman sorry, from Nicaragua and from the US Virgin Islands, Tommy Gibney. That's gonna be an exciting heat to be uh, rolling into as soon as this one finishes. 20 seconds on the clock. Everyone's kind of moving, but will this next wave stand up enough? It's definitely going to. 10 seconds on the clock. Surfer in blue has first priority and he's gonna take a look at this one. Oh. Late to it, ducks into oh. the barrel, makes it out. Stands very tall. He's stoked. He's feeling so stoked. Goes in for a quick carve. Chasing down a 363, John now up and riding, driving down the line, goes in for a heavy carve on a smaller size wave, making it look really fun and rippable out there. So John's gonna take away the win. Yep. Gonna Looking for a 363 to go from second to third. Is that tube ride wow. enough for a three? It was a good tube ride. Yeah, what are your it? thoughts on it? He was late. I actually thought he'd blown it at the I, start. I thought he disappeared, like yeah. wasn't going to come out again. Got caught by the lip. Maybe the lip touched him. He wasn't going to come out. And then all of a sudden he comes shooting out, gets the cut back after it. It's quite possibly the score. I think it, look at that, super deep. Great opportunity for him. Noah representing, oh, we'll take a look at the split peak here. So red also had a chance. Mateo was down in that fourth Ooh. place position. Well, third and fourth, both getting opportunities. Wow. Wow, that was a fantastic wave. Do they both get the score? What happens here? What an exciting finish for heat one of the day. And look, the opportunity. Surfing culture growing through this experience of all these nations coming together. Judges having a long, hard think. Blue needed a 363. I say he gets it with that tube ride. That was a fantastic tube ride. I loved it. Compared to John's 633, that's got to be a four or a five at yep. least, I would think. So blue gets the score. Red needed a 447. His, his was a really good wave. I feel like it was one of the best turn rides of the heat outside of everything else that we saw. Wow, fantastic. This is, that was an incredible finish. I love how exciting it got. The fact that there was that one last wave that they both had an opportunity for Mateo and for Noah. Third and fourth, both getting their chances. And not with crazy score requirements. The 447 yeah. is obviously in the context of this heat, it's gonna, it's a tough score to get on turns. Yes. We're seeing that already evidenced. Noah's score is in, judges loved it, a 6.17. So it's shy of the barrel to turn from John but it's enough, more than enough, to get Noah into second place. Yep. Mateo dropped in his best score. He got a 4.5, which jumped him into third, but because Noah's scores were so strong, he now would have needed a 4.85 to get the top two position. And it will officially be John John Florence for Team USA with the win. Noah Storhog from Norway. He pulled it out. surfing in Costa Rica every day of the week and uh, pulls it out at the end to get that second place position. We're going to go to a quick break. When we return, more barrels like this to come throughout the day. In Puerto Rico, we call ourselves Boricua, a unique name honoring our island heritage and the vibrant spirit of our people. When you bask in the warmth of our beaches, when you taste the love in our food, when you embrace the call of our adventures, you'll find that spirit in yourself. Dare to live every moment. Live Boricua.
welcome back to the action. Bright and early. A few people may be going for a skate later today and that little bowl <laughs> looks pretty fun with the quality of waves on the outside as well. We got a few really good skaters in the draw this week, Martin. Yeah. On well, the women's side, Katie Simmers and Sky Brown is here representing Great Britain. Let's get Sky in there. She's an that. Olympic medalist in skating. I never knew there was a skate park there until this aerial shot. So this that's is a great. great well, out in the water right now, heat number 32 for men's round one at the ISA World Surfing Games. We got Australia, Puerto Rico, Nicaragua, and the U.S. Virgin Islands in the water. Brian Toth for P Puerto Rico is going to have a lot of eyes on him, a lot of support down in the shoreline. Yeah. Up against a great name out of Australia in Morgan Sibilic and Oscar Guzman for Nicaragua, Tommy Gibney for the U.S. Virgin Islands. So a great way to continue on our morning. That last heat really turned on in the back half. The last five minutes got really exciting. Sure did. And props to all of the surfers in that heat. They all put up a, a great show for themselves and their countries. Particularly Jared Gogu from Guam held that second position all the way and unfortunately bumped right at the end, but he had a great heat. Take a look now at some live action. Tommy up and down quickly big set there pretty solid just like the one we saw right before those kind of smaller more groomed waves came in a little one point ride for Morgan Siblick on the board well as we wait for the next set to roll through let's go down to the beach catch up with Mitchell Salazar and John John Florence hey John congratulations first time here in Puerto Rico yeah first time here super stoked and I can't believe how fun the waves are how about the embrace oh, from the people as soon as he got out of the water too? Oh yeah, the people are amazing. So far it's been it's been so cool and just uh, yeah, everyone's been super welcoming. Um, and it's I'm so stoked to be here. You've had the highest of the highs and the lowest of the lows. I mean, nobody knows more about injuries than you do. If you were to give a piece of advice, a key piece of information to a lot of young surfers in the event on how to manage those kind of things, what would you say to them? Um, I think you just take everything as an as another challenge, you know, whether it's competing or an injury or whatever you're doing, you just kind of take it as the challenge and approach it the same. I learned a lot from my injuries, a lot from it that I now put into competing. Um, and so, yeah, I feel like that's always been really helpful for me. Like, you know, you just pivot from one thing to the next. Thanks for your time, Delman. Appreciate it. Thanks so much, Mitch. A great uh, heat surf from John John. Not huge scores, but was able to find a couple little barrel opportunities. One that amounted to you know a decent six point ride on the board and some great advice to the rest of the pack. Siblick now up and riding, coming out with speed, power in that first maneuver. Setting himself up now through the inside and he'll kick out as that wave goes flat. Massive acceleration out of the bottom into that first turn. So much speed. That was that was the word for it. He just accelerated, almost accelerated more than he looked like he anticipated. It caught him off guard a little bit. It'd be great to see that on the replay. But a good opening ride and a point three zero in for Tommy Gibney. He didn't look too happy with that one. He kind of got up and went, what am I doing on this wave? Cut out. Yeah, kind of recognized in the moment. You find that, I've even heard the great Kelly Slater say that, like he'll be paddling for a wave and thinking, what am I paddling for this for? What am I, oh, what have I done? You know, where you just lose yourself in a moment. Paddle now for Brian Toth, late takeoff, up to his feet. He'll also just go that one, one quick turn. He'll want to get himself into higher priority at least than Morgan. Yep. Strategic. Find himself with third. Interesting insights from John there on, you know, taking injuries just like any other challenge kind of what you were saying yesterday about learning from wins and from losses yeah saying you know having those major injuries that could be really affecting whether it's a major career effect or just okay for this season i'm going to be struggling let's yeah. take a, a look at this replay quickly Ooh, look at the speed out of the top there a little bit sort of almost on edge that surfing wasn't it erratic fast it didn't look comfortable just finding his feet, but still great first turn. Tothy here, in and out, sees Morgan and goes, I've got to keep that priority over this guy. This wave is not going anywhere. Don't even know why I took it. I'm getting back out the back. Tommy now up and riding. Wasn't very happy with that left before. Now onto the right, finding a little bit more of a pocket. It's got a good bend to that wave. 
He'll slip out on the finish. Much better surfing on that one, though. Able to actually get some work done as we take a look now at Oscar Guzman. Dragging, stalling, trying to find the barrel. Doesn't really open up for him, so he's going to rely on that rail work. As he flies down the line. Love that wingspan, arms really just open and in position as he drives back into the foam. Really loose looking board there, rifting in the tail. Look at the paddle. Port, you know, obviously, the faster you paddle, the quicker you get out the back, the more opportunity you're going to have. So you can see the urgency in the paddle drives out. Thought that might chew, but it did not. It's a lovely wrap. Three cutbacks on this one, basically. We know the judges don't get that excited by a cutback. I love the way the board drifted off the white water there. He stayed in complete control. Don't expect it to be too high a score. 4.67 for Morgan Sibley. Best wave of the heat so far. Paddle now for Brian. Uses his priority on this one. Perfect positioning on takeoff up into that first turn. Sets himself up on kind of frothy section in front of this wave. Might have one more little Awful. hit to the foam. Super powerful surfer. That felt like the best wave of the heat so far. First turn, beautiful. Positioning, vertical. Four, six, seven, Morgan. Morgs, oh, threads the needle, but can't quite make it all the way through. A 4.67 for first and Morgan Siblick. Former WSL final five surfer. It's an incredible achievement to make it into the top five at the end of a season. Be right there in that world title hunt. And then took a fall off tour and hasn't quite been able to find that rhythm again to get himself back to the championship tour. But you'd imagine to he's too, big, too good a surfer to not. Well, exactly. I mean, seeing the type of surfing that he's doing here, even that, you know, though the scores are not huge yet, as we take a look now at Oscar Guzman, straight off the lip, and he takes a dive out. That for Morgs, it's just a matter of time before he's right back there in that conversation again. And I think it, it speaks to the reason why Australia has decided to have him on the team for this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Knowing that they've got a few other surfers from the championship tour that could be here representing. that don't need to for Olympics or anything along those lines. But, you know, alongside John and Ethan on the men's side of the draw, that Morgs is a great person to be in that conversation to try and help them win that third spot. Replay. Hoffy out of the top. First turn. Nice wrap there. It's a little white water on the face here. Still keeps doing the work. And you can imagine, here we go, this is the straight on. This is the judge's view. Comes from behind the white water. Best turn of the heat so far. Beautiful big backhand wrap, that first one. Shame this wave went so small and white watery. Uh, when it's, you know, you want to be on a wave that makes the judges want to surf it. That, that's always your best chance of getting a good score. If they look at the wave and they're not inspired by the wave, then you're dragging their attention along with you. But if they look at the wave and go, oh, look at this one on, oh, and they're already riding it with you and excited about the opportunity for you, and you maximize that opportunity, they're your best chances of, of getting the big scores. The judges still have, there it is, a 5.17. Best score of the heat so far for Brian Toff. Great surfing. Brian Toth, from, he's from Isabella here in Puerto Rico. It's a little farther towards the west coast. Has some great surf in that region. Well, you, and I'm looking at this wave and the lineup, and when you look at the swell, you get a sense of this swell being more of a wind swell than a ground swell. Kind of peaky in nature, not sort of coming in in these big, straight, strong lines like you'll see sometimes. Yeah. Imagine this wave in a ground swell. That's what my mind's thinking about because there's there's tube rides and beautiful walls out there as it is. In a stronger swell, it must be an incredible wave. Tathi up and riding once again. Got that 5.17 now trying to build on his score line. Not feeling very satisfied with that opening turn, so he'll kick out. 38 years old. One of the probably more well-known names within surfing out of Puerto Rico yes. over the years with his experience. The first surfer I ever heard of or met from Puerto Rico was Edwin Santos. Back in the 80s, he was, uh, you know, he was the first touring professional surfer from this area who came onto the world tour and, and put Puerto Rico on the map. So much respect and shout out to Edwin Santos. 
taking a look at the current conditions. Dropped off a bit from yesterday, Martin. Yeah, they were, yesterday had four to six feet. They're calling it two to four. It's a conservative two to four. You know, quite often they <laughs> talk it up. I think they're talking it down a little bit there. The swell direction, northeast, light southeast winds uh, making for these offshore conditions in the morning. The tide yesterday was around 9 a.m. was high, so it's moved about a half an hour to 9.32 of the high tide, so that tide moving in as we speak. Ryan now up and running again. Showing that local knowledge, just kind of picking his way through the lineup under priority from the rest of the crew. This wave's going to be great for his campaign. Nice finish to it as well. Looking to back up that 5.17, his 1.37 will be well and truly gone. Bye-bye. And that was, you know, for fourth priority, that was a gift. That was great lineup positioning and uh, proves that he's got that local knowledge and he'd moved away from all the other three surfers with the priority above him and found a wave of that quality. Great job. Surfer in red has first priority, blue with third priority and white with second priority. All sitting pretty close together waiting for uh, that next set to come through, but would also be seeing the work that Brian's been doing underneath all of them. Yeah, I wonder where that score goes. It's got to be up there with those fours, you know, that four or five range, something like that, you would think. Judges having a good, long, hard think about an important moment in the heat, six and a half minutes to go, will be the first surfer with two scores of consequence, a 3.83 little bit lower there. Biblick with an opportunity now. Setting himself up. Couple pumps here. Off the lip to start. Drives through the rail on the second turn. Kind of riding through the foam. Taking that momentum forward. He's looking for a 4.34 to get himself that leading position. Just didn't feel that comfortable on that wave to me. The little... There was a disconnect from him and the board and the wave, and it wasn't absolutely good. Here we go, men's qualification. So 24 Olympic spots available for Paris. Four more surfers on the men's and the women's side compared to what we had in Tokyo. Of course, it's the rankings from yeah, last year from 2023 from the top WSL rankings. On the men's side of the tour, the top 10 surfers got slots, and that was given that only two surfers per country could qualify, so two Brazilians, though we had three within the top 10, kind of fell down the line. Team Japan earned themselves a, an extra spot by being the highest ranked men's team at the 2022 World Surfing Games. They have a slot to pick whoever they want to for that, still available. Luca Messinas finds himself as a two-time Olympian after winning the 2023 Pan American Games. And then at last year's World Surfing Games, we had four continental spots to allocate one surfer per continent. And these four surfers were able to secure those. We've got six spots left for official World Surfing Games qualifiers out of this week's event. Surfers have to be in the top six eligible. We may have some double qualifiers that land up in that top six conversation, so it'll likely fall deeper down the line. And of course, with those highest ranked teams, again, the men's and the women's side will each get a slot for their nation. And then a universality place is open for developing nations. Uh, there is a slot on both the men's and the women's side this year, which is a great introduction. It's something that the IOC, that the Olympics does for all sports, no matter what they are. If there is an athlete that is an excellent athlete in that field, but their country had eight or less athletes in total at the previous Olympic Games, so in this case, Tokyo 2020, then a country is able to apply for a universality spot specific to an athlete being excellent within their field. So we've got a couple of names in the mix within surfing, which is exciting to see that we could be filling those positions as well. As we're down to three minutes, 40 seconds on the clock, Brian Toth securing himself in the lead with that 3.83. Uh, Morgs, Siblick puts down a 3.93 for his last score. So not enough to get that leading position, which is kind of what we were expecting. Yeah, and Morgan's coming in you know, 0.10 higher than Brian Toss. Personally, I would have went the other way on that exchange uh, and, and most probably had Brian's, although, you know, at this point, not, not consequential. Coming up in the next heat, Marco Mignon, Guillermo Sot, Rafael Vieira, 
and Tashawn Christian Jones will be heading out next. We've got a huge day of surfing ahead of us. <laughs> and Another one. 30 heats yesterday, dawn till dusk, more or less. Yeah, we had the final heats running pretty much on dark at Magra, just to finish out that men's round. The women's round finished a little bit earlier, just because they were able to get a slightly earlier start in the morning. So, huge day of competition. The beach was as packed in the morning as it was in the evening. There was a concert just down the road from where we're currently sitting right in between the two kind of surf breaks between El Pico and Margara. So there's a lot of uh, locals down here just enjoying it. A lot of the crew working the contest as well behind the scenes as we see Morgan now on his backhand <laughs> flaring our precision. No downtime between those turns. Got to be better than those 3.9s, 3.8 type scores you'd imagine. So powerful, fluid took absolute advantage of every moment on that wave but from fourth priority great move from the Australian to to be able to get that ride and you, you think about some of the other surfers perhaps at this point in time when you're looking for a six it's not a good enough wave but for Morgan it was the opportunity to build on the bottom line that he'd already created and put some more pressure on third and fourth third and fourth look at this point looking for what would be the best scoring waves of the heat so far to advance so Morgan and Brian Toth, I think, are feeling pretty comfortable at this point in time. Not very much time remaining on the clock, just down to 90 seconds now. Priority sitting with our third place surfer, Oscar Guzman, out of Nicaragua. Just a couple twos on the board for Oscar so far. He's had a couple great attempts, but just unfortunately hasn't really had the right waves to be able to be successful with. So he's now chasing a big 6.33. And bigger than that is the requirement on Tommy, Tommy Gibney, a 6.67. We remember Tommy went for that left at, right at the beginning of the heat. Mm -hmm. Wasn't, you know, great wave section, so he kicked out quickly. And then he found that right that had some yes. really decent potential to it, but wasn't really able to surf the score up. Here we go. As we take a look at Oscar now chasing a 6.33, looking for that barrel once again, and he finds it. Oh, oh. Gets clipped, but manages to just pierce through. Will he be able to do anything else on the inside section? He'll get bumped off the board. Solid effort on that one. Yeah, hard to imagine it's going to be the 6-3-3. You can see the determination, only 20 seconds left, but he will not give up, hoping to get back out and give himself another opportunity. Brian Toth splitting the peak now with Tommy Gibney. We'll track with Tommy from the US Virgin Islands. Finding that left, just digging the rail in. And Brian now for Puerto Rico, holding on to the lead still, <laughs> powerful surfing as he finishes off on the inside. We don't maybe know. for one more section. Sorry, Shannon, got excited. We don't know what he did outside, but the rest of the work <laughs> kind of smells like the best wave of the heat to me. Fantastic surfing. So we're waiting for Scores to come through for all four surfers. We've still got that last score of Morgan Siblick. It was a 5.70. He does have one more to drop. So the 5.7, Barton, it takes Morgan into the leading position. Puts Brian Toth down into second, but Brian's now got a score to drop. Needs a 5.21. There's every chance Ooh. from what we saw. We didn't even see the start of it, but it feels like he might be you know, quite possibly could get that score and get the win for the home nation. Tommy Gibney, unfortunately, secures himself in the fourth place position off of his couple of scores. So he'll be heading into the repercharge round. Oscar Guzman as well with a score to drop. He was able to find that barrel, but given the context, he's now chasing at least a 6.73. And the barrels that we saw, yes, uh, in the earlier heat this morning, in that first heat of the day, yes. that we're getting into that six round range, we're just a lot cleaner, a lot bigger, a bit more open. Yes, indeed they were. So feeling unlikely that we're going to see that score go that way for Oscar, but a great effort from him. And now just waiting to see, will the local Puerto Rican be able to sneak away the win again? Chasing down a 5.20. We've got more action to come. We'll give you those results when we return. Regardless, it's going to be Morgan Sidlick and Brian Toth advancing through. Puerto 
Rico. We call ourselves Boricua. We are proud, passionate, and full of life. On our island, secrets are more precious than shared. Passion flourishes. We enjoy until our hearts are full. And we know that gifts can come from anywhere. Live Boricua. Welcome back to the action. We are in our third heat of the morning, but it's actually heat number 33 of men's round one. We've just seen Brian Toth sneak away the win. He did land a 5.67 for his last wave that we were waiting on the score. And it does take Tothy up into winning position for Puerto Rico over Australia's Morgan Sibilic, who walks away in second. That was another exciting finish. Both heats so far this morning of the two that we've run have had game-changing moments right on the final seconds as we take a look now at live action with Guillermo Sot out of Chile. Fantastic surfer, goes in for a big opening turn. Can't quite capitalize on it off the left. And we're gonna track now with Marco Mignon out of France. Child of the world really has grown up living in so many different locations, speaks so many languages, the Mignon family. And now here he is on his forehand, just pumping and driving down the line, looking for that end section to finish. And he'll put the best score from what we can tell so far on the board for this opening exchange. Both of those two surfers up against Venezuela's Rafael Piera and the British Virgin Islands to Sean Christian Jones out in the water for the very first time representing the British Virgin Islands. Shannon Hughes here alongside Barton Lynch to call the action. And we have seen a slight decrease in the swell from what we had yesterday. Though some of those sets have been pretty sizey and they've actually caught so far we haven't seen anyone be able to capitalize on the true set they've caught everyone off guard because they've just been inside of it yeah and we've seen some better lefts today than we've seen yesterday yesterday there weren't really any lefts of consequence uh everyone was choosing to go the right handers but today we've already seen good scores on the left so good to see opportunities both ways Guillermo now driving down the line setting himself Whoa. up for a big Kind of lip line floater finish. That was a challenging section. That was sick. That was great. <laughs> you know, for one turn, that's going to, you know, obviously be the best score of the heat so far. No question there. Just depending on how, you know, it'd be a good indication because as a single turn, closeout turn, it was spectacular. So it'd be interesting to see where the judges put that. And on this replay, you see the wrap and then all this white water comes over the face of the wave slows him to progress through pumping driving looking for this inside but doesn't really get up on top of it as he was heading towards the lip all that white water that was on the face slowed his projection down he didn't get up on top of it i love this drive from behind the white water floated the first section held it up there sort of tail wafted for a moment and then dropped down into the closeout section so as, as far as one turn goes that was spectacular so scores to drop for Guillermo Sot and for Marco Mignon. Can you explain to us what it is about that white water on the face of the wave that, that makes it slow down? Like makes makes the board slow down actually? Yeah, you imagine that the bottom of the surfboard's you know, gliding across the water and when that water's clean and you're gliding cleanly with great technique and positioning, you're at maximum speed. And if you if you, if the white water comes onto the face from a wave that's broken before it, it, it disturbs the water and so as your board sometimes there can be it's aerated to that white water so sometimes you can get up on top of it and actually like uh like air hockey you can accelerate across that those air sections but generally speaking they'll suck the board into into moments of cavitation or it'll slow it down by grabbing onto the rail with that white water and just slow the board down 16 minutes remaining on the clock We've got one of the greatest of all time in the booth breaking things down for us throughout the week barton you have surfed a few good waves within your time. I've been around a while, Shannon. You've hit a few of those slow spots with froth on yes. the face of the wave, those little air pockets before. As we see now, Tashan Jones out of the British Virgin Islands. Nice approach on that opening turn. I like his style as he's driving down the line. He'll kick out on a soft section. 
and get his first score in his very first opportunity competing at the World Surfing Games. And we know that because it's the very first time that the British Virgin Islands has ever had a team here. U.S. Virgin Islands, the British Virgin, Isle, Virgin Islands. Both those powerhouse nations got a bit of it each. <laughs> it's uh, great to have them here. It's great to have those new, new nations join. 115, I believe, national surfing federations around the world aligned with ISA. 55 of them here this week sharing in the stoke of Puerto Rico and the World Surfing Games and this is as much about you know a community coming together and sharing in it we see you know from the the world champions through to surfers in their very first event representing their nation for the very first time uh, all these different varying levels of ability and um, that's not really the point at these opening stages this is a celebration of surf culture really and and uh, it's great to have new nations joining us every year and, and the sport just growing globally. And 60th anniversary, 1964, Manly Beach, Sydney, Australia. The first time world champions in our sport were ever decided. Phyllis O'Donnell, the first ever yes, surfing Phyllis world O'Donnell. champion, followed then by Midget Fairley. Incredible to think back to that sort of history and where surfing has come yeah, it's incredible. Oh. It, it's it's such a journey. I remember as a kid, you know, I grew up you know, at Whale Beach, which was where Midget Farrelly lived. Uh, I used to see Midget before he passed away, rest in peace, legend, uh, a lot. He used to open up to me and share things with me that he didn't really share with many other people. I feel very privileged to have had that relationship with with him, and and have him share so much knowledge and experience with me over the years sad to see him pass um, and with him so did such a, a legacy that he left for Australian surfing one of the most incredible surfers of all time midget but turned his back for a period of time because there, you know you imagine that through that counterculture period of the late 60s early 70s surfing kind of you know with the morning of the earth movie surfing kind of took a different direction in the early days in Australia the surfers and the surf life saving clubs were kind of a similar community and they would all kind of hang together but as time went by there was a separation there uh, and and the kind of mainstream and then that counterculture went the other way and midget really never liked or felt good about that separation and and i suppose at that point in time there was an influence of that sort of drug partying culture coming into surfing and midget never liked that he always felt like it was really bad for our sport to to go that way Raphael now up and riding rooftop Ooh. drop off the top of that wave powerful aggressive surfing yeah. what it was like just radical it's always a little hectic when someone kind of takes that little float line and then they just literally airdrop to the bottom and you wonder is the board okay is their ankle okay even yeah. if it's on a small wave you can have those little moments that oh. can be I, uh, on, on those closeout floater re-entries, if you, I was, a, it was a Hawaiian winter, you know, 15 years ago, it was the smallest day of the winter and I went out off the wall, it was one to three foot, you're not even thinking, you know, you've been surfing big waves all winter and I go for a closeout re-entry, my back foot slips off, I tear the hamstring off the bone, so it can happen at any time, Marco. Marco looking incredible on that opening turn, Ooh. great bit of variety being added in on the second making sure that those are two different types of maneuvers, even though they're both turns, two different types of turns that he's bringing. As we're down to 12 minutes on the clock. Interesting to what you're saying though, going back to the story about Midget Fairly. Mm -hmm. and, and I think from what I'm hearing from you, his, his heart for surfing was to continue to showcase being a waterman or a water woman, right? Yes. Being part of that water culture, that the Surf Life Saving Clubs had it, that it was traditionally from Hawaii, from so many different cultures around the world of just being in the water, whether it was riding boats, canoes, whatever that looked like, it was being of the water. And then that surfing kind of counterculture came in, like you said, with the partying, with all of the other things that it got wrapped up in for a very long time. Yes. There's still a heavy element of that existing now, but it feels like we're sort of starting to swing back to that more waterman or that athletic side of things. We'll get back to that in a moment though, because we've just heard that Brian Toth, who was able to take out the win in that final moment for Puerto Rico, is down on the beach with Mitch Salazar. 
Here at Brian Todd, Puerto Rico, son, big congratulations, but to be able to do it at home must be something special in your life. Oh, it's amazing. They told me I've been here for 26 years, so this is for all the old boys. <laughs> um, feels great, man. The crowd is amazing. You can hear them out there screaming on every turn and stuff. And uh, I'm, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. You had an extremely successful professional career, too. For a lot of people that don't know your career, you nearly qualified for the Championship Tour multiple times. You won a QS event, but the resurgence later on in your career, what's your motivation right now in your late 30s? Uh, that's the way it goes. You have so really good years, years and then you have really bad years. It's an up and down roller coaster. Um, after the one year that I almost qualified, I stepped back and, and took on life uh, in another path. Which I'm, I've been enjoying a lot. I'm a dad now and I got my son and the whole family. And um, coming back, I feel good, man. They had a year to whip me into shape and I'm back into my prime again. <laughs> took a little bit, a couple months, but uh, I'm feeling great, man. Uh, I want to do another event. It's in my backyard, I'm really comfortable in these big, solid, uh, powerful waves, and uh, it, it's amazing. And I, I'm very confident right now, and, and no nerves at all. So, uh, just take it heat by heat and see what how it goes. Pressure is a privilege, that's for sure, but also getting the embrace of the people. It was loud as hell when you were catching a wave every single time. How do you use this as something positive rather than seeing as, it, it as pressure? No, it's it's awesome. It gives you this like power inside, like these butterflies, but that are amazing, and you just want to hit it harder, go bigger, and it kind of makes you land everything that you're going for as well. So uh, I take it in a positive way. I love it. On my last wave, I made everybody cheer again at the end, so I can really hear them. And and the beach went wild and stuff, and oh, man, it makes me just feel awesome. Very very loved. If you were to tell your younger self something that you're going to look into the camera right now and tell to the people of Puerto Rico, what would you say? Breathe. <laughs> Be patient. Uh, you got it. You put in the work and um, it comes. You just got to do your wave selection and uh, it'll come. All the work that you put in for a year and stuff, uh, it, your body does rest. Gracias. Felicidades. Gracias a todos ustedes. Lo amo, puñeta. Uh, thanks, Mitch. That was great from Brian Rothing to see him back on top. He's one of the great characters of our sport. He's a wonderful bloke, and he can tell, you know, he appreciates it all as you get older in life, and you've had, you know, you've gone through the highs and lows of a, a career or a life in professional surfing. You understand so much about yourself and opportunity, and uh, it's going to be great to watch him this week. Marco now up and riding. He's sitting in that leading position. He dropped a 6.17 to better the 3.5. And he's just continuing to get a bit of rail work done. So that 6.17 was from his previous wave. Has landed as the highest score of the heat so far. We've got Rafael out of Venezuela sitting in second now with a 3.33 and a 2.53 was his opener. Guillermo sitting in third with a 3.73 as his high score, just a 2.13 required for him to take away second. So still really close for that second place position. And then for Tashan, he's chasing down a 4.39, which is a bigger requirement. Uh, it'll be significantly higher than what he's found so far within this heat. Yeah, but, and, and really he's only had the, you know, a couple of ones. So yeah. across two waves and you go, if I ride two waves and I've got to get 4.39 over two waves, it's way doable. Beautiful wrapping turn. How's the speed he's creating? It seems like when the wave face is steep, that board is just livens up and just goes so, so quick through the water. We love these drone angles. What the drone has brought to our coverage. Oh, how's this? This is the one before it. There was a little bit of a catch there on the last turn, but those first two turns were so perfectly positioned, the judges couldn't help but go to, go to six. This turn here, <laughs> through the spray to the heavens. And that little catch out of the bottom there, we've seen yeah. that a couple of times. So when the wave goes flatter and loses its power, he's got to back off the front foot, get on the back foot a little more. Here, Guillermo. Guillermo on his backhand, great opening turn. Now heading into that frothy section of the, wa of the wave. It's a little bit more challenging, but keeps a lot of speed and momentum moving forward to hit this end section a couple of times. Is continuing to milk it so he's chasing down that 3.48 to get himself the sorry for guillermo is up into second he's chasing a 5.95 now 
as he's just taken away that second place position away from Rafael with his last wave being a 3.07. He's now going to have another score to come. Beautiful style from the goofy footer. Love the way he was just able to keep the flow, even when that wave really in, in the, was over, he was still able to just keep the flow and keep clocking up the points. Rafael, he's a powerhouse too. You can see there's just, if he can put the 3-3-3 three, three, three and the 2-5-3 have come on not very good waves, but he's got those scores based on the energy and the power of his surfing. So if he can put himself onto a better wave, he's now got first priority. You're obliged to wait when you get that first priority. When you're down the priority roster, third, fourth, you, you tend to catch more waves and just try and create opportunity for yourself rather than sit. And here we go, Marco putting himself into a beautiful position. Beautiful looking wave, oh. pulls into the barrel, but quickly has to just duck out the back. But he's hunting for it. Plenty of time. Raphael now, similar position on that wave, just a little bit late. Oh. He'll have to dive out of the way. Waste of first priority, really. Guillermo as well. Well, three down. Priority yeah, that's right. now sitting with Tishon. He could get, Rafael could get back out and still have, you know, a high priority rotation and not pay too much for that mistake in the wave selection. True, he could possibly gain second priority depending on where he, yep, it looks like he'll be. Uh, maybe Marco's out just ahead of him. Yeah. Hard to see those colors at the moment, but it looks like red out just deeper than blue. There we go. Priority on the board now. That peak. Looks so fun. Oh, nice. Yeah, they're surfing right now. It sure <laughs> would, especially representing your nation. Oh yeah. At the 60th anniversary party for the ISA. To Sean Christian Jones has got the priority. Need to see him put that performance onto a better looking wave. How's this one? Going to the backhand. Paddle. Nice looking section. Great snap to start into that lip line. Finding a bit of flow as he drives down the line. Cracking now with Marco as Tashan was finishing off on the inside. Nice couple wraps and he'll finish off well. Feels Looking like this is through. really a battle. Sorry again. Okay. It feels like a battle for second place, doesn't it? You know, uh, Marco is just continuing to, to build momentum, get those big scores. Improve, he'll improve on the 3 5 most probably. and. Uh, it's all about that, that battle for second place at this point in time. And to Sean, we saw him get his best wave of the heat so far, for sure. Yeah, it's sort of been the story throughout the morning, huh? That first place person sort of gets away, and then maybe in the last couple of minutes, you end up seeing that second place person chipping away to score, land a wave that's good enough to take away a lead, like we saw from Brian Toth in that last heat. Yeah. Just to, sorry, just to finish off on that conversation about the water, waterman, water woman, aspect of our culture and i think that that diversity midget did say that the 80s to him was the narrowest that surf culture had ever been you know longboarding was uncool everybody boards were uncool everything was uncool <laughs> you just had to shortboard that's yeah. all you know yeah, yeah, and, and it's great to see our sport and our minds and our culture diversify and open up to all of these opportunities to be in the ocean and to ride waves on all sorts of different craft and that's really what life's about that that diversity and and being able to enjoy it whichever way you can. Just being able to be in the ocean. Absolutely. The thing that's given us so much life. As we take a look at some replays here, Barton, down to the last couple minutes and each of these waves is really gonna matter. Nice carved, two of them back into the white wall, waiting for it to stand up here on the inside. Definitely his best score of the heat so far. Rafael on his backhand found a piece for Venezuela needs this got a really lovely style stocky powerful young man and marco there drifts the tail i don't know if this wave is going to improve for him look oh, inside nice inside section perhaps it does great surfing from the frenchman in this heat being dominant from the start Battle here from Raphael. This wave will be counting towards his score line. He oh. goes for a huge lip line floater and Hold it. finds a second. Wow. How did he land the first and then actually get up there to do it again? He's, well, he's already sitting in that second place position. The scores to drop are not going to really affect his position at the moment. So now the question will be 
Can he chip away at the 6.15 requirement or how much will he do that by to put pressure on Guillermo taking off now? Guillermo with that priority sitting down in third. Oh, no. God, he falls on the opening turn. So that's going to wipe away. 40 seconds, he could still get himself onto another wave. And to Sean, needs a 576, so that feels like a, a big ask. Yeah. Rafael Pereira might pull this out. He's, uh, his score to drop will be his best score. Do you feel like that too? I think so. Critical. Super maybe... critical. Like a bit wild and maybe yes. out of control, but very difficult to do. Exactly. There was that wild out of control <laughs> element to it, but, but there was drama and excitement in that. And they were critical maneuvers. Guillermo, Guillermo needs this. Ah. Oh. Will he get another chance? Five seconds? I think that was probably his other chance. Yeah. <laughs> he had that one on 45 seconds and fell and then, you know, yeah. down to that 10 second mark, did get himself into that next wave, but not quite there. Let's take a look here at Raphael's from a different angle. Beautiful, massive floater into a second one. That's going to be a big score. There it is, 4.5. That was really sick. The 4.5 kind of indicates that out of control part of it. Watch this. Beautiful. Up into it there when he nearly falls he lost some points there i still feel like it could have gone higher I'm regardless just so impressed that he was able to even with that catch and nearly kind of going over the handlebars drive straight out of that bottom turn into the lip again it, yeah it was incredible was surfing it shows his potential longer term too really well great heat wow well that will round out heat number 33 for men's round one we've got three heats remaining in this before we see the women entering the lineup and the last score at 4.5 for our surfer in blue takes him through with a second place position for Venezuela. And it will be Marco Mignon who walks away with the win for Team France. We've got more action to come. Barton, this was a great way to start out the morning. Sure was. Thank Can't you. Can't wait for more of it throughout the day. We've got Chris Cote and Rachel Tilly coming in for the call right after this. Sales Boricua, a unique name honoring our island heritage and the vibrant spirit of our people. When you bask in the warmth of our beaches, when you taste the love in our food, when you embrace the call of our adventures, you'll find that spirit in yourself. Dare to live every moment. Live Boricua. Welcome back to Wonderland. This is the 2024 ISA World Surfing Games. Chris Cote here with Rachel Tilly. Let's run it back again. Round one, Heat 34 is out and at it. We got Tim Etler up and riding now from Germany. I let David Sassi, Christian Pichardo, and Dimitri Papavasilu. Wow. As if shot out of a cannon, this day has started off an incredible day. Rachel, already the sun is out. The surfers are posting huge numbers. This is going to be yet another epic here at the ISA World Surfing Games. Yeah, well, it's our first heat of the morning for you and I commentating, but we've already seen three amazing heats going down. And look at Red, this replay. We've seen the lefts be a little bit more of a contender this morning for the surfers picking them and getting keepable scores. So Red starting his campaign there with a 4.0, but there is so much action out in the water. I wouldn't be surprised if that ends up going out of his score line and he continues to improve upon that. Yeah. Look at this set coming in. It's perfect out here again today. See Dimitri Papavasilou representing Team Greece. Quick shouldery one right there. Yeah, I like that you had identified the rights and lefts firing both ways today. 
I'm Chris Cote, 2015 WSL Longboard Champion Rachel Tilly. Rachel, yesterday was a probably about a 13 hour day, pure action all day long. The waves held steady throughout the entire day of competition. Wind was really nice for us all the way about midday. And even though the wind started pulling up a little bit, still absolutely rippable out there. What an epic place for an event. We've got two podiums running again congruently today, men and women still in that opening round. And what a way to start. Some of the numbers that I heard earlier on today already in those first three heats. We've got John John Florence posting yeah. huge scores, barrels, airs, huge floaters in that last heat. Really something for every type of surf fan. And with so much on the line, you can tell there is full effort from each and every athlete that has hit this lineup. Aya David Sassi, I mean, ripping his way down the line. And we're looking at a heat right here where Dimitri Papavasilou is probably the biggest name out in the water right now, but everybody's surfing at an elite level. Yeah, absolutely. And it's really to say that this is still round one. We ran, like you said, we had a, basically a 13 hour day yesterday, and that was all surfing through round one heats. It is not finished yet. These are the final three heats of round one and plenty of surfing still happening. The men's will be moving Men's round two will be moving over to the Pico podium and the women's round two will be moving to this Magada uh, podium that these men are on here today. So a little swap of the broadcast and the men's and women's on each peak, but this has been an exciting morning so far. And more to come, no doubt. Sassy jamming that backside turn right in the pocket. 14 at 30 to go surfers reset themselves in the lineup gives us a chance to catch up with Mitchell and Mignot. Congratulations, a good heat total. Green By today's standards, more than 12 points is going to be a good heat out there. You decided to take out a little bit of a larger board. Talk to me about that selection process. I mean, you know, uh, Margaret has some power, so uh, a little inch, it's good in the board. So uh, I'm just really happy I made this heat. It's, it's been four months. I don't do a heat, so it feels good to get back in the jersey and uh, represent France. So yeah. And what about having to be patient too? I know it's a long event, but we ran 30 heats yesterday and then being one of the first heats this morning too, but having to wait all day yesterday and at the beginning of today, how do you kind of prepare yourself for a moment like that? I mean, it's it's part of the, the ISA World uh, World Games. It's uh, you know, it's a lot of heats. You have to wait a lot, but uh, you have the whole team. You have to support the whole team and uh, try to be with everybody because uh, every point counts, you know. And uh, it's we have a really solid team. Everybody's ripping. Everybody's surfing really good. The whole staff is amazing. Uh, we have a really solid team right now. You represent France, but you're from Sayulita. Mexico and to be honest I just always see that fire and that passion in you everywhere you go a lot of great waves around there but that local beach break is dominant how do you stand out in a place that has a lot of good surfers there I mean I, I started surfing in Sayulita I live in Sayulita uh, you know what like to start surfing over there it's the best wave in the world it's a perfect little right there's a perfect little left it's the best place to grow up, you know, like fishing, surfing, hanging out with some friends. That's a good life. So, yeah, it's, it's, uh, Sayulita is, will always be my home. And, uh, yeah, I love Sayulita. Merci, Marco. Gracias a todos. Second priority goes to blue, second priority goes to white, and third priority. Thank you so much for that one, Mitchell. Love to hear the excitement and energy coming from these surfers knowing full well yes this is still an individual competition with medals on the line but the team comes first and here goes Christian Pichardo representing the Dominican Republic a little hung up on that first turn indecisive opts out of that last wave and now we're just going at wave for wave for wave as we see Sassi now big Ooh. backside whip and rides out clean I'm excited for all of these scores to get dropped. And then at this point with halfway through the heat, everyone has two scores under their belt. The competitors are able to sit out there and start to play strategically and go, okay, we have, everyone has scores on the board. Now what, where is, where's everyone sitting? What needs to be done still? 
And we're still waiting for those last scores of red and green, but they are definitely starting out the strongest this morning with beautiful wave selection. As Mitch and Marco were just talking about, running all of round one yesterday, these surfers had to watch their fellow teammates all surf yesterday. The conditions are looking pretty different today. A lot more of an A-frame section today. Beautiful first wrap by Red. Pulling it all the way back around. Only two turn opportunities there. Let's look at it from this front angle. I really love how he pulls that all the way around. Lots of power. Goes into a cutback for that second. So offering that variety, that power. Now let's compare that to Blues as he wraps it around digs that hand in for a little layback, but not much more opportunity. And it's this wave of greens that I think will be more comparable to reds. Lashes it up, but only one wave, oppor one turn opportunity on that wave. So I think red will probably get the best out of that exchange with his progression and power in that wave. Yeah, I mean, the, the punch of this wave is not gonna last quick, mm. right? You gotta get up, get involved early because we are seeing these waves kind of taper off pretty quick down the line so that end closeout section that we saw coming into play yesterday it's like a little bit more of a a rare resource today as we see Dimitri Papavasilou representing Team Greece see that section right there you you got to get up and deliver early today it just feels like that opening snap is really going to be your money turn. Elia like David Sassi in Israel in the lead, from Israel in the lead right now, and Tim El Elter. Now he's just jumped in the lead. Yeah, I like how Dimitri's wave before had a lot of flow from turn to turn. Probably not as power as we were seeing from as much power as we were seeing from red and green, but he didn't have a lot of those little transition bottom turns or speed maneuvers in the middle of each maneuver he was able to just flow from bottom turn to turn bottom turn to turn and and that was really nice the judges will like that as well but it is red who is having tim is having the best wave selection out there he just seems to be in the flow at the moment that tim elter representing team germany one of the most improved teams over the past four or five years, no doubt. Comes from Forte Ventura. He's not surfing, he's editing, he's playing chess. Loves to surf in the Canary Islands, and I think that's giving him a solid edge right now. It's kind of a deep, open ocean, punchy, over shallow reef, just like we're seeing here in Puerto Rico. And obviously he's looking very comfortable. That right there, he took advantage of that end closeout section, which again, you know, we're seeing a lot of surfers that if you don't get that first bottom turn and first snap done quick, you're going to be out on the shoulder. The wave is going to be over. So your synapses have to be firing on all cylinders. You've got to be quick to your feet. And I don't know if that, that last wave of red will go into his score line. It might, but I think what's significant about that is he caught this one under priority. And that just feels really good when you're out there, you're in the lead, and you're just still picking off these beautiful nuggets, surfing really strong on them. And for your competitors, when they're sitting out there trying to utilize priority and, and pick their wave strategically, and you have your surfer in red just picking off these absolute gems, seeing all that spray from behind, you're looking at that going, oh my gosh, he is just in a rhythm at the moment. So we see green. Ooh. Kind of in two minds there. Looked like he wanted to pull in and then decided not to at last minute and got stuck under the lip. He got pounded. Got pounded. Elia David Sassi, still in second place though. He'll make his way back into the line as we see Christian Pichardo representing Dominican Republic. They just had a hotly contested WQS event in Dominican. Uh, our neighbor to the west, I believe. Mm -hmm. We are here in Puerto Rico looking at this beautiful morning. 8.19 local time here, and I love that we are just right into it. Yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. And looking at the conditions today, we, like we were saying before, 
Surfers are opting for that left-hander as well on this break. Yesterday morning at this same time, we were seeing the barrel be a lot more of a factor for surfers hunting for that, a lot bigger of a factor when it came to the score line. And it's not, not, not out there, but not as prevalent this morning. A little bit more of a classic A-frame. Of course, the big news as we roll into the ISA 2024 World Games is those 14 Olympic slots on the line for men and for women, 14 total. So each and every surfer, if they've yet to qualify for Paris 2024, that's gotta be at the top of their mind. Of course, ISA medals hold weight of their own. And each surfer here doing it for themselves, doing it for their team, doing it for their nation. In this heat, Germany, Israel, Greece and Dominican Republic represented an international fair, as every heat is. And just this opening round alone, I mean, some of the biggest names in our sport have competed. Starting yesterday, we saw Gabriel Medina, Felipe Toledo, Kano Igarashi, Jack Robinson. First heat of the morning featured John John Florence. And there will be more to come. We've got Matthew McGillivray coming up later on. Wheeler Hasberg, Team Canada in the house. Rio in Nava and more and we are nearly work we've nearly worked our way through this immense round one of the men's women same story there Carissa Moore Aaron Brooks Molly Picklum I mean the, the the superstars have come to Puerto Rico to compete here in the ISA World Surfing Games and it's yet another I would say a record-breaking year sheerly for the the numbers we saw yesterday and i like that the judges have left some room at the top of the scale to really force these surfers to surf above and beyond and they're living up to all those expectations and more here's your schedule started off with an incredible parade of nations our opening ceremony sands of the world and you can't come to puerto rico without hearing the amazing music coming from every every corner of the street big stage set up on this boardwalk we're going to be rolling all the way through to march 3rd where we have we'll have our finals and then I'll tell you isa really knows how to throw a closing ceremony along with the party <laughs> yeah the best of them all i think the isa is a multifaceted organization We've got your isa world longboard championships coming up in april ISA World Junior Surfing Championship will head back to La Bocana in El Sunzal in El Salvador. And if SOP and paddleboard is your jam, Copenhagen, Denmark. Really all corners in September. of the world there. That's right. Yeah. I, and of course the World Surfing Games last year were held in El Salvador. Going back to El Salvador for the longboards and the juniors this year will be really fun. I'll be switching the mic out for the jersey for the longboard event coming up in April, representing Team USA for myself, which will be exciting. Yeah, basically the, to have an event of this magnitude, you need a lot of waves. You need uh, mm. two areas within, you know, within walking distance, let's say. So of course here in Puerto Rico and Arecibo, I mean, we've got incredible waves all up and down this coast. You need places to stay for a couple thousand people. I mean, this is a, a full-on production. And we've got an incredible staff behind the scenes making it all happen right now. we got Action Sports Productions giving us every angle possible. And you can't do it without the support teams that follow along with the surfers, making sure that everything's taken care of. And these are elite-level athletes that demand every available resource to help them surf their way towards success and at the moment right now the most successful surfer in the lineup is tim elter team germany followed by alaya david sassi from team israel dimitri papavasalu representing greece needs a four five four and christian pichardo from dominican republic needs a five six seven so everybody's still in the mix here with a minute 54 seconds to go these 20 minute heats absolutely fly by yeah they do they do, and I think for a lot of these surfers here, they'd probably be used to that four-person heat, 
uh, and that 20 minutes where it goes by so quick. Let's look at this replay of Blue utilizing that left on his backhand, trying to see some of these lefts do connect on the inside and offer that one more end section, but it seemed like he just couldn't make it over that hump to get back into the little shore break area. He's looking for that five, six, seven. So I don't think it'll go into what he needs. And it does go into his score line. It comes in at a 2.33. So doesn't really affect his situation. He's still looking for that score with a minute to go. But it is Tim who's just been absolutely in sync this morning. Whether he's had priority, under priority, that 593 was that wave that he actually got under priority. So he's gonna hold green off of this wave utilizing that first priority. Yeah, most likely a, a defensive strategy for Tim Elter. If you're unfamiliar with ISA competition, of course, the rules and regulations are all available for you on isasurf.org. But the basics are, in these opening rounds, top two surfers stay in the main round. Third and fourth place surfers will go to the Repishurch rounds, which have already been stacked with talent. Oh. See, Alaya David Sassi almost looking like he was Going for the backside big spin, but he goes down, and this could be last looks for Christian Pichardo representing Dominican Republic. Could have a good section here on the inside, hammers it down. Rides out clean, looking for a five, six, seven. Right behind him, Dimitri Papavasalu. Both those surfers would have need something impactful on the outside if they wanted to crack above that five point mark. A lot of mid rangers in this heat telling me that the judges are looking for a little bit more. But again, those numbers, they don't really matter at the end of the heat with first and second place staying on the main podium. Yeah, and like you were saying, it's a non-elimination heat. So the surfers that do end up in third and fourth will not be going far. They'll go into the repercharge round. It's looking like it's going to stay the same in that situation with red in first, green in second. Look at that. You can see why he won this heat. Sink. Well, this is where the story begins. It's going to be Tim Elter and Aliyah David Sassi moving through. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with more action from round one here at the ISA World Surfing Games. Puerto Rico, we call ourselves Boricua, a unique name honoring our island heritage and the vibrant spirit of our people. When you bask in the warmth of our beaches, Taste the love in our food. When you embrace the call of our adventures, you'll find that spirit in yourself. Dare to live every moment. Live Boricua. Tune in and turn up. This is the 2024 ISA World Surfing Games. We are live from Arecibo, Puerto Rico. Chris Cote here with Rachel Tilly. Another epic foursome hits the lineup. And you're about to witness four surfers with completely unique styles and strengths. The waves are here. It is glorious this morning, glassy foot or two overhead and absolutely rippable. Exactly what the surfers, the fans, the judges are looking for today. Peaks all up and down this beach, Rachel. This is the perfect morning to run the ISA World Surfing Games. We've got men round one, Heat 35, Matthew McGillivray, Wheeler Hasbrook, Jean Carlos Gonzalez, and Ellie Shama Beckford, Jamaica, Panama, Canada, South Africa represented. This right here is going to be a fun one to watch. I mean. You can ask for four different surfers here. Yep. And all four of them about to put on a show. 
I mean, picking a winner in this one, extremely difficult. I will say, though, you know, Matthew McGillivray coming off the North Shore as a WCT competitor is going to have a real strong start here. But Wheeler Hasberg, this young surfer representing Team, Tan Team Canada, just had a QS win as well. Yeah, and he's starting off strong, finding two maneuvers at the beginning of this heat. Finding that end section has been key, so that will be a nice opening score. And unfortunately, just can't stamp it out. That comes in as a 3-8-3, so it has something on the board, making it back out in fourth priority. All the other surfers don't have priority established. And it looks like Wheeler will just cruise straight into another one under priority, see what he can find. We saw Tim in the last heat get his highest score under priority. Oh my goodness. Why not? Go for it. Wheeler Hasberg has Olympic dreams representing Team Canada. And he is a, already a global citizen. He's only 18 years old. He was born in the Rocky Mountains in British Columbia. Grew up in Sayulita, Mexico. Has surfed already all over the world and has had some competitive success as well. As we mentioned, did just win a big qualifying series event down in Dominican Republic. But he's got his work cut out for him. He's got some veterans, including this guy right here. John Carlos Gonzalez, a.k.a. Oli, always a contender here in ISA competition. You know, he seems to be one of those surfers that just grinds his way to finals day each and every time he puts on an ISA jersey. What a great representative for Panamanian surfer as well, surfing as well. So now that Matthew is the only one who has not caught a wave, everyone else has caught a wave, Matthew is awarded that first priority and will sit out there and be selective. Now looking at the amount of waves that have been ridden, we have four waves ridden already. It's still only about four minutes into the heat, 16 minutes remaining. So while that can be a little bit unarming, unnerving when you're out there and everyone else has caught waves around you and you're sitting out there being patient, Matthew knows how to use priority, knows what he's looking for. So he's going to try and use that strategically and start his heat off with a bang. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's been about a wave a minute already this morning, and that's a good thing. Giving our judges a lot to chew on already today. Elishama Beckford, legend from Jamaica. Ripping down the line on his backhand. Love the look of this board under his feet right now. He's got a lot of spark Ooh. and energy going down the line. Fits in a third turn. Dreads just flying through the <laughs> sky as he rips his way down that right-hander. He looked absolutely electric on that wave. So much speed, so much, what was the word we were using? Zest. Yes. There's a lot of zest on that wave, a lot of electricity. He looks fired up and just amped to be attacking this heat this morning. He's one of these guys, he just looks cool on a surfboard. And of yeah. course, he's got all the skills, all the tricks, all the turns he needs to get those big numbers. Now it's just about getting the wave. So Wheeler Hasberg in lead for now, just with a 3.83 as his high mark. So plenty more to come with 14.45 to go. As our surfers wait for the next set to roll through, let's go down to Mitchell Salazar. In the second place. Four, 10 minutes and 35 seconds remaining. Here with Germany's Tim Elter, and it's not every day that I get to interview somebody that's taller than me, Tim. Congratulations, a great heat win. You come from the Canary Islands despite representing Germany. A lot of waves that are actually similar to a location like this. What kind of comfort did that bring you knowing that you were gonna surf here at Margata today? Um, the first time I came here for a training camp, I think it was in November, I realized that it's pretty much like home, like it's all flat and windy and then all of a sudden the wind turns and it just gets heavy, like I felt like home. Cool. So you're the young gun on the team, you have Leon and Dylan, but getting those guys in your corner, getting their expertise and having them in your ear all the time, what kind of knowledge have they brought so far in the first few days of competition? I've always been the, the younger one and looking up to them and uh, they really pushed me to get here. It took me ages to get here. Um, and seeing them compete yesterday uh, gave me a feel of what it was going to be like today. So yeah, actually I carried Leon yesterday just to look at, look at it from the water again. And I had a sure plan of what to do today. For you guys, there's obviously been a huge improvement when it comes to competition. Your rankings, you're one of the higher seeded nations now at the ISA World Surfing Games. The development 
obviously is one thing, but you guys coming from different parts of the world, how do you embrace each other knowing that you don't necessarily live within the country that you're representing either? Uh, it's tough sometimes to get them to get them all together, and especially for us to to stay in Germany is kind of tough, you know, because there's no ocean. For me, this time I actually prepared two weeks in Germany because I had a gym, a whole huge infrastructure around me with like coaches and stuff. But still, there's no surf, so it's it's tough to go to Germany and and train there because normally we're just all all over the world, and then we have to meet up somewhere, and the logistics are always kind of tough to get them all together. Anything you would like to say in German? Um, vielen Dank an alle, die mir zuschauen. Ich schicke ganz liebe Grüße an meine Mutter, meinen Vater und an meine Schwester. Um, und wir sehen uns in der nächsten Runde. Thank you, Tim. Yeah, Team Germany has been vastly improving each and every time they compete here in ISA competition. And almost a 10-point turn for Wheeler Hasberg. That was <laughs> such a solid effort. Got about 50% of the way through that one, and that had to feel good until it didn't. Wheeler Hasberg, however, still in the lead with that 3A3 and a 1. So again, nobody really cracking through that mid-range mark right now. A little bit surprised, Matthew McGillivray at the 12-minute mark, just with a 3.90. Yeah, he had that amazing opening turn, and unfortunately just could not back it up on that second turn. Got unstuck. Let's look at the replay. Look at the power, the zest. <laughs> it's my favorite word at the moment, apparently. And goes unstuck on that second maneuver. Looking green here. Looks like he just buried his front foot a little bit too much, a little too early, and got stuck underneath. I'm just really feeling the uh, momentum shift that we're seeing out here. It, it almost feels to me like everybody is surfing as if this is the last heat of their lives. You know, everyone's really putting it on rail, putting it on edge with 11.16 to go. You know, this is not an elimination round, but it doesn't feel like it. Yeah, and I think because of that, I mean, it's not often that we have gone to 11 minutes remaining with the highest score being a 3.93 and some of the best of the world's names in this heat. This has been a really surprising way this heat has gone down so far and i think everyone's maybe just they're trying to surf super radical to put something high big on the line but uh not able to complete it let's see what wheeler is able to do here so rides all the way through with three turns pretty impactful but I feel like, again, that will be in that mid-range as we see a split peak here. Elishama Shama Beckford <gasps> pulls in. Nice high oh. and tight. Quick tube ride. And a cut back. The wave dissipates underneath his feet. Ole Jean Carlos Gonzalez. He's got a good section to work with. Deep bottom turn. Nails the snap. Solid one-two punch combination for Jean Carlos Gonzalez representing Team Panama. That's more like it. Yep. I like when normally we have the commentator's curse, you know, you say something and then it ends up going the opposite way or, or the surfer falls or whatever, right as you're hyping them up. That was the opposite when we were saying, we're going to start seeing some action more and more throughout this back half of the heat. And then back to back, all four surfers get waves that will go into their score lines. The reverse curse. The reverse That's curse. That's the one we like. <laughs> so nine and a half to go. Now the judges have some work to do to catch up. Wheeler Hasberg had a pretty good wave. Jean Carlos Gonzalez had a really nice combination. We saw Ellie Shama get a quick little tube right. Here's that three turn combo from Wheeler Hasberg, Team Canada. Yeah, really releasing the fins on that first one, jamming it through, using that upper body for that power, and finds that solid finish coming back into the whitewash. That is a tricky section to finish out strong. We didn't get to see this wave of Matthew before. Oh my goodness, that is more like it from Matthew McGilvery. And it is not common that we see a left find some cover, or a surfer find some cover on the left. A quick in and out, but very strategic by white as we see blue take this one. Nice power. Nice variety in those two turns. Only two turns, but switch it up on both, so the judges will reward that accordingly. Yeah, McGillivray right there, somehow fitting two turns in a, a, a section that didn't really look like it was going to allow one. And I feel like for Ellie Shama Beckford, 
That was a nice, cute barrel. Probably felt really good. Mm. Don't think it's going to be a huge scourge because he wasn't all the way covered. And, you know, the, I feel like the judges, they don't want to see you. Mm. You're going to get barreled. They do not want to see you. They want to see you completely disappear and then come right out. Uh, either way, that was a feel-good way for Eli Shama. Could give him a little momentum burst. Wheeler Hasberg, a, a little bit of a glitch in the flow towards the end of the wave. But again, a nice three-turn combo. So for him, the score comes through a 4-4-3. Jean Colors Gonzalez, as expected, gets that 5-1-0, the highest single wave score. Nice, clean power surfing is going to get you big numbers any day in ISA competition. And for McGillivray, it was really that kind of miraculous flow. Two turns in the space of about three or four feet that got him the highest single wave score of this heat so far. That 5-4-3 for McGillivray gets him into the lead. Junk. Carlos Gonzalez drops to second. Hasberg third. Elishama Beckford with a 3-1-0 and a 2-1-0. So as expected, the quick little tube ride for Elishama was a feel-good wave. Not necessarily a point generator. He will remain in fourth place. So Team Jamaica hoping for a 5-9-3 for Elishama. Meanwhile, Wheeler to 4-6-1. Plenty of waves coming through here. But again, it's about getting active early. If you miss that first section pretty much a wasted wave yeah we definitely have been seeing that if you take off and don't maximize right off the back uh, you may as well cut out and and try again because these surfers if you miss that opening section a lot of especially on those right hands well and that left for Ali Shama on that last one they die out really quickly and the criticalness as we see Wheeler attempt for something critical not making it out but it's that opening section that is the most critical and doing powerful maneuvers in critical portions of the wave is where you find that large score both surfers within within the tube takeoffs both no goes for wheeler and ellie shama mcgillivray out the back john carlos next to him in that top priority spot the wheeler's been pretty busy in this heat. He's got five waves ridden. Ali Shama with four. And with five minutes and 50 seconds remaining, there's still so much time. So much can happen with this situation. It's not over till it's over, but it is Matthew McGilvery holding it down at the moment. Blue only needing a 424, but. Matthew having that single highest wave score of the 543. All he needs to do is replace that 3.9 and it ups the requirement for everyone else. So he's sitting in a good position, being in first and having that single highest single wave score as well. We're nearing the five minute mark. Things changing a little bit on the horizon. Sky darkening mm. just a tap. Here we go, Wheeler Hasberg pulling in, trying to find the exit but gets the clamp down instead. Now we're at five minutes to go. John Carlos Gonzalez, Oli out the back with priority. McGillivray hanging tight in second priority. He does have the 5-4-3, the highest single wave score so far. Now if Wheeler had, he's gone for two like that. If he comes out of those, he'll jump straight to the lead with that. So he is going for, a, for strong attempts Fortunately, getting unstuck. Those are exciting moments for us as audience, but I know his family's probably sitting at home stressing, going, come on, just get a wave and lock something in. See Bates white into that wave. Yeah, so Eli Shama will hand priority over to Wheeler. It's almost like we have two separate heats. We've got Wheeler versus Eli Shama, who have been kind of sharking around a little bit on the inside. Not necessarily taking the scraps, but you've got McGillivray and John Carlos Gonzalez, who are the veterans out in the lineup right now, and they're just posted up, waiting for the bigger set waves to roll through. Probably why they have the highest two numbers, the 543 and the 510. That's, and a, that's a testament to their experience as well. A lot of times you see the more confident and experienced surfers uh, not as busy throughout a heat. They're confident once they find that wave, they're patient for that one wave. They know what they're looking to stand up on and that once they do, they'll be able to perform. So it's all just about waiting, playing that patient game and being on the best waves of the heat. 
Now, not to say under priority, some of these smaller ones or these ones that have just gone under everybody have been detrimental to the way this the seedings have gone throughout the day. So three minutes remaining, everyone out the back. It's exciting to see what might happen here as we see Wheeler taking off. Wheeler identifies a section, nails it, throws the tail, goes down again. And with all these mid-range scores, and if you keep finding yourself at third or fourth priority, I don't see anything wrong necessarily with taking off on whichever wave comes your way. You see the paddle back out. It's only about 30, 40 seconds. Yeah. But sometimes exactly. you get yourself out of the rotation for those sets, and you're allowing Miguel Avre and John Carlos Gonzalez to really control the lineup right now. And you're kind of relegated to picking off those secondary medium-sized set waves that so far haven't really panned out. Wheeler's 4-4-3. Four, four, it's kind of a longer extended right. And for Eli Shama, he's really mostly been looking for lefts. He did get a fun little barrel ride, a 3-1-0. Now let's relook at that. Green had that little look. I think that would have also encouraged Eli Shama to paddle even harder and commit to it. And as soon as he took off on that right, it did not have the potential that he was hoping to find in it. That was a progressive maneuver, a lot of commitment there. Jamming that back foot, releasing those fins, stalling a little couple seconds at the top, but unfortunately coming unstuck with that as he tries to come down. Yeah, Wheeler's almost had two heat breaking turns. Yeah. If he would have made yeah. either one of those turns, we're looking at a six or a seven at least. He might have another opportunity, but he's got to give way to Eli Shama, who does have third priority. Eli Shama goes to the backside reverse. Oh my goodness. Nails it. Let's his spins re-engage, spins back around, but hoping for more here to the inside. Quick snap there again. Like the look of this board. Ooh, Not just the airbrush, but what it's doing under his feet. It really looks like he's got command and control. Blows the fins out on the inside again. Little bonus section there. I liked that bonus section of the left. All right, John Carlos Gonzalez uses his priority. Fend off Wheeler Hasberg. Gets the grab rail carve. It's a unique maneuver there for Oli. Again, it's just a nice two turn combo there. His first snap was vertical through tons of spray. As we see Matthew McGillivray, he activates. That leaves Wheeler out the back with priority. So McGillivray, a rare. Well, I don't want to say it's a mistake yet because there is only 20 seconds. So he did have to hold off Wheeler. I think knowing full well that one turn from Wheeler could be the difference maker. But with 10 seconds left, will a wave come through in time for our surfer in the top priority spot? Canada's Wheeler Hasberg. Here we go. One more opportunity. Two, one. Hands leave the rails. He's up. Snaps to start. He's got to hope for some momentum behind this wave. He gets the big oh. turn there. Almost. So three near strikes for Wheeler Hasberg. But at the end of that heat, it was the patience, the veteran knowledge that paid off for Jean Carlos Gonzalez and Matthew McGillivray. For now, your one and two spots going to red and blue. Wheeler Hasberg, Team Canada, and Ellie Shama Beckford, third and fourth. They will get another shot to compete and stay in this contest via the Orepa Shards round. That's yeah. been absolutely stacked and loaded with incredible surfers. Connor O'Leary is in the Orepa Shards. That just gives you an indication of how deep and talented the field of surface we have this year is. Absolutely. And we are still waiting for that last score of white of Eli Shama. So it will be interesting to see how that comes through. He needs a 593. He did show a lot of progression and he did get that bonus section at the end. But comparing that to the single highest wave score of Matthew McGilvery being a 543, how does this compare? He got it's a progressive. It it's is progressive. Cool. He got a little bit stuck at the top there. I think the judges really would have loved to see him drive through. And this wave is long, but a lot of time was spent kind of trying to connect these sections together, staying on that top bit of the wave. This was a nice final turn. You know, I love this good kind of skateboard yeah. style surfing. 
but did it show speed? Did it show power? Did it show flow? Those are kind of the three mm, words that exactly. you didn't see much of on that wave. It was progressive. It was radical. It was fun to watch. But at the end of the day, you got to really mix all those elements like Matthew McGillivray did in that heat. So another solid effort from all four surfers in the lineup. We're going to take a quick break, but we will be back with more action. We're going to welcome Otto Flores into the booth. You're watching the 2024 ISA World Surfing Games. We'll be right back. Puerto Rico, we call ourselves Boricua, a unique name honoring our island heritage and the vibrant spirit of our people. When you bask in the warmth of our beaches, when you taste the love in our food, when you embrace the call of our adventures, you'll find that spirit in yourself. Dare to live every moment. Live Boricua. Welcome back, surf fans. You're watching the 2024 ISA World Surfing Games. We got another big one in the lineup now. Men's round one, heat 36. Rio Nava, Bruce Virgo, Sebastian Oyarte, and Benjamin Stuller. Slovakia, Uruguay, Ecuador, and Japan. Now that right there is an international mix you'll only see in ISA World Surfing Games competition. This is going to be a fun one. We've got some names we've seen before. We've got some new names coming across the board. And we've got a special guest from right here in Puerto Rico, Chris Cote. And this is Otto Flores, an absolute legend of Puerto Rican surfing. And I know that uh, this must make you very proud to see your waves, this beautiful area on display for the world to see. Puerto Rico is shining just as much as the surfers in the lineup. Well, I got to give more thanks to the island itself. It, it opened up the contest with amazing waves. Uh, we've seen every single talent, no matter where you're from in the world. The best surfer in the world is here, and uh, the most enthusiastic surfers of all the world are here. So um, I, I want to thank Puerto Rico for showing its true colors. The waves have been incredible. And uh, there's already second rounds coming around. There's people in the repercharge. It's very exciting, and uh, yeah, we're stoked. These ISA events are fast and furious, and we're right back at it. Starting off with your surfer in blue. Rights and lefts today. So yesterday, pretty much predominantly the rights were getting the biggest scores. So far, we haven't seen any of these lefts really give, you know, a lot of opportunity to these riders, but you know how these heats go, Otto. I mean, one heat is going to be one way. The next heat will be completely different. So we'll see what we have here. And Another big start for all of these surfers in the lineup, Rio Anaba. Yeah, Rio from Japan. I believe he qualified already for uh, the Olympics. And um, yeah, today a smaller swell, northeast conditions opens up the left a little more. Yesterday we saw more of a westerly swell, and that's why we weren't seeing the guys go left that much. For my taste, uh, obviously the right is the predominant wave. You know, you go deep from that left peak to the right, and the more scoring potential as we could see here surfer in white um yeah and the conditions holding on today for what is uh the second day as we see benjamin staller in white from sweden slovakia so a lot of different countries chris here today and uh the waves are still here here is sebastian olarte from uruguay it's hung up on that backside snap there so i mean it looks so fun to surf, but these waves can be tricky in the context of a 20 minute heat, right? We've, we've seen surfers that they haven't activated early on, got right up and right into the lip. The wave was a waste. So it's all about getting out there and getting into it, getting to your feet quick and really maximizing that out outside section as we see Bruce Virgo from Team Ecuador. So this is exactly what we're talking about. Deep bottom turn, straight up into the lip, utilizes the best section of that wave, and then it dies off pretty quickly under his feet. So, you know, it, again, even though he was so quick to do that turn, 
maybe left a little bit on the table just in terms of the critical part of that wave. Easier to say from here in this chair. But this wave is really fast. I mean, it really kind of jumps up from deep water. Oh, you know? a fun fact, the second deepest part of the world is right there, the Puerto Rican Trench. And uh, that's why these waves have so much power. I think wave selection today is super key. It's important for the guys to really pick the eyes out of these waves. And almost looking for a closeout looking wave might be the scoring wave. As uh, I think we have an interview from the winner of that last heat with Mitchell Salazar. Here with South Africa's Matthew McGillivray. Nominee for the best smile of the event so far. Matt, congratulations. A grindy heat and a super competitive one too. Ollie had a great score. Wheeler is coming off of a QS win. How serious were you taking this matchup in the opening round? Yeah, um, I mean, I surfed against Wheeler last year and I think he smoked me in El Salvador. And um, yeah, just everyone was ripping out there. So I knew I had to try to be selective with my waves. It's easy to get a wave, which is a bit flat out there. And I haven't spent much time on this wave. So I was a bit confused on like what a good wave looked like. Um, but yeah, I was happy to get through that heat. And yeah, everyone's surfing so well. So I'm stoked to be here. How serious do you need to take these events knowing that not only are they Olympic qualifiers, but there's a lot of people that may not necessarily reside in their country that they're representing too. A good amount of these people live outside and surf great waves on often uh, often occasions too. Yeah, it, it hap I mean, I've been seeing it so much. Um, and a lot of countries are putting so much um, like money and effort into their teams. And it's, it's really impressive to see just how big this event is and how much it means to everyone. Um, and yeah, Team South Africa, we here. And, we want to show the world um, what we've been working on, and uh, I feel like Puerto Rico has got some good waves to offer, so I think this was a good call from ISA to bring the event here. It's pretty cool. Well, you've done it so far. All three of you guys are into main round two. You're in the middle of the pack when it comes to the age group on the men's side. Jordy, the leader, obviously, but you have Jose, who's younger. Talk to me about your role, because you have to take advice from Jordy, but you also need to give it to Jose when he needs it. Yeah, it's so so fun hanging out with Jordy and Jose, and um, I mean, Jordy's been the guy I've looked up to, my, my biggest inspiration since I started surfing. So it's so cool to be, yeah, sharing a room with him at ISAs and just learning. Yeah, like he's got so many stories to, to like, so much stories and so so much knowledge to impart. So I'm, I'm always listening, and then Jose is just nonstop laughter with him. You know, so many jokes and. He's fun to hang out with, so we got a good team. We all gel together, so it's, it's fun to be here. It's fun to be at a team event. Anything you want to say in Spanish now? I know you've been practicing a little bit. Uh, gracias, muchas gracias, uh, Puerto Rico. Uh, loco. <laughs> That's good enough. Thanks, Matty. Thanks, guys. Uh, roughly translated there to thank you, Puerto Rico. Matthew McGillivray. Uh, he is just an excellent ambassador for South African surfing, for surfing in general. He is a hell of a stuntman as well. Daredevil, the man huh? jump, jumps off everything, base jumper, parachutist, skydiver, whatever you want to call it. He is into the main round of two. So 11 minutes to go here. Aristibo, Puerto Rico. Something for everyone. This boardwalk was absolutely packed yesterday. And I'm sure we're going to see more of that today. Sick little skate park right there on the sand. I mean, anytime you can have a skate park with a wave like that next to it, that is good living. That is That Boricua is your dream, right? right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, live Boricua, huh? Like, um, yeah, incredible. This coastline, Arecibo, this town has so much to offer. Amazing potential for waves. It's basically mimicking a little bit of what the North Shore is. There's peaks, like, right along all this uh, malecon, how we call it, the seawall. And um, my mom was born here, and yesterday I got to spend the day with my mom and my kids um, in this beautiful, you know, competition. We're so proud to have the whole world, you know, check this out. And um, not the norm, you know, we usually go to the Northwest Coast. We visited San Juan last time the ISA was here. But we thought that having waves of consequence for a qualifier, for a, a scenario like what Paris 2024 is going to be, was the right call. And I think Arecibo just... Um, ticked all the boxes. You know, out of some of the big famous names 
of surfers that have come from Puerto Rico, Jorge Machucas, Carlos Cabrero, Juan Ashton, Edwin Soros, uh, that first generation that really went out into the world, put Puerto Rico on the map, on the WSL Championship Tour via the ASP back then. You know, that seemed to be the first wave. And then we had you and a lot of other surfers took a little bit different path. You had photographers come down to you and we, see, we saw tons of photos of you and all your friends standing tall in barrels right here in Puerto Rico and around the Caribbean. So that kind of generational shift, what were some of the waves that you brought photographers to and kind of, I guess, put Puerto Rico on the map in a different way and more of an artistic free surfing type of way? Well, for, for my scenario, it was awesome to have um, you know, a place to come home to with waves of this caliber. Um, I traveled the world, you know, I obviously had really good experiences in Tahiti, which I hold dear to my heart, Hawaii. But it was awesome to come home to my patio and, and to get waves of consequence. As we see here, surfer in yellow from Ooh. Ecuador. Nice little first move off the top right there. Nice rail turn. And um, yeah, here we see the Japanese surfer in red. Also using a nice little carve off the top. First hit right there. You got to get really technical here, Chris, and you got to choose the wave correctly. Like I was saying before, it's almost like you got to pick that little one that has that wedge or that little looking like a closeout. But those are the waves that kind of breathe into each other and, and you could get that maximum wave uh, scoring potential. We saw John John pick some good waves this morning and uh, yeah, the sections are out there. You just got to pick the right one. Nice bottom turn there for Sebastiano Larte, but that's all that was on offer for that one. So Ria Nava with that sparky first turn. Bruce Burgo as well. So Uruguay and Ecuador, let's say friendly rivals. Yeah. Central South America contingent. You got Japan with a lot on the line as well. And it's always great to see surfers from rising surf nations. Benjamin Stoller representing Slovakia. Not the first country that I would think of yeah. <laughs> to have surfers, but that's what makes the ISA so special is we really reach out all over the world. And even if you're you know, if you part of that local scene, if you have heritage in a, a, a rising surfing country like Slovakia, you, know, you can tap into that, bring your flag down here and start the roll. You know, again, it's about these waves of talent coming through. Maybe there are young surfers who live in Slovakia right now watching Benjamin Stoller thinking, well, I wanna do that. I wanna go to Puerto Rico and compete. That's what it's all about for our developing surf countries. Yeah, and you know, Puerto Rico's got some beautiful, you know, surf history with the ISA. 1968 uh, World Championships w would be the World Surfing Games now. People like Nat Young, David Nueva, the great Jorge Machuca, they were involved in that competition. And one that really struck close to my heart was the 1988 World Titles here at Surfers Beach in Aguadilla. I was 12 years old. and. That was the pinnacle of me wanting to be a surfer. When I went into that competition and had to walk a mile from gate five and I got to see Chris Brown, Fabio Gubea, and all these international teams, like, you know, there was names like Juan Ashton competing in that, Rafi Lompart, also Pedro Rangel, and to see that international community come together, it was an epic party, and, but it was also the surf community, the international surf community coming together. And you see the flags, the colors, the camaraderie. And uh, that really sticks out in my mind of one of the reasons why I chose this lifestyle. You know, I, I kind of took a different path as we, as we were speaking, but um, I've always been a surf fan and that's why I'm here. I love the sport. Um, I'm pretty analytical about it. And um, yeah, you know, what baseball is to fans, surfing is the sport that I want to see and talk about. But with five minutes and 48 seconds to go, surfers reset in the lineup. And Rio Inaba in control for now. He's got a 4.83 and a 4. Some peaks rolling through. Otto, I know that uh, water safety is also paramount when you have waves of consequence on every coast here in Puerto Rico. So we see Sebastian Olarte trying to get around this section. He does. Vertical up into the lip. That was definitely the most critical section of this wave. Fits in a second. Nicely done there for Sebastian for Team Uruguay to really maximize the potential of that wave. And that was kind of like what you had said. More almost a, of a closeout running fast down the line. He had to get up and in that lift to give himself enough speed to get around that section. But definitely not child's play out here. I mean, these are waves of consequence. It's shallow, the reef is sharp. As a water safety expert yourself, you know, where, where does 
Puerto Rico fit in with Hawaii, with Fiji, with Tahiti in, in the sense of, I guess, danger? Yeah, I think water safety picked me. You know, we don't have a lifeguarding system here in Puerto Rico. And I think the, through Bragg, through the big wave assessment group, um, I started doing it because we have a close friend of ours, Cyan Malowski, who passed. And, you know, through Cole Christensen, Ramon, Greg Long, and, and uh, a bunch of my peers, they, they started this organization and I felt compelled to to start training and bringing that kind of ethos or, or that kind of knowledge to Puerto Rico. We've been doing it for about six years now and, and we run summits um, every other year. And uh, we've actually gathered a, a beautiful water safety team here. Rincon Water Safety was born out of Bragg. And uh, yeah, we have operators and people that watch out. But the most important thing is that in the lineup, we have a language, we have a system. When somebody gets hurt, you do the hand signals and all that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, we've definitely mitigated a bunch of the injuries and also saved some lives while we're at it. And since we don't have a lifeguarding system, I thought it was necessary to bring that to the community. Absolutely, especially when you have heavy waves <laughs> on every coast. And here we go, Rio Inaba, current leader, baiting left, deep bottom turn, straight up into the lip. Goes vert on his forehand, underrated for how difficult that turn actually is. Love the tight, compact style Inaba brings with him. Super powerful. That could replace a four-point ride. So with 3.20 to go, the judges will lock in that number for Rio. And I'm looking. This is a, a pretty expert wave. Really fast, barreling on the takeoff. So you see a Sebastian Olarte getting onto the open face, riding a bit of a longer board. And I'm cool with that. It looks good under his feet. It's a little it different. It does. I think he's using it because he knows that there's power behind that wave. And that's one thing I wanted to mention. If you take off where the wave is pushing, it almost doesn't matter that it looks that closed out. You have the speed. And if you have the knowledge, you can belt that thing really hard, as we've seen most of those world-class competitors do it. And um, yeah, the scores are out there to be had for sure. Well, this is very exciting. We're going to make the switch. We're going into round two of the women. And we've got some superstars coming up. Daniela Rosas, Daniela Pauas, Nadia Aristobi, Delfina Morassini, Uruguay, Spain, South Africa, and Peru represented in a big way coming up in the next heat. Exciting to make the switch too. We're going to have the women and the men switch podiums as well. So 2.15 to go. Another quick question about Puerto Rico. So again, I'm looking up and down this coast right here in Arecibo. These all look like pretty expert level waves. Are there fun, easy beginner waves around Puerto Rico? Well, I got a good insight. We got a hundred miles of waves okay, on the so North Shore. That tells me yes. <laughs> so yes, we do. We have fun right hand point breaks. We have a lot of lava rock, like big rocks and waves that break off those rocks. And uh, there's lefts, there's rights, there's beach breaks, there's everything. But the characteristic is, um, you know, waves over reef, and which we have that trench down in the back of, uh, you know, the island, all these powerful waves, but there is a plethora of waves, fun waves for kids, beginners, and also experts. So all levels can enjoy um, our Boricua surf scene. And it's pretty cool also to hear about some of the elite level surfers making their first trip to Puerto Rico. I feel like through the 70s, through the 80s, I mean, this was an absolute hot spot. 90s and into the 2000s, it seemed to get a little bit more spread out. But, you know, Gabriel Medina citing that this is his first time down here. The smile on his face told me everything. He settled right into that Boricua lifestyle. Uh, so it must be pretty cool to kind of open the gates, right? And I guess, I don't want to say reintroduce Puerto Rico to the world because we've had a lot of ISA events. Of course, a lot of amazing surfers every year seem to burst onto the international scene. But it, it must be a pretty cool source of pride to have guys like Medina come down here and just immediately love this place well we if you know medina and you know his surfing you know this place fits him like a ring and a beautiful finger you know like it's it's like you almost kind of feel the ditters that you want to see him surf john john also looked really comfortable i had a chat with jack robinson and ethan ewing and they're, they're just baffled they're like nobody told me about this <laughs> and uh it's a it, it's not a secret but it's a well-kept uh, little jewel that that we have here and like I said, we're welcoming, we're loving people, and uh, it's exciting to see the world's best come here and uh, show their talent. And uh, I love the fact that it's kind of natural. It just happens naturally. Um, looking at them surf Malgara, it just seems like everybody was comfortable. And 
you know, people like Gabriel, people like John, you know, they are the epitome of surfing. They are the best surfers in the world. And just to hear him talk about Puerto Rico on that night, pretty exciting. No doubt. Well, we will see more from Gabriel Medina, Felipe Toledo, John John Florence, and the rest of the elite as we are finally through round one of the men and what a round it was. Some of the biggest names in surfing making their way to the main podium and some huge upsets. Our repechage field is stacked. But do not go anywhere. We're going to flip the script. We're going to go over to round two of the women. The best of the best have come to Puerto Rico to compete for Olympic slots, for ISA medals, and for the joy and love of surfing. We'll be right back with more of the 2024 ISA World Surfing Games. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the action. We just saw Rayo Inaba, qualified Paris 2024 Olympic surfer for Team Japan. Smash it. Small scores across the board. But some of those scrappy heats are the most enjoyable to watch because someone will have to come out on top. And there's a lot of technique that goes in behind the scenes to be able to make it happen. So well done to Rayo. Shannon Hughes in the booth alongside Otto Flores to call the action as we now switch into our women's side of the draw. Daniela Rosas now up and riding. In main round two, heat number one, great snap to start. And just looking for any more clean face to get onto. Hasn't quite gotten there, and it looks like that wind has started to come into play, Otto. We'll see how much it really factors into. Yeah, lineup. I think there's a little bit of cloud cover. I think we're going to see some rain um, starting today and a little bit throughout tomorrow as we see the field of competitors. Um, it's pretty interesting to see. You know, we made the decision to run the, the women's in Malgada, give them the opportunity to have the stronger, the, the, the highlighted break, as, as we would call it, in, in this competition. But um, they had a great day of competition yesterday at El Pico, and I've been kind of sneaking a peek to that second round. And uh, uh, waves are on fire. People are surfing really good. Like you said, a couple of mid-range scores. I believe it's uh, just uh, a lack of wave reading a little bit from the competitors, but nonetheless, they're adapting. Danielle Rosas up and riding again. So this wave giving her a little bit more to work with. A couple great wraps as she comes through to the inside section. Carves it back quickly and now tags the finish. So that's going to be the sort of rhythm she wants to kick off her heat with. 17 minutes still on the clock. She started out with a two-point ride on the board for Team Peru. And Daniela is really one of the... Sh well, this heat's very stacked given the strength of each competitor that's within it. But for Daniela, she's had quite a few accomplishments in her young career. Now Dan Danielle Powis out of, uh, actually, that is Nadia Aristarbe from Spain. I know yes. because of her style. Yes. So we'll have a, a bit of an issue just with the colors there yep. um, on our screen. But we do have Nadia wearing the green, and we'll have Danielle Powis of South Africa wearing the blue jersey. And then we have Delfina Morosini out of Uruguay wearing the white but yeah, um, yeah. Nadia spent some time with the with the Vast team uh, a little bit early on. They had uh, 
a very, very challenging swell, and they were surfing incredible out here. So it's really interesting to see the time that the teams put in, how um, their coaches and their strategies come into play. But it's also really fun to see the girls uh, at Malgara get an opportunity to serve that premium break. I think we have an interview coming up with a winner of that last heat. Um, come right back at you guys. We'll go down to Rio Nava with Mitch Salazar. Rayo, congratulations. A scrappy heat. It was tough out there. Conditions change. How were you able to adapt and read the ocean in the moment? All right, green. Yeah, the waves change are out, so, so South I'll just try to and catch more wa many waves and Team just keep busy. And, a uh, God, I got a couple White scores. With a well organized zero. team as always, White but most right importantly, a lot of media yeah. attention on you guys here at this event. Kanoa yesterday had a ton of people from Japan not only getting media attention, but also a lot of questions from the fans. How have you been able to manage that pressure? Already right, qualified right, yourself, too. Yeah, I have a lot of pressure, <laughs> but um, the team's great, so um, I'm pretty be the second comfortable here. Team Uruguay. And you're surfing great too. Anything you want to see in Japanese to uh, people back home? Eh,と、ま、今回オリンピック多分これで決まったと思うんですけど。ま、このまま個人的にもメダル目指して頑張りたいと思う。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。<laughs> Thanks so much. Great to hear from Rayo. Very excited to see him on his journey towards the Olympic Games later this year as we take a look now at Delfina from Team Uruguay. Beautiful rail work so far as she carves down the line. And she'll kick out calmly with a quick paddle to get herself back into the conversation. So that's going to be a great way for her to start off her campaign. We've got Nadia now. Sorry, uh, Daniela. Danielle Howis up and riding. She's uh, a South African surfer? Yep, yeah, the South African surfer goes in for that final turn. So we do have, just for those of you tuning in, uh, looking at the scoreboard that we've got up on the screen, there is a jersey color difference. So surfer in blue is actually Danielle Powis, and surfer in green is Nadia Aerostarbe. So at the moment, it's Nadia that's sitting in that first place position. She had that five-point ride in the green jersey just a moment ago that was a really solid wave. Yeah, it's a really s solid wave, and it goes to show the, the time that she put down here. You know, those guys have surfed this place in, in all types of conditions as we see her on screen again. Surfer in green goes straight off the top. Another little section for her, and our heat leader just doing really well, in good rhythm, in good tempo. And one thing I'm noticing um, is that they're really utilizing that inside section today. They're really trying to com combine and complete kind of a longer wave this wave the characteristic is obviously at the peak but these guys are milking it all the way to the end is that you know that inside section is that changing a little bit compared to what we were seeing yesterday due to it being a little smaller yeah and also the northeast is also filling that out like yesterday it was a little more intense and just with the west swell it just kind of focuses on top of the point but now that we got a northeast swell it kind of rolls to that second little bowl in the bottom and we've seen some scores really benefit from that second little section. So due to the Northeast swell, which is the one swell that you like here, um, yeah, they're capitalizing on those for yeah, sure. It's been looking really nice. It's great to see those little stand-up sections and the surfers able to get that, that nice finishing touch on the end of their waves. Let's take a look at the replay here, Otto. What are your thoughts on this last wave of Nadia? Well, she started off really well, combined it right there, kind of hit a little bit of mismatch right there, but worked out white water. Unfortunately, I think this last section, she kind of slipped out of it, but she's definitely picking the right waves in the right section, and this was the move that uh, will probably give her a healthy score. She's our heat leader at the moment, and uh, yeah, for a second score, this is uh, great for her to build a good campaign. So Nadia putting some great work in. She's already got that five-point ride on the board. She's now bettered it with a 6.17, sitting in the leading position. And sitting in second is Daniela Rosas, Olympian from Tokyo 2020. She's a former Pan American gold medalist. And she'll be one of those surfers that we're gonna keep a close eye on this week to see if she's able to find her qualification. Jessica Anderson there for Team Chile, getting ready to paddle out in her next heat, talking to Ixa, one of our Chilean beach commentators. Yeah, Pichi Lemo in the house for sure. Um, one thing that I've noticed, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at the weather and we looked at it pretty closely this morning and 
um, this could be actually good. If, if we get these showers and we get these little storms, it might glass it off for the rest of the day. So that, ca that could be good news for everybody in the competition. Um, also, we're seeing a bit of a decrease in the swell, as you were asking before, and we're just capitalizing and wanting to get the girls out in Malgara, get them on the, you know, the premium wave of the contest. And uh, yeah, we're just starting this round to see what it'll lay out for us in the day. Yeah, it's great to be able to have multiple venues at this event this year. We've got three different surf spots specifically that can be surfed and likely will be surfed between all three of them. And of course, with the ISA, we're constantly just changing up different divisions to surf across each of those podiums throughout the week. So today we've swapped the men's and the women's on the podiums that they're surfing in comparison to yesterday. We've got surfer getting ready to paddle out for that next heat in the white jersey, Kande Rosano from Nicaragua. She had a really incredible run at the World Junior Championships just a couple months ago in Brazil. So exciting to see her now taking on the Opens Division, which she's been doing since she was about eight years old. Her family has been in the conversation with ISAs for the majority of her life at this stage. That's really cool, and I think that, that that's a lot of uh, what's happening here in the future as we see our Panamanian surfer as well, Alonso, getting ready for her heat. And, uh, yeah, I think um, Olympic implications and qualifications are really um, catering to having all these countries, no matter what level, participate in the ISAs. We're seeing world champions, current world heat leaders at the championship level, and also countries developing their Olympic teams and Pan American teams in this ISA. So it's awesome to see. We're seeing actually the whole surfing field come into Arecibo here to get a chance to uh, get a better future in their sport. Yeah, well, like you were saying, you know, you've got some of those up and coming nations, those developing nations competing against the top in the world. And that's exactly what we will be seeing with Molly Picklum out of Australia paddling out in the next heat fresh off of a second place finish at Pipeline and then a win at Sunset. So she's currently number one in the world in the WSL uh, championship tour. So that's going to be exciting to see her hitting the lineup. Did see that she was down there supporting with the Australian team, the Eric Hungies in their green jerseys, their green t-shirts and yeah. uh, supporting the guys earlier today. So she'll be out in the next heat. Yeah, it's been incredible to see uh, the momentum that these younger surfers have, you know, as it was also a pinnacle for me to see how the women surfing at Pipeline and then seeing those heats at sunset. But uh, more than anything, I, I, I can see the will and the, the hunger that these competitors have. You know, Molly Picklin, obviously excited, but also owning it. You know, she's, she's like, this is how hard I work and, and I'm going to have fun getting there. So it was awesome to see her yesterday in the water and, and can't wait to see her in the next heat. So we're down to eight minutes on the clock in the current heat. 20 minute heats across the board throughout today. And we've got some repositioning now of the women that are out there. Surfer in red has first priority, Daniela Rosas, sitting with a three and a 2.0 as her high scores. Requirements are pretty low for uh, third and fourth place positions as our heat leader, Nadia, takes a dive. And she was sitting under lower priority, so kind of fine for her to just take her pick of what's in front of her. Not, uh, Danielle now up and riding for Team South Africa. She's had the opportunity this past year to compete as a wild card on the WSL Challenger Series event in Belido. She's had her chance at that kind of top level. She's been competing at the ISAs now for a really long time as well. And it's been great to see her continue to kind of grow in, in the strength of her competitive strategies. I mean, out of uh, the region of the world that she does. There's such a healthy um, grassroots level movement of competitive surfing in South Africa. There's pretty much an event on any every day or every single weekend and uh, a very active uh, competitive community there. Yeah, I've had the good fortune of visiting South Africa. They have incredible waves. The country is one of the most beautiful places. It's so alive with animals and all that. But the surfing culture is rich and obviously has a history you know from sean thompson jordy and and all that new breed that's coming out it's an ex exquisite place to go i gotta say so we just saw away from delphina now we're taking a look at daniela she'll fall on that second turn had quite a bit of speed coming out of the first delphina on the left was looking really nice found a little bit of a cleaner wrap and 
She's chasing down a 2.58. So we'll see if Daniela is able to increase on the two point ride and put a little bit more pressure on the field. But for someone of her caliber, we'd be, you know, we know that she's looking for a wave that's gonna offer that five point plus ride. You know, she's wanting to get herself a five or a six on the board right now to really solidify her position in this heat. Most definitely, most definitely. She wants to pick the eyes out of that one and, and get those low threes and twos out of her scoreboard to solidify that kind of low scoring heat um you know nadia definitely just going ahead feeling comfortable in the waves here in puerto rico and i do have to attribute that to a lot of the teams that came did their homework and saw these in all kinds of conditions it could be surprising if you just show up a couple of days before get a windy heat or get like get to surf margara where you never surfed before and just to know the knowledge of where to sit, what to do, probably talk to the locals and feel the spot is, is something very important. And I think uh, Nadia spent a little bit of time in Puerto Rico and kind of got her feet wet and definitely looks like she has a, a good handle on this heat. Yeah, she's, she's put herself in a solid position, a 6.17 and a 5.00. She's also been one of those surfers in the last couple seasons that's been Pretty close to uh, WSL Championship Tour level qualification with her Challenger Series results. She's a name that just continues to get more consistent. The whole Spanish team has been in that conversation, um, which is really exciting to see because they've got a long history of great competitive surfers, um, but they have yet to kind of have those breakaway spots on the women's side and the women's uh, tour. And so for Nadia, for uh, a couple of the other women, in that conversation, they've been right there. You can see right here how challenging it can be to get in and out of um, just even the water for where it is. It's a really small little keyhole. It's yeah. not a, a large amount of space where there's some sand under your feet before you end up right on those rocks. And those yeah, you gotta be strategic. You know, you, you have to use the current to your advantage. Use that little scent, see how Molly just coming back and smart, smart decision. I did that yesterday a couple of times and uh, yeah, you just got to pick the eyes of that little keyhole and patiently get out there. Um, the current does take you out as soon as you start swimming, and there's a nice little rip that you can kind of be part of that flow, but it could get tricky coming in and out of Margarita for sure. Yeah, it seems like going out, at least once you're kind of in the water, you can let that rip just take you out the way that it will naturally flow into the lineup, but getting back in again. We yeah. saw yesterday that one of the guys um, yeah. had jumped on the back of a ski just yeah. to kind of get pulled around because he just couldn't quite get himself into the right position. Yeah, it's really hard to fight that current for sure. We've got Delfina now up and riding. She's chasing a 4.14. We're down to three minutes on the clock. That was a really nice looking snap. I like that she went, you know, really dynamic by getting that tweak in the tail. Unfortunately, that board looked like it just flipped. Yeah, looked and like those... a little bit of the rail caught right at the end of that turn. Those can be dangerous moments too, especially when that white water is kind of converging together if a board slips off. Yeah, most definitely. Going a little bit back to uh, Nadia, like um, Aritza Ramuru contacted me and we helped him with a little bit of their lodging and stuff. And I think all those guys with experience, especially in Spain, we saw a very dominant performer in the World Juniors. And I think as a team, as a whole, they're really putting energy in, into that team and using those older guys to manage and, and, and really guide this new uh, breed of Spanish surfers for sure. Yeah, it's so nice to have a surfer like Aritz within that conversation. The experience that he's had, you know, across all levels of competitive surfing, whether he's still spending that time in the jersey or, you know, kind of taking on that coaching role with some of those younger surfers as well. It's always awesome for those nations that have that kind of older figure to be able to rely on yeah that guidance you know that experience obviously and how to circumnavigate um a lot of people don't understand that you know flying around the world getting on planes and and you know cars hotels and and all that stuff it comes it becomes really intricate and if you're managing that yourself that also adds to the stress. So having the experience of people that have been in a country that can call somebody that's from there, that you could have guides or people. And I think that's more and more becoming uh, a frequent job for all the countries. Like people do become part of these events and, and host these. And I myself have families around the world that took us on. So um, 
it's really cool to have that almost like that father figure that helps you guide the teams and and puts the experience and kind of cuts a lot of that time that you would spend already knowing all the stuff that's in hand. We're down to the final minute in heat number one for women's round two. It's the first that the women are getting the opportunity to surf in a jersey with only four or th you know three other surfers out there if you're one of the four. Taking a look at Nadia here at Magara. On her backhand, powerful, clean approach, two-turn combination. She's now gonna redirect off the left. Has a little look down the line, decides it's not worth her time to try and fight with that for anything else. All that big scoring potential was done at the start. And we're down to 30 seconds on the clock. Just a reminder to the audience tuning in, of course, if you're Danielle's family or Nadia's family, you'll know exactly uh, who those surfers are in the water, but it's actually Dan uh, Nadia Aristabe who's wearing that green jersey. She's currently sitting in that leading position and she just dropped a 783 as we see our surfer in blue, uh, Danielle. Just with a quick kick in and out, we can see that those names are starting to change on the graphic on the screen, and there we go. Danielle Powis down in third, wearing the blue jersey for Team South Africa. Unfortunately, just couldn't find that rhythm. Delfina now up and riding, possibly just before the buzzer. She's only chasing a 4.67 to get herself into an advancing position. That was a sharp, dynamic turn as she comes through to the inside section. She's just kind of keeping her eyes on the rocks now in front. And we will have a score to drop through for that last wave of white with Nadia Aristarbe out of Spain taking a convincing win, the 617 was bettered by a 7.83 on that final two turn combination. Daniela Rosa is currently sitting in that second place position. And it looks like, I'm just waiting to see if we've got a score to come through for Delfina. She may have been up just after the buzzer, maybe even moments later with her hands leaving the rail. And the rules are that your hands have to leave the rail, meaning you're on your feet before that final buzzer sounds. So it looks like our results may be official. We'll give you that update when we return from the commercial break. But another great heat. Thanks so much, Otto, for joining us. My we'll pleasure. have you in the booth more throughout the week. And when we return, Barton Lynch, the 88 World Champ, will join me for the call. here in Arecibo, Puerto Rico, and we just see Nadia Aristarbe take out a convincing win with a 14-point heat total over Daniela Rosas in that second place position. Delfina and Danielle heading into the repercharge rounds for Uruguay and South Africa. They'll have another opportunity, possibly even surfing later on today. And we're into main round two on the women's side of the draw. These are the first few heats being surfed for the women at Magara. They've been surfing at El Pico from yesterday. And we're now into heat number two with Panama, Chile, Australia, and Nicaragua in the water. For Panama, it is 
Anilda Alonso, for Chile, Jessica Anderson, for Australia, Molly Picklum, current world number one on the championship tour for the WSL, and Nicaragua's Candelaria Rossano, who had an incredible showing at the ISA World Junior Championships in Brazil that Barton and I got to call the action on just a couple months ago. And she's a strong favorite when we're talking about those potential surfers to find Olympic qualification this week. So it'll be exciting to see how she goes now in the Opens compared to the fantastic result that she had in the juniors just a couple months ago. We're down to 17 minutes, 45 seconds on the clock. No waves ridden yet in this opening heat. And Barton, it's great to have you back in the booth. Good to be back in the booth. <laughs> Love being able to call surfing. It's such a privilege and an honor to be here at the 60th anniversary. We see the surfers a lot of jockeying for position right now in the lineup. And Molly Picklum has proven herself to be an absolute superstar of the future of surfing up and riding. Anilda Alonso for Panama. On the left to start things off with, you're relying on the strength of her backhand surfing. Nice smooth work as she comes through the inside section, finds a heavy finish and would have been incredible had she pulled that off. It, it fully sucked up and doubled up and the wave got so smooth and clean. And it looked like the perfect section to do that turn and then all of a sudden it converged and that was a, a radical wipeout on a shallow part of the reef. Yeah. You can see how shallow it is there with the boils and the reef coming up from underneath. Yeah, it's kind of, you know, it looks like it, it may be a little bit more playful out there as we're watching it on screen. And then you notice some of those boils popping up and those real kind of light spots in the color and the texture of things. And you realize yeah. it's so shallow. It's super shallow. A lot of uh, sea urchins or varna as they call it in Hawaii and that's something you do not want to get your feet. Well, we got 16 and a half minutes on the clock, just a 1.83 on the board so far for from Anilda Alonso. And we just saw Nadia Aristarbe take out a win. Let's go down to the beach to catch up with her and Rachel Tilly. Nadia, congratulations out there. A bit of confusion with the jersey swap out there. Did you find that a bit of a distraction at all? How did you handle that? Well, it was a little bit of distraction, but uh, I knew I had those two scores and I knew some of my teammates would go to, to talk to the beach marshal or someone, so they would change and they did it. So then once, I, once they changed it, I was way more calmer. Yeah, well, you looked confident out there. Yesterday you were surfing at El Pico, today at Magara. How did you find the wave out there today? It was pretty fun. Uh, the only day I surfed here, it was huge, like three meters or something like that, huge bars, and I was kind of scared, but compared to that day, today was pretty easy. The right are really good. I like my backhand, so I really enjoyed it. Yeah, well, you looked incredible out there. Is there anything you'd like to say back home to your family and friends? Yeah, of course. Gracias a todos los que me estáis viendo. Eh, seguimos en main round. Vamos a intentar seguir así hasta, hasta lo más lejos posible. Y un beso. Congratulations and good luck for the next round. Thank you. Thanks so much, Rachel. Great to hear from Nadia. It would have been so confusing to be out there in the water wearing a certain color jersey and suddenly your name's not quite matching up with it. Of course, the scores were allocated to the color of the jersey. Mm -hmm. So she would have heard green, 6.17. Green, a five-point ride. But then to be hearing someone else's name within that. Of course, the team fixing it as quickly as, you know, everyone kind of realized what had happened. Um, so everything in the end panned out just fine. But those little moments, Barton, when you're out in the water and something just kind of throws you off, how do you readjust in a moment like that? Just got to not attach to it. You've got to be able to let it go. You got to, it's got to be like the wind and just blow past and come in and come out, just like the thoughts, Molly Picklum. Has a look, but it's Jessica Anderson with the inside position, very deep on the takeoff, but that's why Molly had to pull herself out of that one because Jessica did have the inside position. So we'll see how priority starts to land now. Jessica will be into that priority rotation. Still won't be any priority established between Nicaragua and Australia out in the lineup between white and green. And it'll just be that small throwaway score of a 0 0.33 on the board for Jessica. Comes from a full surfing family in Chile. And we'll take a look now at some live action with Kende. Rosano, just finding some speed down the line into that first carve, wraps it around for that second cutback. Wave starts to maybe steepen out. She kicks out as it hits that white water section. 
So she'll get the better of the opening exchange so far, and that will leave Molly Picklem with priority. Yeah, she's waded through it. There was some jockeying in the lineup. You could see surfers paddling around all over the place to try and put themselves in the right position. First time the ladies have competed out here on this part of our contest venue. And Molly Picklem fresh off the Hawaiian season of a lifetime for her. Jessica Anderson now up and riding into that first big turn. Snap for the second, just kind of underneath that white water lippy area of the wave. Yeah, wow, Molly has been, that's a great way to look at it. You know, that the absolute, like unbelievable start to the year, trip of a lifetime to the North Shore. And historic groundbreaking performances from the ladies, particularly, uh, you know, when you consider two events, Sunset and Pipeline, Molly at both venues, making the finals, second at Pipeline, first at Sunset, um, could have just as easily have won at Pipeline too, was right there with Katie Simmers in performance, and here she is up and riding. Been riding on her opening ride, uses priority on this one, big carve to start, she'll just check herself out of that wave. You always want to try and get the, the first ride, to get the first wave of the heat and, and, and get going early is something you always want to do, and then when you haven't managed to do that and you hear the scores of your opponents and they're all small scores, you go, well, that's fine. It doesn't matter. I've got the priority. But that was not the type of wave she was looking for and not the type of score that she had waited for. Although she wins the opening exchange, a 2.67. Uh, so, you know, she got the advantage out of that opening exchange, but I'm sure she wanted something a little more than just that one turn. Especially hearing the heat just before hers, you know, she would have been hearing those scores announced for the heat winner and Nadia coming into that five, six point range, ending up, I believe, with that 14 point heat total. And for those of you that are tuning in, joining us online, thank you so much. Be able to, you know, check things out on social media as well at ISA Surfing. Pretty much anywhere that you're looking on social media, you'll find us at ISA Surfing, the International Surfing Association. And we do have a few more events that have been announced officially for this year. ISA Longboard World Championships will be up next in El Salvador, followed by the World Junior Surfing Championships just a couple weeks later, also in El Salvador, and then Denmark for the SUP and Paddleboarding World Championships as we take a look at nice attack from Anilda out of Panama. Just looking for that finishing section. I think that will be pretty crucial for her. She's had a couple of those moments where she just hasn't been able to find that end section. Unfortunate on the completion. I thought it was going to be the you know, highest scoring wave of the heat so far. Candy now up and riding. Big slash to start. Opens it up a little bit wider on the second carve. So she's going to have a two turn combination to count on. Really lovely style. Way she opens the arms up, rotates the upper body. Board looks clean and light and fast on the water. 2.30 coupled with the 1.83 has her go into the lead. Molly Picklem drops down to third, but still has that highest scoring wave of this heat so far. So at this point in time, you'd most probably swap the lead for the 2.67 and have the single best ride, particularly with second priority or first priority. Look set, set approaching, Picklem paddling out to meet it. Priority with blue, but she's not in position, so great positioning for Molly Picklem. Ooh. Quick in and out. Quick in and out. Thought she might have stayed with that one. Got I mean, a second score of some note. Yeah, just kind of eyeing down the line, wanting to maybe hold on to that priority instead. But it looked like that wave may have run, though we didn't really get to track with it to see long. what she was seeing. Yeah. But it did look like it had some volume in it, some thickness to it that was, would stand up as you made your way in onto the shallower reef. Nine minutes remaining. First half went, seemed to go really wow. quickly to me. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. sure it went even quicker no, for the them same. in the water. Yeah. Panama currently sitting in the lead. Anilda Alonso with just small scores, but at the moment, you know, a lead is a lead. She'll be putting herself into fourth priority in the rotation, however. 36 years old out of Costco Antigua and she's from that same generation that kind of central South American contingency of a Silvana Lima has so many incredible results to her name for Anilda coming out of Panama mostly within those 
that Alas Tour, the Latin Americas Tour, she's had some great opportunities competing at the Pan American Games. She was the first Panamanian surfer to compete in the Pan American Games. That was a huge accomplishment for her and for her nation. And now she's looking to try and find herself Olympic qualification, as well as, as quite a few other women here yeah, this week, Martin. As everyone, a Molly Picklum in the heat already there, as you can see. That's right. We've got eight women that qualified from the WSL results last year. There was 10 on the men's side, eight on the women's side, just due to the fact that the women's tour is smaller for the WSL, where at the ISA it's equal numbers. So you've got eight surfers that came through from that. Molly Picklin, like you said, being one of them. And Team USA was able to qualify themselves an extra surfer, a third surfer, via the ISA World Surfing Games in 2022. Pan American Games, the qualifying position went to second place, which was Sonoa Olin out of Canada, because the winner of that event was Tatiana Weston Whip, who already had qualification through the World Tour. And we've got our uh, qualifiers from last year's World Surfing Games. Bahine, Shino, Safi, and Sarah all got their spots via that continental allocation, being the top-ranked surfer from each of those continents at that event. Yep. And then we've got eight spots still available, Barton, this week on the women's side to be filled in. So that's going to be exciting as we start to take away those little to-be-determines and we start filling in some names. And it's great to see Fernando take down the, the golden ticket to the Olympics and share that with them as they qualify. That That's going to be great. And there's the Universality Place. That's right. So there's two more spots available. Universality Place goes to developing nations. So there's an opportunity for you know, a few surfers around the world to apply for that. As we take a look at Kande Rosano from Nicaragua, starts off with an opening turn, has to do a little bit of work, kind of some wobbles in between the setup for the second, but she is able to get a couple more maneuvers thrown in. Sitting on a 2-1-3 and a 1.60, she is only chasing a 2.01 at the moment to take away that leading position. Yeah, this seat's been a little bit slower in regard to, to the quantity of waves ridden by our surfers. Uh, you know, sig signaling that, that there's a little bit of inconsistency out there at the moment. Molly Picklam in the third place. You know, we're down to six minutes and uh, Candelaria takes the lead with that last score. 2.33 puts her up into that first place position. Molly Picklam now up and riding, only chasing a 1.46 into Nice bit of rail work to start things off with. Smooth as she's now driving down the line, pumping. Connects with the lip and she falls. So that's a surprising moment to see from currently the best female surfer in the world from a ranking perspective. Well, and possibly from all perspectives, when we've seen the performance, that one turn, single turn oh, at Sunset Bay, historic. Should have been a 10 all around. A whole new level of performance you know, we saw go down in, in, in the Hawaiian season. The Pipeline Masters was amazing. You know, Katie Simmers obviously won that and, and was a part of this whole new generational push in women's surfing. Betty Lou Sakura Johnson was incredible as well. And those three ladies really, they, they rose the bar to a level that has never been reached yet. And so great signs ahead as we see the surfers making their way out. That was Sonoa. Dimply Olin, who has already qualified for those Olympics, so this would be a fun event for her, yeah. knowing she's already got a spot. You know? That's right. She's already done the work. Now she just gets to have some fun this week and compete alongside of a, a stacked team. Her sister will be competing, Mattia, and of course Erin Brooks. What earned team. her Canadian citizenship just a few months ago. She's in competing again for Team Canada, and she'll be one of those names that we're going to keep a close eye on this week to see if she can find herself in that top eight conversation of eligible women to qualify for the Olympics. Taking a look now at Jessica Anderson. Jess has been a bit quiet within this heat. That was a nice backhand attack. Yeah, it really surfer. was. See the smile on her face yeah. there. Would feel really good to just get one turn like that. Now Anilda up and riding. Nice open face, great looking section in front of her. Better wave selection as well as she drives off the top. Setting herself up here through the inside. Nice snap as she's looking for one more opportunity. You can see that focus, that determination on her face, just putting all that work and effort into it. And she's only chasing a 217. 
She was in the lead for such a long time. Molly Pickland went in with a 273, and we consider Molly's wave, and then that wave, that's got to perhaps be the best wave of the heat so far, I would think. Completed, some really lovely turns, big wall on the outside. So that may see her looking for a 217. I say she gets that for sure, and we'll see her go back into a qualifying position as the judges consider that score. So scores to drop. Molly with a 2.73 has her sitting in the lead for her last wave, but it was that fall in the second turn. She could have had, you know, another two turns. Yeah, probably absolutely. Within that wave would be a very different story. But like you said, Anilda with the best wave so far, 3.10. Pickles now up and riding once again in the green jersey. Hard through that first turn. Setting herself up now off the bottom and into the lip line. And she'll just hit eject on that. Unable to finish off that second maneuver. Now Candy looking for Ooh. that finish. Goes in for a big section as well. She gets <laughs> swallowed. We have yet to even see her pop up again. There she is. Wow. That was a, uh, a give. We've seen some great wipeouts in these first couple of days as those sections converge on the inside. Paddle battle now, three surfers on the inside. Priority to be gained. I don't see that Molly Picklam improves, really. She got the first turn in, but fell on the second. There's the score for Inelda, a 3-1-0. Uh, for me, I felt like it could have been a little bit higher, perhaps there was some good work on the outside. Maybe that second turn was a little conservative for the judges liking, and that might explain it. She did kind of turn under the lip rather than into it. So that might be the reason for that. But it was this sort of first really well completed ride with some good sur surfing on the outside. Candy now up and riding on the inside. She's chasing a 308. Slips off the wax. Huh. And the lip <laughs> gave her a punch to the Yikes. head there. That was radical. Jessica now with a chance on a deep takeoff. She'll make the landing, but just be really far caught behind the section. Ollie does drop in a 3.77, so she ends up taking herself into a more significant lead in that first place position. That would be off the strength of her opening turn because well, that second turn is <laughs> yeah. incomplete. Yeah, there wasn't anything else on that. Uh, the judges seeing some difference, I suppose, in the the speed and the power of the turns. And, and particularly, you've got to imagine that they watch it in real time. So there's a, a different impression that you get watching the ocean and things in real time to what we get on a screen. Here's the replay. First, nice big carve. Here's that second turn. And you, she waits for the moment. Carves under the... I felt like that was a beautiful turn because it was really fluid and it fitted with the wave and kept the rhythm and the momentum into this inside really nicely. Um, a 310 for this wave. And let's have a look at this 377. That was longer, there was more to it. Let's see what happens here. Nice carve out of the top. I don't really, see, especially when I look at this, I don't see the, the difference from the 3-1 to the 3 7 gotta be honest. Yeah. Um, the other, the, the ride of reds had a little more fluidity and completion, still maximized the sections to a large degree on the outside, got it through to the inside and um, but again, you know, when you're against the champs, you've really got to put it out of question. If it's, you know, if there's a question mark in there, the power and the speed and the flow of the champs is always hard to beat. Well, there we have it. The buzzer will have sounded for these surfers down at Margara. And it's Molly Picklam who sneaks away a win. Small scores across the board, challenging sort of moments out in the lineup throughout this heat. And she'll walk away victorious. Anilda Alonso does hold on to that second place position off the strength of that 3.10. It's Candelaria Rosano of Nicaragua. Bit of an upset, sending her into the repercharge round this early in the event, as well as Jessica Anderson out of Chile. So those two are not out of competition. They will have another opportunity. But once we get past this round, or at least once you lose in your first round, you're into the elimination rounds. So we've got more action to come. And it's a big day of surfing here at Margara for the women's uh, side of the field. As we finished out heat number three, we'll be rolling into heat number four in just a moment. Coming up in that next heat is going to be Tessa Thyssen, Yolanda Sakira, Sanoa Olin, and Chelsea Ruit of Barbados. And we're going to go to a quick break when we return. More action from 
some of the best women surfers in the world. Straight into it. Surfer in the blue jersey is Portugal's Yolanda Sequeira, and she loves charging heavy sections. Those single big maneuvers. Give her a combination and she loves it, but give her that one death defying moment, and she is all about it. Out to a great start. She'll have a score to drop through for her opening ride in the water up against Canada's Sanoa Olin, who's wearing the green jersey. Tessa Thyssen of France is in the red, and Chelsea Ruit of Barbados is in the white. Shannon and Barton here to call the action. We've got a great looking field in this lineup. Y Yolanda, as you said, is, is such a charger. I remember a couple of years ago, the Haleiwa Challenger event, it was out of control in the morning. No one really is out there surfing and Yolanda just gets out there and just charges. And, and that was the moment when I went, wow, this young lady is so courageous. And, and we saw that on that closeout section there. Um, that was a better wave and a better score than anything we saw in the heat before it. So a great start for her. Taking a look at some replays now from what we missed during the commercial break with Sanoa Olin. She's dropped in a three point ride for her opener. Goofy footer, couple of nice calves back in working her way through to the inside, already qualified for the Olympics as we know. And here's the replay of this one. Straight down, drives into the closeout. Didn't have a lot of time, late to the section, completed it beautifully. And there it is, a 6-3-3 for one turn, and rightly so. That really was the, the, the turn of the morning so far as a single turn goes. Great commitment. Portugal, a very strong team on, on both sides of the gender equation, but uh, particularly in the women's. Yolanda is one of those names that we'll be keeping a, an eye on throughout this event to see if she's able to find herself in that qualification spot. She, of course, had qualified and was able to compete in the Tokyo Olympics and also has been really close to that championship tour qualification. Yeah. So when it comes to, you know, kind of both sides of the conversation, there's the the kind of more consistent competitive world of the qualifying series, challenger series, championship tour on the WSL side. And then there's the ISA with the Olympic pathways that only happen, you know, once a year, or kind of once in a while. Mm -hmm. She has been in that top pack of women so often. It's been incredible to be able to see her consistency within that over the last few years. Yeah. Now we got 15 minutes on the clock and Molly Picklum has made her way into the glass. Let's catch up with her and Rachel Tilly. Congratulations, Molly. Probably your lowest scoring heat win, I'd say, that you've experienced. That was a slow start heat. What was going through your mind as time was ticking down and there was a score needed for you with five minutes to go? Yeah, I agree. It was definitely my lowest heat win. But um, yeah, I'm not sure. I was just like real slow at the start. And then, um, yeah, at the end, I obviously fell on a couple of waves. But um, yeah, I don't know. At least you get another chance, another sleep, another day to hopefully get over jet lag and fill out these small boards again. Yeah, well, you were saying that you've just arrived late the night before, so straight into your heat yesterday, off the plane from Hawaii. How, is your equipment different from what you were riding over in Hawaii? 
Yeah, of course, it's very different, very different waves, but nonetheless, I should be capable of adjusting pretty quickly, so it was a poor performance, but um, it's okay. No, it's nonetheless a heat win to get you through. That's what this is about. You're qualified for the Olympics already, so what are you looking for from this event as a whole? Uh, I think just enjoying Puerto Rico. It's obviously an amazing event, including all surface from all around the world and really actually versing all the surface from all around the world. It's pretty, it's like pretty cool and um, obviously to represent my country, it's amazing. And yeah, I don't know, let's see how the Aussies go because I feel like we could do all right here. Yeah, you have a strong team. The boys are coming up later on over in El Pico where you were surfing yesterday. Are you going to go down and watch them now? Yeah, for sure. I think El Pico is a pretty fun wave. I heard that there's probably more waves happening over there at the moment. But um, yeah, I mean, the boys will tear that wave apart too. Well, congratulations through to another round. Excited to see you surf the rest of the event. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thanks so much, Rachel. Great interview with Molly. Uh, you know, like, like I feel like Rachel summed it up very well in the end of, okay, it was a low scoring heat, but at the end of the day, it's a heat win. Yeah. Uh, you know, we've seen that from a lot of the, the, the big top pros who have come from Hawaii here with those, we saw it with Philippe Toledo, where the first turn would be great and then they'd fall off consistently after that. So I think, you know, they, they've got to get the rust out. You know, they've been on the big boards in Hawaii, you come down to smaller boards, they're looser, they react and respond quicker, and, and you're used to the slower, longer, more open sort of surfing of Sunset Beach, and then you come to the shorter, tighter, compact surfing here and a shorter board, and it does take a little bit of time to get used to it. It was a very average sort of heat for her by her standards, um, so it's only up from here, that's the danger. You still get the wind, so you, you've got that confidence and you know you can do so much better. So true, like the way that, you know, Molly kind of phrased it of she should, she's capable of adjusting all the time and she should have maybe adjusted better. Yeah. Um, but the reality too is that for a lot of the surfers in the event, because we've got this um, Olympic qualification and the kind of continuing to compete to hold on to that eligibility, as we've got some crew down on the beach, you know, really enjoying the time with some of the world's best. Being here means that they're squeezing it in and the way the schedule has worked out this year, the ISA and the WSL have worked very well together to make sure that this event would run in a window that would allow all the championship tour surfers to be here. But it means they've already started out with a heavy run in Hawaii. They've had two back-to-back -back events. They've flown straight here, literally started surfing the following morning, a lot of them not getting very much sleep. And as soon as they finish out at this event, they're heading straight to Portugal for the next CT. So their year is packed. The consideration really of the mental toll that that takes the Priority physical toll that that even just second. taking one trip and dealing with jet lag does to the body is is actually pretty challenging though we kind of just accept it now yolanda <laughs> looking incredible on that opening turn ducks out of the second but she is like you know she is in that position where you can see that hunger coming through from her chelsea ruit out of barbados there's two chelsea's on team barbados and ruit is currently in the water little strap on the ankle but surfing like she doesn't have an injury at all. You have to consider, Barton, the difference between, you know, a Yolanda who wasn't just competing through a few major events, being able to fly here, have a bit of time, get some training in, be rested, be adjusted, ready to come out firing. But, in comparison to yeah. the toll that, that actually surfing back to back and, and hopping on multiple planes does to the body. Yeah, as a you know, professional surfer of, of some years, you, you become used to that. It's not, I don't, I don't think it's that difficult. We used to compete in 30 events a year, you know, literally, so literally um, you know, and I did 15 yeah. years without a break. So you get used to it and um, it's a first world problem if it's anything, you know what I mean? You, you've just got to dig in and recognize that surfing's a gift and be able to do that for a job is really, that might be the easiest job you're getting, you know, in your life. So it's, yeah. it's while there's, it comes with its challenges and it's, you know, it's, it's not an easy life or an easy path. It's the dream, and it's 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 a lot better than what the a lot of the other options are. And you got to keep that top of mind. Five points for that turn from Yolanda, and you said how beautiful the top turn was. It started with the beautiful bottom turn as well. The whole the, the connection of the bottom turn to the top turn was, yeah. You know, she's got a, an 11 point total uh, from two turns. So that shows how great those two turns actually were. Sitting in a commanding position now over Tessa Thyssen out of France. Sitting with that 3.9, chasing a 7.43. Tessa's also had a really solid run on the Challenger Series over the last couple of seasons. 
and is a great representative for Team France alongside Joanne DeFay and Vahine Fierro for their women's team. Nice combination of surfing for Tessa to start off on this wave. Now sets herself up as she comes down the line. She's gotten all that really important work put together at the start of this wave. Now just finding a couple more opportunities to throw some spray on the inside. Really nice flow and rhythm from one turn to the next. Never stood up and allowed her to get anything crazy on there that the judges are going to love. It's going to be a really interesting score because there was a lot of work done um, and it'll be interesting to see how, how that all of that work is rewarded. It's a 3.37. So, you, you, you know, you go to Yolanda's, you go one big turn and you're still out the back more or less. You do that one turn, you jump off quick, you haven't got far to paddle. You can do all of that work all the way to the inside for a 3.37 and have the long paddle back out. So some good lessons there too. Just find the big steep face and do the big turns and that's the recipe for success in the modern day. Chelsea Ruit with a couple small scores on the board so far. She'll be looking to kind of wash that off and find herself some better rhythm within this heat. 29 years old and has been competing for so many years. Her most recent victory was the APS PR Corona Pro uh, on that surf circuit back in 2019. That event ran here in Puerto Rico and within her life she just found herself on the podium so many times as a young Grom competing back at home. See the surfers for the next heat getting ready to run down and paddle out into some fun looking waves. But for Chelsea, it's been a lifetime of consistency in her Grom years. You know, started competing when she was really young. At about 14 years old, she won her first international event. She won a, a Rip Curl Grom search, which wow. is one of those platforms. I see so many surfers with that. You know, surfers that are world champions now, mm -hmm. that kind of have a, a Rip Curl Grom search event yeah. as a big win for them early in their life that have then taken them on to do really solid things. 100%. There was a strong circuit, and, then, and back when there was, you know, a junior world circuit as well, there's, there's been a great pathway in the past for people to get to those, you know, that top level, and now with the, you know, on the professional side, the QS into the Challenger Series, onto the, the top tier tour, and now with the ISA Games and domestic tours, you know, in, in regions, there's, there's all sorts of opportunities for people to compete. The more times you pull on the jersey, the more that nervous thing becomes uh, normal. It's, uh, it's, that's the foundation for the growth of the sport in the future, and uh, all those, both of those pathways are working really well. Six and a half minutes remaining. Ocean's just a little bit quiet. Maybe a little less consistent than what we had yesterday. And so we, we heard Otto talking about how yesterday's swell was a little, had a little more west in it and was a little stronger. And as that swell's kind of died down, it swung around a little more to the northeast. That was interesting. Because at first glimpse this morning, I thought it looked exactly the same. I didn't think it looked smaller, but as you sit and you watch for a period of time, you go, well, the, the, what's really missing are the, those bigger sets. Lots of in between, lots of waves in between. Tessa having a look at this one. Chasing down a 7-4-3 to take away the lead. Anything over that four-point mark will put more pressure on the rest of the field. And that'll be the more critical wow. turn. Straight up into the lip line, really oh. attacking it. And very powerful backhand surfing. Taking a look at Yolanda now. She'll just kick out of that one quickly. Put herself back in that priority rotation ahead of time. Uh, Tessa. Yeah, it might have been a good a good move with already having the six and the five. The three three seven was the last of Tessa's that wave then is going to be her best. Uh, and and the rhythm and the flow that we'd seen on the first two waves was then put onto a bigger canvas and the turns became bigger and, and wider and more open and, and the scores will reflect that, I'm sure. Great surfing from Tessa Thyson. And she got it from, you know, down. She was inside the other ladies, and, and it was one of those smaller ones, but it stood up on the inside, and that was a great wave to catch from, from her position. There's been so many waves like this caught by the surfer under priority. Mm. 
Again, if you're coaching staff, that's going to be really interesting. This is the money turn right in here. Bang. And then this turn too, really difficult on that shoulder to get up vertically on top of it and not catch a rail and keep the flow. Did that really well. Great surfing. Taking one more look at it here. Straight on from where the judges or how the judges would sit. Look at the wave grow in front of a critical section. And then this turn. Throws the front arm to get the lift up on top of the lip of the wave. We see the drone catch, capturing that angle. Got to say, that was a great wave. 5.33, the judges thought so too. Puts her right in striking zone of taking away that leading position. Now, you know, chipped away. She's got a 6.01 requirement on the board. Take away first from Yolanda. So Noah Olin has been so quiet in this heat. See so her just kind of repositioning now. She's sitting with that first priority. Just a three-point ride on the board for the Olympic qualified surfer heading to Paris, or specifically to Tahiti yep. later this year. Out of Canada. And her performance at the Pan American Games was just unbelievable. The surf in Chile was absolutely huge. Yeah, bombing. Big bombing, waves. bombing. I mean, it was a big wave contest. Yes. That's the reality. Right. From everyone on the ground that was there watching it in real life, they said it's the it's the biggest surf that they've witnessed in a contest outside of the big wave tour. Wow. In Twenty years. Incredible. Here she goes Absolutely having massive. a look. And cold water, so she would have been comfortable with the full suit. Very on. cold water. As we see her now having a look here. Nice and controlled for that first turn. <laughs> Sliding through the second, just digging that rail in. Throwing a bit of spray as she comes through into this sort of frothy section and getting the job done. So that's gonna be her second wave. Chasing on a 6.23 to take away that second place position. Fair to say she doesn't get that score. And I think that that wave might've been a little bit disappointing for her. I think she was waiting for something bigger, waiting for something with more wall. Counting a three though, she knows she needs two waves before the end. Um, because you know the three doesn't match either of the two scoring rides of the surfers in first and second. Yeah. So she knew she needed two waves and she had to get going sooner or later and couldn't just keep sitting there. So that was really perhaps a pressured situation where you're kind of pressured into it because the, because the clock and the performances of your opponents make you do it. Um, it's most probably not going to won't be the six. Uh, it'll lower the, the ask for her, but again, there's you know, one minute 50 and she needs another ride. She's still on the paddle back out. She'll have three surfers in front of her with priority. So there's a fair chance that she may not even get another ride unless, of course, she stays wide and sits on that other peak, which it looks like strategically would be 100% the right thing to do. You don't want to paddle in amongst those three piranhas there and have them eat you up because they're not going to let you get the wave that you would need to advance. There's no way about that. Yeah, certainly needs to keep some distance between them. She's just kind of working her way back into the lineup now, but we can see there's so much space where for Tessa, though she doesn't have that you know higher priority over Chelsea in the white, She's sitting really close to her. She's going to apply that pressure in whichever way she can. Yes. And we're still waiting for the panel, for the judges, to drop in that score for Sonoa for last of green. I mean, if you're Tessa, you're almost thinking with one minute that I should start paddling that way and sit near her. And she just, she just started yeah. to, to do that. And, and maybe she was a little slow to do that because Sonoa Ola may get an opportunity here. Well, Sonoa's dropped in a 3.67 for the last wave. Now oh. chasing a 5.56. So she goes down and likely won't have another opportunity 40 seconds on the clock means there's time but will there be a wave that comes through kind of where she's sitting from what uh, we've been seeing it's been a bit slow and will tessa get there in time to use her priority to seal the deal yeah um that's that was odd she's heading back now so there's you know 25 seconds that's enough time will there be another wave if i was tessa i'd most probably still be paddling that other way just to make sure you know, the 773 needed by Chelsea is a much harder score. We haven't seen a ride of that level. So you go, okay, she's taken care of. We're going to go the other way and take care of Sonoa Olin. Most probably the correct strategic move, but five seconds on the clock, it may not matter. Yeah, sort of split the responsibility, though you're not communicating about it necessarily. And there we go. The timer has run out. It's Yolanda Sakira from Portugal who takes away the winning position. With a 6.33 and a five-point ride, big, powerful turns, finding those 
perfect sections to attack. Really impressive surfing, all based in a super low, beautiful driving bottom turn that created the top turns and the judges loved it, so did we. Ah, so good. Tessa Tyson for France in second, advancing through. And when we return, we'll have Chris Cote and Mitchell Salazar coming in for the conversation with more great women hit the lineup. Puerto Rico, we call ourselves Boricua, a unique name honoring our island heritage and the vibrant spirit of our people. When you bask in the warmth of our beaches, when you taste the love in our food, when you embrace the call of our adventures, you'll find that spirit in yourself. Dare to live every moment. Live Boricua. Welcome back to the ISA World Surfing Games. We are into round two, heat four for the women, Leilani McGonagall, Dominique Barona, Amuro, Suzuki, and Noah Clapp. Come on, let's go. What a heat we've got in the lineup. Chris Cote here with Mitchell Salazar. Mitchell, you've been on the boardwalk for the past day and a half. Now you're back in the booth. Front row seat to the action. Are you kidding me with this foursome hitting this lineup right now? Yeah, pretty gnarly heat. I mean, when you look at the standards that we have here at the ISA, the seating does matter. And unfortunately for a lot of them, they end up placing first or second according on the uh, in the initial round, Chris. And as of right now, Leilani McGonagall, she's looking for an early start. It's been a little slow out there. And you got to think that the Japanese surfer, Amuro Suzuki, wants to be controlling the peak two and get something underneath the priority of both Dominique Barona and Noah Clapp. Great heat. Well, there are eight Olympic slots on the line for our women competing here at the 2024 ISA World Surfing Games. If your nation already has two females qualified for the Olympics, well, your team just has to finish as the highest ranked team and you yep. could potentially get a third. Or if you've qualified like Snow Olin in the previous heat through a different organization, well, you're already on that path to glory for Leilani McGonigal who has had that Olympic taste, you know, she wants nothing more than to get back. So Leilani, Dominic, and Omuro Suzuki, who is an Olympic medalist herself, yep. going up against Noah Klopp, Team Germany. So a lot on the line in this heat. Who will have the aquatic aptitude to make it through and stay in the main round? Will it be Dominic Barona? She is an absolute powerhouse, super consistent, and no stranger to hectic open ocean conditions. You know, it's pretty calm between heat, between sets, but when the sets do come through, it really is a roll of the dice as it's getting a little bit more unpredictable out here today. For sure is, and what you can't see here on screen and that I noticed a lot on the boardwalk, Chris, is that this peak tends to move quite a bit too. Morgan Siblick this morning had just a great understanding of how much this water was moving out there as we saw Leilani up and down real quick. It comes down to adaptability, as you were mentioning, and I think a big part of today you have to be reading the forecast and especially what those Surfline premium forecasts are dishing out. The swell is on the decrease, but what swell is the most dominant out there in the water? It seems like a lot of these right-handers are still the best option, Chris. Yeah, I haven't seen many high scoring lefts on the day and it's really been about getting up quick and getting involved early on these waves. Here we go, Leilani McConical, back to back yep. waves, getting pitched. Now Leilani is no stranger to waves of consequence. So for her to go over the falls like that twice in a row, that tells us that this is a quick, tricky wave to surf. You know, again, Leilani, we've seen her in waves all over the world, absolutely charges 
having a little bit of difficulty right here navigating the swift here in Arecibo. So as it stands, Dominic Barona with a 317. She's in the lead, representing Team Ecuador, but plenty of time, 15 and a half minutes to go in this heat. Doesn't want to get into this rhythm though, Leilani, Chris. A couple of wipeouts in a row and some bad ones too. Your timing was off on the takeoff. And as of right now, the only score of significance is really a three. There's Camila Kemp from Germany. She's coming up. They've looked awesome on the men's side so far. They've had not only multiple heat wins, but more importantly, really been understanding the lineup too. Gonna be interesting to see them on the women's side. Rachel Presti also a great representative of theirs. And Camila Kemp, she's been a grinder on the QS and also looking for another Olympic spot. Seems like Leilani's found a left here, Chris. All right, we'll see if she can make me eat my words, and she proves my point. The lefts, real quick, yep. pretty much straight to the shoulder once you take off. So I feel like getting almost behind the peak on the takeoff on the right is going to give you the opportunity to get up and involved in the most critical part of this wave, which the judges have really been relying heavily on in terms of giving out those big numbers. That first big turn, that snap, floater, whatever you can do, to do something impactful straight from the jump of these waves is where you're going to get that good reward. Well, and it's going to come down to the combination of major maneuvers, too. Yesterday, we barely saw any excellent scores. A lot of people were making it through with 13, 14 points, which is good enough. I mean, in the end, you just need to be advancing in these heats. But the way you're dominating a heat and the way you're kind of presenting yourself to the rest of the field does matter. Intimidation factor is a big part of a long event like this one, Chris. But more importantly, you just want to be able to get two good scores under your belt. And if you can do it in the first five or six minutes, that's even better. Yeah, it's about the pace, right? You know, setting that pace early, making it through these heats, making it look easy, which obviously uh, that that's for the elite. Uh, yep. And it's for the the up-and-comers to really jump into that spot. 13.40 to go. Let's go down to the boardwalk. Rachel Tilly is standing by. Congratulations, Yolanda. Exciting win. You were dominant throughout that heat. How did you feel out there? You were mentioning that you rolled your ankle when you were just getting your jersey before. Was that a factor for you out there? How did you feel? Um, yeah, when, before I went in, I was like, oh, maybe I'm actually injuring myself really badly. But it didn't feel that bad in the water. I didn't feel it at all. I think with the adrenaline, I was just in the moment trying to serve my best. Yeah, and we were talking about before that sometimes you actually are able to get out of your head more when you're focusing on surfing through an injury or something like that well you looked amazing out there you're an olympic hopeful for this event you surfed in the last olympics is that going through your mind or are you trying to not think about it in these early rounds uh, i'm trying not to think about it now or even until all the way to the end i just i want to surf i, I want to win and just going to the olympics is an extra to it and uh, yeah just keeping in the moment and not putting extra pressure on me yeah well you're surfing fast and loose would you like to say anything to your country family and friends back home yeah yeah obrigado por estarem lá em casa a ver eu, eu tenho recebido o vosso apoio e espero representar Portugal da melhor maneira possível obrigada beijinhos bye see you next round <laughs> Yolanda Sequeira, an absolute metal threat anytime she enters the lineup. 12 minutes to go, Dominic Broner right there, putting in effort, but not getting anything in return. We saw Noah Clapp get a wave right before Amuro Suzuki sits out the back in that top priority spot. Suzuki competed in the 2020 Summer Olympics, got herself a bronze medal, yep. became a Japanese national hero. I was there, I saw her on the news every morning, every mm. noon, every night. She became an absolute global superstar, especially in her nation of Japan, along with Kanoa Igarashi. We'll see if she can try to equal that same success, but let's take a look at Noah Clapp. I think this was a great wave. The pacing, the flow, and the read of it, that turn was just beautiful. And, you know, Noah's been a two-time medalist here at the ISA. She won the U18 girls in 2019, and just minutes later, battled out for the U16 final, got bronze. So not only is she a workhorse, but she's also capable of surfing multiple heats within the same day. I had the chance of judging a, a qualifying series event in Pismo Beach a few weeks ago, Chris. She lost an extremely close heat to Bella Kenworthy. She had a wave at the end, ended up falling, which easily would have been the score. I think what we're gonna see from Noah in this event and throughout the year is more understanding of both how much her boards are changing and how she's changing with her age too. I mean, she's no longer a junior. You're in a position where you can easily qualify for the Olympics. But she's understood that 
Chris Surfing's there to compete with the very elite in the world. And case in point right here, Chris gets the best score of the heat. Yeah, I think Team Germany has fielded their strongest team in the history mm -hmm. of ISA competition. Rachel Presti, Tim Elter, Dylan Groen, Leon Glatzer, Noah Clapp, who's in the lineup right now, and Camille Kemp. So they have an absolute shot of taking a medal here. If they are the highest ranked team, they'll get a spot in the Olympics. Yep. Either for the men or for the women. So you know that uh, all these numbers, all these facts and figures are running through the surfer's mind, regardless of the task at hand. But here we go, Leilani McGonagall, big snap there. Amura Suzuki got involved as well. Pretty cool. I mean, we're, we're, we're watching a lot of similar styles in this heat. Similar amounts of power between all four of these surfers. All goofy footers? Yeah. Uh, no, I'm three goofy, is, yeah. Three goofy footers. No, that would have been horrible for us, imagine. Two goofy footers in the booth seeing two it would, goofy things footers would have get knocked out. Yeah. It's tough, but I think overall, it just the athleticism is obviously noticeable. I think being in a warm water location makes it huge for a lot of these young men and women to be able to compete in conditions like this as we look at Teresa Bombolo right there speaking of athleticism Portugal team I mean they put in a lot of effort behind the scenes super well prepared well coached and most importantly the league that they have right there in Portugal too is super beneficial for them to be able to get more repetitions in and high level competition Chris love what I'm seeing from them and I think they're strong contenders also to get another spot uh, Teresa is always a threat in the lineup she is a tenacious competitor mm -hmm. so with eight minutes 58 seconds to go noah clap in the lead on the strength of that 583 i feel like at the moment it's really gonna everything is gonna hinge on that one big turn to start your wave yep of course if you do two or three turns down the line you're gonna manufacture some type of score but if you can get involved early and get one big snap out the back you're gonna set yourself up for glory that's what noah clap was able to do Leilani McGonagall, same thing, that 483 came really on the strength of one big turn. So it's almost like your strategy has to go out there and do the best single turn you can. Anything additional is the icing on the cake. You will be rewarded for that one big maneuver. And find the wave. You know, uh, Noah and Amuro, they were going at, at it at the beginning of the heat. And, you know, they kind of evened each other out, Chris, with about eight minutes gone. And Noah was able to get the 5.83. And then at a certain point of the heat, Amuro was just like, hey, if I don't get to work right now even with priority there's just not going to be enough time for me to get two waves got one we're still waiting for that score and look at this underneath everybody else's priority getting a quick backup chris it's like the catchphrase of the new hbo true detective series she's awake <laughs> watch out amuro suzuki waiting for what we think is going to be a decent number Ooh. now we've got a paddle battle amuro versus leilani these two have competed against each other Many. Uh, many, many times in the past, in the ISA, in the QS, in the Olympics. Mm -hmm. Challenger Series, everything you want to talk about. And look at that. I mean, who wants it more? So <laughs> It's a toss-up right here, but look at Leilani. Yeah, she's gaining. Gaining steam. And she wants to make it clear that if it's a close one, it goes to the person who rode the first wave out of the exchange with, in this case, was Leilani. We're going to see what the priority judge deems right here, Chris. I mean, textbook paddle battle right there. Their elbows were smashing into each other. And it's going to go to Leilani McConnell. Mm -hmm. She gets that third priority spot. I love that. That was a battle for third and fourth priority. Yeah. It shows you how much this means to these competitors in the lineup. Well, and how much priority matters in in instances like this, too. So this comes in as a low five, Chris. A single turn right there under the lip. But great timing, too. I mean, doing well with the section and the opportunity that she had. I think... Not going straight into the lip line was very smart, not only because you hadn't ridden the wave at that point, too, but most importantly, you just want to secure yourself and start off with a bang. This came in as a 4.83. Saw the connection there for Leilani. A lot of downtime in between maneuvers here, but once again, just getting on the board, reading the lineup, and being aware of what everybody else is doing in the heat so far. The best wave of the heat, it's a 5.83. There's just a point difference between Noah Claps and Leilani's best ride. So she's right in there. It's going to be a tight race to the finish here. Yeah, I love the look of that opening turn. Just really nicely placed. Good technique, too. Not trying to overdo anything, Chris. Solid, solid stuff and smart surfing by Leilani. Yeah, no diva attitudes in the water right now. All four of these girls, I mean, you can tell full effort, passion behind every turn they're doing. Current leader, Noah Clapp. 
wants it as well. Late to the party there goes down. 540 to go. Slow start, but things have amplified as we get down to that five minute mark. Waiting for scores to come through. I think pretty much everybody's got a backup except for Dominic Barona. But she only needs a 2 3 1 at the moment. Of course, that's before everybody else's backup. These, ne these next scores come through. Yeah, and uh, five minutes to go. Having priority could be the biggest blessing you could have right now or the biggest curse, too. And Leilani McGonagall just positioned a little bit further inside. She only needs less than a one to move up into second place. But I think if you're both Leilani and Dominique right now, you're looking for your best score, Chris. You want to at least try to match the fives that are in the heat right now. And that's just going to come down to finding that one wave. But overall, as we said, a very competitive heat. You're not expecting 14, 15 points today. I think 11, 12 points, that's already a good heat by how slow it's been so far in the first few heats of this morning. But I feel like Noah Clapp has done an excellent job of just being able to control the peak. I could see that being a mistake right there at the end, not being able to ride out of it and just getting less than a one. But you got enough time to be able to get a solid backup here. Smart choice by Amuda if she goes on that one. She's going to let it go, though, Chris. Sitting in third party for now. Leilani McConaughey has jumped up into that second priority spot. Dominique Brona using her priority on this little right-hander. Good little bowl here on the inside. Quick snap there. Section collapses around her. She's able to get around it. Back onto the open face. So nicely done there. Good positioning for Dominic Barona. Megan doesn't overcook things, yep. knowing she has four minutes left and you know, has really no scores of note. The 317 could be a decent backup for her. I think she's going to do better than that with that two-turn combination there. How many times do we see people lose heats in the last few minutes because they're either waiting too long with priority or using it in the wrong way? And that was a case where there's close to five minutes left in the heat. It's a pivotal point of the heat, obviously, but most importantly, just make a decision. Don't try to overthink and that's where you see not only the Olympian come out, but a silver medalist at the Pan American Games. Clutch performance right there on that one. and should be more than enough for the 2.31. Yeah, that's when you got to just keep it simple. Just surf. Mm -hmm. Get a wave and surf it well. So what she did right there. You could tell she switched everything off right when she stood up. She knew exactly what she had to do. She's a veteran, competitor, uh, an ISA favorite, for yep. sure. I mean, I don't think there's been any ISA events without Dominic Verona in the past decade. Not that I've either She's, competed in or worked at. Yeah, yeah, paddling. I mean, she could ride a longboard. I, I'm sure if you gave her a bodyboard and some fins, she would absolutely charge. Mm -hmm. Well, this is actually a bodyboarding wave. So wouldn't be surprised to see her out here on the bigger days. And the score comes in. Chris moves straight to the lead after that one. Yeah, she is... Uh, unflappable just in terms of nerves. You are not going to intimidate Dominic Brona, but I guarantee you, you will be intimidated by Dominic Brona in a heat. She has that presence in the lineup. Mm -hmm. You know, she's uh, a, an absolute sweetheart on the land, a great ambassador for surfing. Put her in a jersey and stay out of her way because she will make you pay if given the opportunity. She just did that to the rest of these three women in the lineup with a 4-2-7 and a 3-1-7. Just like that, flip the script, jumps up into first place. But Leilani McConaughey only needs a 198 to climb out of that fourth place spot. She's got two minutes left. She has priority. Set coming through. Here's where a crucial decision has to be made. She's going. She's going to use her priority here. Winds up on her back end. Quick snap there. Ooh, it's going to be on the line. That wave dissipating underneath her feet. Only needing a 198. Most likely has it, but yeah. probably not by much. That leaves the door open for Amuro. Bonus wise, section, yeah, though. Wise choice right there. That was kind of the gift that kept on giving for Leilani. There's times where you got to get grindy in these heats, Chris. And those people that have been on the QS for years. And, and let's be real, she's only 24. But she's been not only a member of the ISA for more than a decade, she's also been competing at both the Pro Junior and QS level for a very long time, too. Needs close to a two should be the score. And just real smart surfing, too. Used priority in an excellent way and moves up into first place here, Chris. Just like that, script is flipped. Leilani McConaughey jumps into the lead. Dominic Bruna drops to second. And you can't say that 
Noah Clapp and Amuro Suzuki going into the Repishard is an upset because of how good Leilani and Dominic Verona are. But I will say that they are two of the best, most informed surfers more often than not in mm -hmm. ISA competition. So for those two to go to the Repishard here this early in round two will well, be an absolute shocker. This could be a final. Yeah. Let, let's, let's be real. I mean, they, they just had bad seating and they faced off way too early in the event and I mean 20 seconds Amoto needing a low two and no only needing a mid one well three of these girls have been finalists in the past of ISAs yes they have and five seconds to go here Chris it doesn't seem like it's going to be enough time for either no or Am oh wait was that the horn or do these waves count well, they may count, but not for much. Yeah. Motor Suzuki True. trying to force the issue there. So, wow. An Olympic bronze medalist heading to the rapid charge round early in round two, along with a hard charging surfer representing Team Germany with Noah Klapp also heading to the repo. Well, that leaves Leilani McGonagall and Dominic Verona, two ISA superstars, heading on into round three, staying in the main round. Now, that doesn't mean that Noah Klapp and Motor Suzuki are out of contention. It just means their road got a little bit more dicey because we know those rapid charge heats are tough. They are, and you don't want to be in that round for too long either. But we got a lot more action coming up right around the corner. We're going to take a quick break, but we'll be back with more from women's round two. The main podium is going off from the best females on the planet. Take to the lineup. We'll be right back. Sales Boricua, a unique name honoring our island heritage and the vibrant spirit of our people. When you bask in the warmth of our beaches, when you taste the love in our food, when you embrace the call of our adventures, you'll find that spirit in yourself. There to live every moment. Live Boricua. Welcome back to the ISA World Surfing Games 2024 edition, live from Puerto Rico. Chris Cote here with Mitchell Salazar. And we've got another international super heat taking to the water. Shino Matsuda, Camilla Kemp, Teresa Onvalat, and Tiara Vanderholz. Netherlands, Portugal, Germany, and Japan represented well. Pretty much looks like another final, and we're already in, we're only in round two. This is incredible. Here we go, Teresa Onvalat. Oh. Catches an edge. Doug Rail has entered the chat. <laughs> Just tried to push a little too hard right there and overdo it, and that was an opportunity to get something on the board real quick. Instead of a wave being more than a five-point ride, it ends up just being a 1.0. A couple of goofies out there in Matsuda and Bonvolo, another goofy footer in Vanderholz, who had an outstanding performance last year in El Salvador. I mean, she dropped a nine and... One right, of the did most the best turn of the uh, entire event. And Men, one of women, the most ridiculous turns yeah. we've ever seen. Yeah. Um, and then Camila Kemp, I mean, she's been on the QS, on the grind to qualify for a very long time, representing Germany, a great surfer that resides most of her time in Portugal, too. Used to a lot of heavy water moving around her, too. Oh, she'll charge. No problem for Camila Kemp. So it's 1630 on the clock already, somehow as if sucked into a time vortex. <laughs> Our clock is going quick. Talk a little bit about Tiara Vanderholz. 
She was born in the Netherlands, lived there about half her life, and then moved to a Caribbean island called Curaçao, where she surfs every day, and she likes to say, I surf every day, makes a point to rub it in her faces without a wetsuit. <laughs> she lives in a tropical paradise, and she is an absolute standout wherever she surfs. Yet to get involved in this heat, so let's take a look at the very beginning, Kamiya Kemp, making a tricky section look pretty easy. Nice little two-turn punch right there. Yeah, and... Yoshino Matsuda. Yeah, Shino, and then this was Camila afterwards, still waiting for this score. A lot of speed down the line, Chris, and gets into the lip line once. Get engagement of the rails right there, loses control after the second one, so... The really, the meat of the score is going to come off of this one turn. Good engagement right there. Slid the fiends, the fins even too, and found a critical section where he's going to be able to get the best score of the heat so far. Nice opening ride for Camila Kemp that comes in as a 3.17. And not to bring up the P word, but Shino Matsuda was in that position for 2020. She had provisionally qualified in Japan. Oh, don't say it. And then Amuro Suzuki claims her spot for Team Japan for the Summer Olympics for Tokyo 2020. You know, having to bounce back after that must have just been absurd. Um, luckily for her, she's in now. And I think knowing that you have the mental fortitude to overcome both that and just leave it in the rearview mirror shows a lot about this young lady that we're seeing on screen right here. It's Very like, talented. Yeah, it's like my friend Justin Warfield's band. She wants revenge. <laughs> You know she does. Shino Matsuda in red right now, fighting for every point she's got. We got 14.27 left to go here in round two. Five surfers resetting themselves in the lineup. Let's go down to Rachel Tilly. An exciting finish for you, Leilani. You needed a, I think, a 1.96. You were in fourth place with one minute to go. You strategically used your priority and jumped from straight from fourth to first. How did that feel? Um, well, that was definitely a grindy heat. Um, all the girls in that heat were really good. So I could tell we all wanted to start off on the best wave. Um, and I really honestly had a terrible start to that heat. I was able to pull it together at the end. But um, yeah, really stoked to make it and stoked to make it with Mimi. Arriba las Latinas. <laughs> When you say well, you weren't feeling your best throughout that moment, heat, we'll what are some strategies that you use mentally to pull yourself out today. right until the end? The heat's not over till it's over. So what do you? what's going through your mind during that time? Well, I've been really working on just keeping my mind cool and resetting after um, making now, a mistake, which sometimes red. can be really hard because you feel like your heat's over once you start off wrong. But uh, I have my sports psychologist, Mika, que me ha ayudado un montón, so I'm really grateful for that. And also, I've been training physically a lot and so putting a lot of time in the water, green, so I hope that next update. time it's a little less grindy and more surfing. <laughs> well, sometimes having heats like that, too, you can, when you pull yourself out of it, that gives you confidence moving forward to the next heat. You're surfing for Costa Rica. How are you feeling for this upcoming event? You're an Olympic hopeful. You surfed in the last Olympics. Is that going through your mind at all? How are you handling that? Well, yeah, of course, everyone's here uh, for that goal of qualifying. Honestly, I just want to do really good surfing. Um, I've been working a lot on it, and I just want to show what I can do and feel happy with that. Of course, my goal is to qualify, and I really would love to win a gold medal. I've been in six ISA finals and never won one, so <laughs> I'm hoping the seventh one's the charm. <laughs> I think I have heard that. Seventh, seventh time's the charm. Well, good luck. You're surfing amazing. Way to pull it through. Looking forward to seeing you guys. Back to you guys in the booth. Red as first priority. Hello a todos en Costa Rica, pura vida. Pura vida. We agree. It's time. It's Leilani McGonagall time. Seven finals, a lot of medals there. Just that one that's eluded her, the gold medal. And, you know, I think her chances of qualifying yet again for Paris 2024, as she did in Tokyo, mm -hmm. looking pretty strong. Yeah, and remember uh, that year in, in 2021 in Salvador, like, it's coming down to finals day for everybody. And oh, she yeah. was able to pull it through. And let's talk about that location, too. I mean, she charges. She knows what it takes. She did one of the training camps with the ISA there last year. She's got a great chance of getting a medal at the Olympics, too, if she were to qualify for Tahiti. So 
I feel like she's not only a hopeful, she proved it on the backhand that she's able to do it and compliment her surfing in the last 15 minutes of the heat too, Chris. Yeah, absolutely. It really does come down to how bad do you want it. You know, there's exactly. a monster lurking at the end of the road, literally. Mm -hmm. Tia Hopo is where you end up as a surfer if you have success here at the 2024 ISA World Surfing Games. Do you accept that challenge that you earned? Well, at this level, I would say 99% of the field will go. Mm -hmm. So I cannot wait to see who qualifies for Paris 2024 at the end of this week. Will it be Shino Matsuoda? Right now, she's got a 2.83 and a 0.57. Teresa Bonvalot is in third. Teresa, probably on one of the strongest female teams, Team Portugal, Francisca Vaselka, Teresa Bonvalot, and Yolanda Sequeira. There's got to be some added pressure when you're on a team that strong. You've got to hold up your end for the team. Of course, Teresa is among the best of the best. She's been, you know, I, I, I put her in that class of a young veteran. Mm -hmm. Been around the world and back many times in ISA competition on the QS, the Challenger Series as well. Has had some CT call-ups. She's that good a surfer. She fits in well with that incredible threesome of Portuguese rippers. And right now she does have her work cut out for him, but... Only needs a 1-4-0 with 9 minutes and 52 seconds to go. Here's where you got to get involved. You know, you can find yourself in the lurking class, you know, on either side of the takeoff yep. zone. But you got to put yourself in the working class and get one of those waves that's going to give you the opportunity. Easier said than done from right here. But the cadence of sets has provided ample quality waves for each and every surfer in every heat we've watched so far. Well, and that's where not only... Your training pays off in terms of your confidence, but most importantly, being put in these situations before and not repeating the mistakes that you've had not only happen to you before in situations like this, but learning from them. Because that's really when it's considered a mistake from my perspective, Chris, that you're not implementing the things that went well and continue to do things that went wrong. So for somebody like Shino, who once again, the P word, she was there, had it ripped literally away from her in the last last day in the in the nicest way possible yeah <laughs> like literally and it's all oh, that year like she came out with tears yeah oh i mean and 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 that probably is providing a lot of fuel for the fire that is inside her shino matsuda right now with a 283 and a 167 teresa bonvalot on her backhand she is a super consistent competitor so, so to see her make mistakes is rare yep. two nice turns down the line there and again tenacious when she puts a jersey on i've seen her come in from heats where you just stay out of her way <laughs> because she you know she has the right attitude mm -hmm. for the champion needs to have you know she is known as a battler which is funny because you see her on land and she's just she's nice heart you know yeah. she's but I think like most of these surfers, something changes when they put that jersey on. It's like an attitude adjustment. But you got to have that, right? Well, I mean, from my, from my experience, I had it at a certain point and then I lost it. Everybody can. Um, but you can regain it, too, as we look at Kemp here. You know, the one quick snap right there. And there, there's ups and downs, and, and you need to be able to find a balance and... And obviously maintain that high, too, as long as possible, Chris. But, you know, let, let's be fully honest. We're surfing for, for a profession. Like, that's pretty darn cool. But you still need to look at it as a job. But if you look at it one way or the other too much, it's affecting you. And you're not really complimenting yourself the way you should be and being able to find not only that balance, but something that is bringing joy to your life. And if you're not really enjoying it, that there's no purpose of doing it. Back to the conversation about the Portuguese team on the women's side. All three of them have been successful at the major level. Yolanda's been an Olympian, so has Teresa. She's been a couple spots away from qualifying multiple times now for the championship tour. And Kika Vaselka was a world junior champion at the WSL level the previous year. They've all, all three of them have a lot of trophies. And you get that kind of team camaraderie and you can always rely on somebody if you're not having the best day or you're coming out of a poor heat. That person can be not only a shoulder to cry on, but get some key and vital information out of them too. And surfing with the best is gonna make you better. 
Simple as that. Camille Kemp with a 317 and a 293. Bashes the lip but gets bashed in return. She goes down. Like the effort there. Six minutes, 12 seconds to go. That was nothing for Camille Kemp. She just surfed some of the gnarliest waves in the world. Mm -hmm. Just unafraid. So yep. Didn't even have to shake that one off. Just got right back on her board. Does seem like the smart plan right though. Uh, uh, right now is a 2.93 being her backup. Another surfer who's not a, not scared to put put herself in risky positions. Tiara Vanderholz, again owner of the best turn of the 2022 ISA World Surfing Games in El Salvador. Mm -hmm. I mean that is a, a highlight wave, a highlight turn that will live on forever. It was huge. It's impactful, and it changed basically the way Olympic qualification played out, too, because she knocked out Aaron Brooks. I had, in that I had never heard of her before that event, and I feel foolish. Like, my scouting report should have gone deeper because she is that great of a surfer, and she's just been constantly improving. I mean, yep. she's not just a one-turn wonder, right? She can do it in any type of ways. Right now, back up against the wall a little bit as Teresa Bonvalot has now opened things up a little bit more extended her lead with a 517 and a 390 Camille Kemp representing Germany who's also fielded their best team ever yep. in ISA competition currently in second Vanderholz third Shino Matsuoda I'm a little shocked right now to see Shino in fourth with only a 283 and a 167 good news for her she does have that top priority spot the bad news is She's got three hunters around her who yep. have been identifying and picking off these medium-sized kind of inside waves. And get a pressure by Teresa, too, right here. Of course. Thought she wouldn't? <laughs> uh, I think this is a, a lot of what we see from European surfers, especially both Portuguese and a lot of the French surfers, too, usually bring you off of the peak in pivotal moments, like right now, less than five minutes ago. Some smart stuff as we look at the last of Teresa right here, 517, kind of missed time, slid out a little bit when she was coming out of that first turn. Recovers super well right there, Quisant. Chris, and fully engages her rails. Smart surfing, not trying to overdo anything. And looking at the front angle right here, this second turn was just beautiful. Great technique. Body always in the right position. And as you can see right there, really drives off of the bottom with that surfboard just being in the right place at the right time. At a pivotal moment of the heat too, she was out of the top two spots for a while. And now both Tiara and Shino needing something in the three point range. Shino's gonna let that wave go and she is just playing with fire right now with just under four minutes because I know the lefts aren't really the best option out there. There might come a point in time where you do have to grind one of those to get a three point ride. Yeah, three minutes, 10 seconds to go now. The tension is rising. These heats are loaded too. I mean, oh yeah, well every, every heat's a final from here on out. Heat five, round Buckle two. Buckle up, Mitchell. <laughs> it's gonna be a wild ride. It's a rude awakening back to the booth for it's me. It's only day two, come on. Tiara Vanderholz now. Trying to get back in the good graces of the judges. Two big turns out the back. She wants a little bit more here through to the inside. Will this wave give her one more opportunity? Setting things up. Patiently waiting, keeping the flow. Is there a section here on the inside? Two and a half minutes to go. She gets it. Mm. Solid turn to finish. Stays on her feet. You're going to have to do better than that, Atlantic Ocean. You're not going <laughs> to knock Tierra Vanderholz off her board that easily. That right there, I feel like. And I'm an amateur judge at best, but I feel like that's going to be her best number. Well, she's needing a mid three. <laughs> You're a professional judge. You I know, tell me. but the one thing I will say, look, looking at the scores in this heat so far, even comparing it to the 3.17 of Camila, there was just more done on better sections on the outside. This wave shouldered off real quick. The best turn was way on the inside, and she was a little bit out of control coming out of it, and that's just being super critical thank you but <laughs> you you can't you can't dock her for her lack of trying though i mean how many people would have put their body on the line to be able to fit that last turn in when she's probably on dry reef at that point too she's still a junior and for her to be able to put up some decent numbers in this heat when you're looking at the heat total so far against three people that have been doing this for way longer than her 
I think it's a testament of what she's really going to become in the future, which is, in my eyes, a superstar if she keeps going on the on the pathway that she's on right now, Chris. Yeah, that number is really going to uh, potentially change everything. Yeah, not enough, a 2.67, so... Yeah, so the impact wasn't there. The final turn was great. Mm -hmm. Everything from the outside section all the way through that mid, the inside was pretty much just setup turns. Judges don't love setups. You know, not only... It, you have to do it in order to keep your speed going, but it takes away from the flow. If they're so combined with... Right there on the line. Major but, turns are fine. Yeah, 45 seconds to go. Worrisome moments right now for Shino Matsuda. Team Japan. Trying to will a wave to the surfer in red, sitting with that top priority spot. Meanwhile, Kamiya Kemp. Late entry into this wave. Gets around the section. Able to fit a turn in, but goes down. Mistimed there. 20 seconds left. Apex Predator, Teresa Bonvalot, in the lead, out the back, in second priority. He has been in command and control of this entire heat. She's staying well away from Shino Matsuda. Maybe she sees a peak coming through. Five seconds left. Heat's over, Chris. Another absolute shocker for Tiara Vanderholz and Shino Matsuda, who both find themselves... Allison Chains said, down in a hole. They're now in the Repicharge round. So we've just unleashed two incredible surfers in that last chance qualifying Repicharge round. But give it up to Camille Kemp and Teresa Bonvalat. That was a grindy heat, Mitch. It was. Well, we're going to take a quick break, but don't go anywhere, because right now we're going to tell you a little bit about the Brazilian threat, Tatiana Weston Webb. Alegre, Brazil, and I was raised in Kauai, Hawaii. Brazil is super special to me and my family because we spent so much time there when we were young, and it's such a special culture. I never thought surfing would be in the Olympics, period. <laughs> Everything about surfing now is so professional and at that top level that I don't see why it wouldn't be in the Olympics. So it's the most rewarding thing for all of the surfers is to see surfing be a part of the Olympics. It's something that I think a lot of surfers never believed that would happen in their lifetime and it is. So it's gonna give a lot of determination and hope for the next generations to come. Double Doves has entered the chat. Tatiana Weston Webb will be going up against Lucy Gerard, Chelsea Tuak, and Coral Wiggins. Costa Rica, Brazil, Barbados, and American Samoa. <laughs> Enter the lineup here in round two, heat six. Chris Cote with Mitchell Salazar. All right, throw it out there. It's pretty obvious on paper, but who would be the favorite to take this heat? Well, like Chelsea Tuak's from pretty close by. Spent a lot of time here in the past. They have professional circuit right here in Puerto Rico that Corona sponsors and you know I, I wouldn't doubt that she is more than capable of taking the entire event out looking to be an Olympian and I saw her and, and her mom Margo at the Pan American Games once again the only two Bayesians that were there for the surfing aspect of it and that's kind of how it's been throughout her entire career the only surfer from that beautiful island in the Caribbean to also qualify for the championship tour and yeah, she is a uh... I would say a big threat, like you said, in waves like this, she's going to be feeling very comfortable. Same water temperature, same bottom contour, mm -hmm. same reef that she's used to surfing over. Tatiana Weston Webb, of course, with her resume, you know, her backhand, of course, yep. in waves like this as a goofy footer. These rights have been giving plenty of opportunity. I almost think, well, especially for Tatiana Weston Webb, goofy footers right now have a slight advantage. 
because if you can drop straight in, come around that section and put your board vertical in the lip in the most critical part of the wave, which is harder to do front side, the judges have been throwing out big numbers for that. We'll see if Chelsea Tuak, see right there, you know, a nice turn, but not in a super critical part of the wave, but she's making it work. So we have shoulders off down the line. So three turns right there. Nothing super impactful, mm -hmm. but a great way to start your heat. Exactly. Get your confidence going, get to work early, and don't wait for those sets to come because they are few and far between, with, especially with those bigger ones, Chris. So good start for Chelsea. It seems like Tati also has 4.67 on the board, and both Lucy and Coral, well, they're looking to get to work and better those twos that they already have on the board. You know, one thing that really stands out from Tati, you mentioned that backhand, and Dude, Coach Cote back in business. Look at you talking about technique and everything. But she is really one of the pivotal surfers and the most important surfers in the entire aspect of women's surfing, too. She charges, great backhand, but most importantly, the way she's opened the doors for a lot of Brazilian females to do well. Well, with 16 minutes to go here, surfers looking for that magic wave to give them the big number. While they search, let's go down to the boardwalk where Rachel Tilly is standing by. You were surfing at El Pico yesterday. Congratulations Red on your win out there today. Green, How did you find those wave. conditions from yesterday to today and surfing at this break? Yeah, thank you so much. And definitely it's so much different, the wave, the power. Uh, the wind came up a bit early, I'll say today, and it's really tricky out there. So I'm just happy that Time I got my two wives. Not something amazing, but I'll deal with it. And the most important thing, it's like you're trying to find red, the best waves that you have in your heat. So yes, I'm stoked to make it through and continue representing Portugal. Absolutely. Well, a win is so a win, and you're through to the next round. You're saying you're feeling really good on this board remaining. right now. This is the same board that you rode yesterday. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're riding? Currently yes, of Blue, course. The heat. It's a Team board Barbados that I've been a trying and uh, I've been working on for for a while. Green. It's Team a Brazil Monster 10. A uh, it's working really place. good. I got a few third, first American ones Samoa, in Bali and then I made some in Australia. And it's working good, like even in smaller ways. So anything that has wires, I'll take this one. Well, it sounds like the good all-arounder for green. multiple different types of waves that we might see you on throughout this week. A strong finish, or a strong start for Team Portugal this morning. You have your other teammates still with heats to come. Will you seconds. go and watch all of their other heats throughout the day, or will you go home and kind of recuperate, drink some water? No, for sure, uh, I'll go watch uh, the rest of the guys and the girls. Uh, we're here uh, doing our heats for ourselves, but supporting the rest of the team. That's the spirit of the ISA, and that's what I love about this event. It's like you with like a team, and normally surfing it's always individual. So yes, uh, I'll keep uh, continue supporting the rest of the team and give uh, my my all uh, watching the heats. Well, congratulations. We're looking forward to seeing you in the upcoming rounds. Thank you. Back to you guys. Thank you, Rachel. Congratulations, Teresa Bonvala. No surprise there. Getting yet another heat win. And I love that she mentioned the spirit of the ISA. We're just here for the cause, right? A better world through surfing. And I love that she said, you got to support your team in the water. You got to support your team out of the water. You know, it's really cool to watch Guys like Gabriel Medina, John John Florence, I mean, the best of the best who, you know, they could be sitting in a VIP suite somewhere, wherever they want. They're here on the beach supporting their teams, and that right there is the spirit of the ISA. But out in the lineup right now, Lucy Gerard representing American Samoa in a big way there. She's surfing with her sister, with her brother. Half the American Samoa team is the Gerard family. <laughs> yeah. And they're all rippers. This is going to be a... A heavy job for all the surfers in the lineup. Chelsea Tua, Coral Wiggins, Tatiana Weston, Webb, Lucy Gerard, they're all on fire right now. Yeah, and Tati, great snap right there in the pocket. Fits one more into, and the best wave of the heat so far, Chris, a 4.67. And this was a, a, the, the wave that you were talking about. Real smooth, nothing real critical, but just ticking every box. I mean, to surf that wave as perfectly as she did, good stuff right there. That's her backup of the, at the moment, gets a 3.5. And then Coral, well, she's on her best right here at 3.07. Might be one of the single best turns we've seen all heat long. And fortunately for her, that wave shoulders off. But she's back into the heat at 3.07.
So at least competing with the big numbers that we've seen so far by the two women in the top two spots. And here we go, Tatiana West and Webb, the wind up, the strike, setting things up on that first turn, waiting for this wave. You give her a little bit of a more critical space to work with. So just kind of three carves down the line. We'll see if that eclipses her 3.6. Got a brilliant photographer out in the lineup. Jerson Barbosa right there. He's been putting up some incredible images yep. via the ISA website at ISA Surf on the gram. Check out Jerson and the rest of our incredibly talented photo team who have literally covered every angle, every heat, every turn. Every day. The crew is on fire. Yeah, Sean Evans, I mean, Jerson Barbosa, and got to give a big shout out to Pablo, our production I mean, crew, yeah. too. I mean, both Pablos are photographers, um, Aaron Hughes, you know, everybody in our production truck, I think they do an amazing job. And remember, th this event's super long for everybody that's involved staff-wise, too. Eight days, and it seems like Tati, well, she's been on a roll in this heat so far, Chris. Well, A-plus surfing demands A-plus productions. We've got Action Sports Productions in the house. We want to welcome Jay Johnson, our fearless leader, back to the team. Been running around making sure the nuts and bolts of the operation are rolling strong. And so far, it's been so good. Both podiums with full coverage right now. If you want to see what's happening on our second podium right now, there's a little tab beneath your viewing window. You can click that and see what's going on over there. We've got men's and women's main event rounds all day long at El Pico and Margara. Right now, all eyes on some of the best women in the world. Round two, heat six in the water with Tatiana Weston Webb representing Team Brazil in the lead with a 4.67 and a 3.6. Chelsea Tuak, Barbados, a 4 and a 3.5. Coral Wiggins with a 3. Lucy Gerard with a 2.5. So everybody's still in this. Just high fours needed to flip the heat for our third and fourth place surfers. For now, Chelsea Tuak does have priority. And she's going to use it on a left hander. Pretty bumpy on the face, but could have an impactful section to work with there. And a convexing set of white waters. <laughs> did not make sense, but neither did the outcome of that turn. Got a little wild there on the inside. Coral Wiggins now. Great style. You know, I, I like how she kind of goes up into that turn and it's like a kind of a, a languid pace. And then she jams down that back yeah. leg and she adds power to the turn. It looks really cool. When she brings it down, it's definitely nice. And, you know, Chelsea was forced to go left on that one. She was looking right, Chris, but a little bit too far behind the peak. And at that point, if you're using priority, you might as well just go on the wave, too. So decides to go left, had the chance, and it seems like that white water when it's coming towards you, it's just coming at such a fast pace. And you're not matching power with power at that point either. So the fall right there for Chelsea. She's still in second place, but, you know, Tati so far, she's been super efficient, a 4.67 and 3.6. And, you know, 11, 12 points, that's really your range if you're looking at two good scores today. You're making most of the heats, I would say. To get 14, 15, that's going to be a very difficult job, and especially considering that not only are a lot of these smaller waves not getting scored that high, there's just not a ton of scoring opportunity on them either. So, once again, I feel like the left should be an option if you're really needing to grind a score but a lot of these right handers especially the double ups they'll offer up at least one good section at the beginning of them yeah i feel like with eight and a half to go if you're sitting on a four six a four it's time to crack the whip you know do that one big mm -hmm. potent turn throw the tail give the judges a view of something a little bit different we'll see if tati does that right here winds up straight up in the lip just <laughs> like you. that yeah, I did. I almost, I think I heard that too yeah. from way over here. So thanks, Chris. Nobody cracks the whip like Tatiana Weston Webb on her backhand right there. That was just a textbook, perfect backside snap. You look it up in the dictionary. It's a video of that turn right there. And the criteria was well used on that wave too. Speed, power, flow. But to me, what stood out here was the timing. Great technique. I mean, meets the lip line at the right time and then just adds on a little bit more with that one carve at the end. So not only going to replace the 3.6, more than likely going to be the best way of the heat too, Chris. Some good stuff. And just to be able to handle that pressure in the moment, use priority the right way. I mean, it's noticeable that she's been a runner-up to the, to the world title to Carissa Moore before, but she's been a gold medalist at the ISA level as well. And 
you know, competed for Hawaii for many years. Now has been representing Brazil for a good number of years, too. 5.83 extends her lead, Chris, and in a commanding position right now, entering double digits. First time we've seen it in a few heats. Yeah, and if Tatiana Westenweb can earn a spot at Chopo for the upcoming Paris 2024 Olympic Games, I mean, she's right there mm -hmm. in the top title contender position. Yeah, well, I mean, coming off of the win at the Pan American Games uh, as well, uh, she beats a Noel, and it, it was huge, by the way. I, I was there, and I was able to witness a lot of these women charging over there, but her confidence is high right now. Lucy Gerard, great stylish surfer representing American Samoa by way of Oceanside, California. Great combo there. She has a really cool mix of kind of that traditional, you know, 70s super stylish form, but with a cutting edge rail game. Mm -hmm. And I love to see a mix of kind of the traditional with the modern. And Lucy Gerard showing it right there. Needs a 493. Pretty good series of maneuvers right there. Was I agree. it super fast? But each turn was done nicely. Good flow down the line. It's well, going to be an interesting score to come through for Lucy Gerard. It's by far her best wave, and they reside on the west side of Oahu now. So there's a lot of waves that are actually quite similar to no this, more including Makaha. <laughs> no, not at the moment. Yeah, but American Samoa. First time I haven't seen Joe Wilson, Liam's father, at the event. It's kind of surprising to me. I don't know if he was busy with work or something else, but... Liam made it through yesterday. You know, Jonah had a good performance, and now Sive and Lucy on the women's side, they're looking good, too. Like if she took off behind the peak right there, it put her in a great position. Well, that's exactly what you were talking about earlier. On the second wrap, I mean, really brings it down a little bit more. So there was variation in those two turns. They're very similar, but just out of that little bit of extra spice right there at the end and still waiting for that score. I mean, she needs close to a five-point ride for second place. Don't know if it's going to be that, but by far her best wave, Chris, and... You're just seeing evolution in her surfing throughout each and every event that we're seeing her at, too. Because, remember, both Lucy and Sive compete at the at the longboard competition, too. So, no slouches on a longboard themselves. Yeah, it was just a fun wave to watch. Made well, me feel good. You want to you be able to do that yourself. Exactly. Then you go out and do it, and you're like, okay. I mean, I wish my style was even close to as good as Lucy Gerard's. What? I've seen you surf before. 4.45 to go. Tatiana Weston-Webb in the lead and in that second priority spot right now. Chelsea Tuak in the top priority spot with a 4 and a 3.5. Coral Wiggins right there needing a 4.43. Lucy Gerard needs a 4.93. Well, they're taking their time. Boom, just Whoa. like that. A 4.93 gets enough. Lucy Gerard now jumps up into that second place spot. American Samoa represent. Chelsea Tuak drops a third. Coral Wiggins from Puerto Vida, nation of Costa Rica, now in fourth place. But both Chelsea and Coral only needing mid-rangers. A 3-5-1, a 4-4-4. They know what that feels like. They know what the wave has to be like to get that number. Now it's just a matter of time. Chelsea, though, in the best position in that top priority spot, meaning she has her pick of waves. Nobody can test. Nobody can contest yeah. her for the wave she wants. It, unconditional right away, so, you know, they can look at it, but they can't force you into making a mistake once you're riding the wave. And three minutes 40 to go, it was a split decision on the panel's behalf. A couple of people still had Chelsea in second place, and as of right now, they're tied. But since Lucy has the best wave out of the two surfers, she's in second place. And, you know, I, I think it just comes down to what you were mentioning, always being behind the peak a little bit more and really accentuating in the pocket, as we saw right there from Gerard. That second turn, I think, to me, was the pivotal point on that wave. And as of right now, Chelsea, who was leading the heat at that point, too, gets dropped down a third and needing a 3-5-1 with three minutes to go. She's going to need a clutch wave right here at the end, Chris, to move back up into the top two spots. Well, we've got three minutes left here in round two, heat six. Could be seeing a Cinderella story develop. For one surfer representing American Samoa in Lucy Gerard, I would say she has come through here in 2024 vastly improved uh, since no 2022, where she was a great surfer already. Mm -hmm. But just in those short couple of years, I mean, you can tell she's been putting in work and well, she's ripping that 493. I mean, that right there, turning point in this heat for Lucy. You go from surfing go side most of the time, which is a, a tough beach break, but super consistent. And then imagine going straight to a lot of point breaks and reef breaks on the west side of Oahu. Big difference. Well, Chelsea Tilak has something to say about that. 
right there was a great way to start this wave. A beautiful turn for Tuak. I mean, the technique, the form, the style, it's all in the exact place she wants it to be. And even though this wave is kind of running away from her, did give her a little chance to kind of add mm -hmm. some stylistic elements Smart. to the end of that wave. She kind of told a story all down the line, but that first turn was wicked. We'll see what the judges have to say about it. Meanwhile, Lucy Gerard going left. These lefts are pretty wild, wonky. Ooh, a little low road. She, she was needing that, though, if she was trying to better the 2.57. And that's another thing that she's improved on too. Her awareness within a heat, as we saw Tati right there, that's a paddle she's gonna go down to second priority. But we probably hadn't seen that from Lucy a couple years ago. So right. at least she recognized that Chelsea got a wave. There's a chance that she's probably gonna get the 351. All you needed to do was improve on the 2.57. So that's another big development for her. And in those heats that you don't end up making through, you always gotta look at the positive things that you did do. And as of right now, that to me is a good indication of things to come for Lucy Girard. Yeah. I think it's going to be close with two ox three five one requirement though. Had a uh, good combo yeah. at the beginning. Just that 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 first turn she did was clean. It was precise. Threw a ton of spray. You know, it's not in the judging criteria in writing, but when you're throwing a lot of spray, it means that you know you're you're using power, you're using flow, you're using speed. Here's that first turn. Yeah, really nice technique right in the pocket too, under the lip, which was a smart decision to make too, Chris, because if she would have tried to push her fins outside, she probably wouldn't have been able to complete it and was able to accentuate with a couple more carves right here, which is just smart at this point. But it did you notice? I, I do not use this word lightly. That turn was sick. It was. And she never shifted her feet either. Flow, you know, like style. Technique and just patience too. I mean... Only surfer from Barbados to qualify for the championship tour. I think that says a lot, too. Yeah, she did when she was 17. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so high heat IQ, no doubt. And she jumps into second place just like that with a 5-2-7. Well rewarded for that opening snap. Coral Wiggins now needs a 6-2-0. She got one pretty solid wave at the beginning. Yeah. Other than that, she's kind of been on those medium-sized waves that have been pretty shouldery. There is luck involved in these heats. And if you get kind of out of that top, that rotation for set waves, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to run through. So Tatiana Weston Webb, along with Chelsea Tuak, basically the numbers set it early on. Those were the two favorites in that heat, but give it up. Lucy Gerard and Coral Wiggins putting up a big fight. I'm gonna put Lucy Gerard in that most improved category. No doubt. Both those surfers will be in the Rupa Shards round where pretty confident they're both gonna make their way through at least a few more heats. They are incredible surfers with a lot more to give here in Puerto Rico. Speaking of a lot more, we've got more to give you, the surf fans, because the next heat is packed with talent. Global superstars, rising threats, it's all happening here in Puerto Rico. This is the 2024 ISA World Surfing Games. We'll be right back. Boricua, a unique name honoring our island heritage and the vibrant spirit of our people. When you bask in the warmth of our beaches, when you taste the love in our food, when you embrace the call of our adventures, you'll find that spirit in yourself. Dare to live every moment. Live Boricua.
welcome back to the action on day two of the 2024 ISA World Surfing Games. Out in the water right now for women's round two, heat number seven is the three-time gold medalist in Sally Fitzgibbons out of Australia, up against Mexico's Sydney Ott, New Zealand's Paige Harab, and Colombia's Isabella Gomez. This was a heat that when I saw pop up on the draw bar and I pointed it out to you, I got so excited knowing that this is, you know, going to be a really interesting one to see who comes out on top. Paige Harab, an eight, uh, has had in her history of competitive surfing eight years on the WSL Championship Tour. Uh, Sally Fitzgibbons, of course, multiple winners of the gold medal for the ISA World Surfing Games. So she kind of has this format pretty tapped into yeah. <laughs> compared to most surfers. Very um, comfortable in this environment, very comfortable in the in the world surfing games and as all Yeah, as well as having, you know, so many years over a decade on the women's championship tour. Sydney Ott from Mexico. Kind of that, you know, rising star that we're keeping an eye on to see what can come from her out of Encinitas, California, but proudly representing her family's heritage out of Mexico. Great addition to that team as well as Izzy Gomez out of Colombia, who's one of the best big wave chargers and one of those real well-rounded well surfers that you think of in the same kind of category as a Justine DuPont. Yeah. You can surf any craft and do it very, very well. That's a, and that's a massive compliment. I, I personally consider Justine DuPont perhaps the best female surfer in the world, what yeah. she can do across all types of conditions and particularly at the biggest end. I love the energy in this one beautiful turn you see that little whip at the end yeah, of it and the board cool. looks so nice underneath the feet and it was it was really beautiful surfing this is the replay of the 417 for Paige Harrod from New Zealand as you said extremely experienced very sort of strong competitive mindset always ready to compete had a shocker at the world surfing games last year in El Salvador where she there was the the continental qualification spots right it was europe asia oceania and africa and for the oceania region Paige was kind of sitting a little bit higher up in the rankings than her teammate in safi vetti and it's likely that it's going to be a kiwi that gets that ranking because the australian um, qualifiers will fill through the championship tour just with the fact that it tends to have you know at least a few surfers on the championship tour out of australia yep. on the men's and women's side each year if not half the draw sometimes <laughs> um so it often lands that it it's kind of uh, new zealand is the favored nation running into that qualification and for Paige, two years running now into tokyo now into paris she's just missed out on that qualification unfortunately but at last year's world surfing games she was in a really prime position. She was still in that main side of the draw, and she blew her knee out mid-event. I can't remember if it was an MCL or an ACL, but it was something very serious. And because of that, then trying to surf through that injury, she just wasn't able to literally even do turns Ugh. on a board, and so she ended up losing out a little bit early on, which then her teammate Safi Vetti rose to the occasion. She surfed brilliantly and made it through the heats that she needed to to get that qualification for Oceana because she still needed to do a lot of work to get there as well. So it's really exciting to see kind of the grommet in the conversation, walk away with that position. But now Paige has that opportunity this year to find herself a slot within that top eight eligible woman, and she could be on her way there. Izzy Gomez now up and riding for Team Columbia. Nice smooth surfing as she just digs that rail in and puts that board right in the perfect position. Those outside cars were really just pristine for her to be opening up on waiting a few minutes to get her opening wave and knowing how good she is in big surf great to see how loose and lively she was on that small wave there well-rounded so that that's you know you've got to be you've got to be well-rounded to be considered one of the best surfers in the world you need to be able to do it whether it's big or small left or right onshore offshore whatever the conditions are and we saw that wind threatened to come up a little earlier and you can see a bit of a ruffle on the surface but really it's it's held off and cleaned up and the wave faces look beautiful still so that that's you know great for the rest of the day yeah, sydney you, having a look here even though you have that texture on the outside you got nice clean faces like this that sydney's dropping into nice arcing cut back to start things off with she'll kick out after that single maneuver Paige in the lead, now Sally Fitzgibbons up and riding. She's got a one on the board so far. Now starting to unleash on her first proper wave. 
two powerful cutbacks. Just kind of bouncing along there to try and make it down to the bottom of that wave. It's not going to offer her anything regardless, but she made the most of those first two opening turns and only chasing a 2-2-1 two, two, at the moment to make a difference. And they were powerful. There was drive and determination and passion in it. You could feel that. Yes. We've got scores now to drop through for Sally Fitzgibbons. Awesome to see, I think, Team Australia give her the call-up for this event. Mm. Um, of course, she's now back onto the championship tour this season, but there's a couple other surfers that could have also fielded this position, kind of looking at the, the way the qualifications have worked um, heading towards the Olympics. Let's take a look at this at this replay. Drives out of the bottom, lays it over, and you can see there's emotion and passion. Even you can see it in her face as well as in her technique and her style. Desperately trying to get another turn in on the inside. Doesn't make it there, but those turns were beautiful, and the judges are going to score that well. Five points, there you go. They did indeed. Five points for two, two nice, beautiful wrapping cutbacks. Sally Fitzgibbons into that leading position with a five-point ride on the board. She now takes away the lead over the rest of the field for Mexico, New Zealand, and Colombia. And we've got 11 minutes, 30 seconds on the clock. As we wait for the next set, let's go down to the beach, catch up with Rachel Tilly and Tatiana Weston-Webb. Congratulations, Tatiana, through to another round out here. You've just come from Hawaii. It was a really quick turnaround. We were just talking about you managing sleep and getting straight back out into heats. Now, the difference between your heats from Hawaii, where they're two-man heats, they're a lot longer. You're into four-man heats, 20 minutes long. How do you find that adjustment, your strategy change, and all of that? I think I just... Uh, use my experience you know it's been so many years of competing at ISA I've done it since I was 16 so maybe even younger I'm not sure but <laughs> yeah it's so many years of experience surfing at ISAs and the CTs as well you know so I think it's easy at this point to transition um, from one event to the other um, that being said it's not easy transitioning so quickly uh, usually we have a few days in between but we literally left Hawaii and started competing the next day that we arrived here so it was definitely a quick turnaround but um, yeah I'm, lu I'm lucky because I slept pretty well the last few nights and um, feeling good and yeah really just grateful to be surrounded by my awesome team I love Chimi Brazil they're the best <laughs> yeah well talking about that that's one of the the best things about ISA is having that opportunity to enjoy the team spirit to not just be competing on an individual standpoint you guys have such a strong team going into this year how is that feeling how do you enjoy being representing your country yeah I've said this before but I definitely love the team aspect uh, especially I think the morale is just always boosted and it's just always higher you know it's a really cool feeling in comparison to competing by yourself with a small team so um, yeah I know that our team is gosh it's really great you know like everyone's ripping and um, you know we have chances for more Olympic spots to clutch so I know that my whole team is really focused and um, yeah I just hope everyone has a really great time and does well. Well, it looked like the energy was up. We saw after Felipe's win last night, you guys were going up through the golf the golf cart, through all the crowd, cheering and yelling, waving flags. That was great to see. Do you have anything you'd like to say back to Brazil? Yes. Oi, todo mundo. Conseguimos passar mais uma. Bora torcer para as outras meninas e os outros meninos. Tamo junto. Muito obrigado pela torcida. Thank you, and good luck for your next round. <laughs> back to you guys. Thanks so much, Rachel. Tati, of course, took out the win last year at the World Surfing Games mm -hmm. and put together a really stellar performance. She'll be one of those names that uh, could be looking to try and match what Sally Fitzgibbons has brought from that caliber of surfing, that experience now into the World Surfing Games fighting for that gold medal. And at the Pan Americans. So very dominant in this, this type of competition. It is quite different as we started to talk about yesterday a little bit about the you know the man on man 30 minute heats the four people 20 minute heats very different style of competing and obviously it suits Sally Fitzgibbons extremely well. Sydney Ott now up and riding she's chasing a 3.72 to get herself into the top two. They like her style and approach as she's just cruising down the line sets herself up after those couple of turns. It is really interesting to think about Tati you know competing both 
for the World Surfing Games last year. Obviously, she needed that for her qualification towards the Olympics that so was earned through the World Surf League mm -hmm. uh, Tour and her being within that top eight eligible on that side of things. She needed to be present for the World Surfing Games, but she didn't need to compete at the Pan American Games. That wasn't a requirement for her. For her to decide to show up on behalf of Brazil to compete just as, you know, another event in the calendar as we take a look at this replay quickly. Drops down. First cutback was nice. Comes out of the top there. Was hoping for another section, but a nice clean kick out. And there's a there's a, a, a subtle elegance to the way she surfs. It's really, there's a prettiness to it at times that just looks so lovely. And um, I think Sydney's got a big future ahead of her, that's for sure. Yeah, I agree. The grace within her surfing is really outstanding. Oh. Izzy Nichols, or sorry, Izzy uh, Gomez with a solid turn to start off on that wave. Now just going to see if this will give her reform. Not quite there. So back to that conversation about Tatiana. She didn't need to surf the Pan American Games, but decided to go and represent her country and make Brazil proud and, and have an opportunity to get another, you know, notch kind of in her competitive repertoire of events. Yeah. And I think that's such a smart move heading into an Olympic cycle year because she's going to be competing in the Olympics again in a different format that's more similar to the ISA. And the more events she gets that are in that sort of similar realm, that sort of similar conversation, it's going to give her that much more experience to pull from when she's in an Olympic heat. 100%. Paige Harrop up and riding. Here we go. She's got a lethal backhand and she just pushed a little too hard maybe on that opening turn. Yeah, that was unfortunate. First priority wasted essentially on that one and and you know with four people you don't have first priority that often in a 20 minute heat four priority rotation so when you've got it to not use it and make it count can be so 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 damaging to your overall result well sally fitzgibbons sitting in a commanding lead a couple fives on the board looking for something bigger but progression is what she's been all about and let's hear more from her own mouth on where she's at with that Everyone's like, oh no, the Olympic Games aren't on. And I'm like, well, it's just, you know, the party's still gonna happen, just not right now. And so it does, it gives you this breathing space, this room to kind of figure out in your surfing and your performance. Like I've been around quite a while now. So it's like, you know, to show up again and think like that the sport doesn't move or the performance level doesn't elevate would be quite kind of like ignorant in a sense. The greats of the game have always been willing to evolve and, and kept that beginner's mindset and youthfulness so even in this COVID time I sort of peeled back and gone like what can't I do on my board and yet to experience for me my heart kind of lies in progression at the moment and pushing you know to go to the air I've always kind of in a sense wanted to fly instead of going out and training and um, you know performing everything and there's this kind of perfection element or bow wrapped around it it's been the complete opposite in in a time like COVID it's like rarely making a move because the ones I'm trying I can't do yet. So there's been about a thousand face plants, a lot of ice packs, but I feel like I'm slowly chipping away. <laughs> I love that idea of, of rarely making, rarely finishing a wave because everything mm. she's trying is something that would be brand new for her to actually be landing and completing. Yeah, it's something that she's had in her mind for quite some time. Mm. We worked together a few years back and that was, you know, the Project Air was a part of, of the work we did and uh, she, she come a long way. And I think it's fair to say that Sally is doing, although she didn't qualify for the, the World Championship Tour, Requalified through the champion, uh, the qualifying series challenger series. Izzy Gomez up and riding gets the cutback. It's caught up in that white water. I was going to say about Sally. I think it's fair to say she's doing the best surfing of her career right now. So the best could still be ahead of her. She's one of those surfers that's had all of those moments of you know near perfection, glimmers here and there, and, and then so close to winning world titles. And then she's had all that success here in the ISAs with the with the gold medals and finally got that Olympic debut as well. But we know that there's still so much more to come out of a surfer like her. And she has the drive and the hunger. To me, she reminds me a lot of Kelly Slater in that he just, I mean, the man's 50 plus years old. He's still on the championship tour and will, will not retire yet. We'll see when that day finally comes. Yes. But he's someone that's there because he clearly loves it. He has that competitive drive that's just 
enough to continue carrying him through. Yeah. Obviously, his surfing is there as well to carry him through with it because there's a lot of people that I'm sure would love to be doing that and, and can't stay on tour. Yeah. For Sally, she's it's so similar in kind of where she's at with that. I think that of of everyone that I'm looking at in her pack, she's got so much hunger to still be right there in the midst of it yeah. all. No matter if it's the highs and lows. I think the primary difference is that Kelly has that desire with 11 world titles yes. still in his tank. <laughs> you know what I mean? A little and, bit different, but ooh. we do have... Wow, that is an unfortunate mistake from Paige Harrop. According to our priority on the board right now, it was Sydney Ott with second priority, Paige Harrop with third priority, which means that Sydney had the right of way on that wave. Paige would have not realized that, not seen her. We'll get a look at the replay just to kind of be able to break yeah. it down a little bit better. But I do believe that Paige is going to end up with a priority interference, which is going to be a real bummer for her efforts within this heat let's take another look at this here wave comes in sally with first priority decides against it page goes well i'm gonna go swings drives around it oh yeah no there's no question about that in my mind it's got to be an interference and it was you know she needed to it was premature she needed to wait and see what sydney was going to do and, and gauge it from there but she just charged at it one minute 30 on the clock sally sally up and riding Nice corner goes for the layback snap, adding in some variety for the panel. That was fun to watch. But for Paige, wow. I mean, for Sydney, that was really smart surfing. Yeah. That was incredibly intelligent in that moment for her to be able to flip to see that Paige had gone underneath, have her priority, take off kind of late on that wave as well. But still in a great position to have a, a decent wave. Yeah, it makes you think about Sally with first priority. It was most probably a better wave than she just caught. So, a few mistakes there. Sydney up and riding again. Sydney on her forehand, just a smaller wave, kind of keeping things interesting. Now, had Paige seen that Sydney was going to drop in and had straightened out and yes. kicked out to the left, specifically into the whitewater, and not crossed her line, would have been fine. But the fact that Paige bottom turned yeah. across that line, we've seen the interference now show up. And with that priority interference specifically it means that her second scoring wave will no longer count and she'll just be relying on the strength of one as we've taken a look at this one from south yes yeah, uh, kind of it was forced wasn't it you know it was kind of a, it didn't feel smooth and controlled it was kind of a first forced top turn comes from behind the white water look at the pumping and the trying there to try to build the speed to do something radical because i think she recognized that it wasn't going to be a score without something radical be interesting to see how the judges feel about that one five and a five seven zero before it the big layback snap little kind of, yeah it, it didn't really do it for me in that sense that it was a little bit kind of uh forced but you never know there was a radical element to it that and a drama to it that sometimes gets rewarded well Paige harrod making her way in there obviously disappointed while the judges still consider that last ra wave of sally's so it's Sally done. Fitzgibbons currently sitting in the lead. This heat has wrapped, and we're just waiting for a final score for Sally. She'll be holding on to that first place position, though, with Izzy Gomez through in second for Team Columbia. And Sydney Ott finishes out in third for Mexico with Paige Harrop falling out in fourth with that priority interference, meaning that she would have only had one score counting in that 4.17. And so she'll be relegated to the rapid charge round, and she'll have a bit of work in front of her now to keep herself in that conversation towards Olympic qualification at the end of this week. Yeah, 4.07 for Sally, not in the top two, still gets the win and uh, advances through, but again, rep charge round for third and fourth, so no one out. Solid surfing from Fitzgibbons with the layback. We've got more action to come when we return. Heat number eight hitting the lineup. something profoundly spiritual about riding waves. Water is transformative, healing. You're at the mercy of Mother Nature. 
the ever-changing movement of water. The ocean is the great equaliser. You don't need to belong to a certain race, religion or gender to surf. The pursuit of these fleeting walls transcends sport. It's a way of life. And surfing has the power to change the world and has now taken its place on the world's greatest sporting stage, the Olympic Games. The International Surfing Association is the world's governing body of surfing, recognised by the International Olympic Committee with member nations around the globe. This is the International Surfing Association. This is a better world through surfing. The ISA strives to advance the sport of surfing by crowning world champions in multiple event disciplines each year. The World Surfing Games gathers the best national surfing teams to compete for gold. Since Olympic inclusion, the event has become a key part of the qualification pipeline for surfing in the Olympic Games. The World Junior Surfing Championship, which has celebrated surfing's youth since 1980, is a breeding ground for future generations of surfers, spawning the world champions of tomorrow. The World Sup and Paddleboard Championship combines the disciplines of sup surfing, sup racing and paddleboard racing into the world's most recognised event in stand-up paddle sports. The World Para Surfing Championships gives universal access and opportunity to para-athletes to achieve sporting excellence. The World Longboard Championship showcases traditional longboard surfing, highlighting the style, flow and grace of this classic discipline. The quality and credibility of every competition hinges on the education of our officials. The ISA offers globally standardised certification courses for surf coaches and judges. A global standard adaptive surf certification program ensures instructors and therapists will be adequately trained and have the knowledge and tools to improve the skills of adaptive surfers. Global development of the sport across competitive and grassroots levels is a key element of the ISA mission. The ISA offers a scholarship program to young surfers who are outstanding role models in their communities and aids them in their education and surfing ambitions. Water connects the world, uniting us all, and together we can all create a better world through surfing. Welcome back to heat number eight, round two of our women's division. Main round still for the ISA World Surfing Games here in Puerto Rico. Argentina, Israel, Peru, and Italy in the water right now. Top two surfers will be advancing through into the main round. Bottom two will fall into rapid charge rounds to be run later this week. Out in the lineup right now, we have Emily Gossani for Team Italy up and riding. The beautiful looking wave in front of her. Nice carve to start, kind of cuts it short as she sets up for this next section. Sees that boil out in front, the wave kind of fizzles out in front of her. And she's gonna continue to build on her score line. She's already got a six on the board that we missed during the break and now dropping in a second wave in the water against Arena Rodriguez of Peru, Vera Aris of Argentina and Noah Lelior for Israel. It's gonna be an exciting one. Just 15 minutes remaining out of 20 minutes on the clock. Six point ride for Emily, the Italian. What a great start that is. One of the better scores we've seen this morning to start your heat. Really putting her on the front foot. Here we go, having a look in the red. Vera with a 3.33 already on the board. Now a paddle for the goofy foot, squaring off the bottom straight into the lip. That first turn. <laughs> Links it up into the section for the second. Little cut back to finish. And has a little stoked moment there on the end of that wave for Argentina. We didn't get to have a look at her first wave. Now getting to see some combination surfing. 
snaps out of the top. Another wrapping cutback, looking fluid and fast on this inside as it stands up. This would be the 333, you would think. Beautiful surfing. Powerful, clean, fluid. The six point ride for the opener of Emily Gassani. Beautiful first turn. There's the money turn on the inside as the wave got all wild and woolly. She just looked calm and composed, waiting for it to stand up on the inside here. Another nice wrap and still going. Long, long ride all the way through. One more on the inside. Snap. Catches a little bit of a rail, but the, the good work was done already. And Reina Rodriguez for Team Peru. Oh, ladies, lesser known names in this heat, but the performance you can see, you know, this is a good example of that leveling of the, the playing field internationally. All these ladies are ripping. Noah Lelior, her older sister, will be coming up in the next heat, and that's a big re-entry to try and finish on. Taking a look now at the 237, which was the last wave for Emily. So a lot of action to start off this heat, Barton. Absolutely. And, and great wave selection from Emily. Two big ones. Look at this. I love this angle. Bang out of the top. Nice re-entry. Comes off the bottom. Powerful bottom turn. Looked like she was almost going to overpower the wave with her own power, but it didn't happen like that. It was just a nice flow to things. 417. So 12 minutes, 25 seconds on the clock. Situation with all scores in for the waves that we have seen ridden so far and priority is set. Surfer in green, Arena Rodriguez of Peru has first priority. Blue is second priority. Noah Lelior of Israel. They're both sitting in those third and fourth place positions with kind of low scores as the requirements. But you notice white moving away from green and blue, strategically smart move. There's no sitting there with first and second priority. Two wave sets at the most. We really haven't seen many three wave sets. So you know in a two wave set, they're gonna get them. You may as well move away and try and create some opportunity for yourself where they can't block you or stop you. So you can see Emily Gassoni thinking and, and, and using good strategy to continue to maintain her lead. She wants to improve on that 237 as quickly as she can. Sitting under priority as well, but holding on to that leading position. An opportunity to improve on the 237. Just one turn available on that wave as it just tapers off. I don't think it does it. I don't think that improves. It was a big wave, the 237. There was a loss of the rail in the big carve out of the top that really hurt the scorer of that particular wave. The wave itself was most probably at least a four, just the wave. So, you know, I, I thought even the way it was surfed might have been a little better than the, the score that came in. But, I, you know, thinking about it must have been the loss of control of the rail. Here we go. Priority with Rodriguez. Too Have a look at this one. Too deep. Way too deep. See where this set starts to break. If Noah's in position, she's just caught it a little bit deep on that one as well. She'll have to go under. And we've got 10 minutes, 30 seconds on the clock. We've got Sally Fitzgibbons down on the beach with Rachel Tilly. Congratulations, Sally. Day two and second heat win of the event. How did you feel out there? How did you find Magara? Oh, that's so cool. I just, the format's so interesting because you meet all these different nations. Like, as everyone says, it's just mixing up the draw and um, going out. And there's uh, a lot on the line for, for all of us. So i uh, just jostling for that first one. Obviously, it's quite a predominant peak in the right. And um, yeah, so it's that balance of getting waves, but you really want to push it too because the level's there, but you want to have some impact. So there's a few hits, a few misses, but um, winning that heat was, um, yeah, I was stoked with that. Well, talking about that, there's a lot of heats looking ahead throughout this week. It's a long event, hopefully a lot of heats that are you're going to surf coming up. How do you prefer, prepare for an event like this with so much surfing on the line? Oh, I just channel you in a grom. But the thing is, like, you can't kind of pace yourself because you do that and you're out the door. So it's, um, it's something you just got to trust in your training. Um, and, yeah, just channel that internal grom. I, I just love competing. I love the game, and that's why I'm here. And uh, so the more the better. And, um, yeah, I'm just looking forward to getting to know the waves a lot better. And um, But so far, it's, uh, it's a super cool place here in Puerto Rico. 
Coming straight from Hawaii, how does your equipment differ here than what you were riding over there? Yeah, I think a lot of the, um, the tour crew have been saying it's a little adjustment back on the shortboards, uh, but it's kind of cool to push through and like see the tail release and uh, kind of feel the, the boards just kind of sharpening up and um, hopefully yeah, as the week goes on we can um, push into that progressive space and um, yeah, everyone will be, have some good sleeps by then and over the jet lag, but um, yeah, so I'm stoked to be back on the shortboards and Glenn Pang and the crew back at TC, thanks for sorting us out and the boards are going good. Well, we're excited to see you throughout this week. You're surfing amazing. It's only the beginning of former ISA gold medalist already. So I can't wait to see what you have left in store for us. Oh, it's going to be an exciting week. So stay tuned, guys. And uh, big hi back to Australia. I know it's super early, so thanks for getting up. And love you guys heaps. Back to you guys. Thanks so much, Rachel. Gromit, Sally Fitzgibbons with the heat win. Victorious out here at Margara in Puerto Rico. Big adjustments riding uh, different size boards from one event to the next when there isn't really even that time to possibly get a free surf in. Mm. Just paddling out on a board a little different than what they've been riding for the last month or so. Oh yeah, you definitely feel super loose, super squirrely under your feet. You don't, you're used to driving the line and driving the rail and it definitely takes some, uh, takes some, some getting used to and just a little bit of assimilation to the environment and to the hours and to the boards we got seven minutes 30 seconds remaining on the clock and it's been a big day of surfing on the women's podium here at Margara. the men have continued their day of surfing down at el pico which is where the women were competing yesterday and let's check out some waves that were ridden throughout the morning Kali bast already qualified for the Tokyo, sorry, the uh, Paris Olympics. This was an eight point ride for Kali Bast, representing France from Tahiti. Jack Robinson got a piece of the action as well, Barton. You can see this is when that wind was up. You can see the chop on the face, but look at the score. <laughs> he just looks, you know, I suppose he's so powerful and so used to the power of Hawaii. It's making these, these smaller waves look like so much fun. Ramsey with an eight point ride. Jack had a seven on that wave. Ramsey out of that is incredible surfing from the Moroccan. <laughs> wow. And then Ethan Ewing going just slightly better with an 8.10 for the Aussie contingency. Beautiful turns out of the top. And you kind of, part of me goes, wow, they look like better than those scores that they're getting. They're surfing so good for those, those scores. Just going excellent on that, barely. Billy Stearman out of New Zealand found himself a 7.33. The left's really just standing up. Great, great maneuver waves at El Pico. Magara, more of a tube in theory, but the surfing performances of the males down there is quite incredible. That was a that was a highlight reel for sure. Arena Rodriguez now up and riding on her forehand. Nice big wrap, keeping those arms spread out with the wingspan straight up into the lip. She's looking for a 4.25 to take the lead away from Emily Gassoni. Now, Emily from Italy, representing Italy, but lives and resides in Costa Rica at Playa Jaco. And she's just opened a, a hostel there called Sunny's Hostel. And it's at Bowles. So if you're in that area of the world, you've got a great place to stay, a great surf coach as well. As we take a look now at Vera for Argentina. Nice opening turn. She doesn't have a huge requirement in front of her. A 3.67 Barton. Talk to me about where the scale might be in comparison to, you know, a lot of these waves that have that more flat surface to them, that horizontal surface, horizontal surfing, sorry. Mm -hmm. In comparison to that more vertical surfing, when we're trying to go from those kind of mid range threes up into the four, 4.5s closer to those five point range scores. Yeah, you've got, to, you've got to be going into the lip. You've got to be connecting with the top of the wave. We saw Sally Fitzgibbons get a five for two cutbacks, but it was the power and the energy, the, the emotion in those cutbacks uh, that, that the judges felt. And you imagine you're a judge and you sat there yesterday and judged 30 heats. And then you rock up this morning and you're judging again. They don't want to just see surfing. They want to feel something in your performance. And that's where, where you've got to really 
find the, the emotion and the passion within yourself to put that onto the wave face and then you get those massive scores because they're feeling what you do rather than just watching it, you know. So there's that opportunity to connect energetically with the judges or oh, look at this big set wave. Noah needs this one. This is the sort of wave that could make you feel something as she goes in for that first turn. Just gets a little bit caught there, a little bit of a wobble, but redeems herself now as she stays low and compressed. Another one of those examples of a long wait into a wave that you might not think was the one you were waiting for. I don't feel like it was, you know. Um, three minutes 40 on the clock, so still time for another one. She's in third, pl uh, fourth place, only looking for a 4.9. I don't feel like that was a 4.9. Um, there was a little period there after the first turn where she got caught up in the white water a little bit. Um, so that might have been a mistake. A 293 comes through, so not the score she needs. Still in fourth place and down in the fourth priority. So she should just stick where she is, keep the distance between her and those other three surfers, and um, hope that Mother Nature throws one her way. Yeah, that wave looked like it was going to shape yeah. up to be one that had everything she'd be looking totally. for. It had all that scoring potential, and it just didn't really... It's a tough gig The way surfing. it kind of hit that reef. Every wave hits it just slightly different. As we take a look now at Vera. She's still chasing that 3.67 and an end section like that could do it. She's able to ride out, but those are also those moments where you have to stay st stay tall on your feet. Ride out with a lot of confidence. Yeah, I, I, know, I agree. It could have done it. It was so close, but I think with that getting tangled up in the white water, that's going to put an end to the opportunities for that to be what she needed. 3.76. Already had the 417, so you know, absolutely capable. First and second priority right there. And um, with two minutes and 20 on the clock, I could imagine that you could nearly tag team this one and you go you see, to your opponent. You know, I used to kind of go, hey, you look after green, I'll look after blue, or you look after red, I'll look after blue, and, and split with uh, the first and second priority and take care of the back end of the heat and make sure that you get through. That six-point ride, still the heat standard from Emily, significantly better than anything else. It was a really nice shape to that wave as well when we got to see that replay, a bit more size to it. Yeah. And we haven't seen another wave really of that quality within this heat. No. Maybe the 237, the second one Emily got was the other wave of that size and quality just lost a rail in a turn and wasn't able to get the maximum points that were on offer in that particular wave. That's a good point about Emily surfing and like you know her kind of competitive strategy within this. She was she's been on the best two waves of the heat. Yes, without a doubt. Yes, and, and now that, been sitting with first priority for quite some time. Yeah, she's been in control, up and riding again now. Our heat leader looking to improve on a 2.37. Couple cutbacks. I don't feel like that does it. I don't think it improves. The other view, remembering back to that big one, she came from deep, raced along, went up to the lip, got a carve out of the top, lost the rail for a little bit, another cutback. I think that was better. I don't know that that's going to improve. Um, again, second priority. 2.10. Okay, so there you go. So just under, doesn't improve. So that was a mistake with first priority. That was a clear mistake. And if anything happened by chance, she's like, that six is the savior, isn't it? That's going to most probably ensure right from the start, you drop a six, you feel like, well, I need a three and we're good. You know, we're going to have a total that will get us through. 30 seconds on the clock. Noah, Noah with second priority. She's having a deep paddle for this wave. It's a little bit smaller, but it, ooh, I was hoping it would just stand up for her really nicely. Sometimes they do that, don't they? You just hug the reef a little bit more shallow and have some good shape to them. But unfortunately for Noah, that one was not to the quality. Now, Arena, she has competed on the Challenger Series. She's kind of that, that next to Daniela Rosas. Those two have been really the cutting edge for this current crop of Peruvian women. And getting another great turn put in here. So she's looking to just secure herself in that second place position. We'll be chasing a 4.25 to take the lead away. Well, there's the times up. So, so I was going to say she might have been better to wait with the priority, but the times up, she got to ride another wave, show us her form and uh, she'll go through. So congratulations to Emily and her arena rodriguez on a great heat italy and peru with the two top advancing positions argentina and israel into the rapid charge round with another opportunity to come back tomorrow
We've got more action to come. Paddling out next is Noah Lelior's older sister, Anat Lelior. I grew up in Tel Aviv. Uh, the surfing here is not that uh, great. I live in a sea compared to an ocean, and a sea is almost like a, a puddle next to a pool, I think. Waves are not really consistent, and it's really hard to uh, be an excellent surfer next to all the world champions and uh, all the other uh, contestants. So I, I, just, I just try to keep pushing harder and harder, even, even though I don't have the condition that they have. When I started surfing, uh, uh, I kind of started by myself, and then my brother came along, and then my sister, uh, she's uh, two years younger than me. She saw surfing, and of course she wanted to come as well. So since then, uh, we kind of pushed each other to be better if it was my sister doing a, this turn, I wanted to do that turn. And surfing in the water, it was, um, was kind of crowded, but it was only men around. I've, I was the only woman or kid, I mean, I was a young girl uh, surfing in the lineup. Well, I have to say that that's the story for so many of us as women that surf. Mm. I grew up surfing in Huntington Beach, California, one of the most populated surf destinations in the world. And most of the time I paddled down, I was the only girl in the lineup. Yeah. Sometimes had other women, a lot of times not when I was young. Similar story to Anat Lelior growing up in Israel, surfing there and her and her sister being two great representatives for their nation on the surfing front. As we take a look now at Daniela <gasps> out of Italy, just laying in that rail. I love how hard she's pushing through that. Those grab rail turns are fantastic. Wow, the Italian lady's on fire in these last couple of heats, inspired by her teammates' win in the heat before this. That was a great starter. All types of variety of turns. I've never seen Daniela surf before, and I'm super impressed by that opening ride. Daniela Bonini from Italy in the water right now against Grace Doyle of Ireland, Anat from Israel, and Estela Lopez in Chile. It's fun when you see a new name that you're not familiar with yet, and then they come out and just showcase some great surfing right away. That, and that happens a lot at these ISA games. So many new nations to surfing. See Team Israel watching this heat closely. In the foreground, getting warmed up for the next heat. A little bit of movement going before heading out in the lineup and starting to paddle. Yeah, it's such a, it's a not violent, but it's an aggressive environment, the ocean. There's so much power. And if you find you can be in the right places and it's tranquil and just a lovely experience, you can find yourself in the wrong place at the wrong time. And it can be, it can be violent, it can be aggressive. And, and so that body needs to be loose and ready to take on that impact, especially with the high performance modern surfing that, that we do these days. Yeah, it's so important. The amount of times that you end up underwater kind of flailing around, trying to hold grip on your board or, or maybe even without your board even close to you anymore, just trying to kind of hold your body strong in those moments. Mm. You're not stretching properly at home in the after hours. It's not going to be that quick little warm-up on the beach that's sooner for you. It's one of the uh, one of the, the things I, I sort of always teach is that concept of being more like a fish than a human. You don't see fishes bump into rocks, right? Yeah. Because they everything that lives in the ocean moves in a fluid way, the same as the ocean itself moves, like this giant jelly bowl that's moving around. And when you're in that ocean, you need to be more like a fish than a human. And it's that human mindset, master of the universe, dominant species. If you go out there with that type of headset and think that you can control it, you will find yourself in big trouble because that ocean is, it's, it's, you've got to go with it. So Gary getting ready to paddle out for her heat. Coach for Team Peru standing alongside. Just kind of talking through some strategy moments before she'll hit the lineup. 
got the headsets on to, to listen to the music and block out a lot of the other stuff, the distractions, and then they whip it to the side and open the ear up to hear the coach's advice. We've got 15 minutes remaining on the clock and a 4.33 is the only score on the board that goes to the Italian Daniela Boldini, 20 years old and currently sitting in the lead out in the water. And Nat, Grace and Estella all looking for their opening rides. As we see Estella now with an opportunity. Nice tall approach to this wave as she extends that back leg through those first two turns. Sets herself up here with a lot of power. Similar looking maneuvers for each of these turns so far. She comes through to the inside section. And we'll have a score now to drop through for Estella. While we wait for that, let's go down to the beach to catch up with Rachel Tilly. Congratulations on your heat win. We were just talking about how difficult it is out there, especially to just find those higher scoring potential waves. What was it in that six point ride that you saw in that wave that you were able to maximize? Yeah, right now, especially with the high tide, it's really slow. So you have to start fast and with a good wave. And I was so lucky that I got that wave that I asked for and I was watching before my heat. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy to make it through and yeah, keep going and what does your preparation prior to this event look like have you been to puerto rico before uh, what has your training regime looked like yeah our italian federation is helping us a lot we came um like two weeks ago when we trained here for two weeks and yeah it's really on this island the waves they change so fast on those two weeks we actually served with wind flat huge and yeah it was amazing and really grateful for our federation that helped us out well, it sounds like you're ready for all conditions that might be thrown at you this week. Is there anything you'd like to say to your country and your family back home? Yeah, I want to say hi to everyone. I know my mom is watching, uh, fan number one always. And yeah, thanks everyone for the support and we keep going for the next one. <laughs> congratulations. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Back to you guys. Thanks so much. Huge congratulations to Emily out there bright and early getting in those morning surfs and preparing for a big day of competition but it would feel nice to just continue making it through in the top rounds and smart move incredible you know from the kind of organizing side of team italy to be able to spend two weeks here in preparation that explains a lot doesn't it we've watched you know in this heat there was a comfort factor for daniella in that first ride that was like wow this lady's Oh, she's been here before. They've been here for a few weeks. So, yeah, you can see the benefits of that trip in the surfing that we've watched in these last two heats for sure. And you can imagine that a trip like that, it's not just fun and relaxed surfing, mm -hmm. but it's, you know, pretty probably time scheduled throughout the day, spending a lot of time in the ocean, a lot of time reviewing footage at the end of the day. Daniela watching herself surf on this wave so many times already in the last couple of weeks. Now just finding that approach trying to find the best waves that are coming through, but also running mock heats against each other. 100% they would have been doing that. And as she said, all the different conditions they got to experience. So you, one, you know where you're at, you know the environment, you know where the restaurant is and where the water is and where all the amenities are. And, and then you've, you've got that intimate knowledge of the surf, surf and the breaks from two weeks of exposure. And we're seeing the results right here. 317 for the Chilean on her first ride. Sitting with priority is the Olympian Anat Lelior looking for her opening ride. So she's waited a long time for this. Now has the opportunity to make the most of it. Little setup as she comes into this big section, drifts the tail around and makes the most of it. She'll hit the eject button going back towards the left and she'll put her first score down. Gracie Doyle out of Ireland now up and riding on her first ride just gets caught behind the foam unfortunately doesn't really capitalize on that first opportunity she might be able to get herself into a slightly higher priority rotation she can get out the back quicker than a knot and score to come through for that first wave of red yeah grace doyle from ireland that was most probably a wave selection mistake it closed out pretty quickly she'd waited a long time with the priority and i think that time spent with the priority and the pressure of it on your shoulders. It's, it sounds like an easy thing. You've got the priority and you get to pick whatever wave you want. But because you can, your mind starts to really try and make sure that you want to, you make the right decisions. And it's 
it's really a, a difficult situation because it's so easy to make a mistake and you can paddle into what you think is the best wave of the heat and all of a sudden it doesn't turn out that way. We take a look at the replay here from Danielle. That's the first one with that grab rail. Three varieties of turns. The layback here, I thought there's no way she's getting back down the wave face, but she did. And then she's got that 2.5 on the board. Couple of cutbacks there. Pretty simple stuff coming through to the inside. Nothing spectacular and, and no use of the lip. Grace Doyle. Grace, the 34-year-old from Tremor, now up and riding. Used to work as a teacher. Now works more in computers and has spent a lot of time traveling and surfing. She's actually working as a tutor in the Mentawas, huh. homeschooling other kids, which gave her the opportunity to be in some of the best surf locations in the world while getting some work done. That sounds like a good scene. decision. Smart, smart decision. <laughs> smart. I'd do the same thing. And now look where she finds herself. That's Puerto right. Rico representing her nation. She's an Irish national surfing champion on the women's side, and she's been competing at the ISAs for many years now. It's been great to see her in that conversation with the rest of the Irish team and to know a little bit more about her background. And, you know, I think as surfers, there are those, those select few that are going to be able to make a true living out of just surfing because they're, you know, doing well enough in contests or qualified on tour. They're, they're able to have a career out of it. Hopefully, hopefully for more than a decade, you know, maybe they're looking at, at quite a long time within their life. There's a lot of other surfers that are looking at every possible way to make a living out of surfing by not necessarily surfing, but your job affords you the most time possible to actually just be in the water. Sounds like me. Sounds like you. Sounds like you. I would say we've done a pretty good job of that yeah, so far. <laughs> absolutely. 60 years old and I've avoided a real job the whole time, so I'm pretty, that is pretty very chuffed impressive. with that, I'll tell you. <laughs> uh, all right, now 8 minutes, 15 seconds on the clock, and it is the Italian that's sitting in the lead. And Nat got a 3.93 on her ride, so while she waited a long time, was patient, 8 minutes to go, still only the one ride for red and white. So nearly a four for a knot off the strength of a single turn. Yeah. She's able to get that as a combination. She'll easily be looking at the best wave of the, of the heat. Yeah, and that's where you draw confidence from those situations. You go, well, that wasn't such a great... Well, I got a decent score. Okay, all I need to do is combo that up with a couple of turns. Again, it was a bigger bigger wave with a big face, and she went into that closeout turn on the backhand, made it look so, so pretty out of the top, but at the same time, it was aggressive and radical needs to have those combination of elements to, to really maximize the scoring potential. And we've heard from a few surfers throughout the, this competition already. I was going to say the week, but it's only been a day and a half. Yes. We've heard from a few that they've had some major injuries and in kind of dealing with that, figuring things out and how to continue competing. And not has had that, you know, happening in the last couple of years for her post Tokyo Olympics. She ended up having to have hip surgery. She's had to go through a whole recovery process. She kind of disappeared from being really one of the forefront surfers out of the European region because Israel surfs within the European region, mm -hmm. taking out great wins within the qualifying series, being one of the front runners for that European contingency towards qualification for the championship tour. And she just disappeared. And we were wondering, like, what's, you know, where's she gone? Yeah. Is she not interested in competing anymore? Maybe she just wants to take some time off the pressure of, you know, having put all that effort and in, in years of work into the Olympics and and maybe just wanting to take a breather and then realize that actually she was going through this whole recovery process. She spent a lot of time in, in Costa Mesa in California for her recovery um, post-surgery. And it's great to see her back in form now, starting to surf really well. And, and looks like she's feeling strong as we take a look at Grace here. Grace has been consistent within this heat. She's had the most waves out of anybody. Really um, just kind of finding her way in the lineup. So for a nod, it'll be interesting to hear from her through the week. I haven't had a chance to catch up with her yet to know kind of how that's feeling and, and if she feels like she's able to surf at 100% yet or if, if there's anything still holding back because sometimes those injuries can linger with you for quite a while. No, they sure can. Hips are, hips are complicated. I've had a hip replacement myself. It's like every injury you talk about. Go, yeah. yeah, so I've got experience Barton with can that. Really, so basically anyone that's out there that's walking around the contest site, if you've had an issue, come talk to Barton. Yeah. He can... Sea urchins, oh yes, I have surgery yeah, yeah. that. Hips, shoulders, knees, backs, yeah, I've done them. So it's, you know, it's, it's one of those, comes with the job, comes with the territory, throwing yourself 
over the falls, you know, with ambition to try and achieve your dreams and uh, you got to pay the price and, and you learn so much as we heard John John talk to earlier today. You learn a lot out of those injuries and the recoveries and learning about yourself and, and uh, I think lesson number one is not to judge the experience and to, to just go through it and, and, and learn all you can because a lot of the things you think are the worst things that could have happened to you. Here goes. And that with this, I don't see a lot of wall on this one. I could see that even when she was paddling, it had that full taper. But, you know, from third priority, you may as well have a try, I suppose. Maybe even just get herself away from the pack. We'll see if she paddles back to that same zone. Thought for a moment she might be kind of heading off to yeah. a, a different little peak. Repositioning move. Just the, and we do see that, don't we? People use so you know, catch a wave just to pos reposition themselves, get away from the surface with priority. Saves you 20, 30 strokes just by standing up on a wave and you have that little speed line. Yeah. Kick right out sometimes to where you want to be landing. Grace has a look at that one, decides not to go, recognizes that wave potential is not as good. This is going to be <clears throat> an important moment. Stella has a look at it. Everyone's kind of not quite in the right position. But then again, you know, if you took off closer to where Gracie was sitting, it's going to close out pretty quickly. Mm. Kind of had to be sitting way farther over towards the right side of the peak or the left from our view. And Lopez, one of those uh, famous surfing names, the great pipeline legend Jerry Lopez, the first Brazilian you know, pipeline surfer to make the final, Pepe Lopez, Corey and Shay Lopez from the tour days when we were you know, doing the tour, and now Estela Lopez in third place, only looking for a 127 with the first priority in 3 minutes 40. It's one of those situations where... You'd almost rather you caught your wave, used your first priority with 10 seconds to go and no one else has a chance to get one because it's not going to take much to get that 127. She just doesn't want the surfers in front of her to get anything more. So, the, you know, a lull right now, while it seems like it puts pressure on, in a way it's most probably better. As long as you get a chance and that chance comes with 15 seconds to go, perfect because you'll be the last person to ride a wave you get the 1.27 by not doing a lot just got to get a wave of some sort and and you might overtake a nut and go through to the next round stay in the main round that is a great way to look at it because it does it kind of wastes the time when it's in your favor still but offers you the opportunity without then helping anyone else exactly estella 18 years old from Puerto in Chile. She competed at the Pan American Games last year and walked away with a fourth place finish. Again, in those conditions that were pretty hectic, huge, wild. And we've got her putting herself in position now. Beautiful looking wave. Great oh. time to hold on to priority and then it clamps closed on her. I was with you. I thought it was a beautiful that looking wave. It just looked incredible, but we were also on that pulled in. We, we couldn't see the whole wave. Wow. That what? was unfortunate too, I thought. And the way she'd paddled away and positioned herself, I thought, oh, she's doing this perfectly. Two minutes still though, down into the fourth priority. Stay away from those other three for sure and see if you can't find something. There's that chunk just down there that we couldn't see as you suggested, Shannon. Just closed out, could have taken off right there and uh, would have got the end of it. Unfortunate though, one minute and 50. And a nut, once a nut improves on that 0.5, yeah. Uh, it's going to change the whole scenario. But she is down in third priority. But I would, if I was in that, I'd be keeping an eye on Estella for sure. Here's a set starting to come in now. And not needing to improve on just a 0 0.5 as her backup score. At the moment, because it's just a 0 0.5, it keeps the door wide open. Priority is sitting with our surfer in green. So a knot's going to have to back out of that wave. Opens it up for Daniela. That was a great looking section. And the Grace. Sorry, the potential improve on the 2.5 Grace, as you said. potential out of it. Grace now up and riding just quickly up and down. Also went for that big section. So kind of everybody recognizing that they need to go on these sort of closeouts and, and just get those single maneuvers. A knot, unfortunately, <gasps> slips off the wax. Is she going to improve on the 0 0.5? If anything, she's maybe put a one on the board. Yeah, exactly. She'll and that's literally it. And now Estella on the inside with a little corner. Two-turn combo, making it look easy. Oh, oh, but she falls. Wow. Unbelievable. What an exchange. 
dramatic it's gonna ending. be such small scores where it could have really kind of lifted everyone had the potential right in front of them and if Estella had waited and not gone that one before because no one forced her into the one she chose and she, we thought here, right now, we thought she'd done it. And then that white water, the convergence, it came at her from both sides. Um, it was nearly complete. Like, she'd completed the manoeuvre, but she didn't ride the white water well, almost, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, eight seconds, seven seconds, why the judges are going to have to consider this. Wow, so scores are in. You can see that the timer has just run out. The, it was a 1.43 for a knot and a 1.5 for Estella, but Anat just narrowly keeps herself in that leading position due to the strength of her 3.93 as the higher score. And she'll hold on to second with Estella Lopez falling out in third, chasing only a 2.2. And if she'd made the re-entry, she got it. Oh, she would have had a four point ride. So Possibly, that, you know, that was a fours. very critical fall, wasn't it? That was unfortunately a very critical fall. Grace Doyle with a great effort as well. Mm -hmm. Catch caught, you know, quite a few waves, put all that effort in. We're going to see her again in the rapid charge rounds. And Daniela with a solid performance for Team Italy. Back to back wins for the Italians. We're going to hear from her in a moment. But before that, let's take a look at the highlights from yesterday's opening day of competition. for a 7.5 for Team Brazil. I'm focused on my mission, you know. I, I think I gotta make hits. I'm gonna try to do my best. And Team Brazil's Iago Dora gets the highest score of the day in the men's main round one, an 8.0. Team Australia's Molly Picklum gets an 8.67, the highest single wave score of the event so far. Daniela Rosas gets an 8.17 for Team Peru. La verdad que es que súper nerviosa, eh, hay un montón de competidoras súper buenas acá, sé que Perú es un país súper fuerte y sé que tenemos un montón de nivel, así que en verdad no quiero pensar mucho en eso, hacerlo hit por hit, estar tranquilas y demostrar un buen surfing. Tokyo 2020 Olympic gold medalist Carissa Moore earns herself an 8.10 for Team USA. Tune in tomorrow for more action. It's like Frank the Tank once said, fill it up again, Mitchell. It's time for more action live from Puerto Rico. This is the 2024 ISA World Surfing Games. Chris Cote with Mitchell Salazar. And you got it. Another stellar heat hits the waters here. Maya Mateja, Shelby Detmers, Sol Aguirre, and Giada Legati. Italy, Peru, and two surfers. We've got some friendly fire for Team Mexico here in this round. Not exactly what you want to see in round two, but sometimes when two teammates take to the water in a four surfer heat, good things can happen. You can work as a team. It's rare, but it is possible. I still can't get over the old school reference right there. Uh, because remember, Mitch is the godfather in that movie. He's the head of the fraternity, which, uh, you know, Frank the Tank, I think is an appropriate term for today. Definitely need to be getting as much energy as you can throughout the entirety of these heats. 20 minutes goes by real quick, Chris. You don't want to be in the repertoire charge after this round, and especially with a lot of the big dogs still out there in the lineup. So Laguirre, she's been not only one of the best representatives we've seen from Peru at ISA competition, but just worldwide, still very young, only 20 years of age. And you have the Mexican duo, as you were mentioning, but it seems like Sol, she has better positioning here. Yeah, coming from the opposite side of the peak, getting around that first section nicely. Already two turns into this one. Digging the rail there. Pushing hard off her heels. Can she ride out clean? She does. So like get it. Coming from the junior ranks. She had a stellar junior career. And now yep. she's fighting her way through the qualifying series, the challenger series, and of course, always a contender here in the ISA, whether it's juniors or now at the Worlds, where she's been competing for the past few years. An incredible representative of Peruvian surfing and surfing in general. Yep. You know, she does it with style, with grace, 
and a lot of class. So we'll see what Salt Lake City is given for her first wave. Here we have Giada Lagatti. She's been a representative for Team Italy for the past few years as well. Strong, goofy footer there. One big turn is all she is given on that first wave. Chubby Detmers has been competing for Team Mexico for quite some time now, but Maya Mateja, a newcomer to Team Mexico. Give me a little bit of your scouting report on Maya. Yeah, uh, New Zealander father, Mexican mother, right there from Puerto Escondido. That's where she resides most of her time, but does go every now and then back to Raglan, where her dad's from. Um, really young. I mean, only 15 years of age. Has a lot to prove, really, at an event like this. And gets a late call-up, too, because Maya Laripa, who was supposed to come in her place wasn't able to compete. Uh, she was still doing transition between competing for Argentina and Mexico. And now Mayita Majeta, I mean, it's an incredible opportunity to be the youngest member of the team with a chance of qualifying for your first Olympic Games. Thank you, Mitchell. I'm Chris Cote. This is Mitchell Salazar. It is our privilege and honor to bring you surfing at the highest level here at the ISA World Surfing Games. So far, it's been so good here in Puerto Rico. Uh, I'll tell you, the waves have been pumping since day one and they continue to do so. The conditions are, are matching the wave quality. It's been nice, gentle breezes throughout today. What is it? 12.25 here in the afternoon in Arecibo. And our surfers are just, just being gifted wave after wave after wave with plenty of opportunity. Not easy. You know, it's, it's not what you'd call perfect, Whoa. but I would say it is absolutely rippable out there. Plenty of sections to work with. And Soligeta right now with 14.38 to go. I mean, she's surfing like a champion. She, she looks great, and as most Peruvians do, they get to work real quick in their heats. I mean, she got positioning over everybody else and then was able to get a backup wave real quick. That second carve, I'd have to say, you know, from what I've seen so far for the women, has been one of the best. Here goes Shelby Detmers. She's super consistent. Yep. You know, she, uh, she's been in a lot of heat. She knows exactly what to do. But right now, Team Mexico is in that third and fourth place positions. So they've got a couple scores to come through, and they'll figure out pretty quick what they have to do to keep the pace that is being set right now by Sol Aguera. And here goes Maya Mateja. Puerto Escondido. Puerto probably considered the, the hotbed of, you know, competitive mm -hmm. surfing, at least. There's a lot of great contest surfers coming from Puerto Escondido. And of course, a lot of great barrel riders as well. Some of the best in the world. Definitely. I would say the two places that produce the highest talent, the most talented surfers from the country are Puerto Escondido and Sayulita. Um, Agreed. I, I mean, I come from a part that's further north. You don't see a ton of guys really succeed on both an international and really an Olympic qualifying stage like this. But overall, I think Los Cabos, they're producing a lot more surfers. Northern Baja, Ensenada, and all those places, they've always had great surfers, but there's times that a lot of times they don't really want to go out because they live a good life there. You know, they have good waves and it, it's easy to be the, the person that's always centered on the spotlight when you're kind of the big dog at your local break. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, that, that happens all over. So 12.56 to go. Sola get it in the lead for now. Surfers resetting themselves in the lineup. Let's throw it down to Rachel. Win. That's Italy now with two heat wins in a row. I'm going to ask you questions in English, but you're going to answer in Spanish. How did you feel out there? La verdad fue increíble. Eh, las olas, si es verdad que fueron un poquito lentas. Costó encontrar las olas con más potencial, pero bueno, pude sacar tres olitas que me dejaron pasar y muy contenta. And I've heard that you've spent two weeks here with the Italian team. How did that preparation out there feel for you in feeling your comfort levels out there? Pues fue una oportunidad bastante bastante buena porque pudimos coger esto de todas las maneras, todas las condiciones y eso ha sido un plus que la verdad se agradece mucho. Anything you'd like to say back home? Por supuesto, un abrazo a toda mi familia que me está viendo, a mi madre también que es la primera que está ahí y nada, a seguir. All right, congratulations. See you next time. See you next time. Back to you guys. Great performance there from Team Italy. Daniela Boldini. Yeah, I believe she resides in the Canary Islands. Great surfer. I mean, representing Italy. Another team that has improved drastically oh, yeah. over the years, too. I would say Germany, them, in terms of the European teams, have been some of the most consistent and very improved. W was mentioning that, you know, wants to say hi to everybody, but she spent two weeks here and. You know, that preparation was not only amazing for her, but it's obviously producing great results for both herself and the rest of the team too. But a slow heat, 
and back-to-back -back wins for Team Italy. She just said the consistency for them is huge, and building that momentum for the rest of the event is something that they've been looking forward to, Chris. Only day two, remember, there's a long event. You gotta be able to pace yourself and keep up the same kind of energy that you wanna produce on day number one. Masola getting right now with a pair of four, six, sevens. Currently in the lead. Everyone else playing catch up at the moment. Here goes Giotti, Giada Legati. You know, and when, you're, when your teammate has a big result in the heat right before you, can give you some momentum. Give you a feeling like, you know, you gotta step it up as well. Keep the pace being set by your teammate. Got it, Legati. Decent wave. What do the judges think about when you go two different directions on one wave? Uh, as long as it's the same wave, it's usually no issue. So right there, just to quicken it out, because it's still a continuation of the same wave. Um, I, I see no major issue with it, as long as you're still using what the wave is offering. Um, in this case, I think it was a smart choice. You know, there wasn't really anything left on the right, ends up going left and ends up fitting one more carve in, but it, it might be the first time in history of me either surfing or working an ISA event where I've seen three people from the same country go in three heats in a row. It's kind of crazy. They could get three heat wins in a row too. True. Big heat coming up next. Look at these names. We're talking some of the world's best females heading out into the lineup. Tiny Hickel, Rachel Presti, Caroline Marks, reigning WSL world champ, and Luana Silva. That is, that's one of the best heats you'll see in women's surfing in 2024. Former gold medalist here at the ISA 2. That was in the Azores, I believe, in 2016 for Caroline Marks. Great surfer. All saw what, we, what she did last year at the finals. I mean... Beat her on that day, gonna be something very difficult and nobody was able to accomplish that. I mean, these are kind of perfect ways for her style too. And you know what Sol's been able to do in the first 11 minutes right here, Chris, 9.34 heat total. You have a pair of fours that are matching right now. That's a solid start. And still adding a lot of pressure to the other three surfers out there in the water. Yeah, she's living like Janet Jackson in control of this heat with eight minutes and 54 seconds to go. Sola get it in the green, currently in third priority, but I don't think she's stressing right now. She's got those two, four, six, sevens when on paper, they might not seem like huge numbers, but you can tell she's got all the momentum with her right now. And I feel like this priority situation is gonna switch up pretty quick. Giada, Maya, and Shelby, not necessarily needing to go in panic mode just yet, but they gotta try to break above that four point mark Whoa. if they wanna keep the keep the pace currently being set by Seoul. That was pretty cool. Grab rail car for the youngest surfer in the heat, one of the youngest surfers yeah. in the draw, bring in some variation too. Mix it up. Needs less than a one, that's gonna be the score, no doubt. And Giada, you know, raised in Bali, surfs incredible waves all the time, used to a lot of this weather as Mateja, she gets a two point ride, but Puerto Escondido, once again, you've been there. We've been to that part of Oaxaca many different times, and the waves are obviously excellent, but same thing that goes in many different places worldwide. There's times where you don't want to leave there because the waves are just so good, and see that subtle but cool rail grab right there by Maya. I liked it. And then a 4.67 for Sol on her opener, was fighting for position, and as always, just lays it on rail well. That was a beautiful opening turn into the lip once again and was able to ride out with this last roundhouse cutback. Good start for her and then backed up the same score with another one under everybody else's priority. Late hit right there, but there's one carve after she makes it back onto the open face, Chris, right here. Look at that technique. I mean, the amount of torque that she had, you know, it's just a little unfortunate that, that section wasn't a bit bullier because if not, the score would have been elevated, but still doing the best that she can with what she's been able to get in the first 13 minutes of this heat. That was graceful, radical surfing, but she's definitely becoming known for it. I have seen some video recently of Sol Aguirre putting her time in at the end of the road in Tahiti, mm -hmm. packing some big barrels at Chiohopu. A couple of wipeouts too, which I think, yeah. you know. Those prepare you, sometimes those can prepare you as much, if not more. Yeah, I agree, I agree. And it seems like she is very determined to make it there at the end of this week. Shelby seems like she's going to be up on the right here. The wave not super steep for Shelby Detmers. One turn. 
nice carve. So that was her second wave ridden. Started off with a 240. Needs a 304 to get up into that advancing spot. We're still in non elimination rounds, meaning that third and fourth place will get a, another opportunity, at least one more chance through the repachage. French word. Your vocabulary today has been great, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> Maya Mateja, speaking of great, I love the maneuver selection. It's big kind of two stage carves that you've been doing look really cool. She's standing out in the crowd right mm -hmm. now, and that's what you have to do. I mean, when you're going up against a surfer like Solaguere, who's so consistent, so stylish, and just makes everything look so fluid and easy. You got to try to do something a little bit different exactly. right? to get the attention of the judges. I like what Maya's doing right now, kind of doing some unique frontside carve Ooh. snap combo. Sol, you got to watch out with those kind of things right there. Ooh. Giada was almost positioned for that wave right there. And Surfer in green was almost, well, basically right in front of her. You got to really be careful with those kind of things because the priority judge eventually will be able to catch on. And priority didn't switch, but, you know, in the end, it's a competition, Chris, but you don't want to be in the lead the entire heat and then lose out because of something like that. And she actually did lose in the Pan Ams because of a situation like that. She had her priority suspended at a point, and Estella, who wasn't really in a position to succeed in that heat, forced her to get a priority interference because she dropped in on her, thinking that she was still in the priority rotation. So it's happened before. Don't let it happen again, especially when you're this close to advancing. Attention to detail. And right there for Giada, and now, I, I'm, I'm all about good sportsmanship, but I'm also about using the rule book to your advantage. Giada could have raised her arms and maybe, you know, waved them around a little bit, mm -hmm. pointed at her con competition, which again, you know, I don't, not a huge fan of that tactic, but we are in the, you know, very important critical heat right now. Giada's in third. So maybe moving forward, if something like that happens, you can at least get the attention of the priority judges and just say, make them think about it a little bit more. They're right on top of the action. They see everything, but there's nothing wrong with just letting them know. You know what I'm saying? Well, it happened at sunset. You know, it's not every day that you see a paddling interference happen. And Sori Limblad was actually paddling towards the peak. And Gabby Bryan, who was riding the wave, basically had to alter her line and it ruined the entire ride. Um, and you normally don't get those calls, but it was a significant wave in the end of the heat. Gets a paddling interference, still made it through, fortunately for Sawyer, but I agree. I think if you're able to play within the rules and apply them and bend them a little bit towards yourself, you're still competing within what's written in ink. Well, study what Gabriel Medina does, you know, and he doesn't care if you think he's a villain or not. He, he is going to win by any means necessary. Mm -hmm. Uh, more often than not, you know, he does it just by his surfing, but sometimes he relies on tactics to do it. He knows the rule book probably more than anyone. Maybe Kelly Slater knows it as well as Gabriel Medina. Andy was that guy too. Interestingly enough, yes. Right? With 250 to go now. Giada Legati needs a 380. Two decent turns. But then super electrifying. So right now, Solaguere. And Maya Mateja, newcomer on Team Mexico, making a big case, proving to her team that uh, she is well beyond worthy of representing that power-packed squad. And so is Shelby. I mean, you mentioned how consistent she is. Big part of the success that Newport Beach Board Riders Club has had in, in terms of the West Coast Board Riders so far in the few years that we've been doing that in the United States. But, you know, I really like what I'm seeing from Maya stepping up to the plate right now chris against giada who's been competing at this level for many years cool to see maya not only get the chance but take advantage of it too in the spotlight right now seems like shelby might have a good wave here though shelby on her backhand big snap there takes the high line comes out of it with plenty of speed just slightly digs real going into the second turn trying to get to this inside section A little bit more opportunity potentially here. He makes his way all the way near to this. Pretty much looks like dry reef with a side order of urchins on the inside. <laughs> we'll see if that was enough for a 3-6-3. Three, three. There goes Legati. Big closeout section to work with. Can't quite ride out. That's going to be deemed incomplete. 127 to go. 
Soligera out the back with priority. Maria Mateja in second priority. You think those two waves will flip well, in third and fourth place? I don't, positions? I don't know if it'll flip. Uh, I think Shelby's is going to be one of her top two scores. It's right around, I mean, a three-point ride, I feel. But as of right now, I think in the last 60 seconds, she might be needing one more wave. Good size wave. Under the lip snap right there. Could have maybe pushed it a little bit more. Combos it up. And for her, this wave shouldering off wasn't something that was beneficial, but still added on a little bit more with that little, little, last little carve, sorry. So 3-6-3, three, three, don't think so, but it should be one of her top two scores. And Sol, once again, her fourth ride. Boom. Yeah, she's connected right now. Riding a Proton, too, a model that you don't see a lot from Channel Islands anymore. All right, Sol's gonna lock in a new number. Maya as well, great snap there. Again, a little bit of flair, adding a layback. Mm-hmm. Get a variation. I'm a fan. Maya Matea. Put her on the list. You're going to see her at the juniors, too. You know, got a lot of talent. Getting your reps in at the higher level right now, too. And you should be very proud of yourself by not only making it still in the main round, by defeating not only your teammate in Shelby Dutmers, but Giada Legati, who is a legit contender to qualify for Italy, too. No doubt. Well, at the end of that, Solagere and Maya Mateja move through. Third and fourth place go to the Repa Charge. Caroline Marks is coming up next. Before she takes to the lineup, let's take a look at what this champion is made of. I think a strong junior and amateur career is huge. You know, if you really look at like the history of everyone that's done good as an amateur and a junior, you know, almost all of them are on the tour right now or, or world champion even. You know, when I won the ISA, I think what made it so special is that the whole team was behind me and I won. And my brother was on the team with me, which was so sick. And him and my dad carried me up the beach and got a gold medal and they raised that flag. And that was pretty amazing. Right out of the gates, Caroline Marks, one of the standouts yesterday on day one. She had the highest two-wave total. When I went to Japan with the team, it was really cool because uh, we were there all day supporting everyone. And I think that gets you really, really excited because you're like rooting for your friends, but you're also trying to win too and flying the flag. And it's just like gets you kind of like really psyched. The ISA opening ceremony was super cool. I've never done something like that. And you know, everyone there was saying like little taste of what the Olympics is like, which is so crazy. Cause I like, I got the chills. It was seeing all the teams and things like that was like so amazing. And Caroline Marks will take to the water now with Probably one of the heaviest hitting heats we've seen of the day. Tina Hinkle, Rachel Presti, Caroline Marks, and Luana Silva. Two surfers from Brazil, Rachel Presti representing Germany, Caroline Marks, Team USA. Mitch, this is just another one of those heats that could, maybe, probably should be a final, but it's yeah. only in round two. Oh, there's this interesting start there. Surfer in red, Tina Hinkle. Rising star for Team Brazil. Mm -hmm. You know, Team Brazil had a little bit of a drought there, a gap in the talent for their female squad. And that gap was filled quickly. You know, Tatiana Weston Webb was a, a, a big part of kind of the rise of the female Brazilian squad. Yep. I mean, you have Luana Silva, one of the youngest members. But I think it comes down to both Silvana Lima and Jacqueline Silva's success that they had in the early definitely, 2000s. Definitely. Speaking of success. Caroline Marks. That would have A rare fall on her backhand <laughs> for Caroline Marks. That would have been too easy, though. I mean, she was almost coming out of that with so much ease. I was like, oh, little too perfect right there. But also another person that has opened the doors. And she mentioned during that piece right there, Chris, if it weren't for her her career here at the ISA and the amateur career as a whole, USA Surfing, all of the amateur events in the United States, she probably wouldn't have the same amount of success that she has in the world tour right now. Right, it was it was just great training mm -hmm. and to achieve all those steps of success. You know, I love where I'm at right now with competitive surfing, the, the junior ranks, 
even before that, you know, the regional contests have just elevated more and more. Uh, we, we're starting to see more broadcast, more coverage of those regional events. And of course, in the junior events around the world, qualifying series, the ISA juniors, the ISA worlds, there's a lot of opportunities for surfers to take as much time as they need to climb through those ranks, to get that experience. When they get to the big leagues here in the ISA worlds, you know, they're prepared, they're ready for it. And Hinkle, I mean, she used her better positioning to keep Rachel Presti off of that wave. Good calm on the outside, excellent pace, and real smart surfing right there by Taina. Was able to fit in one more, and then luckily for her, got a bonus section right here at the end too, Chris. Was a Brazilian champion last year, and look at that finish right there by Taina. Seems like all those repetitions and heats, big heats I must add, in Brazil have really paid off in the back end of 2023. Uh, she's paddling around like a menace, like you need to in a heat like this. Ooh. Right there, that was a perfect opportunity to flare out a little bit, add some style and power to that opening turn. So she's got a five, six, seven already. She's gonna capitalize on getting busy early. 16 minutes to go, you saw her. She was a shark straight back into the pack. Got her second wave like that. She's gonna jump well into the lead. And a really cool turn with a different line on it too. Brought the layback perspective into this one. And I think the first time I saw Taina Hinkle, remember the Founders Cup event that we had at the Surf Ranch? It's more of a team format kind of thing. Team Brazil was stacked. Jesse Mendes was there, Tati. And then you saw Taina Hinkle. I was like, who's this young girl from Brazil that's coming up? Imagine having an event at the Surf Ranch and having all these eyeballs on you, all this pressure, and needing to perform. And she was just in her teens by then. But so many years have passed since. And now you're seeing a big development, not only within her surfing, but just Brazil overall, too, as we look at the replay here of Caroline. Maybe just extended her legs a little too much right there at the end coming out of the turn. And the Whitewater won that battle right there, Chris. But, you know, another person that I also think has been huge and in involving a lot of women in the progress of female surfing in the last few years, qualifies when she's 15 years of age, makes her debut on the CT in 2018 when she's only 16, now world champion for the first time too. Yeah, Caroline Marks has already done it all and she's got a long career ahead of her. Mm -hmm. Many medals. Her ISA gold on her mind, as well as Olympic gold. It's a pretty great surfer, a Chihopo as well. Hell yeah. I She's mean, she, definitely a favorite going into Paris 2024. She won there last year. Yeah. You know, she beat Katie in the final. And remember, she got fourth in the Olympics, too. She lost the bronze medal match to Amado Suzuki. Really close to getting in uh, into the gold medal match over there. But got yeah, double the experience, right? Olympic experience. So she knows the, the pageantry. She mm -hmm. knows the magnitude of that event. Also, her experience in Tahiti, you put those two things together, she's got to be on your list of favorites to win gold. I would say so. And and not just that, too, but a comfort level of being on the championship tour where you know you're going there right there before Paris 2024 happens again. So not only do you get to free surf there, but you get in extra reps on the competitive side, too. So, you know, I think we're going to see some great things from Caroline at the end of this year, but more importantly, has a lot of work to do in these next 14 minutes, Chris. There's still a stacked one, Rachel Presti. He's been a medalist here at the ISA before, and Lulu Silva. And we're talking about one of the premier surfers coming out of Brazil right now, has surfed in USA Surfing Championships many times at lower trestles, and a good amount of a competitive experience for her, too. 13.30 to go here in round two. Heat 11, surfers waiting for the next set to roll in. Let's go down to the board rock. Rachel Tilly is with Solagere. Congratulations, another heat win on day two here. Peru is the defending gold medalist team. What is that like now being at the 2024 ISA World Surfing Games, defending that gold medal for your country? It's amazing to be part of my country. Like Peru is the best country ever and I love to represent in it. And um, I mean, there's a little pressure being defending champions, but I think we take that as a motivation to just keep going and go as far as we can and I think we're a super united team so um, I think that's really good and everyone's been moving forward to the next round so we're still going through and really solid. It seems like you guys have a lot of good team energy. Another thing that might be on your mind an Olympic spot is up for grabs potentially here. Is that something that you're thinking about or trying to keep out of your mind in these early rounds? 
I try not to think about it. <laughs> I think that works better than just putting more pressure to it. But at the same time, like, this is so fun to surf in Puerto Rico. The waves are amazing. And to be able to compete against the best is super fun. And I just try to take it like that, you know, fun, surfing, getting into rhythm, getting waves, um, making good scores for my team. And then whatever happens, happens. But as far as I, the things that I can control, I will be try to be in total control of it. But the rest will come if I'm focused and I do my work. Well, you're doing what you need to do, controlling the controllables. Is there anything you'd like to say to your country back home in Spanish? Yes. Gracias a todos por ver. El equipo está super sólido. Todos han pasado su su hit y nada. Las mejores vibras siempre. Vamos Perú. Thank you. Back to you guys. Thank you, Rachel, and congratulations to Soligeta. We're the highest ranked team as an Olympic spot available to them for men and for women. First, you can look at all the Olympic qualification scenarios at isasurf.org. And of course, the video explainers are available as well. Hosted by Chris Cote and Mitchell Salazar. <laughs> Coming soon to a telephone near you. A bit complicated to fully explain, but guess what? We were able to accomplish it. We do our best. 11 minutes to go here. Tina Hickel in the lead. 5-6-7 and a 4-3-3. Three, three. She's being relentless in the lineup. And that's what you have to do if you want to surf, out-surf your competition when that competition is. Caroline Marks, Rachel Presti, Luana Silva. Rachel Presti, just with the .37. She may have ridden a wave during that interview. She makes her way back into the lineup. I know you've watched Rachel Presti for a long time in California. She surfs up and down the coast all yeah. the time. Uh, what has impressed you with her development? Uh, her competitive ability is one of the things, but I think she was so dependent on her backhand before her forehand has gotten incredible. Um, Jim Hogan was one of her OG coaches, as we see. Kick of a Selko right there. She's getting ready for the next heat, which is maybe the most difficult heat of the round. Wow. But she is a force to be reckoned with. Surfed incredible last year. I mean, she was one of the few people that was really committing to the right over there at La Bocana, which... The paddle back out, as you know, Chris, is something truly tremendous and difficult to do. But getting back to Ray Ray, originally from Florida, beach break surfers, including myself, who grew up primarily out of beach break, I tend to rely on my backhand quite a bit. I need to get out of a jam, guess what? I can go to the top, to the bottom, real quick, two times in a row, I get a score. What she's been able to do and improve on her forehand, I think has been huge. And it's added an extra weapon too. Now you're just not considered great in one single ability. You're considered great in all of your abilities overall. And look at the amount of competitive experience we're seeing from her, too, at a young age. Yeah, she caught that wave in traffic using her priority position there. Didn't really pan out for her, but I just like how she controlled the crowd right there. She's got plenty of time, 9 minutes and 15 seconds to go. But she'll get right back out there in the mix. Caroline Marks in the green jersey has that top priority spot for now. He has her pick of waves with Luana Silva in second priority. Still pretty slow for Caroline and Luana. Mm -hmm. Both just sitting on twos. No real backups either. But Don't want to give Hinkle. in either. Yeah, Tiny Hinkle on the other hand. I mean, she is surfing a really solid heat right now. Ten point total into the double digits, which if you're in the double digits more often than not throughout the day. You're making it through your heat. Mm hmm But there's still a lot of time left and a lot of talent in the water. It's a good wave here for Caroline, too. And look at that, Luana, right in her grill, making her have to make that decision to go. And Caroline, most likely, gonna make everybody in the water pay. Third turn is a hammer. Fourth turn, setting things up down the line. I just love how she uses that momentum down the line, winds up into her turns. All of that was pretty much one motion. Perfect flow down the line. No real impactful sections until that third turn, mm -hmm. but that's definitely going to be her highest scoring wave. She's going to delete that 1.10 and knock that 217 over to her backup score and get right back out there with eight minutes to go. So things are now looking good for Caroline Marks. Absolutely. She should be getting the score right here that she requires, which at the moment is a mid three. And, you know, I think it's really key to point out that Rachel Presley's best ride, the 4.13, was on a left. And as of right now, that's one of the best lefts I've seen in terms of the score so far today. Seems like all three women gonna let that wave go by. There's a subtle adjustment that Caroline made after her first turn that I think was huge for the rest of the wave right here. 
So Lulu basically forces her to use priority. So tries to go fully into the lip line, but see how she does that extra little fade to reposition her right there? Wouldn't be able to engage that second turn if it weren't for that slight adjustment of going back to the white water just a little bit. Great engagement on the third one. As you said, the most impactful turn of the three should be getting her best ride by long shot, Chris. She surfs so good. I mean, definitely has one of the best backhands in mm -hmm. the business of anyone in the world. And one of those rare cases where, you know, a lot of times you see a surfer, right when they drop in, that first backside whip is their biggest turn of yep. the wave. Caroline can add speed and gain momentum going down the line, and she kind of has the knack of making her turns bigger and bigger and bigger as she goes down the line. They improve, yeah. I always, I think it was the last year we were in Kabul for the six star. Her and Tati were in the final, and to beat Tati in that event was nearly impossible. She came back and beat her. Gets her best wave right here, Chris, at 4.93, and, you know, just the progress that she's had in the last six years has been amazing. She's only 22. Oh, yeah. Here we go, Luana Silva. Trying to fight her way back into this heat. Good snap to start. Working with what she was given on mm -hmm. that wave. No critical sections, so just relies on a couple carving snaps. She's banking a 2-7-0. Caroline Marks now jumps up one priority spot into third priority. Aina Hinkle in the top priority spot with that big lead as we get down towards the five minute mark. Plenty of waves have come through. Still they, still nice swell. They us. have. It's a bit tricky though with positioning us. Looking at the replay here of Lulu, Chris, a 2.67 doesn't improve on her high mark so far. Just a couple of carves, but you know, she's also one of the incredible products that Brazil has really developed the last few years. Very young in her late teens and you know, one thing that I really like about her, too, is she grew up at Sunset Beach. She's not afraid to go for big things. Caroline Marks found this one in third priority. And that's almost like the wave you want, right? We saw that previous wave from Luana Silva. It was pretty much all shoulder. Mm -hmm. And even though that was kind of a crumbly closeout, it gave Caroline the opportunity to get kind of cute on those two yes. turns. Jam her board up into the lip in that little apex section and then get down the line, foam climb which I think is an underrated, difficult maneuver. Judges don't 100%. generally love them, but they do generate points. She's trying to get rid of a 217. I feel like she did that and some on that last wave. Even though it wasn't a great wave, she made it work. For sure. Lulu here having a look. She's going to let it go. Well, the foam climb also adds a lot of speed. You get a lot of speed going into it and coming out of it. It's like a turbo boost. Exactly. And you're when going right. up, up and over the white water, which is also really cool. But yeah. Uh, really, only a goofy footer could have been able to surf this wave this well. I mean, it's one of those waves, as you were mentioning, you kind of want it to bend at you and not away from you. And her being so compact and fitting in a lot of those maneuvers right there tight in the pocket benefited her style of surfing. Should be replacing the 2.17 by a significant amount, Chris. And Lulu here having a look in third priority. Uh, she's got to answer back quickly. 3.55 on the clock now. Nice Whoa. turn there. Luana Silva. Great style, plenty of flow. Best Again, wave. Not, yeah, not a great wave, but she surfed it above and beyond, mm -hmm. I think, what most people would be capable of. So great surfing there for Luana Silva. We'll see how, how, how much credit the judges give her, pretty much due to the wave. I don't think you could have surfed that wave much better no. at all than what Luana just did. Especially with the flow that she had, too. I mean, you get her on the right wave, she's probably right there you know toe-to-toe -to -toe with Steph and Carissa in terms of style. the best power surfer yeah. yeah style and I think uh, the element of being graceful in situations of chaos too Chris sunset is a wave that it'll present your best surfing but it'll also expose your biggest flaws a frothier one too but look at the way it cleans up here on the inside that turn was just precise and beautiful in the pocket second one fortunately for her didn't have a ton of section and juice on it but adds up with the third one. So by far her best wave. And with, I mean, just under three minutes to go, Caroline will improve on the 2.17. We're still waiting for that. But you know, you get into the mix with the three, five, even a four, you're only needing another four, or maybe a five at the end of this heat, Chris. It's like what Jennifer Lopez said. You used to have a little, now you have a lot. 
<laughs> what song is that? Jenny from the Block. Oh, Jenny from. Oh, right. Tiny Hinkle's in that position, but she started with a lot. Her first two waves, the reason that she has that five, six, seven, and a four, three, three, really well done. I mean, went out there with the singular focus of getting a good, quick start, mm -hmm. and it has worked for her in a major way. She's now at the back in third priority. Caroline Marks with second priority. Rachel Presti in that top priority spot. Rachel now needs a 5-2-7. That would be the second highest single wave score of this heat. So no easy task as the judges have kept things really in that mid-range score because I think they know, well, I know that they know full well. There are sections out there. There are ramps. There will be a moment when one of these surfers just goes off and does something that will break well above that mid-range mark that we're kind of that we kind of been hovering around for most of the day even yesterday too a lot of scores were either in the upper average or in the good range and yeah. not a ton of excellent scores which i think just shows what they're expecting from both the men's and women's side of the draw and you know full credit to them too chris this is a long event and they have to go through a lot of different rounds in order to see the best surfing available yeah i think uh our judging panel is the best of the best they've been spot on throughout this entire event when you're not talking about judging, that's a good thing. Exactly. You know, when you're, when you're not talking about scores, that means they're doing an excellent job. So full credit to our male and female international judging panel. And Ray Ray, since that, you know, board that she got on left, she went on that one right, remember, that she was kind of forced to go on? And she's held first priority since then. 43 seconds left. Might be a couple bumps coming in. It could be just in time. Yeah, she needs to be on one of them, too. It's about to get chippy right here with 30 seconds left. Everybody sees it, and it's a nice-looking wave. 25 seconds. Who will be in position? Rachel Presti flips with priority. Needs a 5-2-7. Straight off the bottom, onto the open face. Wave shoulders off. You can see it in her body language that wave did not have a 527 on it but she had to go mm -hmm. she had to use her priority there so it was a solid effort for team germany from rachel presti but as it stands right now tenacious tina hinkle gets the win with a 10 point total caroline marks moves through in second place rachel presti third and luana silva fourth so brazil gets one surfer through into the main round as long with team usa Germany and Brazil head to the Repa Shards. We got more action come from round two of the women. You're watching the ISA World Surfing Games. We'll be right back. years ago over a quarter century. Even what we started, it was impossible. I mean, everybody, okay, my friends, my brother, I said, you know, you're really gonna put your energy in this? You know, let's go surfing. I never thought surfing would be in the Olympics, period. We all just looked and rolled our eyes back at, like, come on, Fernando. Surfing will never make it. I never actually dreamed of being in the Olympic because surfing wasn't an uh, Olympic sport. I never thought surfing would be in the Olympic sports. The Olympics wasn't ever a dream of mine because it wasn't a reality, it wasn't tangible. It's the biggest event in the world. Fernando is the, the reason why we're all there. Yeah, it's like me telling you I'm gonna you know, swim around the world. 27 years later, he pulled it off. Welcome back to the ISA World Surfing Games live from Puerto Rico and check this out. Carissa Moore has entered the chat in round two, heat 12. Havana Carrero, local hero here in Puerto Rico. Zoe Zietz representing the Netherlands and Francisca Kiki Vaselko. Champions all over the place in this heat. Chris Cote with Mitchell Salazar. I'd just like to sit back and enjoy this show because we are in for it four incredible surfers all with unique styles so talented this right i mean if you could bottle this up and somehow mass produce and sell it you'd be a millionaire <laughs> mitchell well for, first things first zoe zietz uh 
you know, niece of the great sea bass. Props to Sebastian Zietz. Uh, he just started Kauai Board Riders. They competed over at the Usher Cup at the Gold Coast in Australia at the beginning of January. Props to you guys. We're finally seeing that movement over there on the Hawaiian Islands. Back to the heat, though. You have an Olympic gold medalist, five-time WSL World Champion, Carissa Moore. Kika Vaselko, WSL World Junior Champion last year. Awana Cabrero, she's a local legend on the Challenger Series. She's been competing great on the regional tour on the QS. And young Zoe Zietz, who is a threat in this one, too. And especially with the swell decreasing throughout the day, you got to watch out for her on those smaller ones. She's able to fit in her tight turns in those short spaces, Chris. Yeah, this is going to be fun. And this will be a test for Carissa Moore. I mean, she is one of the greatest surfers to ever do it. She's going against three Wiley competitors. And then she goes ahead and starts like that. Good start. Huge turn for Carissa Moore. Identifying that section. And you can just see her eye line right towards the lip. Bam. Light work for our champion. And are you calling it the seaside tsunami? Is that what? what sure. Okay. Because uh, Jake Marshall from Encinitas, the place that you're from, one thing that I always remember keeps on telling me, I start off quickly. At least I'm starting to get my priority rotations going. Case in point right here by Carissa Moore. Why wait? If it's slow out there, just get to work. At least put yourself in a position where you can work underneath everybody else's priority too. And I think this is huge for her. Just getting off to a quick start, at least get a score on the board and then work off of that, Chris. Yeah, Chris and Moore taking the year off of the WSL Championship Tour uh, for all, you know, for, for a lot of different reasons, but one of the reasons she said she wants to focus on competing in the Olympics, mm -hmm. she's taking some Carissa time, and I think she's earned that and more. Carissa can do pretty much whatever Carissa wants to do. She's never had a, a result outside of the top 10 every single year that she's been on the CT either. I she's, mean, she's one of the goats. I mean, that that's uh, that's an easy one. And one of the most complete surfers to ever do it, both male or female, too. I'm, I'm hoping for some Carissa Moore video parts. <laughs> hey. I, I'm selfishly, I, and I know she's going to be putting in the work. She can. And I'm hoping for some Carissa Moore video parts. Well, we're about to see Carissa Moore in competition. So one of the rare times of the year. So soak it in and enjoy it. I mean, you're not going to see much of Carissa in a jersey here in 2024, so this is a special moment. As we saw Havana Cabrera right there, proving that, yeah, there are other superstars in this heat. Mm -hmm. Great start for Cabrera. And second generation pro, her father, I'd say one of the key pieces of why Puerto Rico has been on the map for the last 20, 25 years. One at Pipeline, which... Yeah, he's a pipe legend for sure. I mean, if you know, that's already very difficult, and... Looking at Carissa's first wave right here. A strong turn, five points for that one. Half of the scale for a major moment on a wave right there. And look at this, though, by Ivana. Just beautiful technique, lays it on rail. Never pushes too hard either. And just plays it really smart right there at the end. But it was all about positioning. Kika was right there to catch this wave, too. And Ivana with a little bit deeper positioning. Really love the way, the way she engages her rail. And, you know, she's been putting in a lot of work in the water and in the gym. And it's noticeable right here, Chris, really brings those shoulder arounds, those shoulders around, excuse me, and accentuates that first turn. But see how she never made it fully to the bottom right there? That was a smart choice because, as you were saying, foam climbs, they're cool, but they can also be very difficult. Kind of one of those right there where it was kind of in between. A lot of froth on that wave, too. Yeah, it was great surfing. Quick, smart decisions. You know, the bottom turn really is kind of the the, the, the bedrock of what makes a turn really good, but sometimes you, you have to cut them short to get up into it. So 14, 15 to go as we wait for the next set to roll through. Let's go down to the boardwalk with Rachel Tilly. Wow, a big heat win in one of what we might have seen as the most stacked heat of today, including the WSL current w world champion. What was your mindset and strategy going into that heat? It feels so good to win this heat. Um, the conditions are fun, but um, hard too. So I'm very happy. I just want to surf and do my best. Um, that's what I tr I'm training every day. So yeah, I'm just very happy and hope to get more some good ways. We saw your teammate Tatiana win earlier this morning too. Was she able to give you any advice of heat strategy, how this wave is working out there today? 
Yeah, for sure. I came to watch Tachi and uh, it was fun to see her win this heat today. And now it's my time to uh, win my heat. So it um, feels good. Um, I'm very happy and I just want to thank God for this heat, for the waves. And yeah, I feel happy. <laughs> Well, Team Brazil looking so strong going into this event. What does it mean to you to be representing your country? Oh, I'm so happy to be here representing Brazil. Um, I born in Florianópolis, so I'm, I'm just uh, representing Guarda do Imbaú too. So, quero mandar um abraço aí para a galera que está assistindo a Guarda. E é isso aí, vamos que vamos. Isa. Congratulations and good luck for the next round. Back to you guys. Surprise, surprise, another incredibly talented surfer from Florinopolis. Heine Hinkle went out there, did her business, came back to the beach, showed us gratitude, grace, and joy in that post interview. That's exactly what you want to see. You know, while you're in the water, that's, that's you at work, right? You're serious. She went out there. You saw her paddling through the crowd, sharking her way into that priority spot, getting those first two waves quick and making our competitors pay, but you leave that attitude in the water, you come back and you give us a great post heat interview like that, and then your whole team surrounds you and that's exactly what you wanna do here at the ISA World Surfing Games. 100% and I mean, great leadership there, Teco Padrats and the incredible crew at Seve Surf. I'm, they've been doing an amazing job. We were just there a few months ago for the ISA World Juniors and you know, getting a new set and fresh set of eyes on an incredible committee that Brazil has now. I think having Teco at the mand, somebody who was on the CT for years, a successful CT surfer too, is going to be huge for them. Who? Speaking Marissa of huge. Moore. Chris and Moore. She's a pretty good surfer, Mitchell. <laughs> I mean, the understatement of the year. I think she's already had two waves that she absolutely blasted during those interviews. Look at her numbers. The highest. One of the highest heat totals of the day, for mm -hmm. sure. A 7.5 and a 5, giving her a 12.50 total. She's just out there. Can, it's like, this is cat and mouse. I mean, she is just playing with the competition. The, the way you said it, the way you phrased it made me laugh so hard. Like, she's pretty good at surfing. She's pretty good. She is pretty good. Well, when the you get, resume speaks volumes. And when you it? get a 5 or a single turn, too. Yeah. I mean, just to be able to identify beyond that wave, too, you're getting half of the scale for one major maneuver, obviously. It talks a lot about who you are and what kind of waves you're picking too. Because being the best surfer isn't just about, you know, doing the best maneuvers or applying the best strategy out there. It's also being on the best waves and being able to recognize and put so much time in the water is a huge feat of what she's been able to accomplish in her young career so far, Chris. Well, and I think, you know, Chris and Moore with all the accolades, the trophies, the, the, the titles, the Olympic gold, Sometimes all those things overshadow the fact that she is a very stylish surfer. I mean, her style is perfect. Mm -hmm. It's almost so good that you don't notice it. It's like a Slater type of thing, right? Carissa Moore, with all the technique and the prowess that she has, doing maneuvers like that. I mean, nobody nobody does that turn better than Carissa Moore. 4.47, so doesn't improve. But, I mean, just that bottom turn alone is worth a couple of points. You know throws the fins right there, was able to re-engage, and just not only that, being able to identify what a wave's going to do before it even breaks. What to a read spark there, too. I mean, she's been doing that same turn since her NSSA days. Uh, absolutely. And then this is the 7.5. Huge layback right there. Combos it up with the one carve at the beginning. And then another thing that we have to take into consideration, three of the members of Team USA come from the Hawaiian Islands. I mean, that was just precious right there by Carissa. That's Textbook. what I'm talking about, the stylist. But doesn't this remind you of town in Honolulu? There's a lot of waves like this over there by Diamond Head. You have Alamoana Bowls, Kawalo Basin. It's just another day in town for Carissa Moore at home. You know, and, and I like the fact that, you know, she, she is taking time off from competition technically She's on vacation. She's not surfing like that. <laughs> she's surfing like she's in a world title heat. It might be refreshing to not have to do too many events either. You know, you take a breather, you get back into a jersey and like, oh, I like this. I, I enjoy it. And then the cool thing for her is that she's still getting a spot in Tahiti for the CT event. 
in preparation for Paris 2024 as well. So not a, a, a ton of reps, but the important ones are being in place before the Olympic Games happen this summer. Yeah, and again, w when you're Carissa Moore, you can pretty much do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. you, you've earned that privilege. And she obviously has nothing more to prove in surfing, but I like the fact that she's still improving and she's still getting better and better. She's an incredible human being, too. I mean, what she does outside of surfing, I think maybe even more important than what she's done in the water. She's a golden girl. She's our golden girl. Well, and speaking of golden girls, both Zoe nor Kika haven't really gotten anything. And speaking of her, up and riding here. Here we go. Francisco Veselko representing Team Portugal. The other team members have had a lot of success so far today. She's got to keep the pace set. Hung up a little bit right there, but two decent turns. So that's a, a good start for Francisca Vasilka. Mm -hmm. That right there is what we want to see. Grit, determination, drive. She's giving that paddle everything she's got. She still has 7 minutes and 15 seconds to go. And the good news for Vasilko, as she drops that 3-4-3, three, three, now she's in the mix. Only needs a 3-4-1 to get up into an advancing position. And with a huge amount of time, too, 7 minutes. That's an eternity out, uh, out there. You can work underneath everybody else's priority. But right now, Havana Cabrera, she's only looking to improve on a 2 3 3 and using priority on this one here, Chris. Here we go. Hometown hero. Ooh. Puerto Rico, but right there, just a little chop. Yeah, lost. Throws her off balance. Lost her fins. 6.43 to go. Zoe Zietz in the priority position in the green jersey right there in the middle of the peak. I mean, I'm sure it'd be kind of hard not to get starstruck, sitting right next to Chris. Moore. I know that Havana, Francisca, and Zoe have all probably met her. Maybe they've done changing tides with her, that WSL campaign. You know, they've seen her around at events. But it's a different story when you're in a jersey sitting right next to one of the greatest to ever do it. I'm sure they're not intimidated because these three young surfers have definitely put in their fair share of work. And they've got a lot of confidence, but, I mean, come on, that's Carissa Moore you're going up against. Yeah, it's, it, it, I mean, it's an honor to be able Definitely. to share the water with her. But how do, you, like this. how do you replace an honor and a privilege with, I'm going to beat you? Right. Uh, to me, it was music. You know, I'm just putting on my headphones, blasting something that's getting me motivated, inspired to move forward. And, you know, at this event, you're going to be able to see a lot of those people. Hey, I was able to surf against John John Florence, but... I, from this perspective, am saying that I'm going to compete against him. Right. There's people that are saying, oh, I get to surf with John John Can't Florence. Can't wait to watch. You shouldn't be thinking that way. Um, you know, in the end, it's an honor and a privilege and everything like that. But remember, you're still here to compete. And in the end, that person will probably risk everything that they have in order to beat you, too. So why wouldn't you do the same thing to beat them? And I think in the end... The people in your corner matter in that sense, but most importantly, it's going to be able to come down to you to be able to sw uh, flip that switch in the moment, Chris. And I have seen Chris more in headphones preheat, mm -hmm. warming Big up. Time. She fits the description of a Swifty. She's positive, <laughs> she's smart, she's got a enthusiasm. I'm wondering. Is Carissa Moore a Swift? Well, ask oh, oh, Tell Rachel. Tell us out there yeah. in uh, social media. We know Taylor's watching. Taylor, how you doing down in Australia? Probably tuning in right now to watch your girl, Carissa Moore. Are you a Swifty? I'm a low-key Swifty, yeah. I am, actually. I'm a, it's a, I'm a recent addition to the Swifty okay. army. Okay, so it's like the Kate Bush thing running up that hill, like, well, post. I'm a folklore-era Swifty. Uh, yeah, I'm new to this, but I'm true to this. <laughs> I'm on the team. 420 to go here. Carissa Moore in the lead. A 7-5 and a 5. Havana Cabrero in second. Francisco Vaselko needing a 3-4-1. And Zoe Zietz needing a 5-8-3. Is this the wave that Zoe Zietz needs? Straight off the bottom right there into we the go. lip. That right there was an impactful turn. Two big ones for Zoe Zietz. Now here goes Carissa. Woo! Trademark, textbook, arcing, carve, and a beautiful roundhouse cutback to add some flair to the end of that way for Carissa Moore. So Zoe Zietz with one of the turns of the heat for sure. Super fast. A lot of energy went into that opening turn. She did get a second. So with 3.30 to go. See, the second you mentioned Taylor Swift, things amplify in the water. It works. <laughs> it's the Swifty effect. 
<laughs> well, by far one of the biggest sections we've seen so far in the heat. Zietz is going to get her best ride by a mile, and Kika right here. This might be a big way for her, Chris. Here we go. Francisco Vaselko. Nice carve there. Hammers that end section. So a Ooh. different type of wave. She did get that chance to hit the secondary kind of closeout section. Didn't have a lot of power behind it, so she wasn't really fully able to lean into it. But now we're waiting for all kinds of numbers to come through. At least one or two of them are going to be difference makers in this heat. And it seems like Riss might be interested in that. She's going to let it go. So the, the interesting thing here is that Cabrera only has a 2.33 as her backup. And she's had that for a long time, too. But Kika might might move up in a second. We're still waiting on the opener of Zietz. And Carissa, I mean, she's very far out in front right now. So you shouldn't be thinking that first is really an option right now. Settle for second if you have to. Two minutes, 20. Gabriel right now with priority. Just be on a wave at the end, especially if you hear the beach announcer is going to tell you that this heat's going to switch because it's close right here between Vaselko and Cabrera. I feel like Kika just might get the score that she needs. And here we go. Havana Cabrera trying to defend that second place position. Big yep. number came through for Zoe Zietz. Beautiful looking wave there. Ample opportunity to carve Cabrero now. It's exactly what she needed to do. Trying to get rid of a 2-3-3. Three, three, three. Surfing with speed, power, flow, dynamic down the line. The opening snap carve combo was great. Definitely going to get rid of a 2-3-3 three, three there. Yeah. Add to that 4.5 total. Zoe Zietz made her job a little bit easier. But that 1-5 is going to uh, definitely change once we get the number that Havana just dropped. Yeah, and what a way to handle the pressure, too. Oh, yeah. Competing at home. Your dad's here. You got the support of all the fans on the beach, too. It's a big moment for not only herself, but for her nation, too. So Puerto Rico girl's doing great right now. I mean, to be able to do that in the last two minutes, make a pivotal and decisive, not only not only with the intent that she had of improving her score, but of keeping everybody else off of the wave and converting that into a positive thing was huge for Hawana. But as of right now, Zoe Zietz proved that she can get it done with just one turn, Chris. Yeah, that was... Has first win, priority, Win or too. lose, that's going to be a highlight style turn. Well, here she goes, it seems. All right, still needing 1.5. That's, of course, before the number drops for Havana. 35 seconds left. That wave was a no-go zone. Had to try, though. Time going quickly. Kika outside, maybe here. No. Yeah, Chris Moore had priority. There you go. She is a brilliant tactician as well. Pretty sure highest heat toll of the event, too. First time we've seen anybody break 16 points on X on the heat already. Yeah, I think I think you're right there. I mean, she is just a special surfer. And did it under priority a lot, too. Yeah. I mean, she was kind of looking for those waves, just working underneath everybody else's priority. So waiting on a few scores here. Remember the second of Kika, which had the two-turn combo, and then the last of Cabrero. Got a decision to make right here, Chris. Is it going to be white or is it going to be the surfer in blue moving through in second place? Ooh, luckily it's not my decision. Can I just <laughs> vote for all the teams to move fun? through? <laughs> well, Carissa Moore, surfing's golden girl, doing Carissa Moore things. A 16 point total. And at the end of that, Havana Cabrero. She comes through in second place, still waiting for one score to drop. But as it stands now, Francisco Veselko drops to third, Zoe Zietz in fourth. Who will wind up in the Repa Charge round? It's going to be, at the moment, Vaselko and Zietz. More Cabrero move on through and stay in the main round. we got a lot more action to come. We're going to bring Shannon and Barton back in on the call. Women's round two is going off. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. The first qualifiers for the Paris 2024 Olympics have been announced. Sara, come here. Jordi, come here. I think you guys should be getting ready to go to French school because I'm going to see you next, next year in Tahiti. Yeah! Thank you so much. I've been feeling a lot of 
pressure the last week, so it's just been like an emotional roller coaster and um, just breathing, just trying to focus on myself and trust the process, and um, yeah, here we are. In Puerto Rico, we call ourselves Boricua. We are proud, passionate, and full of life. On our island, secrets are more precious than shared. Passion flourishes. We enjoy until our hearts are full. And we know that gifts can come from anywhere. Live Boricua. Our surfer in red, Mahine Fierro out of France, into that first opening turn, carving it back into the section and now looking down the line, tagging it up for a great looking hit as she works her way through to the inside section. Just seen Carissa Moore entering into it, her retirement now, coming out with a couple of strong heats here at the ISA World Surfing Games. Very exciting to see her putting in all of the effort on her road to the Olympics, her final event of her career potentially happening later this year. And getting some solid scores. We've now got surfers out in the lineup. Sarah Baum on her backhand, straight up into the pocket, setting it up here and wrapping it around onto the inside section. Looking for that critical pocket for her to finish off with as well. And she's got a score to draw. Alice Barton with a 0.87 on the board. And Aaron Brooks for Team Canada out in the lineup as well. This is going to be an exciting heat, Barton, to be able to see the action. And we've got some scores to drop as well. Yeah, it's a goofy fest, that's for sure. Sarah Baum, Aaron Brooks, Vahini Fierro. Ripping on their backhand. That was a great ride from Vahini. Here's Aaron. Aaron now driving down the line, setting it up here straight into the lip. Potentially just the single maneuver, and she'll kick out quickly. She said the waves were a little bit challenging in her heat yesterday afternoon at El Pico, just getting to know that new break. She yeah. came away with a victory um, and it had kind of an easy time finding that, but she just said from actually finding her way in the water, it was a little more challenging than she would have liked. Out in the water up against Vahine Fierro, Sarah Baum, Aaron Brooks, and Alice Barton. We know, Barton, that uh, Vahine Fierro and Sarah Baum have already secured themselves with spots for the Olympics. Yeah, good point. Which is very exciting. Both of them gaining that uh, continental qualification out of the 2023 World Surfing Games. And now Sarah setting it up off the bottom. Square off that first turn. Big wrap around for the second. And now lining it up through to the inside here. Wow. Great combination surfing from the South African. Yeah, it's beautiful, wasn't it? Sat wide. The other surfers had the priority, so she decided to stay wide. Got that beautiful, definitely better than the first ride. Way, you know, vertical, critical maneuver on the first section. Fahini paddling here. She opened up with a five point ride now on her second lap, throws a lot of spray out of that opening turn. Ooh. Connects with that lip line on the second and a foam climb to slip the work done on those first two turns to put her back up score on the board. Yeah, absolutely. Felt like the energy on that wave was a little stronger, a little more aggressive than the first. Shame about the third little foam climb to face plant. But uh, and look at the look at the kicking in the paddle. Ferocious paddle to get back out there in front of Sarah. Look at this big section. Beautiful turn there. Kind of stuck at the top for a little bit. Flattened out. Wrap back to the pocket here's another section boom got a five um you know i, I was reflecting on the one turn five of carissa moore's compared yes. to that which is an interesting comparison okay. in itself there's a, the first ride of sarah a couple of turns just waiting for this to stand up finds that inside it doesn't really it kind of showed a moment like it was going to stand up but then drew back down it's the one turner of erin brooks wide in the stance gets the arms out 
flies into the lip, one turn, jumps off. Take one more look at it, more from the judge's perspective. Back foot, punching down on the back fins, pushing and squirting the board. It's the one turn, nice turn. Oh, watch this. This is the wave of the heat so far, perhaps. At that point, definitely nice, big backhand entry, tight to the pocket. Little catch of the rail, but it made it look dramatic because she was right back in there. And then the final turn, beautiful as well. Two turns of, of serious consequence on that one. Well, we still got scores to drop, but let's appreciate the surfing from Bahine before we announce those. Well, that second turn was money. So big good. flaring turn, unfortunate about the finish. So situation in the lineup, we've got 14 minutes on the clock. We've already got a paddle from Alice Barton. She's currently sitting in fourth position, has only had the 0 0.87 for Great Britain and connects with that lip line. It's a little bit caught for a moment and she'll kick out, she's chasing a 414. We'll see where the judges go with that score. More scores to come, but before we get to those, let's go down to the beach to catch up with Rachel Tilly and Carissa Moore. Congratulations, Carissa. It's an honor to be standing here next to you at the moment. You earlier this year stepped away from the championship tour, but you're here at the ISA World Surfing Games supporting your country. You just posted the highest heat total of the day by far. How did it feel out there? Oh, uh, no, thank you so much. I'm really excited to be back in Puerto Rico. I was here like 13 years ago for the search event at Middles. And so it's it feels like I'm here with a totally fresh pair of eyes. And it's just it's a beautiful country that people are really kind and has been so hospitable to share their waves with us. And um, the waves are super fun. So I I love the team atmosphere, the USA team getting to hang out with Caroline and Katie, John, Baron, and Tyler has been super cool. And our, our coaches and support team are awesome. Yeah, that's amazing. You can see the energy. You guys have an awesome team going in, already qualified for the Olympics. So what are you looking for from this event? Uh, I'm, it's a it's a great opportunity. I mean, there's a lot of really great talent from all over the world, especially like there's countries that aren't represented on the World Surf League. And so it's cool to see all these places really like step up, especially on the female side. It's been such a boom of progression. And so I'm just happy to be here to be a part of the experience. And it's for me, it's like an extra, extra practice leading up to the Olympics. Well, the surfing you were doing out there was absolutely incredible. You looked one with your board. What is the equipment that you're on right now? Uh, I, I'm really, really fortunate to be working with one of the best shapers in the world, Matt Biolis, and um, I'm just riding a 510 uh, round tail driver 2.0, and it feels really good. It's actually one of the boards that I, he shaped for me for the finals, so they're still going good. Well, it's so great to see you here. Great to see you in a jersey, just absolutely lighting it up. The crowd is so excited to see you here. Congratulations and good luck for the next heat. Thank you so much. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Back to you guys. Thanks so much, Rachel. Great to hear from Carissa. Sounding cheerful, excited to be in the mix in that preparation for another run at the Olympics. Yeah, and, and, and it was a, an amazing performance. Got set up by the one turn five at the start. And I feel like at that moment she went, well, that wasn't that hard. And, and it took the pressure off and it was a really easy heat to surf from that moment on great performances and then there was some flaring progressive surfing as well as the the full contact rail carving so um yeah great performance from her and puts everybody on notice really wendy velasquez for team ecuador getting ready to paddle out next just getting a quick word from the beach marshals they're there to answer any questions if you're an athlete that's competing that this week and, and you just want to know like pretty much anything they're there to be a bit of the voice of the the kind of criteria or or that space in the beginning of the day, letting you know those times, you know, paddle out times, all sorts of things. So it's a great opportunity to be able to check in with the beach marshal. I mean, you have to literally to pick up your jersey. Yeah, and then. But you, if you've got any questions, you can ask. The, a new break, you know, for some of the surfers, a new competition format. So there's definitely things you need to know and clarify to make sure you don't make some subtle mistake that costs you advancement. The Olympic gold medalist from Tokyo 2020. Quite a few fans down on uh, the rail right there would have watched her heat and been so excited and and kind of you, you once you get down to a contest site you know it is a grom growing up i grew up in huntington beach california the u.s open was like you know the highlight of the summer mm. we'd all go down there and you'd scope out the areas where you could try and bump into people right. and try and get as many autographs as possible when <laughs> we were young so you're always kind of looking all right what does it seem like well maybe they come out of that gate this time or actually they're going around some other way got friends in different places <laughs> here it's a little bit of a smaller setup so it's slightly easier to notice exactly where those surfers are going to come out but so many of them have been gracious with spending their time answering questions getting a photo giving an autograph and it's been really fun to see 
you know, these surfers in the lineup, I'm sure will have moments like that when they get out of the water. At the moment, current uh, context to the heat, we've got just under halfway to go, 10 minutes remaining. Bahine Fierro for France is currently sitting in that leading position with a, a couple of fives. Sarah Baum for South Africa is sitting with that big score of the 6.50 as her high mark. She's in that second place position. And then a couple of threes on the board for Alice Barton and for Aaron Brooks for their opening exchange as their highest score so far. And uh, the judges went higher on Vahini's second than the first. That's exactly how it felt to me. There was a power and a strength in that second ride, even with the fall, that, that wasn't there in the first. So I feel like that was accurate. And then the 6-5 is the highest scoring wave of the heat is right there. So, so far, this heat feels like it's making a lot of sense. And uh, the judges have got it spot on. Chris are just spending some time doing a couple of interviews or likely getting a, a couple of autographs asked of her. I wouldn't say retired. I like to, I like to say I'm just uh, shifting gears a little bit, but um, it's been so fresh still that I've just kind of, I'm still feeling my way through it and figuring it out. That was Pablo Zanocchi from Duke Surf. He runs an incredible platform for surf journalism in the Latin American um, side of things, one of the greatest of all time within surf journalists around the world. Alice Barton now up and riding, getting really good on Ooh. these opening couple turns, and she's got the opportunity to capitalize. She's going to do it. She's only chasing a 5.08, Barton. Yeah, that was a fantastic ride. And this is a high scoring heat across the board. Can't wait to see this angle front on. First wrap, clean, beautiful. Second one, bit flat on the shoulder, but the carve is beautiful. The speed in the board's great. Into the inside, floating, closeout maneuver. Controlled, gets the cutout, and definitely feels like a wave that's gonna be in that range with the other first and second place surfers at this point in time and, and really give her a shot at advancement. 393, the previous high for her. So there's a chance that she could go to second place with Sarah Baum still holding on to that 2.5 and a total of nine points. So looking, you know, 3.2, 4.2, and she's on her way. Having a paddle now for Sarah. So waiting for a wave of Alice to drop in. Sarah looking to improve on the 2.5. Little wrap to start off with, and that top third of the wave connects with that lip line, goes a bit more vertical on the second for a left. A little bit of a flatter wave. What are your thoughts on that one? Yeah, it's some urgency to replace the 2.5. That's what it felt like to me. Like, let's just get something better than that 2.5 and, and start building on that second score, uh, it, you know, six minutes seven minutes on the clock perhaps there was time to to wait for something better but um let's have a look at it on the replay and really assess this first turn just a wrap as you said it's a bit flat on the face goes in for the last turn and it just didn't feel that exciting you know what i mean it, it felt like one of those three point type of rides that we've seen ridden before judges still con con uh, considering Alice's wave, but there it is a 3.03 for Sarah, so that makes sense too. So Sarah increases the requirement now on Alice to a 5.61 off the strength of that three, so slightly higher by about 0 0.5 on the requirement for Alice. Erin Brooks has been sitting with priority for a little while, Barton. She's got that control factor, now chasing a six point ride in that 5.94 specific requirement. She'll need at least sixes as the majority across the board. Take her through to that, you know, top two position. She's got some weight on her shoulders in this event. We know how hungry she is for that Olympic qualification as such a young surfer still in the draw. And we've got a score that's just dropped in now for Alice. It's a 4.60. And she stays in that third place position, but she's chipped away at her requirement now being just less than a five. And so a good, a good move from Sarah Baum to get the three, because without that, she would have gone into second place. So, so that made sense, you know, improving by that 0 0.5, zero, 03 actually, you know, it, it, that, it really did make a difference in the end, you know, 0.53 it was, wasn't it, improve on the 2.5. So that, that was the difference, kept her in the lead uh, or in second place or in front of Alice. So strategic there from Sarah Baum. Now in the fourth priority though, Alice third, Erin Brooks, as you said, a super determined young lady, 
would do amazing at that location and is certainly with Katie Simmers and Molly Picklam one of those people you look at as the future of surfing. She's going to, going to use the priority right now. Now up and riding, Aaron Brooks. Great composure as she drives through that first turn. Technical. And pristine as this wave now starts to give her a little bit more of a challenge. She's always good at generating her own speed on any wave, even if it's not offering very much for yeah. her. So chasing down a six point ride on that one. And we've said it quite a few times today, but it didn't feel like the wave she was waiting for. She kind of got forced into going it because everybody else wanted a piece of it. Sarah Baum. Sarah with a, a little bit of a meteor section maybe in front of her than what we just saw from Aaron. And she gets the in section with even more available for her to hit down the line. Aaron just makes sure to stay out of her way there on the paddle back out. And so Sarah makes sure she's out of the wave in front of her to, to beat her to the priority position. That's right. So Sarah looking now to improve on the three is going to make it much more challenging on the rest of the field. Scores in for last of Aaron. It's uh, just shy of the four point range with a 3.83. So she's still sitting in that fourth place position. Hasn't really found the rhythm that she had in yesterday's heat at El Pico. I think she needs to find those closeout sections, actually. She could go to the air and get a massive score because we haven't really seen anything of that nature. And she could, Bahini could use first priority right here. Straight up into the lip for Bahine. Driving hard off the bottom, seamless from the first maneuver into the second. Now wraps it around as she looks down the line for these finishing moments. Connects with the foam. Might have another corner to work with here. Keeping that board on rail, finding a bit of speed and takes that stumble at the finish. Sarah gets a 4.23 and improves again. Vahini with that wave. Um, either Sarah's or um, Vahini's were most probably a wave that Erin uh, could have sat and waited for. Alice now up and riding on her feet. Setting herself up for that first section. Turn looks great. Oh. Snaps for something more critical. And unfortunately, that outside rail just hits the surface of the wave. We've seen a few surfers go down in that same way. Two minutes, 30 seconds on the clock, Barton. What are you seeing? I'm seeing priority with Aaron Brooks uh, needing a 6.9. There's a, a, the possibility of getting that with turns. We haven't seen too many big scores from turns. And in my mind, I just would be thinking airs if I was her. It's the kind of the quickest way out of a troubled situation that she finds herself in fourth place. Really, neither of those scores, the 3.8 or the 3.6, you would want to have kept at the end of the heat. Um, and so it's all or nothing at this point. It's a one wave situation. Well, maybe it's a two. Maybe you could get one right from the peak and then get a wide right and fit two in in this last two minutes. That is possible from a timing perspective. But uh, largely, you'd be thinking it's a one wave and it's got to be something super spectacular to go that high. Alice with a paddle chasing a 6.14. Opting to go on the right. Sets herself up for that first turn. Just kind of transitioning to make sure to capitalize on the finishing section, but she'll go down. So she won't be changing her position in the water. Well, as someone who didn't change their position, but improved it by a large amount is Vahini Fierro, a 7.67 on that last wave. Again, I'm thinking Aaron Brooks waiting with the priority and getting that wave. So there's some, some problems around or issues around the use of priority and wave selection that she'll be able to reflect on and see that, you know, all of these ladies surf incredible. And it's been Vahini who's found herself right from the start on the best waves and done some fantastic backhand surfing to consolidate the lead. 50 seconds on the clock, Erin with priority. Will she get a chance? See Vahine just sticking close to her, applying that pressure. Although, of course, Erin will have the first priority to take off on a wave. A lot of surfers will use that positioning of themselves just to apply that kind of, hey, I'm here. Yeah. I'm not going to let you alone. And that can be enough to rattle people quite often. Sure can. Erin now with a paddle, 30 seconds on the clock. One of the best tube riders in the women's field, one of the best aerialists as well, taking two turns to try and find that 6.90. Critical opening turn, mm. having to go to those cutbacks, unfortunately, because the wave goes soft. And you can see her really working hard with this to just stay on it. If there's going to be a little section, she's absolutely going to be able to tag it. But will it be enough with the scores that we've seen dropped for the other surfers? Still putting in that effort, but you can just sense in her body language 
that feeling that it hasn't quite gotten there and, and she's going to be battling through the rapid charge round. The fact that Bahini broke through seven gives you hope. You go, well, the judges are willing to go there. There's a yes. chance. They've already gone there in the heat. If I can get something comparable, I'm a chance. But the first turn was promising. Then the wave just went a little bit flat. Had from you been that able to back on. it with a second similar section? Yeah, if there were two sections, it, it would have, the first was enough to give her that opportunity. Uh, time's up. And uh, for Erin Brooks, it looks like the repercharge round it is. Bahine Fiera with the win. Sarah Baum does have a score to drop as we're looking just at the line coming through from the judging panel. And Aaron Brooks as well with a score to drop. So official results to come. But at the moment, it's Bahine with the lead. 767 as her high score. And she's continuing on a road to victory towards the Paris Olympics. I'm 23 years old and I'm from Tahiti representing France. Tehupo is a very special place to my heart. It's a very particular wave because you, you can't train any other waves than that one if you want to get better. So you have to go to the Olympic qualification and that's probably one of my biggest focus for now. Bahine Fierro officially qualifies for Paris 2024 in El Salvador and has punched her ticket to compete at her home break of Chopo. To have Bahine qualify at her hometown, like, I don't know if you could hold the Olympics at Chopes without her there. It's enough to make me want to cry, to be honest. You know, she has been through an enormous amount of emotional ups and downs you know following this dream chasing this dream see her come out the other side of all of that succeed book her place but that is um is epic mate you know i'm an olympian now and i just want to put all my effort in and leave it all in the ocean and just you know not have any regrets and just surf my heart out and and try my best out there hard work does pay off uh, at some point and this point right now is like the best ever and, and I'm really looking forward to, you know, putting the time in over there and, and figure out how I can win that gold medal. Welcome back to the action. It was official. Vahine Fierro holds on to the win with Sarah Baum in second and Erin Brooks gets a score just enough to move her into that third place position. But unfortunately, we'll be seeing the young Canadian competitor mm. heading into the repercharge charge round. Now, she's a surfer that we know could end up winning the event out of out of a moment like that. Sally Fitzgibbons and all of her ISA gold medalists has a lot of those wins have come from rapid charge round battles all the way back through. Oh. So, Aaron, we could absolutely see that. Yep. Um, but that would have been a bit of a shakeup, especially for a lot of our viewership. I feel like fans down on the beach kind of looking at that draw, knowing she was the younger one, but she's one of those with a lot of eyes on her. As we take a look at Mahina Maeda out of Japan, She's had quite a few junior world titles to her name. She was able to compete in Tokyo as well as an Olympian. And now she's looking to put herself back in that conversation. She's got such a great style and she loves charging in bigger waves back at home in Hawaii. So it's exciting to see her out here today. She's up against Brisa Hennessy from Costa Rica, Wendy Velasquez of Ecuador, and Lucia Machado of Spain, all with Mahina Maeda representing Japan. Another one of those international heats, Europe, Asia, and South America, Latin America represented there. Brisa Hennessy, the great at Sunset Beach. I think she'll feel really comfortable in these type of waves. Mahina's first wave being considered now. Great to get an early start. Board looked great under her feet. The way when the wave went flat and she was able to just keep going rail to rail and keep the board moving without bouncing too much, it, it, it was promising signs for her equipment. 2.83, long ride, a lot of work for that score. <laughs> um, but speaks to the size of the manoeuvres on the wave, you know, and the opportunities in the wave face. 
That's right. And knowing that, you know, in that previous heat, we saw Vahine get into the sevens on those that big rail work. There is that big scoring potential out there. Yeah, and it's it's a certain type of wave. You know, all of these ladies surf so good. That last heat was maybe the most competitive heat that you and I have called. Everybody got opportunities in good ways. Here's the replay. So there was a first wrapping turn, no sort of connection with the lip. And then from there on, it was just work, tradesman-like work to try and create a score. And the information is don't bother trying that way again because it's not, it's not going to get rewarded. You can't bluff them into a score just because of the length of ride or because of the, the work through the inside. They want to, and, and the way that board carved back here, you watch this part here too, see the, the fluidity of the board from rail to rail, how she didn't have to kind of, you know, get off the back of it and move forward and try and make it connect. So great equipment under her feet, nice inside turn. Um, but again, long paddle, a lot of work, and in the end, that would be a throwaway. And you get back out the back, and you go, well, you know, that was a lot of a lot of paddling, a lot of work. At least I'm warmed up. <laughs> but she's back out the back now, anyway, with the others. So nothing ventured, no loss there at all. Already straight back out there. Down to 15 minutes on the clock. Let's go down to the beach to catch up with Vahine Fierro and Rachel Tilly. Congratulations, what a strong heat win against a stacked field. How did you feel out there? Yes, it was nice to uh, change uh, spots and surf a dominant ride. It's like it changes from the other side and it was a really good heat. We were already two Olympians and then Erin that's, you know, upcomer and, and has a bright future. So it was like a good heat and I was really happy to be against them and, and perform well. And when you have a field like that upcoming in your heat, what do you do prior to paddling out to prepare for you mentally? With the French team, we're really well supported and surrounded. We have our trainer, our coaches, so we can rely on them and have you know confidence in our hard work before the event as well. So that's kind of the little things I remind myself before my heats. Well, you're already an Olympian qualified. So, and not only are you an Olympic qualifier at the moment, but it's coming to your home in Tahiti in July. Uh, what are you looking for from this event in preparation? I think this event is really important. I'm really happy that I'm already qualified, so that's off my list. But it's we have uh, other Olympians to qualify, and, and it's a, just a good event to start our year and start strong and carry on for the rest of the year. Well, with such a strong start, I'm looking forward to seeing more of you throughout the week. Thank you. <laughs> Back to you guys. Thanks so much. That sort of surfing is just, it's so exciting to see. I feel like for Vahine, she's kind of, she's finally achieved some of the goals that she set. She's got so many great goals that have just missed by those, you know, narrow margins of how many women actually get to qualify for the CT. Those exactly. kind of things where had it been equal numbers, she would have been on the CT for years now. Yeah, it's been a it's been a really emotional journey of, of, of those so close but failing and, and, and it it really starts to wear on you and you know, I always used to tell her when we were working together, just keep going, it'll turn, it'll turn, just keep pushing, keep focused and uh, the surfing we saw on the slow mo during the interview shows you how great her surfing is and then at the Olympic venue there is no one better in the female field, so got a big chance coming up with that Olympics and as she said the French team super professional in their preparation and one of the things that uh, she did in, in one of the breaks that she had she went and did the police academy training I just read and, about you know that. With, with you know firing guns and in the line having to assert yourself in, in a in a situation semi-crisis situation so I think that was a great experience for her to help her you know embrace and, and connect with her strength and power as we see some strength and power yes. from Risa Hennessy on cue. Beautiful opening wrap, just digging in that rail, gets the tag to finish. And Risa, like you said, put together a beautiful performance out at Sunset Beach. A former winner there as well. It's awesome to see someone that connects with the wave, even if they don't walk away, maybe winning the event again or, you know, in, in close years or whatever. Mm. Just to be able to have some real good showings yeah. at a spot that it's kind of a favorite for them is really nice. And she's, she's very um, aware, enlightened, smart, wholesome young lady. You know, she's got all of those elements and understanding in her mind that, that allow her the opportunity to create this amazing physical performance. And yeah, she's, she's, a, she's a real talent, 
and someone who's going to have a lot to, to give to the sport of surfing. That's absolutely right. She's an incredible role model. And the yeah. way that she's opened up to us this year through her social media, through, you know, the, the little opportunities that we get to hear from her and her voice, she's been really candid and open with what she's been going through from, you know, the physical side of things that pulled her out of the tour last year. As we take a look at some replays here, we'll get back to Brisa Hennessy because Bucci Machado has put herself into lead with a 427. Yeah, she was. Here we go. This is the front on angle been great to see what the drones have given us but I love this front on angle first turn loose the rail looks so free so clean through the water a couple of great turns there Brisa drives off the bottom nice carving turn section comes up in front hits that cleanly gets two jumps off slow-mo love this gives it a moment Let's it breathe and then lays the rail over and tweaks it right at the end. Wants to give herself enough time and, and keep enough speed to be able to hit this closeout section. So she didn't take that first turn too far back and around and connected too beautifully. Best you, wave of the heat so far, sorry. There it is, a 5.5. We're near in a moment like that, you know, that little tweak of the tail that you called out in that first turn. Mm. You've got to be paying attention to that next section as well, like you yeah. said, to be able to know when to hold back, when to go all the way. Wendy exactly. Velasquez now up and riding for Ecuador and setting herself up with a little tail slide on the inside. She's unable to hold on to it, and it looks like White maybe out the back for Lucia up and riding again. So she's going to have another score to drop. But, Barton, is it, you know, how challenging is it when you're in a heat like this, you've got some pressure on you, you want to put big scores down, and to to kind of be aware of how far you should go with each individual maneuver because you're putting together an entire wave. You're putting together, painting the canvas as you go. Yeah, and so I suppose the longer the wall, the more complicated that becomes because you've like got so much opportunity. Almost. Yeah, it's, it just keeps going. When it's a short, punchy wave, it's a much easier equation because you see one or two sections and you know, bang, bang, and you, co you connect it. So. The longer the dance, the more complicated, uh, you know, that, that rhythm becomes. We saw Mahina get a short little left as well. That's that point eight. She just went for a forehand re-entry and nosedived. Uh, so really, after that first quick start with the 283, finds herself in third place now without really a score of consequence and eight minutes 55 on the clock. It's like a restart in your mind, you know? Yeah, okay. First wave, I felt good, like I surfed it well, but I didn't get a score. Second wave, I fell. Okay, let's leave all of that behind us and, and, and you know, concentrate on the breathing and, and start all over again. Try and make this priority count. Paddle here from Luchi Machado. Oh, straight into the section. That was a great little lip that was offered for her. She capitalized on it. Wave doesn't give her too much on the finish. She's still able to stay on top of it, though. And she'll put in a solid paddle. We saw a great uh, display of surfing from Nadia Aristarbe, who was in the first heat of the women's division earlier this morning. For Team Spain specifically, she took away a solid win in that heat. And uh, we know that Janire Gonzalez is also on their team. She's been putting together some great heats, had a really solid standout performance alongside of her sister Annette at the World Juniors uh, last yeah, year. Yeah, absolutely. That? One of the standout standouts. Seven minutes, 45 seconds on the clock. And I have just received the news that Brian Toth is in the water at podium two on the men's podium. And he's just moved himself into an advancing position off of surfing like this. Solid bit of rail work, Martin. Yeah, Tothy just looking energetic and alive and remember, just a little moment ago, we were hearing the, in the back of our headsets, I could hear the live cheering from this bank behind us. That's what it was. It was the performance of Brian Toth, the hometown boy, advancing, keeping his spot in the main round, and the, the locals were going crazy. The Puerto Rican on the men's side, back to the women with Ecuador, up and riding. Kind of a softer, slower turn for Wendy. She's come into the conversation for this event for their team alongside of Pacha Light, who's mm -hmm. a newer member yep. for Team Ecuador specifically, would have competed under the Australian flag for a long time before that. And Mimi Barona, Dominic Barona, who's an Olympian and, and has been, um, I mean, sh 
when it comes to progression and what Mimi has done in the women's aerial game through the years of her generation that's just a little bit older than some of the women in the water right now has been incredible. Um, but for Wendy Velasquez, she's here in place of Hennesis Borja. And Hennesis is a surfer that we've come to know very well through the ISA World Surfing Games. So well done for Wendy for getting herself into that team. It's a very stacked team now to be um, competing in. And, and it's a huge accomplishment to be to be qualifying on the women's side of the Ecuadorian team. Yeah, that's amazing. And they would. They'd be looking up to Dominic and just going, you know, she's, like you said, she's been leading for those girls. And when there's someone doing it, from where you live and you realize, hey, they're doing it. I know them, I could maybe do it too. Here we go, Mahina. Oh. oh, heavy section. Hope she's all right because that looked like the, the wave forced the board back at her. She's back on a board, she's all good. Used to surfing those heavy waves back at home on the North Shore. And getting yourself back in position, just quickly to go back to the Mimi Barona conversation. Yeah. She. To me, for, for Mimi Barona, for Ecuador, it is is the same as a Sofia Milanovic for Peru. Yes. The success, she, Mimi doesn't have a world title. No. But, but what she has done in her years of competing and her time at the top, you know, on those top tours has been incredible and in that she's still a very relevant name. Exactly. Within Ecuadorian surfing and global surfing as well is, is just that same strength that Sofia Milanovic was carrying just a few years ago when she was in the Olympics in Tokyo. 100%. It's so powerful to, to have a, an example that leads and you can slipstream in behind there, you know. They talk about it in bicycles or running and, and other sports, but for surfing, to have someone that you know, someone from your home, someone who has already done it, just opens up that door for you. You recognize that it's a reality. Um, interesting to see Mahina go two lefts so far she's got such a great backhand I, i'm hoping that the surfing on the first wave and the resulting score from the first wave didn't kind of put her off going backhand you know what i mean i feel like it, because you wouldn't naturally look to the left today especially as a goofy footer and the backhand's always an advantage really because you can get vertical you can feel when you're snapping back you're driving back into the wave and you can see it so I think Mahina's got to, got to get get on the backhand. She's got four minutes. She needs two rides, essentially, in those four minutes. So it's possible time-wise. Just well, need Mother Nature to that's contribute. Right. Yeah. yeah, with four minutes, that's a, actually a lot of time. Yeah. It seems short, but it's there's enough time for maybe two more waves per surfer. Mahina now finally taking your advice. The goofy foot, one goofy foot to another, taking <laughs> to her backhand and starting to find a bit more power out of those turns. Chip, chipping away at the 6.1 requirement as Brisa now up and riding on her forehand. She's been knocked down into that second place position because Lucia has been able to back up her higher score or be yes. able to back up her 427 with a higher score of a 573. That leaves Brisa looking for a 4.51 to take first. What a great heat it's been from Lucia Machado. You know, the, she's had you know, three scores, waiting on a fourth to drop now. The 427573, her backhand has looked great. The board has been super loose and squirty under her feet, allowing her to, to just have that life in the performance. And the judges have loved it. Anytime you're ahead of Brissa Hennessy and even Mahina Maeda, who are, are both very, you know, consistent, very experienced competitors. Um, you know, you've got to feel good about that. Spain in good form here. Lucia is 19 years old. She's from the Canary Islands. And just two years ago, in 2022, she walked away with a silver medal at the ISA World Juniors. And, and it, Canary Islands explains the comfort level we see in her surfing here with the reef breaks, Absolutely. doesn't it? Absolutely. Mm. A little bit of water moving everywhere. It's not, you know, it, it's got all that exposure of being an island that just is kind of sucking swell from lots of different directions. Yep. As well as those shallower spots in the reef and everything's kind of shifting. It makes sense now. She's on fire. Good, good location for her. She would have heard the announcement that World Surfing Games was going to be here this year. Take a, you know, had a look at what the actual wave was going to be mm. and been frothing, knowing this was going to be her chance to qualify as an Olympian. She's going to have waves that she's going to feel very comfortable in considering where she comes from. Yeah, you would think so. Never been to the Canary Islands. It's Either definitely on the list. Yeah. 
but we know there's some great reef breaks. There's one particular left that every time I see it, it looks exactly like pipeline. And uh, Rissa Hennessy here on the replay, beautiful big wrapping cutback. Got a 367, so slightly improved on the 343 before it. That was her opening ride. Any time, you can imagine any time you ride a wave that doesn't improve on what you've already got, that that's a mistake, whether it's a wave selection mistake or you've fallen or misread the wave and not got the potential out of it. You always want to be building and have every wave that you ride be better than the previous. Best way to put pressure on people, your opponents. Well, we're down to the final 60 seconds. Surfer in the lead is holding on to priority. Essentially at this stage, it's looking unfavorable for Mahina and for Wendy because there's only 50 seconds on the clock and the two surfers in the leading positions are also holding on to priority. And I think that three, which was a wave caught under from Mahina Maeda, was caught under priority. So it wasn't really obviously a great one because and she got a three, she got a better score because of the size of the maneuvers. So there's some confidence to be taken out of that to go, well, I could, you know, if I was on the right waves, I could have got through that heat. Paddle now to get away from the pack and maybe put herself in position for this one. 25 seconds on the clock. And if she can get into it, it's going to be all hers. She's going to go on the forehand, chasing down a 6.17. Connects with the lip on that first section, now wraps it around on the second. She looks like she's going to have a good pocket to work with. You can see the way the wave is just hitting the reef. It didn't really offer her like a proper section at all. We've seen that, doesn't it? The, the, the first section on the left is good. It then goes into a flat bit and then you come into the inside reef and it starts it's doubling hectic. up and getting all weird yeah. in there. And, and we haven't really seen anyone be confident with that inside section because it doesn't, it's not very obvious. It was worth a try though, this one, wasn't it? You see there's the first turn, maybe could have got a little higher with that. There's that flat section we see consistently and here's where things get all weird and double out on, on shallow bits of reef. Last turn was nice. The incompletion means that there's no way she's getting that score. That she needed to advance, but third place. Well, a great effort all around. It's going to be Spain's Lucia Machado up with the lead and Brisa Hennessy for Costa Rica. In that second place position, Mahina Maeda and Wendy Velasquez. Heading into the Repicharge round, we're gonna see more of them throughout the week. And coming up in our next heat, we are gonna have Joanne DeFay hitting the lineup for Team France. It's gonna be an exciting one to watch, stay tuned. for the 2024 ISA World Surfing Games here in Puerto Rico. Team France's Cali Vost earns himself a 7.5 for one of the best barrels of the day. Gabriel Medina links up a series of strong backhand turns for a 7.5 for Team Brazil. I'm focused on my mission, you know. I, I think I gotta make hits. I'm gonna try to do my best. And Team Brazil's Iago Dora gets the highest score of the day in the men's main round one, an 8.0. Team Australia's Molly Picklum gets an 8.67, the highest single wave score of the event so far. Daniela Rosas gets an 8.17 for Team Peru. La verdad que estoy super nerviosa. Eh, hay un montón de competidoras super buenas acá. Sé que Perú es un país super fuerte y sé que tenemos un montón de nivel. Así que en verdad no quiero pensar mucho en eso. Hacerlo hit por hit, estar tranquilas y demostrar un buen surfing. Tokyo 2020 Olympic gold medalist Carissa Moore earns herself an 8.10 for Team USA. Tune in tomorrow for more action. Welcome back to the action here for the ISA World Surfing Games. We're in heat number 15, round two of the women. Just a few more heats to get through, actually, before the finish of this. Joanne DeFay from France, Natasha Van Grunen from South Africa, 
Matea Olin from Canada and Sky Brown out of Great Britain. This is really exciting yeah. one. Each of these surfers has such a unique story behind them and their pursuits within surfing, what they're giving back behind the scenes as well. And uh, it's going to be great to see how it unfolds. We've already got a few scores, Barton, that are through, so we'll uh, just update ourselves and the audience on where that's sitting at the moment. It's Defay in the lead for France with a 4.83 and a 2.67. Brown for Great Britain sitting with a 2.1. Uh, Van Kroonen for South Africa with just a throwaway score and Olin for Canada has yet to get her opening ride. She is sitting with that first priority though as everyone else has had their opening shot. We're just sitting with a, a quiet ocean for a moment. And, and Matea Olin's sister, Sanoa, already qualified for those Olympic Games. So that would be, imagine two sisters going to the Olympic Games. That would be historic. What else would be, or is historic, is Sky Brown here who's represented at the Olympic Games in skateboarding, working towards that same objective in surfing. Incredible. That's right, incredible. Sky Brown competed in skating at the Tokyo Olympics. She walked away with the bronze medal in the women's park division. She's yep. also a two-time gold medalist at the X Games, and now she's up and riding on a surfboard because why not just be a master at skating, a master at surfing, and go down on that first and little you see the way, Yeah, you see the way she threw the tail, and it looked like skateboarding right there. <laughs> Exciting to have her in the conversation. She has a goal to qualify for Paris in both surfing and skating, so she's yep. looking for a qualification on the skate side, likely to find that again because she's already had so much success there, but would be incredible to see her on both ends of the spectrum as we take a look at this replay here from Joanne DeFay. 4.83 and a 2.67 early start from the French lady and the, the French team has been on fire so far. Look at that turn. Beautiful wrap right at the end, super tight towards the back end of that turn. So good start for her, off and racing already and uh, fantastic to have Sky Brown here and a part of the great British team. And then Natasha Van Grunen is on the Athletes Commission and, right. and works with ISA. Uh, behind the scenes as well so a really incredible bunch of talented ladies in this heat yeah it's really fantastic like you said you know for Mattia to have the opportunity to qualify alongside her sister this year for Canada for Sky Brown to possibly go skating and surfing for the Paris Olympics yeah. would be insane. insane Joanne DeFay already has her Olympic qualification mm -hmm. for France via her results on the championship tour her and Vahine Fierro will be competing together depending on how Team France does this week we could see another surfer added in if they if the women's team should take away the win and and or at least the highest ranking position specifically yep. on the women's side which is really incredible and then like you said natasha van grunen she's just been doing so much behind the scenes for surfing for the development of surfing within uh south africa and now pursuing that on an international level on the athletes commission i was reading through her bio you know she's got her her university degree she's already figured out she's got a lot of things that she's been doing but she said one of the highlights of her life was getting a hole in one playing golf with her granddad, <laughs> which is so cool. Classic. That is very, very cool. We're down to uh, 14 minutes on the clock and we've just had the ISA president, Fernando Aguirre, walk into the booth. So we're going to swap him out with Barton Lynch and we're going to welcome Fernando in for a great conversation around surfing, where it's heading, where it's come from. And of course, now to see it. I don't know where we're coming from. I know no, no. Where we're heading. <laughs> yeah, oh, well, okay, where are we heading? We're heading to the Paris Olympics. We're Lincoln, heading for, uh, for what we used to say, a better surfing future, but now we're heading about a uh, four. <laughs> well, it's great to have you in the conversation, Fernando. We got a yeah. couple scores on the board at the moment, so we'll be tracking with that throughout this heat. But of course, always a pleasure to have ISA president, uh, long, <laughs> long term. Sorry. Uh, yeah, it's nice. It's nice to be here. It's been a wonderful um, couple of days. Uh, the heat is nice, and everybody's happy. It's uh, it's really, um, I think, uh, the best world surfing games in history. You know, that's an incredible show up of of the best talent and. It's amazing to see the results in the heat. You really see a lot of up and coming talent that are pushing their way into the higher ranks. It's very nice. Yeah, it's incredible to see, you know, with uh, the Olympics happening in just a few months, really, maybe what, yeah. four months away, five months away. Yeah, yeah. To know that the world's best surfers that have already qualified, they're all here 
representing and they're fighting yeah. for that extra spot. There's, you yeah, know, there's, yeah. there's that I, anticipation I think, on know, the line for that. I have a little take on that. That's a slightly different. I think that the best surfers in the world are not just the city surfers. I always like to say that city surfers are the best surfers that have money to tour and to compete. There are other surfers that are incredible surfers around the world that uh, given the, the resources and the funding uh, partially are provided by the federations and the national uh, Olympic committees will actually uh, start mingling and you'll see a more uh, country diversified, country rich city tour in the next year because it's really, it's really a matter that uh, the, the top professionals are here and they're surfing in their national teams just like in soccer, how they call it in America, football everywhere in the world. Uh, you know, Messi is the best in the world, but he's best when he's in the national team. And I think, you know, if you hear what uh, uh, Gabriel Medina and, and, um, and uh, Felipe Toledo were talking about yesterday, and even Carissa, you can tell that this is a very uh, incredible experience for them, something that they really enjoy. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it is the United Nations of surfing, and which has a, an, an equal uh, footing, because every team, it doesn't matter if you have 5 million surfers in your country, which is probably the case of Brazil or Australia, or if you have 10 surfers, you get to feel three guys, three ladies, and that's, that's the beauty of what we're seeing today, no? Well, taking a look at some live action here, Matea on her forehand, looking sharp, finally getting her opening ride. She has that opportunity this week to find herself with qualification should she be in the top eight eligible women alongside of her sister, Sonoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got well, that victory at the Pan American Games. Yeah, that was amazing. Insane surf. That yeah, was insane. Yeah, it, it was a scary day at, at Punta de Lobos last, last uh, October, last the Pan Am Games. And the Pan Am Games classified one one uh, female and one male straight to, to the Olympic Games. And, and uh, her sister is the one. So she was very happy, and obviously much more relaxed as if we were here fighting for one of those 24 slots. That's right. She gets to just kind of be here, enjoy the process. Of course, would really appreciate taking out a huge win here, but she's already on her way to the Olympics. We'll take a break from the conversation for just a moment to go down to the beach to catch up with Lucia Machado off of a great win. She's with Rachel Tilly. Congratulations on your heat win representing the country of Spain. How does it feel to be here at the ISA World Surfing Games supporting your country? Um, it's always the best contest of the year. It's so exciting to come with a team and full of support. And we're here to, I think we have a great team, so we're here to make some good race. <laughs> Absolutely, you guys are looking really strong. That's a second heat win in only two days of competition. How did you find the waves out there? El Pico yesterday, you guys were competing, competing at, today at Magara. How did you find it? Um, today it was pretty easy to see which ways was good and which wasn't, but yesterday it was a bit more difficult. I couldn't find very good ways, but I'm happy that I still made it and let's see if the waves still being good. Yeah. yeah, it looks like we have a good forecast for the week. Do you have anything you'd like to say back to your country of Spain? Eh, pues saludo a todos. Eh. Estoy muy contenta de haber pasado esta manga, sobre todo con, pues con Brisa, que para mí es una surfista increíble. Y nada, seguimos con todo, el equipo va con todo y muchas gracias por verlo. Thank you so much, congratulations, see you next time. Thank you so much. Back to you guys in the booth. Thanks so much, Rachel. Great to hear from Lucia. And uh, an exceptional performance that she put together in that last heat, looking really strong. Coming from the Canary Islands, so she's yeah, got yeah. Waves well, kind it's, of it's like the Hawaii of the, of the Atlantic. You know, the Canary Islands a lot of waves, a lot of surfing, different islands with a lot of different setups. Some are volcanic, some are forestry, jungles. Uh, it's really nice. And you know, Lucia is uh, is an example. What I'm saying, you come here, you know, you are a top city surfer, and suddenly you find a Lucia, and then the world changes for you. So I think this is. This is the beauty of the ISA. It's really a, it's a plain level field. Uh, nobody's pre-qualified, nobody's seated, nobody's well carded. Everybody gets to serve the first round and the top best move to the second round of, of the, let's call it the winners or main event or the winners round. And the other ones go to the losers or what we call the repertoire round. And here's Natasha from South Africa. Great backhand attack from her. I, I was just thinking as you're kind of sharing your thoughts on that, I, I think the perfect examples of that are Carlos Munoz and Luca Messinas. Yeah. 
who spent so many years competing in the ISAs, so many years putting in all of that work and effort, and eventually within their careers found themselves both on the championship tour and at the Olympic Games. Yeah, and I this mean, was their Car pathway Car to get Carlos there. didn't make it due to some travel issues because one surfer proved positive, and by the time the positive came out, Carlos couldn't make it enough time. But, you know, that tells you the world. I mean, he was the 21st of the surfers there. And, and, and I think it's a... Surfing is no different from any other sports. Of course, there is the top, top uh, tennis players, football player, any sport. But also there is a financial element that plays in place. You know, when you had a, a national association, I guess five to $10 million a year to support, train, travel, uh, the surfers, it's not the same that we were come from a country which surfing is small or doesn't really matter because they're into baseball or basketball or soccer. So this is really what we see today. Let's take a look at this replay here from Sky Brown, the young surfer representing Great Britain. She's competing as a surfer, competing as a skater as well. Putting together a couple of scores. So we're gonna have some scores to drop through from this last exchange. Matea Olin as well. Getting a, a great looking set on that wave, Fernando. And yeah, I mean, you, you can tell this is the same place that we saw the, the guys yesterday. And, and so today is the, the, the main uh, area where we are doing the webcasting and the commentating. On the other podium, which today is El Pico, we are actually doing uh, a beach commentator is live, scores are live, and the images are live, but they're not, you know, a dedicated broadcast like, like you see here, which is drones, water cameras, and the whole uh, deal. Hoping, you know, in the future to have both towers webcast with commentators, but it's a substantial increase in our expenses, and that's just, we can afford worse. Still a small sport considered to some of the mainstream sports, but I think that is gonna change after the Paris games, when surfing certainly will, will prove uh, to be a, a high ratings, high visibility sport uh, broadcasting from Tehupo. Yeah, so, it will be very exciting. It's yeah. an incredible decision to, I guess, be gutsy enough. We've heard that from a few different people to decide to actually run surfing for the Olympics at Tehupo. Yeah, Tehupo, you know, is in the French Polynesia, which is part of France. It, you know, France has uh, uh, territories or, or departments outside of Europe. Some are in, in the Caribbean, like uh, Guadeloupe, Martinique, South America, the French Goyan, uh, Reunion in the Indic Ocean, the Indian Ocean, New Caledonia in Micronesia, and of course, uh, French Polynesia in the south. Here goes Johan again. And, uh, cement. Oh, incredible finish yeah, to that yeah, wave. Yeah. She's, she wants to go back to first. She wants, well, she's sitting in the lead. She's yeah. definitely going to be dropping down the biggest score, her, yeah, the yeah, highest yeah. score so far being that 4.83. But this will have put her farther away from the second one. Yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to put some distance between her and Sky Brown sitting yeah, in second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's... it's, it's um, yeah, the hoop poses some challenges, but I think it's, from the point of view of broadcasting, it's amazing because at seven in the morning, the hoop when we start our hits, it's 7 p.m. in Europe, in France. So that means that the people that come back home after a long day of work or doing whatever, tourists cruising around in, in, in Paris, uh, attending the games, they'll sit at home on their TV room, I mean, uh, or bedroom in the hotel, and suddenly, here it goes, it's surfing. <laughs> It's probably one of the few sports that are going to be there. And, you know, we feel very confident that, that we're going to bring a lot of excitement and it's going to be a, a further, <coughs> I'm sorry, a further step upwards after the success of Tokyo, which surfing was really a top sport from any point of view of measuring our performance. It has been incredible to just see the trajectory of... There she goes. As we take a look here at this last wave of Joanne yeah, yeah, Fay. Yeah. We're still waiting for the score to drop in from the judges panel, but... I, mean, I, can't, I can't help by looking at her and, and it goes back to uh, Tommy Curry and you know, some of those incredible carver speed, her torque rotation of the, her upper torso to make those turns. Yeah, that's a great likeness. Yeah, yeah, look at that. She's right on the spot, on the toughest spot on the, on the lip and landing that you know, impeccable way, full crunch, uh, low, low stance to land that, that maneuver. I mean, technically she's as good as she gets. Amazing wave from her. So we're waiting for that to come through as we take a look at the replay here from Matias. She's currently sitting in that fourth place position 
and Joanne's wave just dropped through as a near excellent, a 7.67. Yes, well, it was. It was an incredible wave. You know, so we have two girls qualify, two ladies qualify for, for um, Tejupo, and one French man. That means there is, there's a lot of activity on the male side of the French team, no? Two minutes, 20 seconds on the clock. And you're right, for Team France, they've already got uh, two They got a male and a female. Yeah, they got two, two ladies, one through CT and one through the ISA event last year. And then uh, one lady and one guy, they are Tahitian locals. They've been trained in Tehupo. So, you know, nothing better to be served the food when you're hungry. So they're, better, they're really hungry for that. And, you know, it will be amazing how they continue to train for these three or four months until July, at the end of July, when the hoop opens up for the second ever uh, Olympic cycle. Huh? That's Except right. Olympic Games. For Kali Bast and for Vahine Fierro, yeah. two names to pay attention to this week, not because they need to find that qualification, but because they're already standouts. And and this is these having these events in the same you know year as the Olympics, they're not just important for the surfers that still are looking for qualification with those six spots available on the men's side and the eight spots available on the women's side but they're really important for the surfers that already have that because they're getting those reps in that the formatting for olympic surfing will be more similar to isa surfing than oh, a yeah. lot of other events they're competing oh, yeah, in yeah. around the world well and i think there's also this this the thing about going into into uh, the top ranking for uh, ladies and guys at the isa there's a world champion team which is summary of, of both genders but then there is a ranking for each gender each gender will provide a, a, an additional slot so should the french ladies be on top they will get an additional slot america won that in 2022 in Huntington beach so there's going to be three american ladies uh, which is one above the quota per country of two and that was an incentive that we created to, to create more excitement at the top teams uh, and you know the french have been there at the very top and fighting and hungry so nothing to see, as I say, you know, <laughs> full plate of food and hungry uh, guests. Well, one surfer that's looking really hungry in the water right now is Sky Brown. We've got 15 seconds on the clock. We've got some scores to drop through. But Fernando, it's always nice to have you yes, jumping in with us during uh, these events. Thanks so much. Gracias to everybody. Thank you, everybody. And keep on enjoying this. We're here for the whole week. So we'll keep you excited. Adios. Well, out in the water, the buzzer has sounded for the current heat in the lineup, and it looks like Joanne DeFay is holding on to that leading position. We are waiting for a score, though, for Sky Brown out of Great Britain. That was an important wave. We saw her with that big re-entry to start. Got a couple more uh, turns tagged together. She's sitting chasing a 4.60, so it's not a huge requirement, but we have seen the judges really kind of weighing out that opening maneuver needs to be really exceptional in order to get a score going above those fours. Um, so, so we're just waiting to see from the judging panel if Sky Brown's going to be able to take that top two advancing position over Mattia Olin. Uh, but otherwise, all around just a great heat surfed and we'll have more action to come up after this. We'll pay off the results when we return, as well as getting to witness one of the best surfers ever to come out of China, an Olympic hopeful in Zixi Yang, coming up next. To be in an era where surfing is uh, becoming so global, you know, it's so cool to see all these different unique faces, uh, unique people. You know, and then seeing a country like, uh, for example, like China, they, uh, you know, they're, they're, it's not their first year at the ISA, but it's been, you know, a couple of years now. But to see how strong they are and to see how good the servers are improving, they're not only participating, but they're now uh, a threat to, to look out for. In Puerto Rico, we call ourselves Boricua, a unique name honoring our island heritage and the vibrant spirit of our people when you bask in the warmth of our beaches, when you taste the love in our food, when you embrace the call of our adventures, you'll find that spirit in yourself. Dare to live every moment. Live Boricua.
Get ready, surfers. More action to come for you here in women's round two heat 16. Pia Rogers, Lilius Tabai, Tyler Wright, and Sishi Yang. China, Australia, Morocco, and New Zealand represented here in this international super heat. Chris Cote here with Mitchell Salazar. Wow, we just saw a buzzer-beating finish from Sky Brown. Jumps from fourth to second, advancing through, staying in the main event round. And more action just like that to come. A late draw for Lilius to buy for Team Morocco. I love that we just get straight into the action. No <laughs> rest for the wicked. This train is rolling, and there's no stopping us now. It's 2.30 here, local time in Puerto Rico. And the hits just keep on coming. That was a great last heat, and we're in for more of that, Mitch. Yeah, and two-time world champion, former gold medalist here at the ISA as well, Tyler Wright. She's been a standout so far in, in her opening round. But, you know, more importantly, imagine opening up the doors for a lot of people like Lilius Tabai from Morocco and Cixi Yang, who's one of the hopefuls, as Shannon was saying in the previous heat, to qualify for China. They already medal a lot. Imagine if they're able to get another Olympian and potentially another medal, too. So development programs well in place in that part of Asia. And I feel like it still has a lot more even to produce, Chris. Yeah, they've been a fun team to watch over the past few years. You know, they uh, come with just as much joy as anyone else when mm -hmm. they come here to surf. Watch them in Huntington Beach doing big things. Cixi Yang, definitely one of the standouts of that team. Whoa. Pierre Rogers. Takes the high road all the way over the falls. Not how you want to start your heat, but she is a tough competitor. Representing Team New Zealand, she'll be right back out there. That's what happens when you find yourself right in the middle of the peak. About to say. Just a little too far inside to make that decision to go right or left. And the, that, the wave made the decision for her. That extra paddle goes a long way, too. So don't stop paddling until you fully feel like you're into a wave like that. I mean, look at that. Gets a little hung up and then just... Decides to go right at the end, and unfortunately for her, the lip won that battle, Chris. But doesn't seem like the board or her are injured, so lots of time. Just got to recover here, and you still have 17 minutes to go. So you're saying, don't stop till you get enough? <laughs> You've had a lot, of, a lot of musical references today. 16 and a half on the clock here. No scores of note. Lilius Tobai does have a .5 PO with a .23. Pretty much carbon copy waves. Both surfers a little bit out of position, but they're right back out into the lineup. So scan the horizon for the next set to roll through. Looks like there is some potential. Only one priority number on the board now. Lilius Tobai with that third priority. That means it's wide open for these surfers. Here we go, late drop. It's Lilius Tobai. Started. Started to put together a nice little snap right in the pocket there. It didn't go her way. Now we throw it over to Tyler Wright. Blasting the fins out there. Having to navigate over some bump coming up the face of that wave. Quite impressive. Able to manage all that white water, all the froth on the face. She won actual uh, consecutive golds in Ecuador in 2009, and then she won in 2010. Pretty good surfer. I mean, if you think about the generation of surfers that she comes from, too. Oh, yeah. She's among the best of the best to ever do it. 15, 20 to go. Let's go down to the boardwalk. Rachel Tilly standing by with Joanne DeFay. Congratulations, Joanne DeFay of Team France. You were absolutely dominant out there, showing your experience. How did you find the waves of Magara today? Yeah, it was fun. Um, it was a bit of a slow heat, but uh, it was fun. I guess I got the best way of the, of the heat, like that last one. Um, so I'm happy I get a, a good score because I was like, oh, four point. I felt like the, the heat before had some sco scoring potential. So, um, yeah, just nice to get in the water. Well, we saw your teammate Vahine win her heat as well. What, how is Team France working together to prepare heat on heat? Yeah, well, um, it's working pretty well. I mean, we have a good team. Uh, we love a lot. Kauli is like the, the showman of the team, so he makes us love a lot. And um, Vaine, I've been surfing very well. Tessa made her hit too. So I think we're in a good position right now, good mindset and stuff. So we'll just continue to get that ball rolling. <laughs> And I always love to ask the surfers who've just come from Hawaii, who are normally on the CT as well, it's a very different heat structure, 20-minute heats, four-person heats. How do you find that transition coming from what's normally a person-on-person -person heat and, you know, 35, 40-minute heats potentially? Sure. Um, 
yeah, I guess I just kind of like put my brain down and just like get as many waves as you can, you know, um, and be busy. Be busy when you don't have priority and stuff like that. Um, obviously, the level also is a bit less than on the CT, so I know that if I get get a smaller wave, maybe I can still like transform it into a good score. So. Um, yeah, that's kind of how I, how I do it, but um, obviously the more you make hit, the more it's going to be difficult. So, um, yeah, strategy is going to be more important now. <laughs> yeah, well, the momentum is gaining already two heats won in the first two days. So is there anything you'd like to say back to your family and country of France? Merci d'avoir regardé, en tout cas, euh, c'est trop cool. Ici, on passe un bon moment avec l'équipe de France et euh, j'espère qu'on va aller loin. Thank you. Congratulations. See you next time. Back to you guys. We will be seeing more from Jean de Fay in this event. She has started her tear through the competition. No surprise there. She's one of the best to ever do it. Yeah. I know I keep saying that, but that's just indicative of the field we have here in Puerto Rico. The best surfers on the planet are here to compete. One of them's in the water right now, Tyler Wright, still waiting for her first score to come through. Won't be anything too huge, but it'll be a start, a 3.5 as expected. So with 12.40 to go, things are slowing down a little bit in the water. That just means tactics are gonna start to be more apparent through these latter part of the afternoon today. That was a great question that Rachel asked Joanne because it's it's obvious that there's a difference between the talent at the people that are here at the top and the people that are on the championship tour that are competing here too. Adjusting is a big thing, but I think time management is the biggest part of it. And Joanne said, I just need to shut my brain off and kind of do what I do, surf a lot of waves and get into a priority situation that benefits me in the end. Thinking just surf, harder than it sounds. Well, our women's qualification tiers have 24 spots. Here's your one through eight. Tyler Wright, she's in the mix there for Team Australia. Joanne DeFay right there at number six for Team France. This comes from your 2023 WSL Women's Top Eight Qualified Surfers. So team qualification is at stake down here as it was in 2022 at the ISA World Surfing Games in Huntington Beach where Kira Pinkerton helped her team get that top spot. That means Team USA will have a spot open. Second place, first eligible women in international surfing competition down at the Pan Am Games. That was Sanoa Dempel Olin for Team Canada. He charged. He was ripping down there in massive surf. Mm -hmm. And here are your 2023 ISA World Surfing Games qualified surfers. From down at Surf City El Salvador, Fahim Fierro, Shino Matsuda, Safi Vete, and Sarah Baum. New Zealand, South Africa, Japan, and France represented very well there. And here's your one through eight as to be decided down here in Puerto Rico. That's going to be really fun. These are going to be some names you might not have thought of in terms of who will be competing Paris 2024. And of course, one more spot open, the highest ranked women's team down here in Puerto Rico as well. And then there's the universality place at the end as well, which, you know, I think is obviously going to be a, a huge spot for a lot of these developing countries that don't necessarily have a lot of Olympic athletes within sports in general. And I think it's great to be able to reward somebody like that an opportunity. That being said, it does have to be rewarded to a person that will actually be capable of competing at a wave like Chopes. So you're not just gonna give it out to somebody from a landlocked country in order for them to compete, no. They actually have to be able to perform at a wave like that because if not, you're just putting them in a big position of danger and that's not something we wanna see. Yeah, that's a great point. I mean. By qualifying for the Olympics, you're going to put yourself in harm's way. This is Absolutely. one of the heaviest waves in the planet that the Paris 2024 Olympic Games will be held at. And we'll see what happens right around the corner. But back to the action here in Puerto Rico. Cixi Yang in the lead for now. But action. Well, just technique alone, <laughs> huge amount of improvements. And then Tyler right here, the 3.5. I mean, for such... A frothy wave to be able to control your board like that, especially gain momentum off the bottom turn, was really difficult. You even saw how she had to readjust after the first turn, really recompose herself and was able to hit the lip very well with the second one. So with just over nine minutes to go, you know, she's in the top two spots right now, but this heat's still wide open. I think priority is going to be huge towards the end of the heat. And had a look right there with first priority. Let's see if it's going to switch at all, Chris. 
There are pretty judges watching closely. But I think it stays with Tyler just in time for her to turn and burn on this little inside right. Wow, a rare ball for Tyler Wright, but that way it's really dissipated beneath her. I don't think it was a mistake turning mm -hmm. and going on that way, but it just let her down. Seemed like a good option at the time. Chris, when this heat started, I was thinking to myself, okay, going through my notes, doing my research, Lilius Tabai from Morocco, a country that just like Italy when Leo was kind of doing events by himself, they didn't have a lot of surfers. Now they've got almost a complete team too. Major development for that North African country. They tend to have to compete in Europe because it's usually cheaper for them to go to both France and Portugal a lot of times. As Tyler here up. I think Tyler's opted for the just surf ethos. Mm -hmm. You know, she's not worrying about tactics. She's just finding and riding waves. Nice turn there to start. That's going to get rid of a one for sure. So she'll extend her lead over Sishi Yang. Pia Rogers looking for a 247. Lilius Tabai looking for a 357. And you're right, Mitchell. Morocco has so many good waves. It's only fitting <laughs> that more and more surfers are going to start coming out of that incredible country. I mean, really, these days, I feel like social media has a lot to do with it. Just access to watching surfing at any time, at any place, and knowing, like, oh, this wave's right around the corner from my house. Yeah. Let's go. The well, development is quick. The broadcast has a lot to do with it, too. Absolutely. It Here goes Pia Rogers yep. now. Team New Zealand. Good, clean style there. Wave closes out, but she makes the most of it. One big snap. That'll get rid of a point two three. Another country with some amazing surfers. I mean, Paige Harib was very successful on the CT. You have the Quinn brothers, who are also very good. Whoa. Oh, yeah. That's what we're talking about. CC Yang. Team China in the house. That was a solid turn right there. Quite progressive, too, if I might add, Chris. Oh, yeah. Throwing the fins. Blasting the lip. Tons of spray. Plenty of power. When you think of the equation, speed, power, flow, she went into that deep bottom turn. Straight into the pocket. Goes vertical. Throws the fins. All things the judges like to see. Absolutely. On a big wave, too. So a lot of consequence right there. A lot of risk and commitment too and you know the OG ASP world champion Peter Townend has a lot to do with their surfing development he is one of actually the original coach in order to go over there to China and like kind of develop their program looking at the replay here Yang I mean she just blasts that thing dude that was really really good surfing right there no hesitation whatsoever no. a ton of commitment and as I said before a lot of pro a lot of progression on that one turn but the amount of innovation just in the bottom turn and being able to read the lip line like that, probably not going to find a ton of waves like this in China. Look at that. I mean, slides the fins. That was one of the best staying? turns of the day. Exactly. And staying centered over the board with great technique, too. Seems to be one of the best waves of the heat so far, Chris. And presence of mind to keep going down the line as well. Mm -hmm. Love to see it. Cixi Yang comes through with a six-point ride on the strength of that one incredible hammer. All it takes is one, two to be successful, and all of a sudden, you have a huge pack behind them as well. So jumps from third to first and gives us a highlight package-worthy forehand snap. Kind of a lip slide, too. You know, she traveled horizontally with yeah. the oncoming lip. It's like a board slide almost. Very cool. Very, very cool. Oh, and as of right now, you're beating a two-time world champion at the WSL level one, two-time ISA gold medalist who has a lot of competitive experience. And, you know, in, in Tyler's defense, obviously she only has a couple of threes, but in terms of confidence, what that does for you, if you're Yang right now, you got to be very pleased with yourself. Most definitely. And this could be a little sneaky one here through the inside. She turns on it, trying to do better than a 2-4-3. Not going to make that one, but again, just the poise there. You know, a lot of times you'll see surfers, when the section's coming at them like that, there's a little glitch, a little moment of hesitation. I'm not seeing that at all with Cixi Yang. Yeah, she, no, she's fully committed to every wave that she's going for, that she's riding. And, you know, there's almost a need and a desire for her to want to make it out of this round, too, to prove that 
it just wasn't that one year. Even last year when it was huge, there were a couple moments where I was like, dang, like you were truly going for it. Not the same amount of success at La Bocana than there was at Southside HB, but still, those are the positions that you need to be able to put yourself in in order to be able to be successful at this level. Because as Joanne was saying, there's a noticeable difference between the people that are on the championship tour and those that are not. But remember, those people started at this level and they eventually had to graduate from this in order to be able to qualify for the championship tour. Yeah, I, I feel like Ch Team China, right there in the conversation with by far the most improvement in the past two or three years. Mm -hmm. uh, they just get better and better every time they come compete here at the ISA level. And it's pretty cool. I mean, they've really done it mostly through the ISA. Yep. You know, they have had some WSL opportunities in China and in the Asia and in the, in the region. Yep. But just as far as what we've seen as, as fans and as surfing enthusiasts, you know, I think, I feel like team China has really taken full advantage of what the ISA offers. And I mean, it seems like their government is giving them a lot of support as well, which is huge. I think you gotta owe that to surfing being in the Olympics and team China, they're hungry for medals. And they will be getting them very soon. I can guarantee you that. Tyler Wright right now, bending off a hard charging C. C. Yang. Some hard turns of her own. Yeah. Nicely done there. I mean, that's just textbook Tyler Wright. She's super powerful. Nice and stylish. Good flow from beginning to end. Huge fan, Tyler Wright. Everything she does in and out of a jersey. She's just an absolute legend. Excellent use of priority, too. And I would have to say on the men's side, probably her brother Owen might be the best surfer I've ever seen with priority, Chris, as we saw Pia right there. And it comes down to having those people within your immediate family pushing you to that level, too. Almost had a nice ah. finish there from Lilius Tobai. Was needing Another it. goofy footer from the land of rights. Yeah. Something tells me there's a, a hidden area that nobody talks about in Morocco that has great lefts. Only lefts, too. Talk to Ramsey Bukiam about that. He's probably going to deny the fact. What? No. Why do you think we all surf so good on our backside? No, but the same thing. I think, you know, it starts with one person. You build a base around that one athlete that you can kind of not only get to inspire the rest of the population, but obviously get them to mass produce some great surfers as well. Teva Bushko was, I think, one spot away from qualifying last year. He needed to get third in his heat and got fourth. Back here again, has a great shot. He's improving a lot, and you know that kind of motivation has to come from within. And there's a reason why Ramsey was able to qualify for the CT, and he's always been a great, great element of what the ISA World Surfing Games have been too. Inside of the one minute mark now, Sishi Yang in lead, and Tyler drops a three seven three and a three five seven. This could be a huge statement victory. For Xi Shi Yang representing Team China, maybe the biggest win of her young competitive career. Again, to take out a multi time WSL world champion, a multi ISA gold medalist in Tyler Wright. That right there is drawing a line in the sand. We'll see. 27 seconds left. Tyler trying to get into that last wave. Cannot. 20 seconds left. So. If we go most improved countries last few years, well, China, they, they hadn't really had too many teams before. China, Germany. Italy. Italy. We'll go Netherlands, too. Netherlands, yeah. The big names there. Probably like 10 countries. Mexico. Well, I mean, I'll put yeah. Mexico in the list. They've always had great surfers, obviously, but kind of the, the unifi unification of their teams, the I agree coaching with that. and everything has come together a lot. I think you're right. Yeah, definitely top. Top five, top ten contenders mm -hmm. in all three of those teams, four of those teams. Well, we're going to take a quick break. It was China's Xi Shi Yang getting the win. Tyler Wright moves through in second place. Pia Rogers and Lilius Tabai will be in the repercharge round. But look at this turn one more time. Bam! Give it up for Xi Shi Yang. That right there was radical surfing. And there will be more surfing like that to come. We'll be right back.
Puerto Rico, we call ourselves Boricua. A unique name honoring our island heritage and the vibrant spirit of our people. When you bask in the warmth of our beaches, when you taste the love in our food, when you embrace the call of our adventures, you'll find that spirit in yourself. Dare to live every moment. Live Boricua. Right back at it. Now we're right back at it. It's 2024 ISA World Surfing Games. Chris Cote here with Mitchell Salazar. Why not field another foursome of incredible surfers? We've got a big heat in the lineup. Another international affair. El Salvador represented. Guatemala, Argentina, and Latvia. Nanta Vivere just saw her on the boardwalk. Sole Latvian surfer in the women's field. Pretty cool. Yeah, she's been uh, really soaking up the ISA ethos. She'll be surfing in white right there. Uh, just an awesome representative from, from Latvia. She surfed in El Salvador. And we got to know her a little bit better down there. Gaining much valued experience all-around incredible athlete. We'll see what she's got for us here in this heat. Lucia Induran from Team Argentina. Blowing the tail a little too far. Wind has switched a tad. Still super rippable out there right now. But do have to watch out yeah, with gotta, that slide offshore. Be, you gotta be mindful of the direction of the wind right now. Yeah. Cut it short if you need to snap under the lip rather than kind of try to push through it. I think that's a smart choice. And Lucia... I mean, you talk about a talented surfer coming out of Argentina, great South American representative. She's been a part of Team Argentina for the Pan Ams, too. And I'd say a, a big surprise to actually see her in Rapid Charge Round 1, Chris. But, you know, anything can happen here. A lot of great surfers from different countries worldwide. And seeding matters a lot, too. You don't want to be able to lose early on, so that way your seeding doesn't improve for next year overall as a team. And Lucia right now, I can assure you that she's probably looking to at least post a couple of good scores, get her confidence back up. But a couple of developing countries, too, at Salvador. We'll be there again later on this year for both the juniors on the longboard event. Guatemala have a lot to offer now. They've had quite a few Latin American events or the Alas Tour, which is now a continental tour. And Latvia, new and improved. Other cool to than, see them. I would say other than Argentina who's had gold medals in the past. Mm -hmm. El Salvador, Guatemala, and Latvia, both in con all three in contention for that universality place. That's a good point. Sofia Ramos, 14 years old, lives right there at El Tunco. Mm -hmm. She's a ripper on point breaks, a rising star from El Salvador. I mean, if given the opportunity, why not? You know, I think Brian Perez is, is in the conversation. From El Salvador for that universality place, basically meaning, you know, these are developing surf nations, right? Maybe with smaller populations than the surfing super nations like Australia, Japan, California, who have been doing it for a long time, you know, competing at a high level for a long time. Uh, obviously, there's great surfers from all of these countries, El Salvador, Guatemala, and Latvia, but they don't have necessarily the depth of field that you would have you know from the usa and beyond or the resources exactly so the universality place is there to make sure that we have representation from all over the world yeah and one cool thing about this too is that you're seeing a lot of these great surfers not only develop through these great nations that have incredible waves but through their success they're bringing a lot of resources with them so that's the key thing about here. Do you think if Brian Perez weren't a social media sensation, we'd have so much attention on it? Probably not. I mean, we had events there before, qualifying series level, but then since 2019, he's become a superstar within surfing, and he's brought a huge amount of attention that has brought a significant amount of events there. Absolutely. And, you know, the government has made it 
widely known that El Salvador is for surfing. You know, they've invited events. They've actually helped fund events to get these surfers there. And the proof's in the pudding. I mean, it has paid off through surf tourism. It's working. So other countries around the world should take note. Well, as these surfers in the lineup right now find their spot and wait for the next set to roll through, let's go down to Rachel Tilly on the boardwalk. An amazing win, beautiful power surfing. How did it feel to nail that turn? You had the single highest wave score of the heat. Tell me how that wave felt. Yeah, because the wave is heavy there. Actually, this is her first time to surf the Margara because before it was totally flat. We went to the El Pico, but the wave is amazing. For her, just go with the flow. Yeah. And you had a two-time world champion in Tyler Wright. How did you keep your composure going against someone so experienced and successful? Uh, yeah, for, for her, just keep the low profile to have the, uh, to learn, try to learn from adding the experiences from the uh, two times world champion. Well, I don't think you have a low profile anymore. You have absolutely blown doors and put your name on the map with that heat. Looking forward to seeing you come up again. Is there anything you'd like to say to your home country? Thanks everybody who support her, especially the coach, teammate, and the team leader. And uh, here at Puerto Rico is, is very beautiful, waves are amazing. Thank you, Shay Shay. Good you. luck. Thank you. <laughs> Back to you guys. Shishi Yang is awesome. Great, he, he, great interview there. Thank you, Rachel, for that. Uh, just become a bigger and bigger fan of hers every time I see her surf. She just beat Tyler Wright in Waves of Consequence, really on the strength of probably one of the best turns we've seen of the day. Yep. And think about all these great turns we've watched. I mean, I'm talking about Carissa Moore. I'm talking about the best of the best. And Shishi Yang now again putting herself on the map doing it with her surfing i like that she said i just try to be low pro out in the water and rachel the perfect comeback well guess what you're not low <laughs> pro anymore everyone is now on the lookout for si Shi yang not at all and we saw juana pulse right there from guatemala on screen and now lucia's got to get right here chris quick start there good combo bottom turn straight into a powerful snap Making her way through to this inside section. She's going to stick with it till it dissipates underneath her. Low scoring affair so far with 11 11 to go. Sofia Ramos with a highest single wave score of the heat so far, a 1.07. New numbers will filter in. Blue and green will have a little bit of something to build on. Looking at the list of former champions here as. We look at Juana here up and riding. What are the waves like in Guatemala? A lot of good waves. Um, just like in a lot of parts of both Mexico and the rest of, you know, North and Central America towards the south. It's hard to access the beaches, though, because a lot of people own that land. So it's not necessarily like you can just drive up to the spot and be there immediately. You have to go through somebody's ranch, a farm, something like that. You usually have to ask permission for those kind of things. Overall, though, a lot of great beach breaks, some heavy ones, too, especially if you go to the most southern part. Some key waves over there. They already had a couple continental events, and I'm telling you, I think that's going to be one of the faces of the future when it comes to the Americas, especially closer towards the U.S., Chris. 
Well, it's always fun when you when you see talent like that coming out of a country. I mean, that just tells you there's waves. Don't be looking at Google Maps now, because I'm, try- I'm I'm gonna do that after <laughs> after this heat. I was about to talk about the former medalists here at at this event. You know, mention the people that have come through this program and how much success they've had both here and on the championship tour. I mean, 2009, Courtney Conlog, Chelsea Hedges won this event and, and, and the CT title. Sofia Milanovic, who's doing this uh, broadcast in Spanish again this year, she won the gold medal twice, and she was also the first and only Latin American world champion in two, 2004 in the championship tour. So not only is the proof in the pudding, Chris, but what this event does is that it's a platform for you to be able to compete against the best in the world in a format that also permits competitive surfing that you're most likely gonna see at every kind of situation competitively worldwide. The CT is exclusive, it's elite. But this format you can find anywhere. Right. And that's why a lot of people have success here because they tend to compete in this format way more than not. And I think that's why it's so cool that we keep on having these 20 minute heats, you keep on having the repercharge. charge. At this case, we're having it at 20, which normally you're seeing at 15, And that's because it's an Olympic qualifier. That's right. There's a look of one of two Latvian surfers competing here in Puerto Rico as part of the ISA World Surfing Games at Santa Vavere. She comes from Laipaja, riding a lost surfboard driver Mm 2.0. She got first place in the Lithuanian championships, making her the top pick. She grew up living by the Baltic Sea that doesn't have real ground swells most likely it's all wind swell yep they get there probably cold cold. too yes can be cold but luckily for uh santa she has the opportunity to travel around you know she's right there in the the middle of europe so she can go up spain portugal and all these wave rich regions relatively easily and like i said she's been competing here in the isa for a few years now and it's so nice to have her around because she's just a aloha ambassador from latvia she does have a teammate with her this year, Katrina Cruz, who's from Adazi, Latvia. And the more the merrier. I think uh, those two surfers, you know, when they return to Latvia, spread the news, spread the stoke of what's happening in the ISA. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they come, come back next year with three or four more surfers on their team. I think you should just find a certain heritage that you have and start competing for the team, too. We need to we get can, Chris right. back into competition. I don't think I have any Latvian <laughs> in me, though. Maybe Lithuanian? Maybe yeah. a little German or something like that? That could always be another Masters event, too, Chris. You never know. My lineage is already filled with amazing surfers. I would never make the Irish surf team. I would never make the Scottish surf team or the French team. Do you make your local border riders team? That's the most important one. Sometimes. Well... 6.40 left here in Repashard Heat 1. I tried. Now we're in the elimination round. So this is our last opportunity for these surfers to continue on in this ISA competition. And basically this is where we're going to see... You know, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with a little desperation out there. Get out there and earn it. Show us your grit. In grinding a heat, you mean? Oh, yeah. Oh. This is, the, this is their last chance to stay in this contest. I think you should do that in the main round. Well, absolutely, but if you made a mistake in an earlier heat, if you didn't catch the waves you wanted right. to catch, here's your chance to prove it. So Lucia Indoran, one of those names. I'd say a little bit surprising to see her in the charge early. Yeah. Uh, Sofia Ramos, haven't seen much of her in competition yet. Remember, she's only 14 years old, so room to grow. This will be uh, an incredible experience for that young surfer. Uh, we know she's really good. She surfs waves just like this. This does remind me, you know, of the waves in El Tunco. It's got some punch to it, nice peak. I can see that. I can see this being like La Bocana for sure. Yeah, it does have that La Bocana feel. Right and the left, the only difference is, is instead of slippery rocks on the inside, you got shallow, dry reef. I don't know. There's a couple rocks over there that are still pretty well, sharp. Would you rather no. slippery, dry, slippery boulders or reef like that slippery boulders yeah but i grew up at reefs so you know i'm comfortable but i grew up with smaller stones 
But the reefs where you grew up in North County, San Diego, they're usually covered with like seaweed and stuff. Here, yeah, there's a ton of or ton of urchins and everything. Our reefs are more slab rocks, nice and flat, friendly. I mean, it still hurts when you hit them. It can just doesn't cut you up like if you're gonna hit the one here. Right. You know, Otto Flores was in here earlier this morning. Puerto Rican legend, incredible surfer. One of the most Charger. stylish guys that do it from this island. And he was saying that, yeah, this these spots right here are expert level. But all around this island, you've got a ton of different locations. Beginners, longboards, bodyboards, advance. Something for everyone here in Puerto Rico. And Sofia Ramos now. We're representing El Salvador. Nicely done there. This wave was pretty bumpy when she took off. She's hanging on to it couple turns out the back makes her way through the inside so a completed ride for Sophia she's only sitting on a one two three and a one zero seven so that wave will definitely help her best wave no doubt just under four minutes and the whole time she was riding there I was just thinking to myself wow you're only 14 you're competing at an Olympic qualifying event and he come from an area that really in the last what five years has made drastic changes to how the area has not only been portrayed, but also the surfing level has increased tremendously too. Well, I think when something like that happens, and it, and it really hasn't happened historically, I mean, they renamed the town Surf, Surf City. City. And that sends a message to the parents of a lot of these young surfers. Yeah. Like, you know, in the past, it might not have seemed like a viable thing, a viable outlet. But when you rename your city, Surf City, and there's branding everywhere, and there's money going into surfing programs, I feel like a lot of parents will be a little bit more accepting of the sport. I mean, you go to Huntington Beach, and you know, every soccer mom and soccer dad <laughs> knows that surfing's right there at the level of soccer and Little League and all that. A ton of them, But too. in El Salvador, you know, it's taken a little longer, right, to yeah. develop, and so, I think it's. I think we're going to see a, a huge influx in the next three to four years of surfers like Sophia coming through the ranks in their early teens and making big pushes in competition. And it's necessary too. You know, the only way people get better is with if iron sharpens iron. You know, and for the same thing with Argentina, like Lucien Duran, the two gold medals that Lele has, him being an Olympian, getting to that point and having. You know, the inspiration that he's had to be able to give to these young men and women has not only been necessary, but also consider what Fernando's been able to do for surfing overall. But he also comes from Argentina, where I would have never thought that Fernando was there originally, you know, from there originally. And then all of a sudden I hear his accent. I'm like, wait, dude, you're from Argentina? Like, that's kind of crazy. Like, literally the most southern part of the world where most of the time you're surfing waist, knee-high waves, and all of a sudden... You're getting people that are not only qualifying for the Olympics, they were close to qualifying for, qualifying for the championship tour as well. So different parts of the world. I think those superpowers, Australia, the US, Hawaii, outside of this event, obviously, and Peru now have a lot of competition. So it's gonna be a few years to see El Salvador, Guatemala happen a bit more. We talked about Germany, we talked about Italy. Guess what? Coming up, Chris, there's a lot of time to go too. We got a minute 14 left. Your surfer in green is out the back in that top priority spot and in the lead. Lucia Induran representing Team Argentina. Sofia Ramos hanging in there in second place. Team El Salvador. Juana Plus only needs a 171. This may be of a, a defensive mechanism here for Sofia. Little victory able, lap two. Yeah, able to hold off Juana. 45 seconds left. Maybe another opportunity for Santa Vaveri. Team Latvia. Just out of position there. These waves come so quick. With 30 seconds left. Well, Foto said this is one of the heaviest waves in the region. For I that guy it. to say that, yeah. I believe it. Well, a lot of the local guys are telling me this is more of a bodyboarding wave. So imagine, like, yesterday it would have been, like, full bodyboard or so. It does have that look of a hefty slab yeah. so much opportunity up and down this coast 
Santa having a look there. The wave just sneaks underneath her. So either way, Juana and Santa, thank you so much for your effort, your passion for surfing and competing here at the ISA level. And just getting here. Yeah, they're just great ambassadors for Guatemala and for Latvia. And it's going to be one last look for Indoran. Cool little pocket stall there. Stylish ride to the beach. That'll be a victory lap. And that's going to be it for our Repicharge round one, heat one. Lucia Indoran and Sofia Ramos stay in contention. And they will remain in this competition, but we do lose Juan Apos from Guatemala and Santa Vaveri from Latvia. But we thank them for their surfing service. Been a pleasure to watch. Absolutely, and you know, talked about developing countries too, and you know, getting these nations more represented and getting a lot more exposure for them as well. Hopefully a lot of people at home are watching this and being able to see that they have a chance to be able to compete against the very best in the world too. And there's opportunities on these growing teams to get those positions and potentially, you know, eventually get to those spots where you might be qualifying for the Olympic Games too, Chris. No, you're absolutely right. The universality place is in place. All right, Mitchell, we're gonna do a booth swap here. Repicharge, round one, heat two, rolls on. Safi Vetti, Romy Galan, and Ariane Tampali. You know what? I'm staying. <laughs> I've been wanting to watch this heat all week long. Safi Vete from New Zealand, Romy Golan from Israel, and Arini Sarpali from Greece. Two surfers will stay in this competition. One surfer. Well, they'll probably just be relegated to the fan base. And there's nothing wrong with that. These teams need support in and out of the water, Mitch. Yeah, and Safi, she's already qualified for Paris. So big moment last year for her and the rest of Team New Zealand. They got a couple. Bill Stairman, he's going to be going back as well. They would definitely like to have one more surfer in there for Paris. But, you know, Israel, another, uh, oh, another country that is fully, fully improved. An incredible here. team. And Greece, uh, Mateo, who lives in Peru but competes for Greece, he's a great surfer as well. We saw him yesterday. Nice carving slash right there for Safi Vete. Well, that's an indication of why she qualified too. Yeah, she's, and, and we're going to see this for the remainder of the afternoon. Really good surfers that maybe just did not have the heat they wanted in their opening round. They find themselves in the repicharge, and this will be. These are going to be hotly contested spots. I mean, everybody now knows that this is elimination round surfing. So the stakes are high. Hypothetical question. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. If you were to choose, and I'm, and I'm speaking any country out of the ones that are here present. Okay. If you could choose any country to host your ISA World Surfing Games, where are you choosing? Ooh. Uh, I'm just, I'm going to go Italy. Mainly because I'd like to go there and eat the food yeah yeah experience the there culture can be great the waves as well and I, I don't know you know consistency and being able to pick and choose the times but we I'm could going, make it i'm happen. going based on food alone okay I'm going i'm going to italy you know i've i went to canada last year and despite it being extremely cold great surfers awesome people oh yeah i never met a canadian i didn't like do you how many do you know a lot <laughs> many but the waves, dude, that was the thing that I'm just like, wow. British it's consistent. Columbia. Yeah. Yeah. No, and that's only on the West Coast. Vancouver Island. Halifax and that whole part of Nova Scotia They don't over there. like you talking about them over there. <laughs> They'd like to keep that area quiet. Well, <laughs> all I'm saying is check social media, especially Kevin Schultz's Instagram. So you could do a bi-coastal ISA World Surfing Games. Maybe. That probably seems... Might take a minute to get from podium to podium. A have one on each side of the coast. A little expensive, too, but I think we could eventually make it work. So those are our fantasy picks. Here we go. Irini Sarpoli representing Greece. I mean, let's go to Greece. Right next to Italy. We could do, like, the World Cup that's coming up. That we could do cool. Canada, U.S., and Mexico. A couple days on each spot. Yeah. Well, I, I, I got I got to give a lot of credit to the ISA organization for their picks. And I mean, every spot we've been to in the last decade or so for the ISA World Surfing Games has been absolutely 
perfect for an event of this magnitude, including where we are right now in Arecibo, Puerto Rico. And it's serving like that that proves our point. Romy Golan from Team Israel, two nice backside slashes. You need a lot more than just great waves to be able to handle an ISA event of this magnitude. Mm -hmm. You need a lot of places to stay, uh, infrastructure, roads, in and out, direct access. You, know, you need uh, places to make food for this army of <laughs> hungry staff members. That you gotta feed the competitors too. Yeah, I mean, nightlife there's... doesn't hurt. No, the ISA. It, we like nightlife. Yeah. Well, after eight days of working, you oh, need yeah. to be able to you know, unleash a little bit at least. Oh yeah. The, I mean the the parade, the opening ceremonies, the sands of the world ceremonies. It, it's a big part of what makes ISA competition special. 15 minutes, 13 seconds to go here. Romy Gala now in the lead. Safi Vete drops to second. Irini Sarpali in third. So Israel, New Zealand, and Greece represented here in Repercharge. Round one, heat two. And I think I will say, too, accessibility in terms of airports. Because here in San Juan, yeah. pretty easy to get to. A lot of major international flights. And then you also have connecting flights from a lot of parts of the United States, too. Yep. So... In terms of getting here, super easy. You know, a couple quick flights for us from the west coast of the U.S. But I think that's why it's not always been so easy. They've been opening up a lot more flights worldwide. And I think that's why a lot of opportunities for Paris also came through for them. True. Here we go, Romy Golan again. A little gem working with there. Right out. Make it. Sell it. Tell us. Let us know you made it. Close. That was a long fall. A long incompletion. It was a end. long incomplete wave, but I love the effort that you showed us right there. Safi Vete now. Cool kick out. Kind of a one of those that just takes your ankles out of, from under you. Call that a Bet Midler, wind beneath my wings kick out. I don't know about you, but I've seen three sets in the last 10 to 15 minutes that I'm convinced that it's getting a little bit better right now. Slight tide change. Not a huge difference in terms of the tides, about a foot up or down but you know the afternoon yesterday got really fun wind turned slightly offshore as well and i think we're in for the same in these last these next 13 minutes of the heat chris and you know once again i just want to say a big thank you to the local people here too if you've walked along the boardwalk i spent you know a day and a half outside uh doing sideline and everybody that i talked to that was from the area super cool very welcoming and they're just Super stoked to be able to have an event here, too. And I think it opens the doors for Puerto Rico being an even bigger surf destination than it already is. It's all about that Boricua. You know, Costa Rica has Puerto Vida. Hawaii has Aloha. Puerto Rico has Boricua. And that's uh, something you'll hear in a lot of songs. You know, big pun, Fat Joe. Of course, they ended their biggest hit. Not a player. Boricua Morena, over and over again. That's the first time I ever heard Boricua. Investigated a little bit. I said, okay, Puerto Rico, let's go. And now, of course, the biggest artist out of Puerto Rico, Bad Bunny. Do you think he's here? Did you see him on the boardwalk? Well, Cano actually went and saw him at a concert one time here. Okay. So he might be tight with him. You never know. Might be showing up for finals day all of a sudden. He's bigger than the president, basically. Uh, I wonder who has more fans on the beach, Gabriel Medina or Bad Bunny? You know, I actually think Felipe might be competing with with, uh, with okay. Bad Bunny. Uh, reigning world champ, why wouldn't he? Yeah, and John John this morning had quite a few, too. You know Pretty who's popular. got a lot of fans on the beach? Brian Toth. Dude. I was just around the corner on the other podium, which you can watch if you click Podium 2, just under the viewing screen right now. And people were screaming and carrying on and whistling and hooting and hollering. I go, what is going on over here? It was Tothy out in the water, and he was going off. He got teary-eyed this morning a little bit during his interview. He was like, hey, the energy, like, it's nothing I've ever felt before. And even Carissa, too. Like, she had a big crowd around her, and, you know, she embodies that kind of spirit of aloha. And we've talked about Puerto Rico being kind of the Hawaii of the Caribbean, too. They almost embody that same thing. And, you know, Boricua, that's what they call Puerto Ricans. It's like pica for Costa Ricans. Like, they kind of have that same spirit and something that they want to give to everybody else. And... You know, it's just really amazing to be able to presence it, presence it live, too, Chris. Yeah, it's like a pleasant kind of pride. You know, it's like... It's a good way of putting it. Yeah. 
We're glad you're here. Enjoy yourself. It's like you just always have a shaka on you the whole time. Right. Like locked and loaded. Constant shaka. 11 minutes left here. Safi Vete from Team New Zealand with a 3.83 and a point seven zero in the lead for now. Interesting cadence to these waves, right? We, we're seeing these pulses come through and then it'll go flat for five or six minutes, which is totally standard in surfing, something that you can't plan for. Yep. That's where, you know, some luck comes into play, but it's also about, it makes positioning a little bit more difficult Truly because does. it can kind of lure you into strange spots in the lineup. Next thing you know, you're right in the middle and the set's coming down on your head. You know, and Safi proved what she's capable of with that 3.83, just the one car. She's already qualified. Paige Harrop has been an incredible ambassador for them over the years, too. But I think a lot of credit needs to be due to Ella Williams as well, who was one of the OGs. She won an, an ASP World Junior Championship back in 2013 in Florianópolis in Brazil. And what she was able to do for female surfing, not only within New Zealand, but throughout the other region of Oceania that doesn't count for Australia was massive because it just proved that, you know, the talent's there and the waves are there for them to really get some expertise into their feet too, Chris. Yeah, no doubt. Well, Team New Zealand has come correct. Paige Harib is here. Safi Vete right now trying to fight her way through these repertoire rounds. Pia Rogers just did her job. Yep. Staying in competition. Billy Stairman still in the main event. As we see, Sarpali now. Team Greece, great style there. Might Fun be surfer to watch. Might be riding a carbon board too. Potentially. So Team New Zealand also represented by Kehu Butler. Yeah. And Elliot Parada Reed. Elliot. One thing about New Zealanders, uh, a lot of the New Zealanders I know are hilarious. I mean, Raglan Surf Report, Mackenzie <laughs> Bowden, Elliot Reed, all often stars in those videos with Mackenzie. Yeah. Uh, Flight of the Concords. There are a lot of funny people in New Zealand. Oh, you like Taika Waititi, don't oh, you? Oh, my gosh. New Zealanders are awesome. I, actually... I mean, look at this photo of Elliot Reed on his <laughs> on our ISA surf, right? He looks like a tough guy right here. Go have a conversation with him. No, he's, He'll make you laugh every time. He's rad. He's a super cool dude. Um, they got really great style, too. Yeah. And that's kind of how you can separate them from the Aussies, too. Like, the accent might be a little similar sometimes, but then you're going to be like, oh, I know you're a New Zealander because of your style. That's right. Well, we're going to take this opportunity, this little break in the action, to go down to the glass. We're standing by. We've got Rachel Tilly. Testing. Welcome down here onto the beach. Congratulations. I'm going to speak in English. You'll answer in Spanish and we'll throw it back to you, Mitch, at the end to translate it all. How did that feel out there? A repercharge round, heat one, probably not the way you would have wanted to start yesterday, but coming through with a win, I'm sure that felt nice. Sí, la verdad que no empecé el campeonato como esperaba, eh, pero un tropezón no es caída. La verdad que las condiciones de afuera parece que está buenazo, increíble, pero adentro se hace bien difícil. Las olas no son constantes, el mar cambia mucho y, y hay momentos de mucho flat, hay corrientes. Bueno, nada, de afuera se parece más fácil, créanme. Así que nada, vamos paso a paso, que eso es lo importante y nada, eh, vamos a seguir con toda la fe y, y hoy avanzamos, así que vamos por todo mañana. And you have a really strong team, former ISA gold medalist on your team representing Argentina as well. How are you getting that support from your team? Bien, la verdad que todos nos estamos apoyando mucho. Eh, lamentablemente a todos nos ha, no nos ha ido como esperábamos. De hecho, estamos todos el, todo el equipo en repechaje. Algo bien raro, bien extraño. Eh, pero bueno, nada, eso también detalla la, la, la dificultad de la, de, de la condición, ¿no? Eh, ya que a mucha gente le vaya mal, es como, bueno, algo está pasando, no es un error propio. Entonces, nada, vamos a ir con todos. Todos seguimos con vida y vamos por el sueño. Thank you for that. Is there anything you'd like to say back to your country, your friends and family at home? Mamá, papá, que me están mirando a toda la gente de Miramar. Eh, lo estamos luchando. Está difícil, pero nada. Ahí vamos. Congratulations. We'll throw that back to you, Mitch, in the booth. <laughs> All right, Rachel, thanks. So one thing that she mentioned that I thought was super interesting, a trip doesn't necessarily mean that you're falling. And 
that's obviously an explanation of what she's saying of being in the rapid charge right now. But then she went on and said, it is so much easier to say that it's a certain way from your TV screen. And then actually being out there, it is really confusing. This lineup moves a lot. And then overall, Team Argentina, they haven't done very well so far. Lele had a good performance yesterday. Santi Muniz, two-time ISA gold medalist as well. He's in the rapid charge. And then just overall, you want to be able to see your team do well in order for them to get enthusiastic for your own performances. So having that team energy and bringing them back, especially after a big win here in the rapid charge, should do good things for her. And she does get the award for mo most pierced ears. She had nine piercings in her ears. That's cool, just showing her individual style. And some pretty cool sponsors as well. Pizel, Nike, Ford, Quicksilver. She's hooked up. Yeah. Nothing like my boards, Chris. Oh, yeah? <laughs> I got the best sponsor of all. and proud. Dark Arts. Yeah. Justin Turnus. You got me onto those boards, too. I'm really stoked. Well, lucky us. Five minutes to go here. Romik Olent flying down the line. Now we're starting to see some energy here from the Atlantic Ocean. Inside of that five-minute mark, things are going to start to heat up, no doubt. Tactics are going to come into play. Safi Vete in the lead, trying to get rid of a point seven zero. She's out the back with priority, but do not discount some of these inside waves that could perk up at the right time if you're in the right spot. Irini Sarpali representing Team Greece. She's hanging there on the inside right, which I think is a pretty good call. It's being kind of undecisive right now where these sets and when these sets are rolling through. Mm -hmm. And that takeoff zone has been shifting around throughout the day as well. Well, I'm not mad at her positioning. To Lucia's credit, once again, much easier said than done when you're watching it from a TV screen. And, you know, being out there, there's still a reef break and it moves around a lot. Wheeler Hasberg lost this morning trying to surf this wave more like a beach break rather than actually surfing and waiting a bit more patiently outside. So, you know, I think the other wave, El Pico, you can probably approach that a little bit more like that. Be a bit more active, move around a little bit more here. If you're not really sitting between both of your markers or even if you have more than one, you still want to be a bit selective with the waves that you're catching because if you're out of position, you're usually not going to be able to engage with the one section that you have available on the outside. That's really been the most critical part of the wave because if you look at the top scores, a lot of those turns are being done way on the outside. Overview of the boardwalk we keep referencing there. The mile of glorious coastline here. Not a lot of open beach to hang out on, but nope. You know what? I'll take great waves over open beach. And you see up and down the coast, that white water. I mean, if, if this if if this place is pumping, a lot of be reef. careful. Yeah, because it is powerful. It is barreling. And it can be unforgiving at times, but there are channels to get out. I mean, and we, we've seen so many amazing Puerto Rican tube riders getting around the world and then photos from right here that we know this place is holding. There's also a skate park right across the street. I mean, dream come true. So the last two events that you've done for the ISA, there's been a skate park literally right across I from where you work. I only do events from. if there's a skate park on the beach. It's ah. in my contract, Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> you know what another cool thing about Puerto Rico is, too? The food. I had some arepas a while ago. I'm sold. I'm almost, like, just thinking of buying a house over here and, you know, living half of the year, especially in the wintertime when it's a bit colder in California. So arepas are to Puerto Rico what pupusas are to El Salvador? Or tacos to Mexico, yeah. Okay. Something like that. Arepas are more of a Caribbean thing, but you usually see them a lot. Colombia, too. Different kind of countries. Venezuela. Dominican Republic, but yeah. There is a very famous skateboarder from Puerto Rico, Manny Santiago. Yeah, yeah. He's a street league performer, one of the most popular skateboarders, still ripping at a high level, splits his time between California and Puerto Rico. And, you know, when I think of kind of the, the Puerto Rican vibe, I think of Manny Santiago, he exudes that positivity, that joy. And I'm sure he had a, he's had a big part in keeping the skateboarding scene alive and well here and speaking of the scene being alive and well february 24th through march 2nd hardcore competition and lots of music 
each and every night on March 3rd, our finals starting at 7 a.m. most likely, depending. We'll see. You know, we have, we're going to give ourselves some wiggle room to work with since we just in case have been powering through these early rounds. But our award ceremony and, of course, the Aloha Beach Party, which is always fun. And here's your schedule for the ISA for the remainder of the year. April 18th through the 25th, the ISA World Longboard Championship. Last year, it was about 15 to 20 feet at El Sudzal, an incredible event to watch. And we're going back with the juniors to El Salvador on March 3rd. Yeah. I want to go to Denmark, though, for the SUP event. Yeah, can, let's raise our hand for that. SUP racing, SUP surfing in the canals, Copenhagen, truly one of the coolest cities in the world. Oh, yeah. Cool culture. I say does it right, picking their spots, don't they? Well, Safi, another great performance. Should be very pleased with what she did right there. Showed a lot of patience, letting a lot of waves that weren't necessarily going to give her a lot of good scores in this heat either. Already qualified, no pressure whatsoever. Just go out there, do your job right now. And, you know, once again, Israel, Romy Golan, she's going to be moving through, Chris. And Greece, another country that has slowly but surely been producing more surfers. You're at the ISA level. Good to see her as well. Yeah, this is uh, this is where we're going to see a lot of uh, developing surf nations rising to the occasion. So solid heat behind us and a few more ahead of us. It is 3.30 local time here in Puerto Rico. We're going to wrap up the afternoon, but trust me, a lot more great surfing to come in these next few heats. We're going to bring in Barton Lynch and Shannon Hughes on the call. started the campaign like 20 something years ago over a quarter century even what we started it was impossible i mean everybody okay, my friends my brother would say you know you're really gonna put your energy in this you know let's go surfing i never thought surfing would be in the olympics period we all just looked and rolled our eyes back at <laughs> like come on fernando <laughs> surfing will never make it I never actually dreamed of being in the Olympic because surfing wasn't an Olympic sport. I never thought surfing would be in the Olympic sports. The Olympics wasn't ever a dream of mine because it wasn't a reality, it wasn't tangible. It's the biggest event in the world. Fernando is the, the reason why we're all there. <laughs> it's like me telling you I'm gonna you know, swim around the world. 27 years later, he pulled it off. Welcome back to the action here at the ISA World Surfing Games 2024, and it's an Olympic year, which means that each of these women wants to stay in the draw today as we are into the rapid charge round one. These are elimination heats, but for Morocco, Ukraine, and China, they're going to do their best to stay in that top two to be advancing through with a chance to try to qualify later this week. Out in the water right now for Morocco, we have Rania Squali for Ukraine. Daria Karol, and for China, Shuhan Jin. And at the moment, no waves being ridden just yet. We've got 18 minutes left on the clock. The nice thing is that the ISA has decided there's enough time in the schedule this week to run 20 minute rapid charge rounds for now. Oh. So typically we go back down to 15 minutes in the rapid charge rounds, but we're noticing on the clock now that 20 minutes is sticking around and that's always a, a welcome thing for the surfers in the water. Oh, absolutely. That extra five minutes can make a big difference. And that wind has cleaned up. The conditions are beautiful out there this afternoon. 
It's what we were hoping for earlier today. That wind came up a lot earlier than what we were mm. kind of expecting it to be. We knew that that onshore, that crossshore breeze would be arriving, but it, it hit pretty early. But with that storm coming through, as you mentioned earlier today, Barton, we were hoping those offshore winds would show again, and there they are. A couple little waves breaking just on the inside of where the women are sitting. And I have been seeing quite a few waves in there. Perfect peaks, lefts and rights, just peeling off both ways. So you get desperate, you could definitely move inside and, and find some for sure. Three new surfers out in the lineup. Each of them has already surfed a heat at El Pico, which was mm -hmm. yesterday morning. Unfortunately, took that third or fourth place position in their opening round heat and have found themselves into repercharge round. China's Shu Han had a paddle for that wave. Didn't quite get into the speed I think that she needed to be able to get up in front of the whitewater. Might have been a little deep too. It didn't look like she was in a very good position. So most probably better she didn't catch that. Morocco, Ukraine and China in the water. Three places I've never been. Put them on the list. Two of them having incredibly good surf. Morocco, of course, known for its point breaks all around the world. And it does look like we might only have two surfers in the water. We can see from this drone angle, that red jersey, that that green jersey, that bright green. Mm -hmm. Doesn't look like our surfer in the blue, Daria Karol from Ukraine, has paddled out in this heat. So we'll see if she pops up at any stage within it. But for now, it looks like it's just these two, which means they have the opportunity to get a feeling for this wave knowing they might be surfing it later on. But if it is just the two of them, they'll be taking those advancing positions. Yeah, exactly. And uh, it seems like the next, you know, looking at the forecast, the next couple of days are quite small. And, um, you know, we, I think we're going to stop running here at Margara and move down to Rastrial and El Pico. And they are beautiful waves down there. I've been watching them in the breaks and... Uh, it's going to be great for the webcast, and as it drops, they'll still be good. Well, 15 and a half minutes on the clock. We do have Rachel Tilly ready to go with Safi Vetti off of a win in Repid Charge round one. Take it away, Rach. Congratulations, Safi, winner of that heat. Now, we were talking yesterday after you got relegated to this round. You were feeling like you just weren't on your game yesterday. You weren't pushing it enough. How did you feel out there today coming back from that? Yeah, I mean, I had a whole, like, revelation of I need to be hungrier. So um, I got a team kind of prep up, and, uh, yeah, I just have to be a little bit more aggressive, I think. So I'm in a comfortable situation, but it doesn't mean I don't want to do well. Uh, but, yeah, it's um, such an epic place here, so I'm really excited to keep going in the event. <laughs> Yeah, and when you say you're in a comfortable situation, obviously you're alluding to the fact that you are a qual you are qualified for the Olympics later this year. So you're looking to win a medal here for the sake of winning a medal, but also for your team. Yeah, for sure. I want to do yeah everything in my power to do well for my team and for myself as well. Um, obviously. Being in the rapid charge wasn't my game plan right from the get-go, but it's how it rolls sometimes, and I seem to like it the hard way, so um, we'll keep the ball rolling. Well, going the hard way definitely forces you to be hungry in order to get through. That was your first time surfing out at this peak. Yesterday you were competing at El Pico. How did you find this peak in comparison? Yeah, there's definitely like a specific takeoff spot. Uh, I think just finding that sweet spot is really important and I'm still navigating that. I did miss a bomb, which I was bummed about, but um, I'm lucky to get a second chance out here and hopefully we can find the sweet spot and get a few fun rides and maybe even a few barrels when it gets a bit bigger again. <laughs> yeah, well, it's all about building a house and you're building that house through to the next round. We can't wait to see you there. Thanks, Rachel. Thanks, guys. Back to you guys. Thanks so much. Great insights from Safi. Of course, feeling, you know, she's got that Olympic position already stitched up as we see beautiful looking wave go unridden on the inside. Rania on the outside, maybe putting herself in position. Safi just makes me smile. Oh, I love she's her so classic much. Classic character, eh? And and well broken down, you know, understanding that lineup and, and, and still navigating that lineup and uh, using the team energy to, to help her dig a little deeper. 
great interview and uh, just good vibes all around. That's right. She's one of those surfers as we take a look at a paddle here from our surfer in green on the drone footage, taking a look at the replay for Shuhan, able to get a great looking right hander out in front of her. Well, that's where the five points came from. I was wondering, I was like, five points, that's a good score. That's a good ride. And rightly so, all the way through to the inside, little catch there at the end. But as we see this front on angle, weights, drives around the first section, nice throw of the arms at the end of that turn into another re-entry out of the lip and a, a great ride. Really, uh, with only two of them out there, it, it, it's not really that important because you're both going to qualify. Better to qualify in first than second because when you go to the next round, you have two first places and two second places in your heat. So if you're a second place, you're going to go against two firsts. If you're a first, you're going against two seconds and only one first. That makes sense. It doesn't sound, um, but that's the way it is. So, you know, it is more, it's important to, to be in first rather than second. Yeah, that's right. That seeding. So from mm -hmm. now on, of course, coming into the event, the seeding was based off of your country ranking from the previous World Surfing Games. So whatever teams had taken away the gold medal, silver, etc., they'd have the highest seedings and their surfers would get placed accordingly, not on an individual yeah. names basis, to, you know, where now as they move through the event, their seeding is actually based off of how they placed within each heat. And talk to me about the drone angle of the takeoff and the reef below it. It was just a beautiful shot. Yeah, that was absolutely gorgeous. We can see Rania there trying to put herself into position for Morocco. The five-point ride for Shuhan has been backed up with a 3.67. And she said that she loves surfing at Ryu Bay, which is on Hainan Island in China. Some great lefts there. There's also some right-handers available, but Ryu Bay has a really good left-hand reef. It can get quite shallow. There's lots of boils, pretty similar to the, uh, you know, a lot of the elements that we're looking at out here. So for Shuhan, just finding some rhythm out here, feeling kind of similar to home. The three, six, seven, uh, the energy is good on this wave. It, it, it had come up a notch. It's like the first one was in second gear and that one was in third gear. She just increased the intensity in the rail changes in her body movement and uh, really started to warm into this moment. A couple of good scores to start. Love the look of that wave from our 15 year old out in the water. Team China has a really young field specifically on the women's side. We saw Zixi Yang get herself a heat win just a few heats ago. In the main round, took out Tyler Wright. That's what I was going to say. You uh, stole the words out of your mouth. I'm yeah. so sorry. Well, and, and, you know, Fernando Aguirre, the president of the ISA, was, was who told me that paddling. Oh, so close to getting that one. The wind is absolutely beautiful right now, and the girls have got fantastic conditions. Fernando said that, you know, what's so great to him about the ISA is that all these wonderful little miracles occur and and that's like you know china beating tyler wright world champion and going out and be so there's this opportunity for just wonderful things great storylines to happen in this event with such a diverse geographic bunch of people who are surfing in the event and and different levels that you just see some incredible storylines evolve and and surprises happen which just keep it so interesting so incredible and great momentum for Team China moving forward as well. For Shuan to have been able to watch Zixi's heat out here to understand a little bit more about wave selection because this will be her first heat competing out here. Look at this set. Having a look at this wave now. Rania's had a couple paddles. She's been unable to get into it and it's been Shuan who's just been absolutely on fire in this heat. Cutting it back into the pocket. Now driving down the line, pumping a bit of rail to rail work here to hit the lip. She could eye off that section for a while as she headed towards it. What could she do differently there, Barton, to be able to capitalize? Just, uh, I think you need to go a little more vertically at the at the start and then whip it straight back around and get that nose facing to the shore out of the top. If you get up there and then leave the board sort of sideways, that, that whole rail is there to catch. But if you can get it up, whip it around and have the nose facing down the face of the wave and to the shore, that's your best chance of getting out of one of those sort of maneuvers. For Rania as well, she, I'd really like her to just start catching anything because no one else is out there. You're going to get through in the right position or not. Just start surfing, catching waves and build some momentum that way. Almost feels like, you know, paddling out in a heat where there isn't that pressure now to have to actually try to advance and not having more bodies out there 
would feel it would feel a bit more lonely and you kind of get a feeling for the break when you have those other surfers that are also picking the eyes out of things and you're all doing it together go go so Rania now up and riding for team morocco 16 years old out of casablanca nice. and a great looking backhand attack on her <laughs> as she snaps through for that second ride she's been competing since she was about 10 years old has started surfing as a four-year-old and has had quite a few major um, <laughs> moments within her competitive surfing back in Morocco. Just as a little Grom at 12 years old, she took a second place in the under 18 Moroccan championships. From there, she's gone on to be the winner of the Moroccan championships across every single age division between the U14s, the U16s, and the U18s. She's finished in the top four within the opens division, which has qualified her for this event here but it's amazing to know you know that pathway for her especially being just outside or you know within that european region but that north africa kind of location she started competing now in the european qualifying series in those junior events and she'll have a great future ahead of her having that exposure but also having some really incredible surf back at home yeah so she is the future of moroccan surfing for the ladies and that first ride, 2.6, and then a, you know 1.3, so a couple of scores in for her. But we saw what she's capable of, and that backhand looked great. You can see a and, smile on her face there. And she's got Ramsey Bukayev to, uh, you know, to emulate and to look up to, and, and to have guide, help guide her through her career. That's going to be in, invaluable. Yeah, it's it's incredible to have you know some of those figures on different teams coming in. Morocco is a perfect example of that having one surfer who's had that success from a, a nation that's been a surfing nation for a long time, but hasn't quite had, you know, that kind of generational shift. As we wow. take a look now at Rania on her backhand. This is a great opportunity just to get a few, you know, as we saw there and just stick and, and stick it up into the lip and if it's, and put it too high so that you get that said, no, you're surfing conservative here because you want to bank a couple. You know, like you would in a normal heat. Because Great point. You might be able to, you know, just conservatively surf your way to second place, say, and advance through. Now's the opportunity to just push it more than you have, further than you have, and find your limits a little bit. In a heat environment, you don't get that opportunity very often. Down to 5 minutes, 25 seconds on the clock. Two of the three surfers within this heat have paddled out. We haven't seen Daria Korol for Ukraine. So we hope that she is okay. We've loved seeing that Ukrainian team here representing. And we wish her all the best. But at the moment, we're getting to see a great display of surfing. It's a little wind surfing as well from the Pelicans. I love the way those birds, the seabirds, when they fly over a swell and they glide along the top of the wave and then they scoot off into the air and use it like it's an, a, a ramp like we do. And uh, they get the same feeling, I'm sure, that, that buzz of using the wave as a ramp they, they, you know, I love that when you're sitting out in the ocean and you see that moment, they fly by you and zoom off. You go, oh, they're stoked too. They're getting high off this wonderful thing. That engagement with nature that surfers have, you know, the depth of our relationship and connection to it. It is a very special thing as we see Shuan now up and riding. Oh, love that style into the first carve, sets it up for the second. Wow. Great speed within her surfing. Yeah, fluidity between those first two turns. And then, you know, at that, after the first two, as that wave broke, there was the, the need to kind of just pull away from it and slow yourself down. The momentum was building within her, and that's kind of led to that moment where she got a little erratic with the lip. And, uh, but you just need to be able to keep that calm, composed, mindset when the world around you is getting crazy i mean the be the best big wave riders in the world will tell you exactly the same thing that's the the key to it as we see the replay and we watch her here Rah, into that one pumps it around and here she kind of just got a little bit give me more give me more and, and uh just need to sit it back a little bit there but these first two turns were beautifully done lovely connection and rhythm that would have felt wonderful the way she was that that I know that inside her, she went, wow, that felt great, the way she connected those two turns. I couldn't agree more. I love the way, you know, she's kind of got her palms open the entire way as well, her hands. It's a really similar style, a different type of surfing, but what we see from Alice Lemoyne, who's one of the top surfers on the longboard tour. And Alice always surfs. She's a fantastic shortboarder as well. I've seen her compete in the QS over the years, but she's become a world champion on the ISA side of things um, through longboarding. And she does that same thing with her hands, where her hands are always out by her side, 
all five fingers like fully spread and it just gives her this it's like a it's the way that she uses that to kind of drive through everything she does is like really unique to her unique, style yeah and it, you kind of like finds power through that within her hands and i see that same kind of style coming through in shu yun surfing right now especially as she's got that bigger open face and just kind of like placing the strength of her arms into each of those turns and that's it's so important that that individuality and personality is ma maintained in a surfer's style as you're as a coach as you're bringing someone up if you're too technical and you're too worried about all those little bits of where this should be and that should be and how you, you know it, it loses that individuality you need to be able to maintain that because out of some of the weirdest things like you know mark richards with that kind of knock kneed stance the wounded gull nickname in the end it became his trademark because it was so unique and no one else surfed like that and that's that's a that's a great thing here we go ranya now up and riding setting herself up oh. for a huge section <laughs> again throwing it right up into the lip well she's definitely doing what we were talking about isn't she? she's having a go and she's really throwing herself at these situations and these lips with with radical abandon and i think that's the way to do it right now you know you're getting through you know you're advancing so you may as well push your limits and go okay next time i'll just pull that a little bit shorter and a little bit not quite so high and i'll make one like that great effort going into this heat so far down to 90 seconds on the clock you can see shuyan from china just having a look back at the tower wanting to check those priority boards of course they get those updates and announcements from the beach announcers but they also have the opportunity to check back and just see for themselves where the time is at and uh, a color priority board that they can keep their own eyes on. Mm. Rania sitting in that second place position has been kind of going for broke, sending it up into some really big sections. The 2.60 was those couple turns she found earlier on, setting her up with her highest single score, still lower than both the 5 and the 393 that we saw from Shuyan. But for Rania, this has been really fun to be able to see her just 16 years old. Both of these teenagers still out in the lineup. The future of surfing for both of their home nations, for China and for Morocco. Absolutely. And hopefully we get to, we'll get we see both of them in El Salvador later in the year at the World Juniors. And 393 is the highest or the second highest score for our Chinese surfers. So improving on that 367 and even with the fall at the end, the judges too appreciated Oh, late takeoff. Oh, has a look at it, decides not to go. She would have been right on top of it. And that that was a good place to not push it too far, you know what I mean? There's 10 seconds left. Let's just get out of the water in one piece and be ready to go again in that next round. Well, our heat leader out of China, Xu Yan Jin, she loves to read books in her free time when she's not out in the lineup. And for Rania Squally out of Morocco, besides surfing skating and kickboxing she's very passionate about cat adopting so she might have a few cats back at home cat adopting hanging at the house we're, parents taking care of them this week we're all different people we've all got our own things and that's wonderful i love because it because those cats we adopted a dog you know a couple of years ago and and he's part of the family now and, and you know they need a home these animals they need a home Well, that was a great heat number three. Both surfers that were competing in it will be advancing through into the next round and we'll be in tomorrow. We've got more heats to come. Let's take a look at what we've been up to thus far. The best wave of the heat so far, Chris, a 4.67. And this was a, a, the, the wave that you were talking about. Real smooth, nothing real critical, but just tickety smooth.
Welcome back to the action. We're tracking with our women's rep and charge round one, heat number four from the Czech Republic. Yana Kosova up against Great Britain's Lauren Sandlin and South Korea's Suha Hung out in the water. We've already got one small score on the board for Suak as a 0.23, so just a quick in and out. And waiting now for Yana and for Lauren to get their opening rides. And speaking of it, Yana up and riding as we just grab the tail end of this wave. She'll kick out on the inside, have a solid size set to duck dive on her way back out into the lineup. And she'll be putting a score on the board, which will leave Lauren Sandlin out the back, potentially with priority having the opportunity to get herself a piece of the puzzle. Korea, Great Britain, Czech Republic. And how was that highlight package in the break from the men out here at El Pico? That surfing was electric. There was some incredible surfing, so fast, so powerful, sharp. Big airs, carving rail turns, and then just this amazing utilization of small waves. That was a that shows you exactly what's been going on at El Pico. And I imagine tomorrow, this particular break, we're surfing here. Yana got a 133 on her first. It will be, we'll shut down with the diminishing swell and we'll go down and we'll run on Rastri Rastria? Rastrial. Rastrial, that's it. Rastrial and El Pico. And those two waves look fantastic. High performance, small wave surfing coming up the next few days. Yeah, it looks really exciting. That's likely where we'll be running contests tomorrow. It's great to be able to get both the men and the women acquainted with Magara with the hope yes, that exactly. maybe by the end of the waiting period, there's a pulse in the swell next weekend that if it stays true to what it's showing at the moment, we could potentially be running finals here at Magara again as the wave with the most consequence, but incredible venue here in Arecibo that allows three different breaks so close together with so much scoring potential for each of them. Yeah, incredible. And the one that we're not right, running on today, I was looking at it, it's pumping too, and the free surfers well, are having been, a great time. Yeah. And what that will do in terms of the crowd is at the moment there's, would you call it 500 metres between us and where Margara? Yeah, you know, it's El about Pico a five minute walk maybe. Yeah, it, it's quite a distance from Margara to El Pico, but Rastrial is just next door to El Pico and that'll condense all of the people and all of the crowd. There's tens of thousands of people out there. It's a massive crowd and it'll stay that way for the whole event. So the Puerto Ricans out in force, stoked on, on ISA, stoked on world surfing and here to support. Good vibes all around. Lauren Sandlin, the 18 year old representing Great Britain on her opening ride speed check as she drives down the line she could see that that wave was starting to close out wanted to be able to lay down the rail on her opening turn but unfortunately just caught off so small scores across the board for each of our surfers and lauren was able to take away a win in the opens division the 18 year old out of cornwall for the british championships just a few months ago in october that qualified her for this team to be representing here so a huge opportunity for her to be competing on a team that has uh, had a few other surfers a little bit older than her that have kind of held down that those positions for the World Surfing Games over the years. So it's great to see Lauren in the conversation now. As we see a quick in and out there from Suok Hong out of South Korea. We'll get back to that in a moment though, because we know that Rachel Tilly is standing by with the winner of that last heat. I'm not Congratulations on your heat win. You had your teammate winning heat just a couple of heats ago. Were you able to get any advice from her or direction out there on how to handle your heat? Thank you. Yeah, they give us a lot of the advice, especially the how to serve this kind of condition. Yeah, the conditions have been changing a lot rapidly throughout the day. Being in the 
rapid charge round can bring a lot of nerves, but you handled them really well. How did you, what are your strategies to keep your composure before a heat? 就是你掉到负活赛以后是如何去保持镇定的？因为这一整天的浪变化特别大，特别是现在这个潮位也比较低，你是怎么做的？嗯，多观察在赛场上，多看浪，然后掉负活也没有关系，就是自己教练和运动
Teresa Bonvilla doesn't look all that different. So that would be perhaps someone she could be inspired by and, and, and have a look at the approach and the way she serves. And perhaps she's already done that, having seen the way that she's approaching these waves. Yeah, that is a really good likeness to her style, especially with that little drop knee on the back. As we take a look now at Lauren, starting to open up here in this heat, setting herself with, up mm -hmm. with a great second turn into a heavy section and she nails the finish. And you know, one of the things when you're surfing a heat in this event and you're against people from nations you didn't even know had surfers, you don't know how they surf, how they perform, what level they're at. There's a nervousness in that when you don't know people. When you know them, at least you know what you're up against. Um, so I feel like for Lauren, there was a nervousness on those first couple of rides that on that wave, she felt settled. She'd heard what her opponents were getting and she was like, hey, you know what, I'm a shotty. I think I'm winning this thing. And I felt that confidence in that last ride. It was, it was much more aggressive and f at the same time as fluid. And she just looked way more comfortable on that one than she had on the previous. I agree. I think having the rapid charge rounds, we'll get back to that in a second because we'll take a look here at this wave from Lauren wraps it back into the white water another wrap here obviously a replay of that last and then a nice closeout turn going to be the highest score of the, the this heat so far and the highest score for her i imagine comes through as a 5.23 barton oh yep there you go nice wrapping cut back into this next turn come see the energy in the body see how she's just moving everything so much more fluidly and freely than she was on those first couple of rides. So the confidence is coming, the scores are in, she's gonna take a win. We've got six minutes still, so it might be a little premature to say that, but with that confidence building and the performance all heading in that, heading upwards, the scores are gonna do the same thing. And she's nearly into a double digit heat total. Yeah. 9.40, given the context of what we've seen from a lot of heat wins today is a really solid heat total. Yeah. So, Putting herself in go. position, it looks like our surfer in white, Hong for South Korea, with the paddle, now up and riding, drives hard off the bottom. Wow. <laughs> Going for it. Radical. This takes the lip to the face, but absolutely charging a little late to the section. Lauren sitting in that leading position, Yana and Suok very close with their heat totals. Just a 1.91 is the requirement for Yana. She is sitting with priority, so she's in a nice position to get herself onto a decent wave. She's gonna possibly have a paddle for this one, has a look at it, decides not to go. On the inside, Suok is gonna turn. And she's up to her feet, a little late on the drop, but makes it. Wow, critical late drop. On her longer ride before, you know, the long one that she had, I, I feel, uh, there was this moment where I was looking at the front foot and you imagine if your front, if your stance is square, so your feet are quite square, say like a snowboarder and they're across the board, as soon as that upper body rotates, it connects with the hips early. If your front foot is open a little and, and heading towards sort of straight, you know, pointing towards the nose, it opens your hips up and the upper body rotation doesn't connect with the hips for a long time. And I saw for Su Suok, this, the front foot, and I was like, wow, I think there's the opportunity to square that front foot up in that stance and it would help her, would give her more stability in the stance and it would allow that upper body rotation to connect earlier and give her a more sensitive and quicker connection to her turns. So a little bit of coaching there from the sideline for Korea. Oh, it's incredible. Uh, for so many surfers, you know, this week, uh, a lot of it means coming together as a surfing community and kind of having those opportunities to learn and grow, whether from it's each feedback other. from yeah. each other, feedback from their own teams, but also to be able to have some conversations with the greats of our sport from world champions like yourself, Barton, you're one of many world champions that we have present here this week. And, you know, imagine the opportunity for someone like Suok to be able to have that advice coming from that sort of background as we oh. take a look now at Lauren. You're right, she's just starting. She was just getting warmed up earlier on and yeah. now we're starting to see this is the the future of British surfing. The future of that English contingency coming out of Cornwall but representing Great Britain as a whole for, you know, any events towards the qualifying, uh, anything qualifying towards the Olympics. 
and that was some incredible railway. That was a beautiful turn. Confidence is just starting to build. It's like you can feel it and see it right in front of our eyes through the opportunity to get that repetition. It's a great opportunity as well at the ISAs with a repetition charge round included exactly. because in any other event you'd be out already and kind of a bit down and, and unable to sort of figure things out as we see Yana go down on the takeoff but for the ISAs there's that rep charge round all the way through so if you have one of those heats where things just don't go your way yeah. there's that potential for you to be able to come back even stronger to reflect on things and, and in those moments make those changes and it may even happen in the semi-final you know, it can, happens the whole way along the event. So to have that backstop there and to give yourself a second chance is a wonderful part of, of developing and growing the sport internationally. Two Judge minutes. is having a good long think about this. Sorry, that's Jennifer, okay. Because that was a beautiful turn. I think that's the best score of the heat, even though it was a single turn. It was a beauty. And that's the sort of surfing. If she can continue to do that, Lauren Sandlin, uh, she will go a long way in the event. Finding that sort of section as well that was just had such a nice shape to it a really good corner little spit coming through it seems like as that tide is dropping out we'll be pretty close we'll actually just pass the low tide seems like that wave's starting to bear a little bit more and as i think even as the swells moved in onto that inside reef we you know we see some absolutely perfect insiders going both ways tubing both ways so you know two days in we know that we've got a great venue got a massive crowd with who are just stoked to have us and the surfers are putting on incredible performances so it's going to be a great show and and you were talking about those having those off heats you compete for nine days straight it's very possible that in one of those days in one of those moments you may indeed have an off heat you know it's, it's hard to be consistent for that long so true it's very unlikely to take away the gold medal and that your pathway to winning the gold medal was a heat win in every single heat hmm that's going to be tough to do That's for anybody. 100%. At least a second place where you're maybe not entirely stoked because you didn't take away that win. If not, losing a round somewhere along the way and fighting back from rep charge, even if it's from that final stay conversation. And that is a great opportunity. You embrace that and go, hey, I'm down, but I'm not. I'm, did someone say that they're down, but they're not out? You know, so, oh, late drop. Oh, great looking wave and the bottom turn right around her fellow competitor. As we see, Suak just gets swallowed by the whitewater. Couldn't quite find the projection she needed to come around the foam. We saw that in a bit of the men's surfing yesterday as well with mm -hmm. a few surfers that were just getting kind of caught up behind and were struggling to, to be able to find that kind of bottom turn around the foam out on that clean water. Yep. As we see Lauren, just a quick in and out. Scores are in. It's a 6.5. Barton, you nailed it. Highest score of the heat and for just that single turn. Yeah, that's how good a turn it was. It was a world-class turn by any standard. And that's what the score will indicate. And when they, the team go home and the coaches and they watch the, the video of the heat, they'll most probably be listening to us. Um, great, great performance from Lauren and uh, for Great Britain. Well, more to see of these surfers through the week. Unfortunately, we lose Yana Kosova from the Czech Republic. It's a great opportunity to get to see her surfing. We'll be back with more. The final heat of the day is heading out next for Repa Charge Round 1, Women's Heat Number 5. When Paris finally said, no, we're going to do a whole different day. We're going to Chopu. It's like we all went, oh my God, what an amazing idea. Chopu is one of the most incredible waves, probably a wonder of the world. And it's just sort of like a whole nother world out there. It's godlike, it's quiet, serene, beautiful. Then you have this glorious wave that comes off a reef and it's so powerful and so beautiful. I think Chopu has the opportunity to capture the imagination visually for what people think surfing is. The wave at Teahupo is super, super scary and beautiful at the same time. I have to give them a lot of props for the courage of making a commitment to Tahiti. I think it'll be a really exciting way to showcase all the athletes and their talents. I think <laughs> it's gonna be very good. <laughs> Welcome back to the action here for the ISA World Surfing Games in Puerto Rico with 
Some little A-frames, some lefts and some rights available for our women's rapid charge round. Heat number five, Indonesia, Korea, and the Dominican Republic in the water. And the top two surfers will be staying in the draw. The bottom surfer, unfortunately, will be falling out of competition. We are here in Arecibo, Puerto Rico for day two of competition. Earlier this morning, bright and early, there was nobody in that skate park. Now it's packed, it's full. I'm sure there's a few of the surfers that would like to be on that side as well. Look at all the amenities along the beachfront there, the parks. and It, it wasn't so long ago that this area, this park, wasn't as beautiful and developed as it is now. And apparently it's, it's just growing you know, year by year and this is going to help a lot, this event. Well, with a quality wave like this out front for surfers like Jasmine Stutter out of Indonesia to just rip apart, it's no wonder this place is starting to develop. Great start for Jasmine, first score to come through. She's in the water up against Jehi Seo out of South Korea and Eva Julia Mota out of the Dominican Republic. So Jasmine with a solid start under her feet, that's gonna feel really nice. Three surfers out in the lineup, top two will be advancing through. Similar waves to Indonesia here, really, you know, especially now with that beautiful offshore wind blowing in the afternoon, conditions have glassed off, cleaned up. It's just beautiful out there, and Indonesia's like that a lot. We've had a, a flurry of different conditions throughout today. Yeah. It was kind of clean still this morning, but those offshore winds were a little bit strong even. For those of you that are tuning in online, join us at ISA Surf at ISA Surfing. Um, anywhere that you're on social media, be sure to tag at ISA Surfing if you're in or on the contest side, if you're posting any photos, and continue to uh, see more of Puerto Rico as well at Discover Puerto Rico for some great surf footage. I'm sure that there's a lot of images they want going out to the world, and then maybe a few that they still just kind of keep hidden because their surf community doesn't want the world to entirely understand the quality of waves that are on offer here. Well, that would be fair if you were a local and you were like, <laughs> okay, just, yeah, you can expose these three, not the other ones around the corner here and the corner there. And, you know, I suppose essentially all coastlines of the island get surf in, in, in certain conditions. That's a great place to be. Congratulations to that young lady. Very stoked to see Great Britain with another victory here at the ISA World Surfing Games for Lauren Sandlin. And we're into our final heat of the day, heat number five of the women's rep charge round one. We've got plenty more heats within this round, 16 in total, but we're gonna call it quits for the day. That was the call from early this morning, recognizing that with a 7 a.m. start, it's been a very big day of competition across the board. Ava now up and riding. Love that style as she just kind of drove off the bottom into that first turn. Getting a boogie on there for sure. Well, 15 minutes remaining on the clock. Let's go down to the beach to catch up with Rachel Tilly and Lauren Sandlin. Congratulations on your heat win. There's a lot of excitement from yourself, from your team, all here of Great Britain. How does that feel out there taking that heat win? Uh, it feels really good to get the win. A really big confidence builder to me, and even better to have the whole the whole of GB team supporting me on on the beach and stuff. It's really good. Well, having one of the last heats of the day, the second to last heat of the day, how did you manage keeping that energy up all day? Were you watching the conditions change? What did your day look like today in pre preparation? Um, I was kind of just chilling out for most of the day. Got a quick free surf done at the other peak to get a feel for the board and stuff. And then the last like couple of hours just like getting in the zone, watching the waves. And yeah, it's been really fun doing it too. And you looked amazing on your board, dropped some solid scores. Talk to us about the equipment that you're on. Uh, this is a Paizo Shadow. It goes really well in these kind of waves and really good at holding the rail and like steep sections and felt really good out there. Well, lots of excitement and happiness from your team here. I'm sure back with your family and country as well. Is there anything you'd like to say back home? Uh, just thanks so much to everyone that's been watching and supporting the whole of the GP team. And hopefully more heat wins to come. Absolutely. We look forward to seeing you again. Congratulations. Thank you. Back to you guys. Yeah, Lord. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Support behind Lauren as we now take a look at live action with Jasmine Stutter 
of Indonesia into a great finish. Nearly rode out of it. Uh, and Shannon jinxed her. I'm so sorry, Jasmine. <laughs> Your surfing has been great so far. I All absolutely love it. Woo! And Jay He, out of South Korea, goes down over a heavy section. She's got that 0 0.43 on the board now with a second one. And Jasmine sitting in the lead with a 317 for her opening wave and a 2.70 for her backup. Yes, yeah, solid surfing. That late takeoff there from the Korean lady was late and difficult. And then she found herself in the tube. And uh, that'll be a good experience too. You know, it's hard to find yourself in that position. Here we go on the inside. Look at this one's about to land. Will she get under it? Just, oh, that was, there's nothing worse than being right in that position where the lip lands on your head and you don't get underneath it. You get rumbled. And then, then this one behind it, same again. Couple of big set, bigger set waves on the head. Handled easy with the duck dive. Called a duck dive for obvious reasons. You'll see it here. You, you just, you, you duck under like a duck. And, uh, and it's the most effective way of getting through a lineup and, and managing waves that are breaking on your head. Especially handy when you're riding a board that's small enough to duck dive that's when there's waves breaking right on top of you. What do you do on the long board? Do you go the Eskimo roll? You can do the Eskimo roll. You can kind of actually like get a little pressure into the board and pop over the wave. If it's not too big if of white water? If it's not too big of white water, but right. if it's, you know, maybe three feet or so, you can still get over that wave sometimes. Wow. Otherwise, you're kind of just holding on a bit. I could the just... The big guys can duck dive. Yeah. But most of the rest of us, it's a little hard to get a board that's nine and a half feet long. Yeah. Same, water. same when you're on your, your big guns, yeah, you know. Yeah, you, gun. you gotta, you know, sometimes it's just easier to rely on the leg rope yeah. and dive. Have a little dive off and pay for the consequences later as we take a look now at Eva on her forehand. So she's already got that two point ride on the board. She's sitting in that advancing position. Again, it's those top two that are gonna be advancing through Barton. In the yep. final heat of the day, we are now into elimination heats. There's also elimination heats running on the men's side of the draw at El Pico that'll be wrapping up shortly. I'm sure a lot of our audience has been tracking with those scores as well. So we're sending our first surfers home for this year's World Surfing Games. Oh, which is like always a sad part. thing. Isn't <laughs> yeah, it? we don't like that part. But you know, we've got to get in what seven days' time. We've got to get to a point where we've ran through all of the rounds, all of the repercharge and elimination rounds, and get to those finals and decide the surfers who are going to the Olympic Games. That's incredible, isn't it? When you think of that, six for the men, eight for the women. That's correct. It it's is a lot of spots up a, for grabs. So it's a lot of spots up for isn't grabs. It? Yeah. Everyone would be thinking, I'm a chance. Everybody. Everybody. Yeah. yeah. Especially yeah. an event like this where you have that second chance because of the repos and, yeah. and you kind of don't know who you're going to end up in a draw with. You could end up with a, a really challenging heat of surfers that are maybe already qualified. You could end up with one that seems potentially slightly easier. Yep on your way through and then have the battle at the at the end when you maybe have that confidence sinking you're there and it could become you know make one heat and you're in make you know lose out in that heat and you're out they're going to be some great moments for us as broadcasters and to share with the world they're going to be some exciting moments and and there's going to be some wonderful faces and smiles and emotional responses when fernando aguere gives them their willy wonka golden ticket to the <laughs> olympic games and uh, it's just going to be great to watch the faces and, and share in that emotional journey. Very exciting times to come. We're in day two of competition out of nine total. So seven still to go after this. See how that forecast kind of holds out, what the call is day by day. We know that tomorrow will be on bright and early. Yeah, we know that for a fact. And we're running all day tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> That's and, for sure. And we figure we won't be running at Margara where we're showing you guys today. And yesterday, so this will be, you know, tomorrow will be the first chance for the audience, the public, to see the other breaks that we've been talking to. We've seen some from today, highlights of the men's here and there. And so uh, they're good waves too. They're great small waves, high performance small waves. There's air sections, big wrapping cutbacks and calves. There's going to be all sorts of stuff with the world's best surfers taking to those two breaks that are really very close together. And... Uh, public are going to get a great show because it's going to be just all there in front of us and it won't separate that crowd by that 500 meters between the two breaks 
it'll bring, condense all of those thousands and thousands of people that are at the beach literally tens of thousands of people this weekend yeah it's been swarming and i've the biggest event uh, event crowd that i've seen at an isa games have you seen a, a bigger event crowd Oh, I'm thinking back to some events that have run in Japan where the yeah. beaches have yeah. been really, really packed by yeah. finals day. But other than that, it does tend to be... Sometimes it's the location doesn't facilitate a lot of people. Yeah. Um, you know, there isn't a boardwalk set up like this, like what we had. We just had a very similar setup like this in Brazil for the World Junior Championships. Makes me wonder, because talking about venues that don't facilitate a large audience, the Olympic venue is exactly one of those spots. The end of the road or Tiopo is uh, it's it's not a you know it's, it's a very rural area and there's not a lot of space there and it's going to be you know I wonder what they're going to do there whether the public will be fenced out so to speak that you've got to cross a bridge to get to the end to that that venue there's a little little island so to speak that you that it's on South Korea now up and riding Jae Hee the 32 year old. Nice. Driving through that opening turn and kicks out quickly. She started surfing in her mid-20s, which she says, you know, tends to be considered late to being a professional athlete. But her passion and her love for surfing finally got her to become a member of the Korea national team. She says it's a great honor to be here and she'll do the best she can to enjoy the times that she has as a surfer as usual. So <laughs> probably one of those that paddles out with that mindset of, I'm going for a surf today. Yeah. And I get to enjoy that moment. Because as a free surfer, it's all fun. You know, there's fear and there's all the other stuff, but it's all fun. There's not that pressure and, you know, that comes with competition. So I think that's an important part. I, I, you know, even Carissa Moore has focused and struggled at times to keep it fun. And that's, I think, a, a, a real focus for everybody on, on a world tour in these events is to keep that surfing spirit inside of you because it makes the whole thing much easier if you're in that space. Jay He up against two grommets in the lineup. Jasmine from Indonesia is just 14 and <laughs> Eva from the Dominican Republic is just 16. Grommets. So these are just grommets, yep. two bright shining stars that are up and coming for these nations. It's great to see the countries that have the opportunity to invest in someone younger along the way. We've seen that from the big nations doing that at the occasional world surfing games where they'll bring one of those real juniors from you know a 12 to 15 year old age range into the opens just to give them kind of that opportunity to grow a bit we saw that with katie simmer specifically the world surfing games in 2018 i think she was 12 years old and she made it to the semi-finals at that event wow. in the opens i mean at that stage her surfing was already that technically proficient she was just so tiny that she didn't quite have that power right. that she now has but, but the writing was on the board. You could see it, it was, coming. It was just all there. And so for all of these nations, no matter how kind of surfing power nation there are or a smaller developing nation within surfing, to be able to spot out that talent at a really young age is so cool to then give them these opportunities because mm -hmm. maybe the expectation is not a gold medal right now because they know for these women, there's a Carissa Moore in the lineup. There's a Caroline Marks in the draw, Joanne DeFay, Brisa Hennessy. They're surfing against women who have won events of this level so many mm -hmm. times in their career but they get this opportunity now to just grow there we can see oh, our surfer from the dominican republic on a nice looking car we've missed the start of that wave so we're not sure if she was able to get any important work done on the outside section but she only needs less than a one point ride bar and a 0 0.94 right now to take herself through to that advancing position ahead of jay -E, and with a wave like that she'll have it yeah, and with five minutes left, she's got enough time to replace that as well. Most part, here we go. Look at this one. Oh, hold on. Oh, beautiful turn. I think. Oh, oh. Oh, that was a hectic fall. Now let's see where she pops up at. It was committed straight into the pocket. Some team members down there supporting as they've just seen Jehi go over the falls on a pretty hectic section. She kind of yeah. got sucked with it as well. 
hectic because of the position of the surfboard underneath exactly. here. Uh, and those, you know, a surfboard is a radical instrument to fall on with those three fins, ordinarily three fins sticking up and the nose and the tail. There's all kinds of pointy bits that, you know, you want to stay away from. But she looks fine. She's in the water duck diving that one. So, you know, we, we're so fortunate. The amount of wipeouts that you see in surfing, even, at, you know, you spend an hour at Pipeline. Oh. You, you're just amazed. Sometimes that, you don't want to spend an hour no, just watching. You're amazed that people get away with it, that yeah. you can actually pull it off and somehow not get hurt. And, uh, you know, we've seen a few of those situations here and very grateful for it. Well, we've got some scores that are starting to drop. For Eva, it was enough for the Dominican Republic to take her into second position. A 1.83 has her in second. For our surfer in blue, Jay He, she now needs a 1.33 to get herself the advancing position. She's up and riding again. Now, she did have that first turn on, I was on that say, wave before the fall. I think it's better than, you know, it's obviously better than the 0.43, but that was yeah. the best turn of the heat so far. So there's a chance, you know, she's got the 2.5 in there. There's a chance she matches that or betters it maybe. Unfortunate, she didn't even need to go into the lip after that turn. She could have turned down and stayed away from the, the lip and completed that ride. There we go, it's a 2.73. It's plenty to get her back into the advancing position. It knocks Dominican Republic's uh, Eva Mota down into that third place position. And Jasmine is unable to improve her heat lead with a couple scores that have fallen through for her last two. So we're down to two minutes, 45 seconds left in our final heat of the day. And we can see surfers getting in position. It's our surfer in the lead that's holding on to first priority. And it's gonna be the surfer in third who's gonna gain that second priority. You can see she's just a little bit farther out, still waiting for it to drop in onto the, um, from the priority judges, but she should be out the back quicker. And that could give her the opportunity for one more shot to overtake south korea yeah two minutes 20 seconds still plenty of time really you can jump to your feet in that final five seconds and it'll count that 183 was a long ride which most probably didn't need to be that long you know in terms of getting back out the back earlier quicker but she's got the second priority as you suggested the little ruffle a different wind direction coming in right now it's just changed, huh? Just changed. Just within this heat. But maybe it's from seconds. that cloud in the background there, because it looks like it's a little side shore, and maybe that there's some rain squalls maybe out the back there as well, and a bit of weather coming our way, which I've heard tomorrow is meant to have some wet weather. So we'll see how that pans out. We'll but 1 minute 30, 3.23 is the ask. Well, <clears throat> it's become a more significant requirement, especially in the context, Martin, because that 323 three would be the biggest score of this heat. Good point. So yeah. down to one minute, 30 seconds on the clock. It's been a huge day of surfing for day two of competition. We've seen some outstanding heats in our second round of the main round. Those mm -hmm. that have already been advancing through, we'll have surfers through to main round three. We'll also have our second uh, repercharge round kind of starting to be set. We'll have surfers that lost yes. out in that main round two, as well as the surfers that are advancing through from Repa Charge round one. They'll meet up against each other tomorrow. Let's send our thanks and respect out to those that we've lost this afternoon. Um, I'm sure, you know, just being a part of it is the win, really, and for, and for a lot of people, a lot of nations, because you're representing your country, you're part of this global surfing community. But we appreciate all of you guys. Win, lose, or draw. Doesn't matter to Shannon and me. We're here to support all the way through. Oh, here we go. Go, yeah, it, go. 25 seconds. She needs this wave. Can't oh, she get... Oh, so putting close. Putting herself in position, but just can't find that corner. Anything behind. To get into it. Oh, look That's at it running. That's got the scoring potential look all at that the one. way. Down to 10 seconds on the clock. We're paying attention to the surfers in the lineup to see if they're going to be able to get themselves one more wave. And it just doesn't quite look like it. We we're hopeful there was going to be one more wave that was big enough with that peak. But it's going to be the 14-year-old Jasmine Stutter from Indonesia who takes away a win advancing through. Jae Seo out of South Korea advancing through as well. And unfortunately out of the event, Ava Julia Mota from the Dominican Republic goes to school in Palos Verdes in California and put together a great show. Well done. 
And thank you so much to everyone for tuning in today. Barton, it's always a pleasure to be able to call the action with you. Likewise, Absolutely mate. love the frost. Always enjoy it. Always enjoy Thanks it. Thanks to you for tuning in. Let's take a look at the highlights from everything that we've gotten to see so far. And we'll be back bright and early tomorrow morning for day three of competition.